This film is purely fictional. Please do not imitate it. Your like and subscribe are the motivation for me to update. Chapter 1 The Sword on the Ten Mile Slope Level 71 Li Chu murmured and swung his sword down casually. A lantern about a few feet in front of him was extinguished with faint ghost fire, then split into two halves and fell to the ground. It turned out that it was cut off by his casual sword in the air. It was already midnight, but there was a young Taoist priest wearing a fire and water robe wandering around in the wilderness. The scene was quite strange. From afar, he was tall and handsome. If he got closer, he could clearly see his clear features. His eyes were shining brightly, and he had a good appearance that was not stained by vulgarity. As he strolled around, a will-o'-the-wisp lantern was drawn out of the darkness from time to time, trying to bully him. It's a pity that during the rise and fall of the sword light, no lantern can cross the thunder pool even half a step. Every time a lantern is extinguished, some white light spots that cannot be seen by ordinary people will rise from the remains of the lantern and merge into the body of the Taoist priest. Alas, Li Chu sighed softly and said to himself, Sure enough, as my level gets higher and higher, the experience provided by lantern monsters becomes less and less. At first, a lantern monster can be upgraded to a level, but this time it actually it took two full months. If this continues, I don't know when the next upgrade will be. However, he changed the topic and continued. Although this upgrade is slow, it is better than safety. His eyes were looking in a certain distant direction, as if he had penetrated into the endless darkness and saw those vicious beings that chose people to devour. This world is too dangerous. Monsters, devils, ghosts, monsters and evil things are all over the world. It can be said to be a crisis at every step. If you want to find monsters with high experience, you will inevitably take greater risks. Although I don't know what I mean. No matter how strong you are now, it must not be strong. To be on the safe side, it's better to stay in Chilippo for a while longer. A man must be able to endure loneliness, resist temptation, and kill the lantern monster. While he was talking to himself, he had already casually killed five or six more lantern monsters. His movements were skillful, and his positioning was precise. It has been almost a year since Li Chu came to this world. A year ago, he was a graduate who had just finished the college entrance examination. He was unhappy because he made a fatal mistake and only ranked second in the province. One boring afternoon, he clicked on an ancient Xianxia game. Unexpectedly, it opened a door to Sin. When he woke up, he found that he had arrived in a strange world. There is a 10-mile slope outside Yuhang Town, and there is a Diyun Temple on the 10-mile slope. He became a little Talus priest in Diyun Temple. Of course, it doesn't matter who he is. The important thing is that in this world, the settings of gods, gods, monsters, and monsters in the game have all become real. And Li Chu, who originally controlled a virtual character, has become a flesh and blood body that can suffer pain and die. His mentality suddenly collapsed. Anyone can kill everyone through the screen. But when a real person comes to this kind of world, there is only one idea left in his mind to live with a smile. The west side of Shalippo is adjacent to a mass grave with dead graves in the wilderness, and with abundant spiritual energy. It is inevitable that some ghosts will emerge, and the lantern monster is the most common one. The power of the lantern monster is quite weak. Its essence is that some lonely ghosts with weak spirituality are attached to the phosphorus fire, showing the appearance of lanterns. Once passers-by get close, their souls will be impacted. A ghost of this level can be dispersed by a man with a little bit of yang energy, even if he was successfully hit by it. It would only be a minor illness. Nothing serious. So for so many years, there have been no practitioners to rectify it because no one is too lazy to take action. And the people near Yuhang Town also know not to pass Shalippo at night. And no one will be harmed. Until Li Chu showed up. When he discovered that he could improve his strength by gaining experience by killing monsters. The lantern monsters in Shalippo faced an unprecedented catastrophe. What makes them the weakest ghosts within a hundred miles? And they can be generated continuously is simply an excellent upgrade choice. It's past midnight. Li Chu sheathed his sword. Turn around and walk back. He understands the principle of not fishing all the way. So he will not kill them all. Every time he kills the lantern monsters, he will give them three or four days to recuperate. In the past few days, he would go to the woods to the east to hunt ghost bees, go to the wasteland to the south to look for wine jar monsters, and go to the foot of the mountain in the north to brush black for balls. If these various little ghosts have anything in common, it is that they are weak. In this dangerous world, 
The weak and helpless Li Chu relied on these weaker ghosts to strengthen himself little by little. Riding on the moonlight, the mountain wind was blowing his robes. And the little Taoist priest strode forward with a sword on his back. And soon saw an ancient Taoist temple. You can clearly see the model traces of time on the outer wall of the Taoist temple. And half of the wall is covered with ivy. The gold paint on the plaque above fell off. Leaving only the three empty words, to Yun Temple. Li Chu pushed the door open and entered. The spacious front yard was paved with green bricks. In the center was a large copper cauldron with three thick thousand-year-old incense sticks inserted in the cauldron. After passing the front yard, you will find the Sanqing Main Hall. There was a golden statue of the three purities enshrined on the altar in the temple. Li Chu casually nodded towards the altar, said H. Lo, and then walked straight through. As a modern human soul, even if it comes to a world with strange powers and chaotic gods, it still cannot pay much respect to these gods. Li Chu's thoughts are very simple. If I believe you can really realize my wish, then I will definitely believe you. If not, then sorry. Everyone will go their separate ways. On the first day he came here, he made a wish to go home. Obviously, it didn't come true. The backyard is much smaller and messy, with a lust floor. An old locust tree with lush branches and leaves in the corner. And a well covered with a stone cover under the locust tree. There are stone tables and benches beside the well. Even in the middle of summer, the area around this well is freezing cold. Sitting next to it seems to be facing the open refrigerator door. So the master and apprentice often enjoy the coolness here in chat. There are three small rooms in the courtyard. One belongs to Yu Qian. One belongs to Li Chu. And the other one is the kitchen and can be regarded as Li Chu's. Li Chu tiptoed into the small courtyard and quietly returned to his bedroom, fearing to disturb the master. His master, Yu Qian, the master of the Yun Temple, is a true Taoist master, at least according to him. Taoist master Yu claimed that in his early years, he was a knight in the world, slaying demons and defending the Tao, and had done a lot of killing. So he came to this small Taoist temple to live in seclusion and vowed not to kill again. When he was in a mood, he would often tell Li Chu stories about his youth. There are countless grand and mysterious scenes such as Chao De drinking wine and beheading demons, riding the waves in the East China Sea to kill dragons, and Kunlun opening the heavenly gate under the moon. So much so that Li Chu's highest hope of working hard every day to defeat monsters and upgrade was to become a powerful person like his master. After a simple wash, he ended a tiring and fulfilling day, took off his clothes and went to bed, preparing to sleep. In an era without mobile phones or the internet, his sleep was much more peaceful. Thinking of his weak self and taking another step closer to his powerful master, Li Chu couldn't help but reveal a satisfied smile on his face. Chapter 2 Peaceful Years and Good to Yun View The next morning the sun was shining brightly. Li Chu has become more and more energetic recently. And he doesn't feel sleepy even if he only sleeps for two hours a night. As soon as I went out, I saw the master sitting on the stone bench in the courtyard. Lost in thought, Yu Qian is in her fifties. But she doesn't look old at all. She is dressed in neat green clothes, with her temples hanging down, and she is sitting upright under a tree. She has an air of immortality that is natural to her. Just at this time, the breeze was blowing, the leaves were falling overhead, and the masterly demeanor almost overflowed the screen. Seeing Li Chu coming out, he took a glance and said, Not bad, disciple. Your cultivation has improved again. Li Chu secretly thought that it was awesome. After all, he couldn't escape the master's eyes when he upgraded. So he nodded and said, It's just a small improvement. Thank you for the compliment. Master, your current cultivation level is almost catching up to what I was when I was your age. You should encourage me more and don't slack off. Yu Qian said calmly. Li Chu was very excited when he heard this and said hurriedly, Disciple knows. Yu Qian nodded slightly and showed a satisfied smile. Earlier, Yu Qian said that his sex skills can only be practiced by the heavenly spiritual root that only occurs once in a century. So he could not pass it on to Li Chu. Li Chu was also deeply disappointed. Thanks to the fact that he later discovered that he had the ability to fight monsters and upgrade. He began to embark on the path of spiritual practice. He had never dared to dream of chasing Yu Qian. So it was an unexpected surprise to receive such a high evaluation today. After simply making breakfast, the master and the disciples ate. Li Chu put on a neat Taoist robe and came to the front hall. After all, he is a Taoist priest, and his main job during the day is to sit on the futon in Sanqing Hall, waiting for pilgrims to come. Yu Qian didn't have to wait here. 
firstly because of his identity as the temple's owner, and secondly because there were so few pilgrims in Yun Temple, and it was common to see no one there for most of the day. Even if someone comes, they are mostly poor people from nearby villages who cannot give them a few incense money, so there is no need for him to come out to greet them in person. Only when those famous wealthy people come, Li Chu will go to the backyard to invite the master out. Often, Yu Qian's mellow voice can be exchanged for a month's worth of expenses for the master and apprentice. Every time at this time, Li Chu would sigh behind him. This is called professional. She is worthy of being the idol of middle-aged and elderly women in Yuhang town. At this time, this idol was sitting at the stone table with an upright attitude. Flipping through a picture album with gusto, the wind blew the pages of the book, floating up and down, and you could see several big characters written on the cover of the album, which vaguely looked like Lamp, Grass, Monk, and Shang, sitting on the futon. Li Chu silently circulated the power in his body. Although such operation would not promote the growth of strength, it would generate a warm current in his body. This warm current can relieve fatigue, dredge meridians, activate blood circulation and remove blood stasis, and revive men's virility. Through this operation, he can sit cross-legged on the futon all day without his legs going numb. This is a very practical skill for Taoist priests. He didn't know what to call this power. It was different from physical strength and energy. It was like a ball of air that filled the whole body. Once it left the body, it would evaporate instantly and become intangible. There are many practitioners of the eight classics in this world, and they naturally know the existence of true energy. It is the embodiment of the spiritual power of heaven and earth in the human body and is the basis of all divine channels. It is extremely mysterious, but the difference is that she needs to be enhanced through breathing and circulating around the sky. As for Li Chu's power, the only way to enhance it is to fight monsters and upgrade. If not, why would he take the risk to bully the lantern monster? Yes, a hint of risk is a risk. In his opinion, it is still the same sentence. There are too many dangers in this world. Demons and ghosts are collectively called evil things. On the first day after Li Chu traveled through time, he witnessed a tragic incident in which an evil object harmed people. Brother Nyo from the next village was dragged away by a water ghost. Moreover, in order to get his body back, his relatives had to endure the pain to sacrifice to the water ghost. And then his body was recovered. Human tragedy. Later, because of his status as a Taoist priest, Li Chu witnessed some cases of evil things causing trouble, which left a heavy shadow on his modern soul who was born under the red flag and grew up in the spring breeze. Even after his strength improved, he also helped solve some of them. And the process usually went smoothly. But killing means killing. Fear means fear. He knew very well that he was only in a small corner of the vast world. There are countless powerful demons and ghosts in this world. There is still a due respect for evil things. The Taoist scriptures say, young people should not be too energetic. In fact, objectively speaking, Today's world is definitely a peaceful one. Today the world is under the rule of the Hulua dynasty. This is a powerful feudal dynasty. After the soul-stirring war between gods and demons, the Heliuoji family has determined the world. It has been nearly 800 years since the founding of the dynasty. And it is still as solid as a rock. There is a complete bureaucracy internally. A powerful national defense army externally. Prosperous commerce. And strict laws. Regarding evil objects. The Imperial Court has a special agency to deal with such incidents. And there are also many sects composed of cultivators in the world. The founding emperor of Alua once personally ennobled the twelve immortal sects, established the Imperial Examination for Immortals, and encouraged practitioners in the world to eliminate demons and defend the Tao. Taoism and Buddhism, civil and military sects, are all willing to contribute their own efforts to protect the safety of one side and expand their followers. But the entire dynasty is too vast no matter how many cultivators there are. Once you encounter an evil thing, no one can guarantee that you can be rescued in time. They can only try their best to avenge you. Yuhang Town is the jurisdiction under the Hulu dynasty, Jiang Nanzhu, and Hangzhou City, and Shilipo, as the name suggests, is just 10 miles outside Yuhang Town. If it is divided into details, it may even belong to a certain village. Sometimes Li Chu would also wonder if he was too timid as a time traveler. It's been almost a year, and I haven't left Novice Village yet. But then I thought again. You didn't give me the treatment that a time traveler should have. There are all kinds of portable grandpas further away. And all kinds of fancy systems are closer. No matter how bad it is. You have to have a super 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 magic weapon. Right? What about you? 
There is not even any spiritual root for cultivation. Just the ability to fight monsters and upgrade. You have to work hard every night to fight monsters to improve your insignificant strength. Thinking of this, Li Chu felt calm. It's impossible to get out of the mountain. It's impossible to get out of the mountain in this life. And I don't have a golden finger. So I can only brush the lantern monsters and barely keep up the level. The people in Yuhang Town are all talented and well-spoken. I really like being here. The sun is shining brightly, and the clouds are white. The cicadas in the tree chirped happily. In the Taoist temple, the young Taoist priest quietly waited for the pilgrims in the front hall. And the old Taoist priest quietly looked at the picture album in the backyard. The so-called quiet years. The sin of Heather hung in the air. Chapter 3 There is nothing that a sword cannot solve. When the afterglow of the setting sun falls over the mountains. The sound of the flute of the shepherd boy returning home at night sounds. Li Chu stood up from the futon with a normal expression. Moved his body. And straightened the wrinkles on his Taoist robe. Another day when no pilgrim came to the door. From this day onwards. Li Chu's spirit and body were completely his own. And he became a truly free person. In layman's terms. He's off work. Even though he did nothing all day. The life of a little Taoist priest is so simple and boring. He turned back to the backyard and started preparing dinner. After the master and apprentice had dinner, he stood up and said to Yu Qian, Master, this disciple needs to go out for a while. Yu Qian nodded slightly. Pay attention to safety. Yes. After saying H Lo, Li Chu walked out of the gate. This time I went out a little earlier than usual. It was not dark yet. And the ghosts and monsters in Chilippo hadn't come out yet. The direction he took was also different from before. He was walking towards the river. Yuhang Town is close to the estuary of the East China Sea and is surrounded by many river systems, including the Heishui River. The Heishui River is not outstanding in width or depth among the surrounding rivers. But it is quite special, and no one has ever dared to approach it, because there are water ghosts in the river. In fact, all major rivers have some legends about water ghosts. But this one in the Heishui River is particularly powerful. It is said that because of the huge flood more than a hundred years ago, many people died in the Heishui River. This water ghost sucked in many ghosts and rose to a very high level. There are water ghosts in other places, so the best thing to do is not go into the water. As for the Heishui River, even if you stand on the shore, you may be mesmerized just by taking a look at the river surface. Over time, the entire Heishui River became a forbidden area. It had been a long time since anyone had had an accident. But last year someone's naughty kid didn't take notice of it and ran to the river to play and ended up being fascinated by the water ghost. It happened that Brother Nyo from the next village saw it and couldn't bear it for a moment. So he went into the water to rescue him. Brother Nyo is a good sailor who goes fishing all year round. Even with his hands and feet tied, he can swim faster than the fish. But after he pushed the child up, he didn't come up. Moreover, after Brother Nyo's death, his body was as heavy as a stone. He sank in the middle of the river and could not float up. No one dared to salvage his body. Brother Nyo's family had no way to appeal. So they had no choice but to listen to the villagers' idea and invite Taoist priests to build a shrine to worship the water ghosts in the river sincerely. Only then did the water ghost let the body float to the surface. And Brother Nyo was able to rest in peace. So domineering. Li Chu traveled through time before this sacrifice. So this water ghost left a deep impression on him. In other words, a very bad impression. At that time, some people also asked why they didn't ask a cultivator to kill the water ghost. The elders in the village said that they had invited him in the early years. But this water ghost has long been a habit. And its Taoism is very high. Ordinary cultivators will die when they come. And even those with higher cultivation levels can't do anything about it. Because it has almost integrated into the Heishui River and can come and go freely in the river without leaving a trace. How can it be eliminated? Unless someone really powerful takes action. A small fishing village cannot hire such people. We can only wait a few decades. Maybe it will become the river god of the Heishui River. And then, there will be no need to harm people. But Li Chu felt this was unreasonable. Brother Nyo is undoubtedly a good person. This water ghost is undoubtedly an evil ghost. Then why do evil spirits still have a chance to achieve perfection after killing people? But good people have to be threatened with their bodies even after they die? This incident made him feel a little angry. The master said that everyone has his destiny. But he felt that the fate of good people should not be like this. The fate of evil spirits should not be like this. So he kept this incident in mind. Including the anger. After reaching level 71 last night. He immediately wanted to come here for a walk. 
The riverside is full of red flowers and green willows. And the lush grassland, with warblers and birds flying and dancing among them. It is a beautiful scene in the sunset. Li Chu walked along this scene. So the picture becomes even more beautiful. As he walked, he felt a cool breeze blowing from the river, causing ripples in the water. He turned to look at the river. But what he saw was not a handsome face. On the contrary, what is reflected in the water is a big face with green face and fangs, which is ferocious, terrifying and ugly. Li Chu smiled slightly. Finally you are here. Before he smiled, the ghost in the water smiled first. A greedy smile. One person and one ghost. Smiling at each other. Immediately, the scene in Li Chu's eyes changed. There are no longer grimaces under the water, but a pile of golden gold, just within reach. As if you can just bend down and pick up the priceless property. He didn't move. As the light and shadow turned, another dragon chair appeared under the water, with a large jade seal resting on the dragon chair. There was a voice in his ear telling him, Sit on it. Sit on that seat. And the whole world will be yours. He still didn't move. The light and shadow changed again. This time into a group of beauties. They were all as beautiful as flowers. But they refused to dress properly. One showed a hint of breasts. And the other showed two long legs. And the deeper parts were looming. It seemed that with just a stretch of hand, the thin gauze skirt could be pulled off. Li Chu finally moved. He pulled out the iron sword behind him and swung it forward. Laugh. The tip of the sword cut through the air. Immediately afterwards, the flowing river water stagnated. Boom. The river flows against the flow. Suddenly, the river that had been flowing slowly was suddenly cut in the middle. Walls of water several feet high were instantly built up on both sides. And it's soaring at a speed visible to the naked eye. A vacuum zone nearly ten feet wide appeared in the area where he swung his sword. Exposing the dry and messy river bed for an instant. Many unlucky fish suddenly appeared from the water in the air without knowing what was going on. And their eyes widened immediately. His eyes were filled with confusion and innocence. On this river bed, there is also a green shadow that is also exposed. That is the true form of the water ghost. Over time, he has lost his human form. But his eyes are still vaguely identifiable. The emotions in its eyes are not much different from those in fish eyes. But the water ghost's intelligence is still stronger than that of the fish. In addition to widening its eyes, it also produces a series of rapid psychological activities. This is your horse. What is it? Immortal? The water ghost looked up at the handsome young man on the shore who waved his sword casually, feeling a little confused. Did he hold back the water? No. He cut Jian off. In this way, he forced himself out of the river. This guy is here for me. Don't you want to talk? Why? Etc. Danger? That's right. Li Chu came for him. He thought about it for a while before he came up with this idea. Since you can come and go freely in the river without leaving a trace, I will cut off the river first. What is a water ghost without water? Ghost? No. It's a dead ghost. Li Chu raised his hand slightly, and the second sword fell. Laugh. The ethereal shadows suddenly shattered, taking with him his more than a hundred years of Taoism and his dream of becoming a river god, and was then washed away by the heavy falling water of the river. His last thought in ghost life was only two words. Cheating. Li Chu sheathed his sword calmly. Cut the river with one sword. Kill the ghost with one sword. There is nothing in the world that cannot be solved with a sword. If so, then two swords. In the flash of lightning, the fish in the sky return to the bottom of the water. This brief period of time is not even enough for them to figure out whether they are birds or fish. But it doesn't matter. After seven seconds, they will forget about this thrilling journey. A burst of rich white light merged into his body, and Li Chu took a long breath. As expected of a century-old water ghost, the experience points he gives are really great. However, the reward was equal to the risk. This was the first time he encountered such a dangerous situation. If the water ghost's illusion was a thousand times stronger, it might really enchant him. Thinking of this, Li Chu couldn't help but feel a little scared. Chapter 4 The Teacher Will Tell You the Truth Little Taoist Priestly, let's take a walk. Yes. Shout Taoist Priestly. Have you eaten? Let's get together. I've eaten. Thank you. On the way back, some villagers who had had dinner greeted him warmly, and some who had just started to smoke invited him to the table. Li Chu responded to them all with a smile. De young one has been here for many years, and the surrounding villages are very familiar with the master and the apprentice. Li Chu has always been very popular. Who wouldn't like a handsome, humble, 
and polite little Taoist priest. Especially the young girls in the village. It doesn't matter whether he is handsome or not. The main thing is that he likes Taoist priests. No one would have thought that this little Taoist priest with a harmless face had killed a wave of water ghosts by the river just a moment ago. Li Chu didn't bother to show off. In his opinion, cutting off a river with a sword is not a powerful means. He had heard at a storytelling stall in Yuhang town that there was a man named Tong in Baijing, Kunlun, who was said to be invincible. The leaders of two countries in the western region were disrespectful to Baijing. He directly pulled two peaks from the Kunlun mountains, flew over and suppressed the two countries, one in each hand. There is a clan in the East China Sea who raise dragons for a living. The Halur royal family once wanted to force them to serve the court. So their clansmen commanded nine heavenly dragons, setting off a huge tsunami that flooded four continents and wiped out all life. The emperor at that time personally went to the altar to admit his mistake and set aside twelve islands for them to build a country. And then he gave up. These are called great supernatural powers and great scenes. Not to mention that he was far away. But there was such a great god as the master nearby. How could he be arrogant? After that, it's time to work hard on killing monsters, which I won't mention for the time being. At night, Li Chu had a strange dream. In the dream, he came to the Blackwater River again, and saw a carp with golden scales and six white beards coming up from the river. It flashed and suddenly transformed into an old man with a white beard. The old man bowed to him and said, The little old man belongs to the Koi clan in the Heishui River. Over the years, the water ghost has occupied our hometown and caused trouble. We are unable to drive him away. So we always dare to be angry and dare not speak. Today, the long sword of the trail cut off the water ghost. Ghost, you have actually helped our family fulfill their long cherished wish. And I came here to express my gratitude, Li Chu said. Old man, there is no need to be polite. It is the duty of practitioners of our generation to eliminate demons and protect the Tao. Ha ha, the old man laughed twice. If the little Taoist adheres to the right path, he will have good luck and a long life in the future. As he spoke, he turned around and turned into a stream of light again and threw himself into the water, causing a big wave. Li Chu suddenly woke up and found that it was already dawn. You came here to express your gratitude to Ming? Why bother? It's just a small effort, and I don't really care. Li Chu muttered to himself, but the corners of his mouth turned up high unconsciously. Koi are psychic and are an extremely rare group of intelligent people among aquatic tribes. It is said that they can also help people have good fortunes. This is why wealthy families often raise koi as feng shui fish. If you get its blessing, maybe you will really get lucky. After breakfast, I came to the front hall and repeated the same process. What was different from the past was that footsteps quickly sounded outside this morning. The footsteps sounded very hasty, and Li Chu hurriedly sat upright with a serious look on his face. There are two types of people who come to Taoist temples to offer incense. One is a daily believer. Most of the incense money of these people flows slowly. Although they often offer incense, it is not too much. The other is to not burn incense on a regular basis, but to hug someone's thigh temporarily. This kind of people who come in a hurry are mostly asking for help from the gods. So they are much more generous. This kind of rapid pace is often a big fish. What came through the door was indeed a big fish. The person who came was wearing a brocade embellished black dress, a bonnet hat, a long black sheath knife on his waist, and shiny cowhide official boots. Although his figure is a little out of shape and his appearance is not that out of the ordinary, he does have a somewhat majestic air based on his outfit and the aura he has accumulated over the years. This man was familiar to Li Chu. He was the police chief of Yuhang town, Zhou Dafu. When he came to see Li Chu, there must have been another case involving ghosts and gods in the town. Otherwise, a person like him would go to Chun Man Tower a hundred and eighty times and still not come to the Yun Temple once to offer incense. Little Taoist priest. Hey, I haven't seen you for a long time. I miss you so much. Chao Dafu put a smile on his face and sat on the futon opposite Li Chu. Thank you, Captain Zhou, for your concern. Li Chu replied calmly. Captain Zhou came to see me. Could it be that there is another difficult case in the town? I originally planned to come to the temple to pay my respects. Chao Tai Fook said, paused, and then added, It's just that a case happened to happen last night. Li Chu had almost memorized his cliches and was too lazy to respond. He just nodded and said, Please speak. Chao Tai Fook didn't waste much time and said directly, This is indeed a strange thing. Shopkeeper Shui. 
who ran a silk and satin shop, was murdered at home. He and several of his servants were killed, and his death was extremely miserable. But the strange thing is that, all those who died were men. The master of his family took care of the servants, and no men were left alive. But the women were unscathed, including shopkeeper Shwezina's concubine. She was fine even if she slept in the same bed with him. Huh? Li Chu was also a little puzzled. He had never seen such a thing before. However, he does not have much knowledge. There are all kinds of evil things in the world, and some new ones are normal. After investigation and interviews, I suspect that this matter is related to the resentful spirits. Chao Tai Fook continued, So I would like to ask the little Taoist priest to come with me. Okay. Li Chu nodded. Maybe we will stay there tonight. Chao Tai Fook added, Li Chu Mi Feng frowned slightly. If you stay in the town at night, it means that you can't do today's practice. And the record of killing monsters that you have persisted for many days will be cut off. Chao Tai Fook hurriedly said, You can add more money. He has had a lot of dealings with Li Chu and knows his habits very well. And he knows that a night stay is a different price. If people in the government ask practitioners to help, they can receive a reward. The reward will vary depending on the difficulty of the case. But overall it is quite considerable. In fact, Chao Tai Fook could also go to Hangzhou City to ask Shangfeng for help. There was a Chao Tian Palace station in Hangzhou City. And he could ask for help from cultivators affiliated with the Imperial Court. It's just that Chao Tian K is very busy. And always asking for help will give people the impression of being incompetent in handling cases. And the credit will be divided. As a result, the town's catchers are more willing to find cultivators in the surrounding area. Although there is an extra bounty payment. The bounty is paid by the Imperial Court. Can public money be called money? After this operation, Li Chu received the reward and he received the credit. Maybe you will make some profit. But I will definitely not lose anything. Hearing this, Li Chu's brows immediately widened. What did Mr. Zhou say? For the sake of the peace of this town. Of course, it is my duty to do this. I will go say H. Low to the master right now. The little Taoist is highly righteous. Chao Tai Fook said. Li Chu got up and went to the backyard. After walking a few steps, he didn't forget to turn around and emphasize again. This is not about money. Nature. Chao Tai Fook agreed with a smile on his face. And at the same time said to himself, I believe you are a ghost. Li Chu came to the backyard. Yu Qian was still at the stone table, holding a scripture in his hand and reading. His clothes fluttering and his fairy spirit fluttering. Master. Li Chu said, The town police chief called me last week to help deal with a case that may be related to a resentful spirit. I may not be back tonight. Yu Qian raised his eyes and said with concern, Be careful in everything. And be sure to pay attention to safety. If there are evil spirits that cannot be dealt with, be sure to save your life. Come back and tell me, and I will tell you the truth. Disciple understands. Hearing this, Li Chu was slightly excited. This is why he is full of confidence every time he goes out to do things. There is a master who knows everything. With Yu Qian's words, everything in the world can be saved. If you encounter any monsters that you can't deal with, just come back to the master. How reassuring. After watching Li Chu leave with the iron sword on his back for a long time, Yu Qian returned his gaze to the picture album in his hand. I just heard him murmuring vaguely. If there is an evil thing that you can't defeat in Yuhang Town, you must come back and tell me. Then we, master and disciple, will run away together to keep the green hills. We won't be afraid of running out of firewood. The breeze blew by, flipping the cover of the picture album. And there were vaguely three big characters. Nine, Tail, and Turtle. Chapter 5 I Have Other Ways of Salvation. Madam. It's madam. Shui Yang desperately grabbed the arm of the handsome Taoist priest in front of her, as if grasping the only life-saving straw, and screamed miserably. She is the concubine of Shui Deong, the owner of the silk and satin shop, and has only been here for three days. At this time, even though no makeup was applied and her hair was messy, she could still be seen as a delicate beauty. Li Chu comforted her. Mrs. Shui, don't panic. Please tell me the whole situation last night. As he spoke, he calmly pulled out his arm. That's right, little lady. You can rest assured. I have the head catcher and Taoist priest Shaoli here to ensure that I can protect you. Zhou Dafu patted his chest and said. At the same time, he put a big furry hand on Shui Yang's shoulder and rubbed it twice. Young, beautiful, and widowed, he will soon inherit the Shui family's business. Zhou Kaptu was so happy that he wanted to comfort her with all his heart. 
however. Mr. Shui Yang raised his pear-shaped face, looked at Zhou Dafu, then looked at Li Chu, then rolled his eyes at Zhou Dafu, and twisted away his dirty hands. She hugged Li Chu's other arm again and cried. Then I'll tell you, the Taoist priest, you must protect the new family. Such slutty bitches. Even though he was so frightened, he still didn't forget to pounce on the handsome man. Zhou Dafu cursed angrily in his heart. Of course, it's just incompetent rage. It's the eldest lady. I saw it clearly last night. Ms. Shui Yang began to talk intermittently. On the first day I got married, I was supposed to serve tea to the eldest lady, but she refused to accept me. Master, he said, don't pay attention to her, and drove the lady to the side courtyard. Unexpectedly, the next day, and just yesterday morning, People suddenly shouted that something happened to the eldest lady. During dinner, I asked the master what happened. And he said that the eldest lady had an accident and died. But I listened. People say that the eldest lady committed suicide. I was so scared at that time. Me. 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 I knew I was a concubine when I got married. But I never thought about competing with her for favor. What if she turns into a ghost and comes to take revenge on me? Then at midnight last night, I wanted to go to bed. I was sleeping on the outside of the bed. And the master was sleeping on the inside of the bed. At that time, I got up and found someone on the left side. So I wanted to get out of the bed from the other side. And then I realized that there was someone on the other side too. I quickly rubbed my eyes and saw that the lady lying on the left was the lady. Her face was all blue and her whole body was cold. I thought for the first time that someone had put her body on the bed. And then she suddenly opened her eyes. Then I was so scared that I fainted. Chao Tai Fook nodded beside him, thinking about that scene. It was indeed a bit scary. When I woke up again, this morning, the maids woke me up. I realized that the master beside me was no longer human. He was just like a puddle of rotten meat. The lady didn't know how to torture him. I really didn't see anything at all. The maids also said that all the men in the family are dead. And the servants, gardeners, and handlebars are all the ones left with us girls. It's the eldest lady who is looking for revenge on a man. She must still be here. She died with resentment and will not go far. She didn't kill us this time. Who knows if she will kill us next time? Don't worry. There won't be a next time. Li Chu said firmly. After finally hearing all Shui Yang said, he resolutely took out his arm and stepped back five steps to distance himself from her. Shui Yang's arms were empty and she looked at Li Chu with disappointment. Chao Tai Fook quickly put his strong arms close to him. Mrs. Shui Yang blinked, turned around, hugged the maid next to her, and started sobbing again. Zhou Dafu felt bored, walked over to Li Chu, and asked in a low voice, How is it? Li Chu walked into the bedroom and saw a screen covered in blood, with strips of meat stuck to the floor, the bed, and even the ceiling. Although most of the corpses have been cleared away, it is still unbearable to look at. He asked back, have you seen the corpse show show? Don't mention it. Zhou Dafu said with a gloomy look on his face. Those servants were better. They were bitten to death with a few scratches at most. Shui Dayong's death was so miserable. Worse than being cut into pieces by a thousand cuts. It's like tearing off the flesh of a person with fingernails. It couldn't have been done by a human. Not even a beast. I took a look at it this morning and vomited out all last night's dinner. Li Chu nodded. As his monster fighting leveled up. His five senses became extraordinarily sharp. At this time, I can clearly feel that there is a disgusting cold atmosphere in this room, which is similar to the haunted place before. It is the residual in energy after the ghost appears. Listening to Shui Yang's account, it does seem like a resentful spirit committed the crime, Li Chu said. Then I will stay here tonight to see if she will appear again. The so-called resentful spirit is a kind of ghost that may turn into a ghost when a person dies with extreme resentment. It can survive in the world with only a breath of resentment. Most of the race are earthbound ghosts. Ghosts that cannot leave the place where they died. After death, their spiritual intelligence will gradually dissipate, and they will forget most things and only remember revenge. Even if they have killed their enemies, they will still stay in place to attack more innocent people. As the resentful spirit kills more and more people, the resentment it accumulates will become heavier and heavier. So it must be eliminated as soon as possible. But there are still some doubts. Chao Dafu touched his chin again and thought, Race spirits are not that easy to generate. I have been a policeman for decades and have only encountered them three or two times. And they all involve shocking injustices. 
it stands to reason that the eldest lady of the Shue family is just a jealous woman. Even if she was ignored, she would not have to die to express her ambition. And if she committed suicide and was not killed by someone, how could she turn into a woman so easily? A resentful spirit? His suspicions were reasonable. If resentful spirits were generated so easily, then any small-minded person could harm others after he died. Are you saying that it was possible that Shue Deong killed his wife? Li Chu asked. I don't know, but it doesn't matter anymore. Zhou Dafu spread his hands. Anyway, Shue Deong also went to the underworld. Let the couple confront each other on their own. After that, the two walked out of the Shue family's bedroom. In the yard, as the sun shone at noon, the negative energy in the house seemed to be dissipated, and Shue Yang's spirit became slightly more stable. Seeing the two people coming over, she looked at Li Chu with watery almond eyes that were swollen from crying. Little Taoist priest, you must help me perform a good ritual. I need an altar, incense candles, talismans, and other things. You can, you can just give your orders, and everyone in the slave family will prepare the best for you. Uh, Li Chu hesitated and said truthfully, I don't know how to do anything. Shui Yan was startled. Taoist priests don't know how to perform rituals. Didn't Zhou Cap to invite you to say the eldest lady? I really don't know how to set up an altar and chant sutras. Li Chu replied calmly. But please don't worry. I have other ways of salvation. Chapter 6 All Men Deserve to Die, Except for Little Taoist Priests It was originally agreed that Li Chu and a group of detectives would stay at Shua's house, waiting for the resentful spirit to appear. But the agents in the Yaman were very righteous. In front of the remaining female relatives of the Shue family, they all beat their chests and blew their whistles three times, claiming that they would drive away evil spirits and give them a beautiful home. After all the female members of the Shue family were settled in a nearby inn, it was getting late, and all the police officers came to work. In some families, the wife is sick. In some families, the wife cheats on people. And in some families, the wife cheats on people. And all of a sudden they become scattered. Finally, Chao Tai Fook was extremely angry. Damn it! I just went to the toilet and let these grandsons escape without paying attention. Shao Tao is priest. Don't worry. I'll go catch them one by one. After Zhou Baodo said this, he stepped out of the door with great pride and never came back. But Li Chu had long known that their virtue was good. He was also happy that there was no one around to get in the way when he was exorcising ghosts. In the bedroom of the Shui family courtyard, Li Chu sat on a grand master's chair behind the screen, holding a sword between his knees, quietly waiting for the resentful spirit to appear. This bedroom was deserted and deserted, with extremely simple furnishings. It contrasted sharply with the ornately decorated large bedroom in the backyard. It was no wonder that the eldest lady of the Shui family felt so resentful when she was suddenly rushed here. There is a worn white mark on the bare beam, which is where the eldest lady hanged herself, and where the evil spirit she turned into will appear. The night in Yuhang town is quiet. The evening breeze gently swayed the willow branches. Because it was summer, the front and rear doors and windows in the bedroom were open. And a breeze came in, which was a bit cool. This coolness turned into a slight chill for a moment. It quickly became colder and colder. Another gust of wind blew out the lights in the house. Li Chu, who had been closing his eyes to rest his mind, suddenly opened his eyes, and something appeared. Quietly, a figure hanging on the beam appeared in front of the screen. Its neck is stretched very long. Its tongue is swaying, and it can be seen through the screen that it is wearing a heavy dress, which looks like a restrained dress. When Li Chu opened his eyes and looked at her, he felt that the figure hanging above was also looking at him. For a long time, a faint and cold voice sounded in the room. All men must die. Li Chu frowned, pondered for a moment, and said, Madam, in fact, you don't have to be like this at all. If Shui Deong has let you down, you have recognized a betrayed person. But why would you risk your own life for revenge? The resentful spirit doesn't have much remaining wisdom. He doesn't know if this exchange is effective. But he still feels that the truth needs to be said. Every resentful spirit died with a resentment in mind. And he hoped that they would no longer carry this resentment in their hearts and die. But the voice sounded again. All men must die. This time, the tone was even more stern. The wind outside was blowing faster and louder and the doors and windows were banging against each other. Li Chu added, I know you have resentment in your heart, but people can't dispel hatred by hurting themselves. Even if Shui Deong is killed by you this time, you won't have a happy ending. So why bother? The voice was still unyielding. All men must die. 
as she yelled a sentence for the third time. The whole room became bone-chillingly cold, and even water mist condensed into fine frost. Hallucinations began to appear before Li Chu's eyes. The joy of a wedding could be heard vaguely outside. But inside the house, there was a heartbroken woman who hanged herself miserably in the darkness. It's midsummer. But it's like falling into an ice cave. Even if you turn into a resentful spirit to take revenge, you shouldn't anger all men. Li Chu ignored it and continued. If there is opposition in the world, it should only be between good people and bad people. In any case, men and women should not be pitted against each other. Confrontation. If you have harmed Shui Deong, it is not over. How innocent are the servants of the Shui family? Li Chu finished the last sentence he wanted to say. The figure hanging on the beam swayed, as if it was about to break free from the shackles of the long rope around its neck at any time. And the sharp voice came out of the throat again without knowing how. All men must die. Li Chu sighed helplessly as he listened to the same cry. It really doesn't work to reason with the resentful spirit. Human beings are essentially repeaters. Race spirits are even more so. Bang! There was an explosion, and the long rope was broken. The hanging figure fell to the ground, but did not fall, but stood firmly in place. The next second, he crossed the screen. In an instant, Li Chu saw the true face of this lady. She was wearing a heavy white robe, and her face was a terrifying livid color. Her facial features were no longer distinguishable from those before she was born. The most eye-catching thing was naturally her long swaying red tongue. She came to Li Chu, opened her hands, and lunged forward, her fingers with swollen nails ready to wave out. Along with her only line, all men, Li Chu's eyes narrowed, and his right hand was already holding the scabbard. Kill ghosts with a sword in an instant. But the lady's voice and movements were stagnant at the same time. Her long neck suddenly became stiff, and her body was arched. But instead of rushing forward, she hesitated and took two steps back, because his hands happened to be raised high. Originally he was about to attack with his claws. But now, he looked like he was about to surrender. Man! Man! She sobbed in her throat. And after a while, she said, What a handsome man! Um! Black lines of confusion appeared on Li Chu's forehead. What happened to this sudden compliment? Although he heard this sentence many times every day, it was still a novel experience to hear it in this setting. Every man! Every man! The crimson blood in the lady's eyes gathered and dispersed as if she was experiencing a painful struggle in her heart. Li Chu allowed her to fight between heaven and man, and did not take the opportunity to take action. She swayed stiffly for a long time. And finally, the deep black seemed to take over. The dark wind around him suddenly stopped. If Shui Deong was so handsome, I might not hate him. Her voice calmed down and no longer had the sad tone. Although it feels weird, the resentment doesn't seem as strong anymore. Madam, have you put down the resentment in your heart? Li Chu held the hilt of the sword, hesitating for a moment whether to draw the sword or not. Ha ha! It's not that easy! The eldest lady shook her head and sneered, flicking her long red tongue back and forth. It was obviously a simple action, but it was extremely terrifying when she performed it. When Li Chu heard this, he wanted to unsheath his sword again. His strength had reached his wrist, and suddenly he saw the eldest lady raising her head and looking at him with a terrifying livid face. But if you... Little Taoist priest, are willing to hug me, then I can probably let go. Huh? A circle of question marks instantly appeared above Li Chu's head. He really hasn't seen much of the world. And he really doesn't know if there is such a process for exorcising ghosts. I have never hugged such a handsome man in my life. The eldest lady said again. The tone seems a little shy. Li Chu was startled and stared at the eldest lady's face. This face was really not pleasing to the eye. What's more? It is very dangerous to let a resentful spirit get close to one's body. But, if this can dispel her resentment, Li Chu released the scabbard with his right hand and slowly opened his arms with an expressionless expression. There seemed to be a smile on the eldest lady's face. She flew forward but did not extend her claws. What she said was true. In fact, she did not hug Li Chu. Ghosts are incorporeal bodies and humans are entities. They can attack each other with spiritual power, but they cannot contact each other. As she flew toward Li Chu, her body began to disappear. A little memory came to mind. When she was young, there was also a handsome young man who proposed marriage. Although it was not half as good as this little Taoist priest, he was still a famous handsome young man from all over the country. But she fell in love with the ugly Shui Deong because she felt that ugly people were more practical. Because of this, she often harbored resentment toward Shui Deong in the days that followed. 
I gave up on the handsome guy and followed an ugly guy like you. So of course you have to be nice to me. With this kind of mentality, even the most loving couple will have gaps. Shui Dayong's taking a concubine was actually the last straw that broke her back. She didn't expect that Shui De, who had always been a coward, had the courage to take a concubine despite her objections, and even dared to drive her to the side courtyard for the concubine. When she was filled with resentment, that person happened to appear. Correct. The eldest lady suddenly opened her eyes. She had something to tell the little Taoist priest. But it can no longer be said. When the resentful spirit loses its last breath of resentment, it will disappear. Li Chu watched the lady disappear as she flew towards him, blinked and breathed a sigh of relief. Then he touched his face. Although he often hears others say that he is handsome, he actually does not have a clear idea in his mind. In fact, he always felt that his appearance was ordinary, because he is face blind. Chapter 7 I blame you for your misfortune. People joke about a person being ugly, and often say he looks good to ward off evil spirits. In fact, ghosts are not afraid of ugly people. No matter how ugly a person looks, can he still be ugly? Today, Li Chu proved with his own experience that only handsome people can ward off evil spirits. After getting rid of the resentful spirit, he did not stay in the empty Shui family's house, but walked out. As soon as I walked out of the gate onto the street, I heard a shout from the opposite street. Chao Tai Fook and a group of detectives came out of the alley across the street and shouted hurriedly, Chao Tao is priestly. Where are you going? Li Chu didn't answer but looked at them strangely. After thinking for a moment, he guessed that these men had not escaped at all, but were all too scared to come in. So a group of people watched in the alley. Running out now may be because he thought he was going to run away too. Coming closer, Chao Dafu's face felt hot due to his gaze. He chuckled and said, I just got my brothers back, and I want to come back to raid the formation for you. Let's get started. Li Chu shook his head. It's over. Aw? All the detectives were surprised. Zhou Dafu was also shocked and said, Zhao Tao is priest. Did you finish off the eldest lady so quickly? Well, it went relatively smoothly. Li Chu said lightly. After looking at the faces of the police officers, he decided to explain the exorcism process in one sentence to avoid them being sad. Then where are you going? Chao Dafu knew that Li Chu would not lie, and he immediately breathed a sigh of relief and put a smile on his face. Li Chu said, it's still early. I'm going to go back to Shalippo first. It had just fallen into the night. And if he went back to spawn monsters now, he would basically not lose his daily progress. Which made him feel very satisfied. After a pause, he added, But I expelled the resentful spirit in advance. So the reward should be as agreed upon. Right? Don't worry. The bounty is no problem. Chao Dafu waved his hand, came over and tied Dunli Chu's sleeve, and whispered, how about we, men, celebrate tonight and go to spend some time together? Hua Hua Chow Chow. Li Chu was puzzled. The policeman next to him said with a bad smile, I just go to Chunminlu to spend money and have nothing to do. Li Chu felt ashamed and declined. No. Another policeman laughed and said, Are you embarrassed? Mr. Li? Don't worry. You'll be fine once you get used to this kind of thing. I think. Li Chu looked up at him and said slowly, there's no need to spend money on this kind of thing. Then, he nodded to everyone, turned and left. Looking at his straight back, an old policeman sneered in a low voice. You can't tell that this little Taoist priest is still a miser. Why? Where would the grass come from without flowers? But after saying that, he immediately felt something was wrong. Thinking about Li Chu's face, it seemed that even if the sisters in Chumminlo were asked to give money, no one would refuse. Thinking about it this way, it's no wonder that he feels there is no need to spend money. A group of detectives looked at each other and suddenly felt that the wind was a bit cold tonight. Damn it. Someone cursed her angrily, although he didn't know what he was angry about. On a cool summer night, the stars and moon are bright. It was only 10 miles from Yuhang town to Shilipo. Even if Li Chu walked leisurely, he would be there in a short time. Although there is a spacious official road along the way, there are wildwoods on both sides without any trace of people. Although the curfew in Hulu Dynasty is not strict, the city gate control is still strict. What's more, this is a world where evil things are rampant. Unless there is an urgent matter, normal people will not go out of the city to walk at night. Of course, except those who are practicing. While walking near Banjong Pavilion, Li Chu noticed something was wrong. The surroundings are too quiet. 
There should be many living creatures on a summer night in the wild. The toads in the puddles, the rat birds in the forest, the cicadas on the trees, and the howling wild beasts in the mountains are usually noisy. But at this moment, they are all noisy. Disappeared. And a fishy smell began to come from the nose. There are four types of evil beings, demons, ghosts, and monsters. Among them, the smell of evil spirits can make mortals dizzy after smelling it for a long time. The demonic energy is pungent and can make mortals angry. The ghost energy is cold and can make mortals feel nauseous. Monsters are a collection of different species and spirits in the world. They are all kinds of strange things. In fact, they do not belong to the same kind, nor do they have a unified or a category. It can be said that breath is the most distinctive feature of evil objects and the most important basis for judgment. Precisely because most evil creatures cannot conceal their presence, they can only operate outside human settlements. If this were not the case, evil things in the world could sneak into the city at will. And then human beings might not be able to be so peaceful. Li Chu could conclude that the smell he smelled now was evil spirit, and it was richer than he had ever felt before. Out of caution, he did not intend to cause more trouble. So he quickened his pace and wanted to return to Diyun Temple as quickly as possible. But things just can't be avoided. After taking three quick steps, his waist seemed to suddenly touch a small but tough silk thread, and a burst of elasticity suddenly returned. He quickly twisted away and found that the white belt had been corroded and turned black. This thread is poisonous. Under the bright moonlight, he opened his eyes and scanned the surroundings carefully, only to find that the silk thread in front of him was in the shape of a gossip, like a huge spider web. Not only was the official road blocked, the woods on both sides were also densely covered with such black threads. There were many animal carcasses lying on the forest grass. It seemed that they were poisoned after touching the silk thread. High, low, left and right. Birds cannot escape. What is this for? Hunting? This was the first time Li Chu encountered such a thing. He carefully took two steps back, trying to find another way. At this time, a black figure flashed out from the Banjiang pavilion on the roadside. Hearing the movement, Li Chu immediately looked over. A bald man wearing black attire. Sleeves and leggings appeared. Li Chu didn't know why he wore night clothes. Because it didn't mean much. His bald head is so conspicuous at night. When the moonlight shines up, it reflects like a halo covering the body. If Li Chu believed in Buddhism, he would almost kneel down and cow out to him. It was precisely because his bald head was too bright and it was dark under the lamp that people couldn't see his facial features clearly. It was because of his bald head that Li Chu realized at the second glance that the most amazing thing about him was not his head, but his arms. He has eight arms. Every one of them looks strong and muscular. As his figure appeared, the demonic energy around him became more intense and rippled. It was obvious that he was the real master. Li Chu stared at him and said nothing. He hasn't met many monsters. And he doesn't know how to speak without knowing where the other person is coming from. The eight-armed man also took a look at Li Chu. He was young and had no energy fluctuations. He seemed to be just an ordinary little Taoist priest. Then he let out a burst of weird laughter. Just when Li Chu didn't understand what he was laughing at, he suddenly started. The eight-armed man quickly raised his right hand and saw a black gap open in his palm. With a scoff, a black beam of light was shot out, almost invisible in the night. If it weren't for Li Chu's excellent eyesight, he could hardly see the black light. He hurriedly moved sideways and barely avoided the black light. There was a strange hissing sound on the ground, and Li Chu realized that the black light was a venom that fell on the official road and instantly corroded and perforated the sand of the official road. If it fell on a human body, it would definitely be a piece of flesh and blood. Li Chu frowned and looked at him. I have no enmity or enmity with you. Why did you suddenly kill me? He, the eight-armed man said with a cruel smile. Who asked you to appear here tonight? It's your fault. The eight-armed man raised his head. And Li Chu saw clearly that there were two rows of eyes on his face. Very appalling. He stood under the moon with all eight arms spread out. Looking fierce and evil. Like a demon. Chapter 8 Who is Unlucky? The eight-armed man walked peacefully. When he showed Li Chu his sinister face with eight eyes, Li Chu was really shocked by him. It's a blessing for you, an ant, to die under my thousand spiders' poison. Your soul will become a part of my thousand spiders' poison, and you will continue to kill as I continue to kill you. He he, while you are still alive, feel free to be afraid. The more fear you have, the purer the soul poison will be. The eight-armed man yelled cruelly. 
with a terrifying face, terrifying voice, and terrifying words. People with a slightly weaker mind may have been frightened to the point of weakening their legs. Maybe he just wants his prey to be afraid. And he did get his wish. The more Li Chu listened, the more he felt that this monster was quite powerful. If he were allowed to unleash another magical attack, he might not be able to resist it. With such fear, Li Chu chose to strike first. A choking sound. Draw the sword. Draw the sword. All in one go. At that second, the eight-armed man who had not yet finished speaking suddenly saw the most gorgeous scene he had ever seen in his life. A line from one of the few poems he had ever heard suddenly popped into his mind. How many states does Yijian Guanlan come from? Like a dragon descending from the sky. Like a flying dragon flying in the sky. Is there such a mighty sword energy in the world? His face with eight eyes twisted crazily. And his eight pupils instantly dilated. At that moment, a somewhat outrageous idea suddenly occurred in his heart. I'm just a little spider spirit who has been practicing for more than a hundred years. What is the virtue and ability? You can die by such a sword. Am I worthy? Beyond that, there is some deep confusion. For example, how could a human with no energy fluctuation slash such a sword? Why can I meet this kind of person casually on the roadside outside an inconspicuous town? Even if this is retribution for his many evil deeds. Is it too exaggerated? Who is the unlucky person to be here tonight? But he didn't even have the chance to know the answer. Or even finish thinking about the question. Thousands of words turned into two words and came out of his mouth. Misunderstand? It was indeed a misunderstanding that I thought he was a mortal who could be dealt with casually. Only a fool would jump out to seek death if he knew he was this kind of character. There seemed to be a bolt of thunder. And the sky in the forest was lit up with white light for a moment. The black figure with eight waving arms was instantly swallowed up. Li Chu blinked. Did someone just shout a misunderstanding? Never mind. Just pretend you didn't hear it. Anyway, hearing that he wants to harvest living souls to refine venom. He is definitely not a kind and good demon. A large group of rich experience points gathered on him. And Li Chu was quite satisfied. Although it took some time. The harvest from this sword was already equivalent to several days. But? It's just too dangerous. It's better to encounter this kind of thing less often. Although upgrading to fight monsters will increase the spiritual power in the body and become stronger mentally, the external physical body will not be greatly improved. Now I am like a high attack and low defense output position in the game. Even if I can kill some weak, evil creatures with one sword, I will still lose my life if I am not careful. If that eight-armed monster hadn't talked so much nonsense just now, he might have been turned into venom by him. What should I do if I meet a mute next time? Thinking of this, Li Chu couldn't help but feel scared. He made up his mind to find a way to make himself meteor. With the death of the eight-armed monster, all the complicated spider webs it had laid within a hundred feet radius fell off and turned into ordinary fragile spider silk. As it said, the poison on the thread is related to the soul. As its soul disperses, the mana and poison on the spider thread also disappear. Li Chushur stepped forward calmly and continued walking towards the Yun Temple. He planned to put aside the matter of spawning monsters for a while. There was some uncertainty tonight, and something might happen if he wandered outside. Fortunately, the rest of the journey was uneventful. At night, the small Taoist temple on the slope lit up with a faint yellow light. That is the light of home. Li Chu originally told his master that he wouldn't be back tonight, but he didn't expect to come back much earlier than usual. But it's the same for the old Taoist priest. His work and rest routine is very healthy. He works at sunrise and rests at sunset. Li Chu entered the door cautiously as usual nodded to the patriarch of the Sanqing dynasty, and returned to his bedroom. He was used to slaying monsters at this time every day. Now that he was suddenly free, he didn't know what to do. The nightlife of ancient people was really poor. But it may also be your own fault. Think about Chao Tai Fook and others in Yuhang Town. There should be a lot of flowers and plants now. But Li Chu always felt that this kind of entertainment was only enough for three to five seconds. After a short period of richness, there is a more profound poverty poor and needy. At this moment, there was a somewhat urgent knock on the door outside. Dang dang dang. Li Chu got up and opened the door again. Both Tao's temples and temples serve the purpose of accepting travelers. Some night travelers who cannot find an inn or poor people who cannot afford to stay in an inn will choose to stay in the temple. There are also occasional visits to the Yun Temple. He came to the front yard and opened the door. The person who knocked on the door was a middle-aged scribe wearing brown cloth and a long confusion shirt. His face was white and beardless. And he looked gentle and elegant. 
there was a carriage parked behind him. What surprised Li Chu was that, judging from the decoration and emblem, this carriage was actually an official carriage. Usually, you have to be at least the county level to be equipped with such a car, because the county seat of Yuhang County is also in Yuhang Town. Li Chu has seen such a car before. Little Taoist priest, the middle-aged scribe cupped his hands and said, My father and daughter are traveling here and want to stay overnight. Is it possible? Please come in. Li Chu nodded and invited the scribes in. Seeing that he agreed, the middle-aged scribe turned around and called. Rower. The curtain of the carriage opened, and a graceful woman in aqua blue dress stepped out. Her long hair was as thick as seaweed and was simply tied up. The skin is as white as ivory. The face is small, but the facial features are clear, especially the eyebrows and eyes, which are like two clear lakes. Coupled with his tall figure and elegant temperament, he looked like a white cloud coming out of Shio Shio. The woman got out of the car and walked forward slowly. When she saw Li Chu, her beautiful eyes twinkled. Li Chu nodded and then said, It's just that our small Taoist temple is not very spacious. There are only two bedrooms. I'll go and squeeze in with the master. Maybe we have to share the same room. It doesn't matter. I'm very grateful to the little Taoist master for allowing us. The scribe smiled. The two of them waited for a while in the front hall. Li Chu poured some water for them and went to tidy up the bed. He put a new bed board in his bedroom, put on new bedding, and quickly packed it up. He came to the front hall again and informed the two of them. You two have been waiting for a long time. The bedroom has been tidied up. Thank you, little Talus master. The scribe thanked him again and then said to the woman, Bro, you go in first. The woman nodded and entered the room. The middle-aged scribe then said to Li Chu, I would like to ask the young master to take care of my daughter for a while. She will not be allowed to leave until at least noon tomorrow. Huh? Li Chu was startled. From the scribe's tone, it seemed that he didn't plan to stay overnight. The middle-aged scribe seemed to have noticed his doubtful expression and smiled and said, To be honest, I'm afraid I'm not going to die soon. If I stay here, I'm afraid it will hurt you all. So no matter what, I must leave. But my daughter is innocent, and I saw that you don't look like a bad person. Little Taoist priest, so I feel safe to entrust her to you for the time being. Hearing his calm tone, he didn't expect that what he was talking about was a matter of life and death. Li Chu didn't know what was going on and could only nod in agreement. Unexpectedly, a firm voice suddenly sounded in the courtyard. Daddy and I are going together. The woman who had just entered the bedroom came back again. In fact, Li Chu heard her secretly opening the door and quietly approaching the front hall again. It's just that he didn't expect that what the scribe told him was so serious and it was too late to think of reminding him. Ro, silly kid. The middle-aged scribe sighed when he saw his daughter coming back. The news I received earlier was that they paid a lot of money to invite the demon from Chingy Tower to kill me. The eight-armed Shura sent by Chingy Tower has already said come on. There is no way I can reach Yuhang Town alive. He will definitely intercept me on the way forward. So why do you have to accompany me to death? Chapter 9 It's Very Embarrassing Eight-armed Shura? Li Chu's heart moved and he wanted to ask. The woman named Rower didn't allow him to interrupt. She looked at the middle-aged scribe and said in a trembling voice, Since Dad knows that there are monsters blocking the way, why do you insist on moving forward? Can we go somewhere else together? Didn't you say yesterday that the scenery in Jiang'an is beautiful and that you have never seen it in your life? We won't go Yuhang Town. Wouldn't it be nice to visit other places together? Or take a boat out to sea? Haven't you always longed for the customs of overseas countries? Huh? The middle-aged scribe smiled and shook his head. I, Gong Sunja, am an official of the imperial court. Even if I am relegated to this point, if I run away because of the threat of a demon, where will the dignity of the imperial court be? On the contrary, if I die on the way to my appointment, wouldn't it be even worse? It can prove the arrogance and domineeringness of the old thief of the Yang family. Even if it cannot bring him down, it can shake the trust in him in the heart of the Holy One. One or two of these things will one day be enough to overthrow the tall building of his young family. There are countless officials in the court. But a daughter only has one father. The woman's eyes were sad. Can't dad put aside all the unnecessary fights in the court for his daughter? I can't let it go. The court is a quagmire. But if you want to work for the people sincerely, you must enter it and fight with others. Before I knew it, I was already deep in the mud. The scribe looked beyond the front hall door and looked into the distance. If your mother was still alive, she would definitely understand my choice. Okay. The woman nodded. 
A daughter dare not influence her father's decision. But if you are determined to die, then your daughter must go with you. Rower. The scribe held her hands tightly. Why are you so stupid? Dad knows that you look weak on the outside. But in fact, you are extremely strong on the inside. But as of now, it is all my choice. You are in your youth. There are many things that I have never seen or experienced. And there is no need to sacrifice for these things. Although my daughter is young, she still understands the truth. I owe it to my father to teach me to read since I was a child. The woman raised her head and looked directly into the scribe's eyes. Does my father look down on his daughter and think that women are not worthy of dying for righteousness? Her voice was clear and soft, but every word she spoke was sonorous. Alas, the scribe sighed deeply. My greatest pride in this life is not that I was the top scholar in the exam, or that I was a high official, but that I have such a good daughter like you. There are countless children in Chowda City who can compare with you. How many are there? But the daughter understands the father's thoughts. The woman suddenly showed a faint smile. You are also my greatest pride. So there is no need for the father to say more. The daughter has made up her mind. I, Gon Sanja, ask myself that in this life I am worthy of the emperor, worthy of the people, and worthy of the common people. Only you two, mother and daughter. I will not be able to finish in three lifetimes. He held his daughter in his arms. The woman was smiling. But the scribe burst into tears and burst into tears. Father. Rower. Seeing that they finally slowed down their conversation for the time being. Li Chu finally had time. He asked lightly. Excuse me. The eight-armed Shura you mentioned is a demon with eight arms? Um. The scribe raised his head and was stunned for a moment. And the father and daughter looked at the little Talus priest with strange eyes. We here are sacrificing our lives for adoption and the love between father and daughter is deep and passionate. You suddenly ask me if the eight-armed Shura has eight hands? Don't you think there's something wrong with you? But looking at Li Chu's serious look, the middle-aged scribe hesitated for a moment, wiped his tears, and replied casually, Maybe there is. Maybe not. Chingy Tower specializes in driving monsters as assassins. It is not surprising to have eight arms. If it is just a nicknames are possible too. This is tantamount to no answer. Li Chu asked again, is there any more? I only heard that he is the bronze metal killer of Chingy Tower. The best at hunting and chasing. If the target doesn't struggle much, he will also give the opponent a good time. If the target escapes, he will be brutally beaten after being caught by him. Torture can even refine a person's soul, making it impossible for him to be reincarnated forever. The scribe replied carefully. After Li Chu's interruption, he felt that the atmosphere was no longer right. He couldn't cry no matter how much he wanted to. So he simply told everything he knew. After he finished speaking, he turned back to look at his daughter, regathering his emotions and preparing to say something more. Just listen to Li Chu say, This eight-armed Shura may be dead. Huh? The scribe was suddenly startled again. On my way back from Yuhang Town, I encountered a monster blocking the road, and I was forced to kill him. Li Chu said calmly, Now that I think about it, he is probably the eight-armed Shura who is preparing to intercept you. The scribe was stunned again, but the woman opened her eyes wide. Little Talus priest, are you telling the truth? Of course. Li Chu's face remained calm, but this expression fell in their eyes, as if it was a monster, and it was no big deal to kill it casually as it passed by. Although it is true. Little Talus priest, are you a practitioner? The scribe looked at Li Chu in disbelief. Yes. Li Chu nodded and said, I think it's better for you two to rest here tonight. I'll take you to Yuhang Town early tomorrow morning. If there are monsters coming, don't be afraid. Even if my cultivation is not enough to protect you. You two and my master are here. Li Chu pointed to the bedroom on that side. My master's cultivation is astounding to the heavens and the earth. Both father and daughter's eyes widened. They didn't expect that in such a small Taoist temple in the mountains. There would be two masters hiding there. Especially the middle-aged scribes. Thinking of the drama they had just performed in front of the little Taoist priest suddenly felt complicated. Although this little Taoist priest saved his life, he still wanted to say something. Next time. Say it earlier. Otherwise it will be very embarrassing. Early the next morning, Li Chu prepared some extra porridge and side dishes, and invited his father and daughter to have breakfast together. Yu Qian went out in a normal manner, and when he saw the graceful young girl, his eyes lit up, and a kind smile suddenly appeared on his face. At the dinner table, Yu Qian used his skills to tell the story of the two of them in a few words. It turns out that the scribe's name is Gong Sun Che 
and his daughter's name is Gong Sun Ro, both from Chavez City. Gong Sun was born as the number one scholar at that time. After more than 10 years in the dynasty, he reached the rank of Shao Qing of Dali Temple. He could not be said to have a prosperous official career, but he was still highly regarded. It's a pity that he is the disciple of former Prime Minister Meng Yuxiong. The powerful minister Yang Dingtian defeated Meng Yuxiong in a battle and took the throne. All officials in Meng Yuxiong's line were demoted. Gong Sun Che was directly demoted to Jiang Nanzu and became a small Yuhan County magistrate. However, he had always been favored by the emperor. Yang Dingtian was worried that he might have a chance to return to the court. So he secretly hired a killer from Qingyi Tower to intercept him. The guards who came with him had all been bribed by Yang Dingtian. And all of them ran away halfway. One of the guards still had a conscience. So he told Gong Sunja that there was a killer intercepting him on the road ahead. But even after knowing the news, he still insisted on coming to Yuhang Town to die. Yu Qian's eyelids twitched when he heard that the middle-aged scribe, with a shabby appearance in front of him, was the upcoming magistrate of Yuhang County. The mountains are high and the emperor is far away. No matter how big the storm in northwest Chaoda is, it will not make any waves in Yuhang Town. But even though the officials in Kyoto looked down upon the small county magistrate, here he is the local emperor. Thinking of how he had leered at the young lady from the prospective magistrate's family just now, Yu Qian's eyelids twitched again, and his appetite dropped by 80%. However, what puzzled him was that the father and daughter were very respectful when talking to him and looked at him strangely. The eyes seemed to be full of awe. Chapter 10 Learn the Iron Shirt in 30 Days After breakfast and some pleasantries, Li Chu personally drove Gong Sun Che and his daughter to the town. On the way, we passed by an open space where a large group of people gathered and it was very lively. Listening to their shouting, it seemed that they had discovered the body of a giant spider, which was so big that it was scary. Some people said that the spider's spirit failed to escape the tribulation, and immediately others said that it was obviously a sword wound, and it must have been killed by some immortal. Li Chu didn't stop, and even whipped his horse whip to speed past. Gong Sun and his daughter are both smart people. They heard the outline of what happened as soon as they walked by. They guessed that the eight-armed Shura that Li Chu killed last night had revealed his true form. Gong Sunja then asked, Why don't you, little Taoist priest, get out of the car and explain that it was the monster you killed? Wouldn't that increase the prestige of your Diyun temple? Master has always taught me that eliminating demons and defending the Tao is not just for fame, Li Chu said. Gong Sunja was stunned for a moment, and then he cupped his hands in sincere admiration. Master and disciple are truly masters. Li Chu touched his nose with his hand. The reason why he didn't explain was that firstly he felt that reputation didn't matter, and secondly because there used to be a pavilion there. Yesterday, I was in a hurry and acted a little harshly. Banjiang Pavilion was built by the neighbors who pooled their money. It would be more of a loss than a gain if he had to pay for it. The carriage soon stopped at the gate of the county government office. The three of them got out of the car and said goodbye. I will never forget Taoist priest Shao Li's life-saving grace. Gong Sun Jia bowed and saluted. It's just the duty of a cultivator. Mr. Gong Sun doesn't need to care about it. Li Chu said lightly. Gong Sun Rose stared at Li Chu with her wonderful eyes, pursed her lips, and said, Shao Tao is priestly. Thank you for your help. Only the father and daughter know that for Li Chu. It may be as easy as a finger's work, but for them, how they can survive from a desperate situation. Li Chu smiled lightly, then said goodbye and left. Gong Sun Ro looked at his back and didn't move for a long time. The old father turned around and saw his daughter's expression. He waved his hand in front of her eyes and said, Okay, I'm gone. There are so many talented people, princes, grandsons, and knights in the world in Chowga City. But I've never seen you look at me like this. Who else? Gong Sun Ro was embarrassed by what he said. She lowered her head and shook her head. They are not as good as him. Gong Sun just smiled narrowly. Why are you not as good as him? Gong Sun Ro pursed her lips again and then said something for a long time. Not as handsome as him. Oh. Gong Sun Che blinked. I remember my daughter said. Don't you look at a man's face only? Gong Sun Ro's cheeks turned red and she ignored him again. There is never anyone in the world who doesn't care about faces. If there is, it's just that she hasn't met a face that's pretty enough. What's more, the owner of this face is her savior. Li Chu didn't come specifically to see off Gong Sun and his daughter. He also had some things to do and needed to come to town. This morning, he asked Yu Qian in his room 
if he had any tips for body training. He would never forget the sleepy Yu Qian who had just gotten up. He had not washed his face or tied his hair. He spit out a mouthful of mouthwash, then raised his head and said to the sky, The Taoist is the origin of all things. The magician is also the branch of the great road. If you abandon the source and seek out the details, my disciple, you are in trouble. At that moment, he seemed to see Yu Qian being enveloped by an indescribable aura. The aura was so compelling that it even made him feel ashamed for asking this question. But, this doesn't change the fact that his body is still fragile. He understood that he might never be able to understand the realm of his master in his lifetime. Later, Yu Qian asked Li Chu to look for it in the miscellaneous study room in the town. There might be something to gain there. Miscellaneous study, as the name suggests, is a very miscellaneous study. The decoration in the study is very antique, with transparency from north to south, plenty of light, and the scent of paper wafting in the air. Half of them are new books and half are second-hand books collected by the shopkeeper. So there are all kinds of books, covering two floors. Li Chu walked around and took a quick look. It seemed that there was no such thing as a practice secret book. So he came to the counter. The shopkeeper of the miscellaneous study room is an old scholar. In his fifties, he is still studying hard to take the scholar examination. And his eyes are almost blind. But despite his poor eyesight, he clearly knows the placement of every book in the study and can actually find it with his eyes closed. Li Chu stepped forward and asked, Shopkeeper, do you have any secrets here? What secret? The old shopkeeper was stunned. It's about the physical body, Li Chu said. My master said you might have it here. The old shopkeeper immediately showed a meaningful smile. Oh, he got up and took Li Chu to look for him. As he walked, he said, After all, like a teacher, like a disciple, I can't tell that your boy, with his thick eyebrows and big eyes, also likes these things. Li Chu was confused, until he saw the old shopkeeper taking him to a secret cabinet and opening the cabinet, which was filled with picture albums. A strange story in the golden vase. Liao Shai romance. White Jade Futon. I want an official. Li Chu looked at these strange names and fell into deep thought for a moment. Old shopkeeper, you may have misunderstood. He looked away. What I want is the secret of the exercises that can be practiced. The body refining exercises. I want to temper the physical body. Not look at the physical body. Practice? The old shopkeeper frowned. You came to my bookstore from a Taoist temple to find a way to practice practice? There really isn't one. Hey. It seems that there are some martial arts techniques for tempering the body. I don't know if there are any that suit your liking. While talking, the old shopkeeper thought for a moment, then took him to the other side and dug out a cabinet of books in a dusty corner. The books in this cabinet were all about martial arts practice. Practitioners, whose main body is Buddhism and Taoism, were also called Qigong practitioners in ancient times. For them, they only learn martial arts at the entry level. Because at this time their true energy has not yet been developed, and they need to protect themselves. After they can refine their true energy, they will no longer practice martial arts. What Qi refiners pursue is magical powers. However, the threshold for Qi refiners is higher, and one must have spiritual roots to practice. There is only one person among 10,000 who is born with spiritual roots. There are no such restrictions in martial arts practice. Anyone can practice martial arts to strengthen their body and enhance their strength. Therefore, in any era, there are more martial arts practitioners than chief practitioners. Correspondingly, the inheritance of martial arts is also more widely spread among the people. Even in such a town study, there will be a cabinet of martial arts secrets. It's just that this kind of skill secret that can be easily obtained must not be very high-end. Perhaps because of their spiritual roots, chi refiners have always despised warriors. Although a human warrior who has cultivated to the extreme is no weaker than a peak chi practitioner, his pure combat power is even stronger. Although among the twelve immortal sects, there is a lineage of Tian Wangshan that practices pure martial arts. But regardless, it's just contempt. Therefore, if you are an orthodox Taoist cultivator, you will definitely disdain practicing martial arts. But Li Chu is not a Taoist cultivator at all. He doesn't even have spiritual roots. So there is no chain of contempt in his heart. So he asked, Thank you, shopkeeper. Are there any body training techniques in this? Yes. The old shopkeeper leaned down and rummaged around for a while, stirring up clouds of dust. After a moment, he thrust a thin, old yellow book into Li Chu's face. I saw only eight big characters on it. Learning the iron shirt in 30 days. 
Chapter 11 Our Iron Shirts Are So Awesome When Li Chu returned to the Yongwen, several ants from nearby villages happened to come out of the door, all smiling and radiant. Normally when he received guests, although the ants would laugh, they would not be so sincerely happy, just like seedlings that had been moistened by the spring rain. It seems that there is still a big gap between myself and the master. With this in mind, Li Chu walked into the front hall with admiration. Yu Qian was sitting in the front hall to temporarily replace Li Chu. When he saw him coming back, he quickly stood up. Disciple, you are back. You are exhausted as a teacher. Come and carry these things to the kitchen. Let's add a dish for lunch. There were two baskets of eggs, a bunch of green onions, a pheasant, etc. placed around him, which must have been given by the ants just now. People in the village don't have much money at home, so it's common to give some food as incense. The Taoist priests are also grateful and every vegetable and meal is a meritorious deed. Yu Qian beat her waist and walked back to the backyard. Li Chu picked up these things and followed closely. After eating a sumptuous lunch with scrambled eggs and green onions, Li Chu returned to the front hall. In the summer afternoon, the grass and trees are leisurely, and the air is filled with a drowsy smell. But Li Chu was in good spirits. He took out the book, learning the iron shirt in 30 days, and studied it carefully. If you look closely, the principle is very simple. The first step is to concentrate all the internal energy of the whole body into one point and tighten the muscles to resist the attack. As long as it is strong enough, it can even withstand sharp weapons. Common performing arts such as stabbing the throat with a golden spear and rolling a nail board on the back have all gone through this kind of training. The next step is to develop this kind of resistance into a conditioned reflex response. Whenever you are attacked, you can immediately tighten your muscles without accumulating strength in advance. Finally, it is to develop strong defense power from point to surface. All over the body, the so-called iron cloth shirt is achieved. If you practice this skill to the extreme, it is no lie to say that you are invulnerable. This kind of self-defense skill that is common in the martial arts world is definitely not very advanced. But this was the only thing Leech you could get. So he didn't mind it either. He has never practiced martial arts. And there is no inner strength in his body. But he has another kind of power that may be stronger. Let's call it spiritual power. Li Chu thought about it and felt that practicing with spiritual power might be about the same. Anyway, they are all a form of expression of energy. So there should be no difference. Just do it. And immediately, he mobilized his spiritual power and tried to concentrate it on a certain point on the surface of his body. This is the first time he has done this kind of operation. Before, the spiritual power was running smoothly in the body. Even when the sword was drawn it would not be concentrated in a large amount. Anyway, a little spiritual power leaked out would be enough to kill the enemy. Out of caution, he did not dare to try on important parts immediately, but chose a dispensable part of his lower body. Although one was very long, he felt it was useless and a bit ugly. Something that can be cut off in its entirety at any time if something goes wrong. That's right. He focused his spiritual energy on a leg hair. To his surprise, when he slowly focused 50% of his spiritual power on the leg hair, it began to glow. A glowing leg hair. I don't know why, but this scene makes Li Chu feel inexplicably familiar. When the spiritual power increased to 60%, it started to get hot, like a red-hot iron wire. Li Chu finally remembered why he felt familiar. When he was a child, old-fashioned light bulbs were still used at home. He also had a hunch that if he continued to pour spiritual power into it, it might explode in order to avoid being injured when he had not yet mastered the iron claw shirt. He temporarily stopped the experiment. It seems that 60% of the spiritual power is the limit that the leg hair can bear. I don't know how the skin is. He thought for a moment and frowned. Every inch of my skin is perfect, and I can't find any place to use it for experiments. In the end, I chose palm. He stretched out his left hand, palm upward, and his spiritual power slowly gathered. This time, 50% of the spiritual power was quickly gathered, and nothing happened. When the spiritual power reaches 60%, the palms of the hands begin to glow. When the spiritual power gathered to 70%, the palms of his hands felt hot. It seems that the skin's tolerance is slightly stronger than that of hair. There is such a palm with its own heating function. Life will be much more comfortable. Li Chu thought that when he went out, he would inevitably have to eat dry food. The cold food was not good for the stomach, and there was no condition for heating it. With such a hand, you can save a lot of trouble. When he removed the spiritual power, he suddenly found that the area where the spiritual power had been gathered looked different from the surrounding area. 
It didn't seem obvious on the palm of his hand. So he tried it again with other places. Sure enough, the places where the spiritual power was briefly concentrated will become whiter after the spiritual power is dispersed. Although his skin was originally white, it has lost its blood-colored ruddy color and now has a crystal clear texture like white porcelain. It looks particularly dazzling and feels smoother. This is an unexpected change. He quickly transformed his entire left hand with spiritual power. And then began the most intense part, holding the iron sword in his left hand. He touched it lightly. A snort. I didn't feel any pain. I opened my hand and saw only a faint white scratch, which quickly disappeared. Invulnerable. Li Chu smiled slightly. Success came faster than expected. It seems that spiritual power may be a little more powerful than internal power. The iron clothes shirt that originally took 30 days to learn was actually able to be completed in a matter of seconds. Moreover, the iron claw shirt has a cover. Because some parts of the body cannot exert force, these parts that cannot be covered by internal strength are fatal weaknesses for practitioners. There are also many stories circulated in the world about warriors who were found hiding their doors, thus destroying their skills. But Li Chu's spiritual power can be gathered anywhere and as long as he wants. He can give top-notch care to every strand of hair. In other words, his iron claw shirt has no weaknesses and is the ultimate iron claw shirt. However, Li Chu reminded himself not to be inflated by this. You must know that invulnerability also has limitations. Without the support of spiritual power, the sword used to slay demons is actually just ordinary iron. You can buy one for two tails of silver at the blacksmith's shop in the town. If there is a master of martial arts holding a peerless sword, and a master of swordsmanship wielding a flying sword. You can definitely enter your body at will. Therefore, now that I only have a little more capital to save my life, I still have to practice diligently. Immediately, he began the road of strengthening diligently. Every inch of bone, flesh, and skin on the body has been carefully condensed through the gathering of spiritual power. In just one afternoon, Li Chu felt as if he had been reborn, and his whole body had become much lighter and stronger. If he could look in the mirror right now, he should be able to see a bigger difference. He is now stable and motionless, looking like a perfect porcelain, with only his eyes shining brightly. Even the appearance has improved by three points. Don't underestimate these three points. It may not be obvious that Li Chu, who has 10,000 points of appearance, only has 10,000 and three points plus these three points. But if you switch to Chao Tai Fook, whose appearance is only five points, and add these three points, you can achieve a qualitative leap. The Iron Claw shirt is indeed a famous skill. Li Chu sighed sincerely. He originally thought that Tai Bushin was just a bad martial arts technique that could at best increase his ability to resist blows, but was not much stronger. But now that I have practiced it and feel it carefully, I can see that the strengthening that this technique brings to me is all round. Not only is he invulnerable, it seems that all the dirt in his body has been removed. It's like cutting through the meridians and cleansing the marrow. Our iron shirts are really awesome. Certainly. If the founder of Taibushin heard these words, he might jump out of the coffin board and shout, How can you be so virtuous and capable? Other people's iron shirts won't do. Your iron shirt will do. Chapter 12 The girl knows how to use a knife. The next day, Chao Tai Fook came to the door of the Yun Temple again. This surprised Li Chu. He glanced at Chao Tai Fook's lower body, wondering if there was something wrong with him. So he wanted to donate the money from the clock to burn incense. In an attempt to get back the cost of the clock, Chao Dafu's sad face further confirmed his guess. If there is a case in the town, Zhou Do will not worry about the arrest. He will only worry about his own family affairs. But Li Chu really guessed wrong. There really was a case in town this time. But Chao Tai Fook was really worried about his family. Little Tao is priestly. Why am I so unlucky? Chao Tai Fook's ugly face was almost wrinkled. The new county magistrate has just arrived. I have been arranging it for several days in advance. Just to give him a good impression. Who knew that just two days after the Shue family tragedy, there would be another big murder? Look at this. It seems like it was done by a resentful spirit again. Although not as many people died as in the past few days. This is a tragedy of massacre. There have been few massacres in the entire Holoa dynasty in a year. This must definitely attract the attention of Chowdes City. The county magistrate will not ask why there are so many ghosts in Yuhang Town. He will only ask me why this head catcher can't solve the case. Tell me. Why are there so many ghosts in Yuhang Town? Chao Dafu was almost crying as he spoke. Li Chu was also a little puzzled. Race spirits are not cabbages in the field. They come one at a time. As the saying goes, 
There are many evil spirits in troubled times. On the other hand, now that the world is peaceful and the seas and rivers are clear, it is right that evil things should not arise. Why are there so many resentful spirits lately? Zooming into the entire Hulu dynasty, people died with grudges every day, and only one grudge spirit could emerge from almost 10,000 such dead people. In the palm-sized area of Yuhang Town, two people appear every three days, which is really weird. The two chatted for a while and finally decided that after dinner today, Li Chu would go to the county government office to find Chao Tai Fook, and they would go to the scene together to inspect. This was because Li Chu had learned the lesson from last time. Ghosts wouldn't come out during the day anyway, so it would be better to wait until it gets almost dark without delaying things. It would be useless if he went too early. It would be boring to wait there, and he would be easily pestered by the women present. Although this is a massacre and there won't be any widow plots, it's a good habit to develop. He felt for no reason that Yuhang Town might not be peaceful in the future. The sky was very nice in the evening, with brilliant clouds on the horizon. Chao Tai Fook had completed the case visit, investigation and reporting early, and was eagerly waiting in the government office, hoping that Li Chu would come over, and hoping that the process would go smoothly tonight. Once Li Chu's exorcism fails, his future may not be smooth either. But what he waited for first was not Li Chu, but a sign. A heavy sign made of heavy iron. 7 inches long and 5 inches square, with a pagoda reaching the sky carved on the front and three straight characters on the back, Chao Tian K. The sign fell from the sky and clattered onto Chao Tai Fook's table. The person who threw this sign in was a girl wearing a purple corset, and she looked young. She tied a high ponytail with a touch of red silk. She had fair skin, willow eyebrows and almond-shaped eyes, a raised nose and red lips. Her appearance was as bright as a dewy peach blossom. She also has a slender waist, long legs, and a slim figure. As he walked, he swung his long legs, twisting his slender waist, bouncing the ponytail on the back of his head, and the hearts of all the police officers in the Yaman trembled. It's just that those young catchers were trembling with their legs, but Chao Tai Fook was trembling with that brand. There was a young man who wanted to strike up a conversation. He still had the same face as usual. He came up and said, This girl, I think you look familiar. I'm here to look for you. Your mother looks familiar to me. Zhou Dafu rushed over and kicked out the unlucky subordinate. The young man rolled a few times and rolled outside the classroom. He was a little silly after falling, but he didn't forget to straighten his hat first and quickly gave Chao Tai Fook a licking smile. Boss, I'm sorry. I didn't know you fell in love with her first. He <laughs> he. He also giggled twice, thinking that just like a Chun Man Lu, Chao Tai Fook was angry because others were trying to steal girls from him. Chao Dafu's pupils trembled, and he quickly roared. I fell in love with your mother first. Get out! The young man was stunned for a moment as if he had been struck by lightning. And then he said hesitantly, Then my father is in a bit of a dilemma. How about I think of a solution? You are such a filial son. Chao Dafu wished he could rush over and give him a sharp blow. But the girl in front of him was staring at him with a smile. And he didn't dare to move. A rookie can only see that she has a nice smile but an old Jiang who can feel how sharp her eyes are. Immediately, Zhou Dafu wiped his cold sweat and said with a smile, The young one is the head of the Yuhang Town Police Squad. Zhou Dafu, I have met Shang Wan. Shang Wan? There was an uproar in the squad room, and the disorganized police officers immediately stood up straight and made a messy sound. Captain Zhou, you don't have to be so polite. As the girl spoke, she took a few steps to Chao Tai Fook's seat with her long legs, sat down carelessly, and took back the heavy sign. I am Lee City. See you why. The resident of Chao Yan Palace in Hangzhou. The girl announced her family name. We have no affiliation. And I am not your superior officer. In theory this is indeed the case. But theoretically speaking, Chao Tian K is still just a Jianghu sect. Many things depend on reality. Chao Tian K was ordered to take care of ghosts and gods. And he had the right to kill evil spirits first and then report them. Even the most junior Z in Chao Tian Palace is a highly skilled cultivator. Ordinarily, when an official meets someone, he or she is not allowed to offer him politely. This kind of pressure is one of the reasons why Chao Tai Fook doesn't like to ask Chao Tian K to come down to handle cases. Miss Li is here. But do you have anything to do? Chao Tai Fook asked cautiously. Huh? Li Sini frowned beautifully. Don't you know why I came? Um, but for the massacre in Xiaoyo village? Yes. But it's not just that. Lee Sinny smiled slightly. I was also ordered to ask you. 
Why are evil spirits so frequent in Yuhang Town under your jurisdiction? In the past year, you reported six evil spirits, and this time, it is even more two cases of resentful spirits occurred in three days. She stood up again. Her tallness was not inferior to that of Chao Tai Fook, and her aura was beyond comparison. I'm very curious. What secrets are hidden in this small Yuhang Town that keep evil things here? Or is there actually no evil in the case? You have evil in mind when you arrest the head of Joda. If you can't solve the case, you will blame evil spirits. What she said is actually not uncommon. There are too many unsolved unsolved cases and major cases in the world. But only a few of them can be assigned to each arrestor in the Hulua dynasty. Sometimes in order to give an explanation to the superiors, it is normal to use evil spirits to commit crimes. After all, evil spirits commit crimes without beginning or end. And some ghosts leave no evidence even after they are eliminated. So it is easy to get into trouble. But there shouldn't be too many of these things. If it happens six times a year like Chao Tai Fook, it's a very suspicious frequency. As for the two cases of resentful spirits in three days, it is even more extreme. If it is true, then Chao Tian K must come to investigate. If it was false, it would be an insult to people's intelligence. And Chao Tian K would have to punish him. The conscience of heaven and earth, Joe Dafu said with a bitter face. Miss Lee, I also wonder why there are so many evil spirits under my rule. I am not a fool. Even if I make up a story, I will not fabricate two cases of resentful spirits in three days. But the result of the investigation is indeed true. You can't lie. Right. Lee Sidney smiled coldly. You don't have any evil intentions in your heart. Why don't you ever find our people from Chao Tian K? Instead, you spend the court's bounty to hire outside cultivators to drive away evil spirits. I also want to know. In such a small town in Yuhang Town, is there really a cultivator with such a high level of cultivation in this place, who can help you solve the mysterious cases. Zhou Dafu said, I have been a head catcher for all these years, and I have never fulfilled my duties. But I dare not deceive superiors or subordinates anyway. The reason why I did not invite the superior of Chao Tian Tower is because there is indeed a Taoist temple in the local area, and there are practitioners in it. It's convenient to invite him. So I don't want to work for him. Oh! Li Sini's eyes wandered on his ugly face. I will stay here for a while to investigate the source of evil spirits in Yuhang Town. As for the person you invited to arrest Zhou, he is not suspected of raising ghosts to respect himself. During this period, don't let him come here. This is natural. Chao Dafu nodded repeatedly. Now that the people from Kaodiank have arrived, of course there is no need for Li Chu. No matter how much Zhou Dafu valued Li Chu, he didn't think that he, a Yashaman disciple, was as powerful as the orthodox cultivators from Chao Tian Kei. As for what Li Sini said about raising ghosts and respecting oneself, this was also a case that happened before. There are local cultivators who specialize in feeding evil spirits to commit crimes and then help people exorcise evil spirits and earn large sums of money. The first choice for people who do this kind of case is Yuhang Town, a place that is not very close to Fuching, but is somewhat prosperous. This kind of thing is what Kaodiang hates the most. Zhou Dafu wanted to help Li Chu explain a few words explaining that the little Taoist priest was not such a person. But when the words came to his mouth, he stopped talking. Li Sini doesn't have a good impression of herself now, so speaking up for others is completely redundant. As he was talking here, he heard a clear voice from outside the gate. Is Mr. Zhou here? I'm here. The Taoist priest I invited is here. I'll let him go back first. Zhou Dafu said and turned around to greet him. Li Sini also followed him outside wanting to see what this suspicious Taoist priest looked like. So she saw a young Taoist priest with clear eyebrows and warm eyes, wearing clean and simple green clothes, stood under a poplar tree outside the door, with swaying temples and fluttering clothes. In an instant, it seemed as if all the rays of light from the sky were gathering on him. It's like banishing an immortal from heaven. Zhou Dafu called to Li Chu. Zhao Tao is priestly. I'm sorry. Snapped. A sharp knife cut across his neck from behind, interrupting his next words in time. Li Chu raised his eyebrows. Surprised, Chao Tai Fook fell to the ground, revealing a beautiful girl behind him. The girl looked at herself tenderly, with a smile as bright as a flower. Chapter 13 A Simple Kind and Handsome Charlatan The peach leaves are pointed on top. Willow leaves covered the sky. The girl jumped up and down and came to Li Chu. Hello, I am Li Sini the purple guard of Chao Yan Palace. Her voice was clear and soft, which was a bit pleasant. 
when the police officers in the squad room behind heard this. They were all shocked and their jaws dropped to the floor. This girl in front of us clearly has a fierce expression, a dry voice, and a tough tone. But why does she turn soft in an instant? The speed of this face change is terrifying. Li Chu didn't care whether he was a soft girl or a tigress in front of him. He only cared about the name he heard in his ears. Kaodiank. Well, he sighed secretly, cupped his hands and said, I am Li Chu, a Taoist priest from the Yun Temple outside Yuhang Town. Since the master of Chaotian Kei is here, you don't need me. Right? In fact, what he really said in his heart was, then my bounty should be gone. Right. Of course Li Chu knew what Chaotian Kei was for. At that time, the Halua dynasty decreed that the twelve immortal sects were divided into seven sects and five sects. Shongzhou Imperial Court Chaotian Palace is one of the five major sects. Among the giants of the immortal sect, Chaotian Kei is extremely different. The difference is that although it is an independent sect, it also serves the Halua Court. This involves some high-level secrets that are not allowed to be known to outsiders. In short, Today Chaotian K can be regarded as a court institution specializing in the affairs of ghosts and gods. With offices in various continents and cities. Li Chu has. Self-knowledge. It was because Chaotian K couldn't come to town that he got into the business of helping the government exorcise evil spirits. Since someone has come to the imperial court, he should withdraw wisely. Hey, why don't you need it? Li Sini rolled his eyes and said with a smile. I just arrived here and don't understand the situation yet. Only by having a local help me can I solve the mystery better. After saying this, a low coughing sound immediately came from behind her, and the shadow of the police officers flashed in her mind. They don't count as people. She quickly defined it. Huh? Li Chu's eyes lit up and he said, Then the Yaman still needs my help? Of course. You can come with me later. It just so happens that I don't have any knowledgeable helpers. Li Sin he said. At the same time, she solemnly declared in her heart, that this was to investigate the case. I had doubts about this Taoist priest. I just took this opportunity to get close to him and see if he was up to something. Yes, that's it. Even though he looks very suspicious. But you have to dig deeper to find out. Li Chu pondered for a moment and then asked, What about my bounty? As originally planned, Li Sin he waved his hand. Although someone came to Chao Yan K, logically speaking, the bounty should not be paid. But the money comes from the Yaman anyway, so it doesn't matter even if it's used to hire someone who is just an eye-catcher. Can public money be called money? Li Chu smiled when he heard this. And he also had a good impression of this atmospheric girl. He nodded and added, Of course, this is not a matter of money. We practitioners are originally responsible for eliminating demons and protecting the Tao. The little Taoist priest is very enlightened. Li Sin he praised with a smile. At the same time, I screamed in my heart, he is so cute when he is obviously greedy for money but refuses to admit it. Talk about it. People who are greedy for money and lustful people go well together. Thank you for the compliment. Sir. Oh. Don't call me. Adult. I'm still young. Forehead. After talking like this, the two of them left side by side and went to the scene of the crime. The remaining group of detectives behind him looked at each other in confusion. Where is it too small? You are not young at all. Are you? big. Moreover, this very big adult. Did you leave something behind? Don't you even bring a police officer with you when handling cases? Even though we didn't want to go, then you should at least bring a head catcher. Right? Oh, the head catcher was knocked unconscious by your own hands. Looking at the two people's handsome and graceful backs, the detectives couldn't help but feel a little suspicious. With this style of painting, are you really going to catch ghosts? Li Chu and Li Sini walked along the river embankment for two or three miles and arrived at Xiaoyo village where the murder occurred. Along the way there were sparkling waves. The setting sun reflected the mountains. And the warm breeze greeted us, making the walk quite comfortable. On the way, Li Sini carefully checked Li Chu's aura and found that there seemed to be no energy fluctuations on his body. So she asked, Little Taoist priest, which of the seven realms of heaven and man have you reached now? Huh? Li Chu was stunned for a moment and asked truthfully, What are the seven realms of heaven and humanity? Ha ha. Just some insignificant things. Li Sin he waved his hands, as if it really didn't matter. At the same time, she also completely let go of her doubts about Li Chu. There was no real energy fluctuation, and he didn't even know what the seven realms of heaven and human were, which meant that Li Chu didn't understand cultivation at all. 
and it was impossible for him to commit a major crime like raising ghosts and causing trouble. Then it's obvious. He is just a simple, kind and handsome charlatan. Things involving liars are not under Chowkin's control. If it's an ugly liar, Mr. Lee wouldn't mind taking care of it for the detectives. Moreover, it is quite impressive that one person can deceive the entire Yuhangtown Yaman for such a long time. Love it. Love it. Soon, the two people walked to Xiaoyo village. Lee Sinhe's expression also became serious, and he regained some of his demeanor as a disciple of Chao Qian K. As for Li Chu, he has always been serious. Compared with dealing with Li Sinhe's chat, he still felt that it was easier to deal with the resentful spirit. This tragedy occurred in the Fong family in Xiaoyo village. A small shabby courtyard with only a few thatched houses is located at the end of the village with few entrances. It seems that the Fong family is not only poor, but also may not have a good relationship with the villagers. People from the Yaman came to clean up early in the morning, and the scene had been cleaned up by now. It looked like just an empty yard. Although the house was messy, there was no blood. Lee Sini had read the file several times before coming here, and was very familiar with the case. There are four people in the Fong family. Father Fong Da, 33 years old. Son Fong Gang, 12 years old. Mother Fong Lu, 23 years old. Daughter Chen Ying, 4 years old. She briefly introduced to Li Chu. Fong Da's daughter Chen Ying? -ying? Li Chu immediately caught the blind spot. Li Sini explained while pacing back and forth in the courtyard, seeming to be measuring something. Fong Da and Fong Lu were both divorced. Fong Da's ex-wife was beaten to death by him. And Fong Lu's ex-husband died of illness. They both got married with their children. Li Chu was slightly silent. Li Sini's voice also dropped midway through. It is indeed a silent thing for a man to beat his wife to death and still live a good life and marry another wife. After a pause, Li Sini continued. Some people said that last night, they saw Mrs. Fong Lu looking for her daughter in the village, saying that Ying Ying was missing but she should not have been found. Early this morning, some people who went to the fields discovered something was wrong. The door of Fawn's house was not opened, and all the poultry and dogs raised in the yard were dead. The bold villagers went in and saw a horrifying scene. The results of the autopsy showed that Mr. Fawn Lu was hit on the back of the head with a blunt instrument, and that Fawn Gang was poisoned to death. The reason why it was determined that a wraith committed the crime was because Fawn Da. He strangled himself to death. Yes, the body was bone-chillingly cold, and there were two ghost handprints left on the neck, which are obvious signs of possession by a vengeful spirit. Li Chu touched his chin. It seemed a bit complicated. Fan Lu and Fan Gang should have been killed by someone, because it is impossible for ghosts to use such methods as poisoning and beating. But Fanda was killed by a ghost again. He asked, What about the little girl? Chen Yingying's body was found behind the mountain. She fell down the hillside and died. It was indeed a massacre but Li Chu couldn't figure out these various ways of death. However, it doesn't matter if he can't figure it out. He is not a policeman in the Yaman, so he doesn't need to explore the truth of the case. As long as there are ghosts here, the cool breeze blew from the other side of the mountain, easily blowing through the walls of the Fong family's hut, making a whining sound. It seemed like someone was crying. Unconsciously, it's dark. Li Sini looked at Li Chu very seriously. Don't do anything without my order for a while. The resentful spirit is different from ordinary ghosts. Once it is angered, things will be very troublesome. In her heart, Li Chu was already a 100% charlatan. So her request to Li Chu is that as long as she doesn't cause trouble. That's enough. This is a rare tenderness for Kao Diang's new purple guard Li Sini. Chapter 14 What Illusion After reminding Li Chu, Li Sini began to arrange talismans in the courtyard. At this time, the sky is getting dark in the distance and it is just when the last ray of sunset sets. But she took out a yellow talisman written in cinnabar from her waist pouch, held it between her fingers, and threw it forward. The yellow talisman flew over, as if it were spiritual, and stuck to a wall. Not finished yet. She took out a small sword car from emerald, which was one finger long. It was exquisitely made and crystal clear. It looked like it would be worth a lot of money even if sold as jewelry. But Lee Sini didn't feel distressed at all. With a flick of his finger, a green light passed by, and the small sword was nailed to the yellow talisman. Then, she clipped out a new yellow talisman and repeated the process again. Li Chu watched from the sidelines. Although he didn't understand what she was doing, he thought it was amazing. This was something he envied. The world of these orthodox cultivators is filled with talismans, magic weapons, elixirs, 
magical powers, and all kinds of mysteries that are so dazzling. He has never been in contact with it. After all, he fights monsters by himself and doesn't know how to explode equipment. And the master never cares about these minor details. Lisa and he walks slowly around the yard, hitting a talisman every three steps and nailing it with a jade sword. After doing this 18 times, she finally completed a circle around the small courtyard. She breathed a long sigh of relief, and thin beads of sweat appeared on her forehead. Before Li Chu could ask, she came over and said, Do you know what this is that I laid? It's the Sword Revival Spirit Array. Before Li Chu could answer, she gave the answer herself. Li Chu smiled. He understood that he didn't need to say anything, and Miss Li would tell everything he was curious about. Sure enough, Li Sini thought to himself again. I took out these talismans from the Chaotian K warehouse specifically to deal with ghosts. Then used the magic weapon by talisman sword produced by Danning Pavilion to nail them. When the time comes, every talisman will be struck. With my sword energy, this talisman is called the Sword Chi Talisman. And the 18 sword opening talismans are arranged according to the front and back nine palaces. Which is the relatively basic sword opening talisman spiritual formation. Hee <laughs> hee. You will definitely be able to deal with a small resentful spirit. Li Sini smiled like, Please praise me now that you're done showing off. Li Chu, who was opposite him, nodded and sighed in his heart. This is called professionalism. In comparison, my own methods of exorcising evil spirits were boring. As Li Sini's spiritual formation was arranged, Sunset also completed its final journey, which shows that her timing was very precise. A pale white crescent was revealed. In fact, it had been hanging in the air for a long time, but the color was too light and difficult to spot. The two lit the lamp and waited quietly. Li Sini suddenly asked again, Little Taoist priest, are you afraid? Li Chu shook his head gently. Why? This is a resentful spirit. Li Sini asked. Yes. Isn't it a resentful spirit? Li Chu asked. The two people seemed to have said similar things, but they were very different. A trace of imperceptible confusion flashed across Li Sini's face. Li Chu's expression was always so serious that she couldn't quite tell whether he was pretending or not. But if someone asks you if you are afraid, it usually means that she is afraid first. Li Sini's own family knows his own affairs. This was actually the first time she had exorcised evil spirits on her own. She used to follow her teacher, but she made a breakthrough in her cultivation not long ago. So she tugged on her master's sleeve and begged for this opportunity to be her own master. As for why she is so eager to exorcise evil spirits alone, because a certain sage with the surname Lu once said that you should become famous as early as possible. Following the teacher, no matter how powerful the evil spirit is eliminated, the credit and reputation belong to the leader. Only when you stand alone can all your achievements be attributed to yourself. She is actually not yet 20 years old this year. If she became famous now, people in the world would call her a heroine or a fairy. With her charm, she can attract countless fans wherever she goes. If she waits until she is 40 or 50 to become famous, like her master, what will others call her? Master. Li Sini quickly shook his head to get rid of this terrible fantasy. Suddenly, Li Chu stared at a dark and unknown place outside the door. Just as Li Sini was about to ask, he also noticed something was wrong. There is Yin in the wind. What they were waiting for has arrived. Children's voices suddenly floated around. Like children laughing. Like silver bells. Everywhere. Crisp. Ethereal. But also a bit weird. Careful. Li Sini only said one word. And then the voice suddenly started singing a ballad. Brother killed me. Mother killed him. Father killed mother. I killed daddy. This song floats faintly in the wind. But it is extremely clear. As if it is reverberating on its own. Resounding over and over again. Brother killed me. Mother killed him. Father killed mother. I killed daddy. As the song came to his ears. Lee Sini's eyes suddenly changed. Her body suddenly shrank and turned into a little girl of three or four years old. Still in this room, the surrounding scenes changed and became vivid in an instant. She saw her mother, a young woman who had stooped early. Her mother was pressing her head and telling herself to call her daddy. But she remembered that she had a father. It's just that dad was put into a black box and buried in the soil. Her mother couldn't survive with him. So she had to find a new father for herself. The new father also has an older brother who always has a wicked smile on his face. She thought the new father would be like the old father. Protect yourself. Protect your mother. But the reality frightened her. When he was drunk, he would beat his mother very hard. My brother will also learn from him. 
hit yourself as hard as he hit his mother. Her mother taught her to endure. So she endured it obediently. It's been like this for a long time. And they always have scars on their bodies. Until one day, her brother suddenly stopped beating her. He wanted to take off her clothes. My mother finally couldn't bear it any longer and rushed forward to beat her brother. Of course, my father also beat my mother hard when he came back in the evening. Then one day, her brother apologized to her. He also took her to the market and bought a piece of red silk. Other little girls have red hairbands. And she has always been envious of them. Now she has it too, and she is very happy. She decided to forgive her brother. Her brother took her to the hillside and tied her hair. So she sat down on the hillside obediently. Then, her brother pushed her down. She rolled down the hill and was in pain. Then everything went dark. For some reason, she suddenly turned into such a nihilistic existence. She saw her mother searching for her all over the village like crazy. She heard her mother calling her name. She agreed, but her mother couldn't hear her. My mother finally found out. She went out with her brother and didn't come back. Mother said nothing. She silently poured a packet of rat poison into the soup. My brother was poisoned to death. Dad was very angry. That was his biological son. So he hit his mother hard. My mother was beaten to death by him like this. She was very angry. She was still very young and she didn't understand. Why is this world like this? I have always been obedient. Why was he pushed down the mountain? Why was such a good mother beaten to death? So she shows up and kills dad easily. Only then did she realize that she was very powerful now. It turns out she doesn't have to endure it. Ah! Lee Sinny suddenly woke up from the hallucination and found that it was Li Chu who pushed his shoulder. Li Chu said, Sorry, I saw something was wrong with you. So I pushed you. It doesn't matter. Li Sinny shook his head, as if he was waking up from a big dream, breathing heavily, and murmured, I, I just, Li Chu said, You just closed your eyes tightly. Your face was flushed. Your whole body was shaking. And you kept calling me daddy. Li Sinny's face flushed and turned red three times. But she quickly raised her head again and looked directly at Li Chu. Why didn't you fall into her illusion? Resentful spirits can naturally use their resentment to influence others and cause them to hallucinate. Li Sinny knew this and was careful about it. I just didn't expect that although this resentful spirit died not long ago, it has a very high moral character. She hides illusions in her songs making them difficult to detect. But why did Li Chu act like nothing happened even though he had been attacked? He also woke himself up very calmly. Why should he? Li Xinyi's eyes were full of doubts. Under her gaze, Li Chu was stunned for a second, and then slowly asked, What kind of illusion is it? After saying that, he started to become alert, raised his eyes, turned his head, looked carefully, and looked around. Very robust. Li Xinyi looked at his belated look and black question marks began to appear above his head. One, two, three, four. In fact, based on her understanding of illusions, she also guessed two possibilities. First possibility. An attack like this illusion is like water flooding a golden mountain. The consciousness of both sides is water on one side and mountain on the other. If your water is enough to cover my mountains, then I will naturally be immersed in it and be at your mercy. Sometimes your water is not enough but it is enough to cover the mountainside. At this time, you have to see if I have any flaws. Maybe I was accidentally hit by the big wave you set off on the top of the mountain. And I would also be hit. But, if your splash is too small for me, it's like a child peeing at the foot of the mountain. Then it's normal that I don't feel it. But will Li Chu be that big mountain? After thinking about it, Li Xinyi still felt that the second possibility was more reliable. That means Li Chu is deaf. Chapter 15 this sword is called flat A. The current situation did not allow her to think too much. After saying a few words, she heard the dark wind suddenly turn and suddenly become stronger. The old thatched house in the courtyard was crumbling in the wind. An extremely uncomfortable cold breath came in. Lee City's eyes were stern. The resentful spirit relied on a breath of resentment to survive. And its strength was also related to it. Such a strong momentum shows that this resentful spirit is extremely resentful and may not be so easy to deal with. Li Chu looked calm and looked towards the courtyard gate. The rightful owner has arrived. A lone figure of a girl appeared there, wearing a red dress as bright as blood, with her hair hanging down, hiding her face. The thin figure looks a little distressed. When the two came to the hospital, Li Sini warned him again. Don't take action even if I don't say anything. Li Chu nodded obediently. Anyway, 
If he had money, he would be happy to learn how to exorcise evil spirits from professionals. Brother killed me. Mother killed him. Father killed mother. I killed daddy. Although I didn't see her speak, the children's song still echoed in the wind. However, Lee Sinny was accidentally tricked before, and now she is guarding the morning platform and does not give any more opportunities to take advantage of. She looked at the resentful spirit in front of her with a hint of pity in her eyes. The hallucination just now should be everything she experienced. This little girl is the biggest victim. But Lee Sinny also knew that he must not be soft. No matter how pitiful a person is, once he becomes a wraith, he is no longer pitiable. Generally speaking, the wraith will remain in the place where it died. This little girl's situation is a little special. The place of death is not far away. And her grievances are concentrated in this courtyard. So she will still come back. In the future, anyone who passes by here at night may be harmed by her. To be soft-hearted towards the evil spirit is to be cruel to more innocent people. When she thought of this, her eyes suddenly became sharp. Then, I heard a sudden question coming from the wind. Do you have a family? It was the little girl asking questions. Lee Sinny knew that this was the resentful spirit choosing a target for revenge. Wraiths don't kill everyone. Just like the previous lady, her hatred lies with men. So she only kills men. It seems that the resentment of the little girl in red lies with her family. You can't lie when answering the wraith's questions. She can hear the truest answer from your heart. So Lee Sinny shook his head. No! She is an orphan and grew up in a master's school. If you do the math carefully, the master and fellow disciples should be considered family members. But in a little girl's mind, this shouldn't count. The little girl turned to Li Chu on the other side. Do you have a family? Li Chu paused and replied. There is no more in this world. Oh! The little girl in red responded, turned around quietly, and seemed to be about to leave. The dark wind that had been roaring around for a long time also began to subside. There is no one here for whom she resents. And she is leaving. It also happens that none of them have family members. If someone answers that they do, it should be a different situation. We can't let her go, Lee Sinny said anxiously. This resentful spirit is already very powerful. If she is allowed to leave, some trouble may arise. Li Chu also had some understanding of resentment. At Shue's house the day before yesterday, he tried to use words to eliminate the eldest lady's resentment, although it failed. But if the situation were reversed, it might be a little simpler. His mind was spinning, and based on her questions, he guessed how to arouse her resentment and keep her. So he thought for a while and called out gently, little sister. The little girl in red ignored him and walked forward. Her figure gradually faded and she was about to disappear. Then Li Chu said again, Your mother is dead. Her step stopped and her figure paused. Seeing this, Li Chu knew it was effective and continued, You are an orphan. The evil wind rises again. The cold is coming. The little girl turned around and started to stir in her red dress. At this time, Li Chu added the last sentence. Everyone in your family is dead. Three consecutive qualities. Although it sounded like he was spitting out fragrance, he was just telling the truth calmly. There was a loud bang, and all the fences in front of the little girl exploded. Her resentment was exploded. Li Sini glanced at Li Chu and didn't know whether to praise him for doing a good job or blame him for saying too much. Although the resentful spirit stayed behind at this time, it had completely entered a state of rampage. Fortunately, she had already made arrangements. At the moment, looking at the red figure rushing towards the two of them, Lee Sinny held up the sword technique and shouted, Quick! Whoosh! A green stream of light carried the talisman, broke through the wind, and hit the resentful spirit. Bang! The resentful spirit let out a shrill scream, its black hair flying around, but its face was never revealed. After she was hit, a huge talisman shadow appeared in midair, imprinted on her thin body, wrapping around her like a spider web. What was beaten out was not blood, but a thick black mist. This talisman is called the Liu Jia Suppression Talisman, and it is to restrict her movements. Seeing that the blow was successful, Li Sini relaxed slightly and explained it to Li Chu. Then, there was another sword technique. Whoosh. Bang. This talisman is called the Sun Flame Talisman, and it uses the fire of the sun to burn ghosts. Bang. This talisman is called the Huangting Evil Dispelling Talisman, which is specially designed to dispel the energy of evil spirits. Bang. This talisman is called the Kuaishing Unparalleled Talisman, and it will be strangled together with the power of Gang Sha. Bang. 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 Eighteen sword-activated talismans, one after another, were like meteors, 
beating the resentful spirits in the air into a black mist, almost completely surrounding the red-clothed ghost. Li Chu was also speechless and envious. So gorgeous. So gorgeous. So majestic. The ghost is held in the sky, tossed and beaten, and black mist is sprayed out in groups, which is full of visual impact. Although I don't know why Li Sini didn't kill this resentful spirit for so long, but she should have her own reasons. I don't have much knowledge, so maybe I can't understand it. In fact, Li Sini was also murmuring in his heart. The 18 sword talismans have been completed. So why is this resentful spirit not dead yet? If it were an ordinary wraith, he might have died three times. She deployed 18 sword talismans just to be safe. In fact, she thought 7 or 8 would be enough. Although the talisman came from Chao Hian K, the green talisman sword was a magic weapon she bought herself. And it was not cheap. Unexpectedly, it was all spit here. Unexpectedly, the resentful spirit is not dead yet. Plop. The sword activating talisman's spiritual formation had finished erupting. And the control time had expired. The little girl's body fell to the center of the courtyard. Judging from how weak she was, although she was not dead, she was not far off. Li Sini was relieved. With a flick of her wrist, dazzling silver light flashed across, and a flying sword flashing with sword light appeared instantly. It stood suspended in front of her chest and was grabbed by her. Seeing Li Chu's eyes looking over, she added, This is a flying sword bracelet. Any magical weapon that has been refined can be turned into jewelry and worn on the body. Good. It was the first time Li Chu said the compliment. He really thought it was good. Carrying an iron sword every time he went out was actually very troublesome. If it weren't for his easygoing appearance. If it were an ugly Taoist priest carrying a sharp blade, he would be kicked out of many places. After hearing this, Li Sini made a beautiful sword show, walked towards the little girl, and said, This sword is called Chiyo Yu Begonia, and it is the work of Master Mo from the Sword Forging City. If it weren't for my master's relationship, I would be rich. You can't even buy it. With that said, she also walked up to the resentful spirit. Sister, don't kill me. The little girl in red suddenly got up, knelt on the ground, bit her head deeply, and cried, I'm so scared. Please, don't kill me. Okay, I will be good. Thinking of Xiao Yingying's timid appearance, Li Sini paused the sword he was about to stab, and a trace of compassion flashed in his heart. But soon, this feeling of compassion was suppressed by her. The best mercy for a resentful spirit is to let her reincarnate as soon as possible. But it was this moment of hesitation. The little girl kneeling on the ground suddenly raised her head, and the black hair covering her face spread out automatically, revealing her face. Bang! Lisani's brain was severely shaken. What a face this is. It is tender and young, but broken and rotten, like a smashed watermelon. There are black blood vessels all over the hideous skin and flesh and something strange is slowly squirming in it. It is extremely terrifying. Wrong. A flash of alarm suddenly flashed in Lisini's heart. It was still an illusion. Her face is real. But no matter how scared she is, she will not be so scared that her mind goes blank. This is still the method of resentful spirits. Lisini bit the tip of his tongue to wake himself up. But it's too late. Snapped. The little girl had already stretched out her hands towards her and her slender arm suddenly turned into a pair of five-foot-long blue ghost claws, grabbing Li Sini's neck fiercely. Oops. For a moment of suffocation, these two words flashed through Li Sini's mind. I am still too careless. I didn't expect that this resentful spirit, which had been attacked by eighteen sword talismans in turn, would still have such power. She struggled hard, but in this situation she couldn't mobilize her true energy at all, let alone compete with the strong ghost claws. On the contrary, the more he struggled, the farther his feet were from the ground. This is not the strength of a new dead spirit at all. It is like a ghost that has been practicing for hundreds of years. Just when she thought she was about to die in despair, she suddenly heard a gentle question in her ear. Miss Lee, can I take action now? Li Chu stood obediently under the eaves, watching the sudden change in the situation here. And Li Sini accidentally got hit again. Although Li Sini warned him repeatedly not to act rashly, he felt that if he did not help, this beauty might die in the line of duty. Out of politeness, he asked first. There were only two words to answer him. Help. Good. Li Chu took a step forward calmly, drew his sword boringly, and drew the sword boringly. If there was any difference from the past, it was probably because the ghost had someone in his hand this time. So he used less force with his sword, for fear of accidentally injuring Li Sini. 
The tragedy of Banjiangton cannot be repeated again. Laugh. An unpretentious sword light flashed across. The little girl in red might not have noticed the movement of his sword. But the moment the sword light fell on her body, her body began to break apart. But in the blink of an eye, it was gone. In front of this sword. All cunning tricks are meaningless. Lee Sinny fell to the ground with a bang, covering his neck and gasping for air. The cold and sunken ghost handprints on her neck did not affect her thoughts. She quickly turned her head and looked at Li Chu in surprise. The latter was sheathing his sword, as if he had just done something trivial. She is also a swordsman, so she can feel the power of this sword. When the powerful sword energy just passed by her ears, her soul was trembling involuntarily. She is indescribably strong. So she asked tremblingly, What is the name of this sword? She felt that such a powerful sword energy was definitely not a move that could be performed easily. It might even be some kind of legendary forbidden sword technique. Name? Li Chu blinked. He really hadn't considered this. But looking at Li Sini's serious eyes, he couldn't help but not answer. After all, she had just told him Fu Lu's names one by one. After thinking about it for a while, he said slowly, This sword is called Ping A. Chapter 16, The Master's Level is Hard to Estimate. Ping! Li Sini recited it again, completely unable to figure out the meaning of this name. Li Chu didn't want to say more. So he looked at Li Sini and smiled enigmatically. This is what he learned from Yu Qian. As long as she smiles like this at the person asking the question, even if she doesn't understand anything, she will feel great and then give up asking. Usually when he asked the master questions, the master would often smile like this. The difference may be that the master is really good, but he is just too lazy to explain. Sure enough, although Li Sini was confused, looking at Li Chu's unknown smile, he suddenly felt that it might involve an unspeakable secret. So she stopped asking. After dusting himself off, Li Sini breathed a sigh of relief and said, The mission has been successfully completed. Let's go back. Yes. Li Chu then set off. Walking out of the courtyard, Li Sini suddenly stopped. After the resentment disappeared, the summer night breeze gradually picked up. She looked at the empty courtyard, reached out, and pulled off the red silk that bound her hair, shook her head, and a waterfall of hair spread out. Extremely soft, Li Chu looked back at her. What's wrong? It's okay. She shook her head. Then, she lifted up the piece of red silk and let it drift away in the wind. Li Chu watched her movements and said nothing. After looking in the direction of Hong Ling Piofei for a while, she looked back, smiled, and jumped up to catch up. At this time, with her long hair hanging over her shoulders, she was a little less heroic than before, a little more feminine, and she seemed to be more approachable. Standing side by side with Li Chu, she asked with a smile, Little Taoist priest, do you like the way I tie my hair, or do you like the way I wear my hair? Intuition told Li Chu that there was a trap in this question, and he refused to answer. Li Sini asked again, Little Taoist priest, Why are you so powerful? Li Chu said seriously, I'm not great. Humph. You can cut out such strong sword energy, but you can't say it's powerful. Li Sini snorted and asked, Did you deliberately hide the fluctuations of the true energy? No. Then, Li Sini said in a long tone, do you like the way my hair is tied or the way I wear it? On a clear moonlit night, the sounds of frogs, cicadas, birds, dogs, and Li Sini are all mixed together. There is a hint of human fireworks in the noise, which dispels the haze just now. Li Chu's heart suddenly felt peaceful. There are a lot of bad things in this world. And there are also a lot of unfortunate people. But no matter what, as long as we are lucky enough to live a peaceful life, we should try to cherish it. Soon after walking to Yuhang Town, Li Sini went to the county government office and someone arranged a place for her, while Li Chu had to walk back to Shilipo. When they parted, Li Sini reluctantly pulled the little Taoist priest, giving him the opportunity to take him around Yuhang Town. Li Chu said, definitely next time. On the way back, he reflected on what he had seen today. Although the process of dealing with the resentful spirits was simple, it also taught him a vivid lesson. The world is slippery, and people's hearts are complicated. Li Sini's strength was obviously stronger than that of the resentful spirit. But because of a moment of weakness, he was almost killed by the resentful spirit. If she wasn't there, her death would have been in vain. But then I thought about it. If Li Sini did not show up today, but went to exorcise the evil spirits alone, and saw such a little girl kneeling in front of me begging for mercy, how could I not feel pity? Maybe not. If no one else was around, wouldn't it be possible that he was the one who died? Thinking about it this way, 
he couldn't help but feel scared. When he walked to the gate of Dayun Temple, he had already summarized his thoughts for the day. The Taoist scriptures say that if a person is not ruthless, he will not be able to stand firm. The next morning, the immortal master still sat under the tree in a return to nature posture, without saying a word, and as his eyes moved, from his hair to the soles of his feet, he was full of masterly demeanor. Li Chu stepped forward and said respectfully, Master, I have something to ask you. Oh! Yu Qian smiled faintly. But it doesn't matter. Li Chu sat opposite him and asked. Disciple would like to ask, What are the seven realms of heaven and man? Seven realms of heaven and man? Yu Qian paused for a moment. Why do you suddenly want to ask this? Yesterday, someone asked me which of the seven realms of heaven and man I had reached. I didn't know it all. So I was a little curious and wanted to ask the master for advice. Li Chu answered truthfully. Although Li Sini said yesterday that it was irrelevant. He was not stupid. Why should she ask about irrelevant things? So I have always had doubts in my mind. This is actually just common sense among some cultivators. Yu Qian said slowly. The seven realms of heaven and man are the seven great realms that cultivators usually go through. The so-called heaven and man are from human to heaven. These seven realms are the road to heaven. It is for forging the body. Sea of Qi. Divine union. Transforming into a dragon. All phenomena. Cutting down the decline. And reaching the sky. Among them. In the body forging realm. Cultivate steel and iron bones. In the air sea realm. Cultivate the Dantian and transform into the sea. In the divine union realm. Cultivate the immortality of the soul. In the dragon transforming realm. Cultivate the physical body and transform into a dragon. In the all-image realm, cultivate the unity of heaven and man. And in the severing decline realm, cultivate the transcendental world. A land cultivating immortal in the Tantian realm. I see. Li Chu nodded clearly. Is this the division of cultivation realms in this world? How should I calculate it? It seems that the characteristics of every realm here are not present themselves. However, my cultivation method is different from theirs and it is normal for the level classification to be different. Yu Qian saw his thoughtful expression and said, In fact, not all cultivators have to take this path. But today's mainstream cultivators, known as Qi refiners in ancient times, will advance according to the seven realms of heaven and man. Other inheritances, such as warriors, gu practitioners, wizards, etc., all have their own realm divisions. Monsters, demons, ghosts, and monsters also have their own paths to follow. So there is no need to be too rigidly bound to this. Just treat it as just a rough reference. Li Chu nodded and accepted the instruction. And said, Disciple would also like to ask, Which realm must one reach to be considered a master in the world? In fact, he has always wanted to know this question. In the final analysis, he wanted to know how far he had practiced before he could leave Novice Village and venture into the world. Yu Qian twisted his beard and smiled again. Uh-huh. It depends on your understanding of masters. In the whole world, there are only one person in the world who is born with spiritual roots and can embark on the path of spiritual practice. And 90% of those with spiritual roots will stay in the entry-level training state for life. Compared with ordinary people, they are already absolute masters. If you enter the Chi Si realm, you can be considered outstanding. If you walk in the world, you can be considered an expert. If you have a divine combination of cultivation, you will be blessed by nature. You can be a mainstay in the Jianghu sect. And you can also be in charge of a party while serving in the imperial court. Once you step into the dragon transformation realm, you can be called a famous figure in the world. And you can become famous anywhere. After transforming into a dragon, it will be a different scene. The three realms before transforming into a dragon are closer to humans. And the three realms after transforming into a dragon are closer to heaven. When you step into the realm of all phenomena, you can speak of Dharma and activate celestial phenomena, which is enough to open a mountain gate and become a sect. Ancestor, if you enter the stage of cutting decline, you can be called a powerful person in the world, which is rare in the world. As for the highest realm of Tantian, once you step into it, you will be a terrestrial immortal that can be encountered but cannot be sought. This realm can be called the pinnacle in the world. Apart from the legendary ascension, there is no other pursuit. The seven realms of heaven and man, each realm is a natural chasm, and each realm blocks many geniuses. It's like climbing a mountain. One peak is higher than the other. Anyone can be said to be a master. But there will always be someone higher than you. People, 
Li Chu was quite shocked when he heard this. It turns out that the world of cultivators is so vast. Another curiosity soon arose in his mind. Master, I dare to ask you a question, he asked tentatively. Master, I wonder what state you are in now. The realm of being a teacher? Yu Qian said with a mysterious smile. What do you think? Master had so many earth-shattering deeds in his early years. So he must be at least in the dragon transformation realm. Right. Li Chu didn't dare to guess too high for fear that Yu Qian wouldn't be able to get off the stage. So he started guessing from a level that he thought was relatively low for the master. Yu Qian smiled and shook her head. Could it be Wan Qiang? Li Chu asked again. Yu Qian kept smiling and shook her head. Could it be that the master is already a great master in the realm of annihilation? Li Chu's eyes sparkled. Yu Qian smiled again and shook his head. Ah, oh, Li Chu was very excited in his heart. Is the master already in the realm of heaven? A land god? Ha uh ha. -huh. Yu Qian laughed. And just when Li Chu thought he guessed it right, he shook his head again. Huh? Li Chu was greatly puzzled. None of these were true. But if the master was only a cultivator in the first three realms, how could he have such grace? Yu Qian had a non-committal expression on his face. He stared at Li Chu with his eyes and showed that familiar and unpredictable smile. This smile made Li Chu a little confused. But he didn't dare to ask again. The air was quiet for a while. And then Yu Qian slowly said, What we cultivate is the state of mind, not the state of the body. If we stick to our cultivation, what's the use of moving mountains and seas? Disciple, don't be obsessed with appearance. Li Chu nodded hurriedly and said, Disciple understands. In fact, he didn't understand it at all. He only understood one thing. And that was that the master's level was definitely not something he could estimate. Chapter 17 The Wild Fox Pays Homage Not long after, it started to rain lightly. When he arrived at the front hall, Li Chu unexpectedly found that a pilgrim who had arrived early was already bowing down there. It is slender and has white fur, lying there like a fluffy snowball. A pair of front paws are clasped together under the head, and the eyes are closed tightly, as if praying for something. The person kneeling in the hall to worship the patriarch of the three Qing dynasties was actually a wild fox. Li Chu did not disturb it. All animals have spirits and should be treated equally. After a long time, the white fox opened its eyes and looked at Li Chu with its big, warm and shining eyes, showing a hint of gratitude. Li Chu nodded at it. The white fox seemed to see that Li Chu didn't pay attention to him. So he relaxed, stood up, spread his paws piously, and then bent down to kowtow seriously. Repeat this process. Three times of worship and nine times of kowtow. After paying homage, it took another deep look at Li Chu before turning and leaving. The thick tail is attached to the back, but its movements are extremely flexible. It can disappear without a trace in a few clicks. Like a ray of white light. There was rain in the courtyard and it was a little muddy, but it passed by gently and skillfully without any mud on it. Although Li Chu found it novel, he had also seen a lot of strange things during this period. So he was not too surprised. During lunch, he mentioned this matter to Yu Qian. The wild fox pays homage. It seems that it is about to transform into another form. It comes to seek blessings from the patriarch of the three purities. We may see it every day in the future. Yu Qian said leisurely. Transformation is the first big hurdle for monsters on the road to spiritual practice. If they don't transform, they will always be mountain spirits and wild monsters with the body of a wild beast, and will not be protected by God. It is necessary to undergo the baptism of heavenly tribulation and successfully transform into a human body. Human beings are the spiritual beings of all things, and cultivating the human body has many benefits. Is it okay? Daring to come and worship Sanqing means that it is also a righteous demon and has never done any evil deeds to harm others. Let it go! In the future, it will transform into a successful person and be friendly to people. This is also a meritorious deed for us. It's not easy for a monster to transform into a monster. Yu Qian sighed with emotion. Some monsters who are born with a lack of spirituality, such as plants, trees, mountains and rocks, may become spirits, and it may take thousands of years for them to have an opportunity to transform. The fox tribe is naturally psychic and can transform into human beings within a hundred years. But at the same time, the risk of facing a catastrophe will also be greatly increased. At least 50% of monsters will die in the catastrophe when they transform. Therefore, there have always been many monsters in the mountains and fields that have remained in their true form even though they have passed through the years. They just don't dare to experience the thunder tribulation. 
But if you don't change your form and your realm is blocked, you won't be able to increase your lifespan. Those who accept the tribulation usually find some ways to increase the success rate. For example, worshipping Buddha in a temple or worshipping gods in a temple are common methods that may increase your luck. But they cannot play a decisive role. In order to successfully transform, some monsters will join the immortal sect or follow those with great supernatural powers. Monsters protected by sex or great powers will receive a lot of support when going through the tribulation, and their chances of success will be greatly increased. As the saying goes, it is better to enjoy the shade by leaning against a big tree. Among the twelve immortal sects, there is a special sect called Jum Jum, which uses the method of sealing passed down from ancient times to attract monsters. For monsters that have been enthroned by the Chi Refiner, the probability of successfully surviving the tribulation can be as high as 80%. However, the conditions for being granted the title of Zheng Zheng are very harsh. All monsters who want to be granted the title must sign a blood contract and transform into slaves in the sect for hundreds of years. After a hundred years, you can be free. Most monsters are born and raised and like to live an unrestrained life. However, in order to survive the catastrophe, countless people surrender to the Fengjing sect as slaves, which shows how attractive the transformation is to monsters. It rains continuously. So no one comes to the Taoist temple. In fact, not many people come on a sunny day. Yu Qian then told Li Chu more. Li Chu was fascinated by the sound of raindrops. The Fengjin sect sends monsters to Chaoda City every year to offer sacrifices to the dignitaries of the court in exchange for privileges that other immortal sects do not have. So in the past few years, their power has become stronger and stronger, and they have recruited more and more disciples. The monsters who worship the sect there are more and more of them and they are getting better and better. Yu Qian looked into the distance, twirled his beard, and said with a look of disdain, I don't know how good my cultivation is, but I do have a certain way of doing business. Send a monster? Li Chu turned his head, confused. He, Yu Qian smiled. What treasures have you not seen among the big shots in Chaoda City? But I can't stand it. A gust of wind carried the raindrops into the kitchen. It was cool and quite comfortable. Cat your girl. Vixen. Mermaid, Yu Qian muttered. Who cannot be tempted? Li Chu blinked. Cat, fox, fish. There are also bunny girls and butterfly fairies. They are popular one after another. Recently, it seems that those with wings are popular. When I was young, I traveled around and caught up with the popularity of Femme Fatale. In those years, among the powerful and powerful people in Chaga, who didn't keep a snake? Jing, I'm too embarrassed to go out. Hey. Li Chu shook off the rainwater on his body. He has always felt that keeping snakes as pets is quite perverted. Yu Qian seemed to understand his thoughts, and made a wave motion in the air with her arms. It's not a snake. It's a snake in human form. Its body is soft and slippery, as if it has no bones. Its tongue is eight inches long, he explained, and added. It's also forked. At this time, Li Chu heard footsteps in the front yard through the wind and rain in the backyard, and he stood up. Yu Qian didn't hear the footsteps. He didn't know who was coming until he saw his apprentice getting up. But he heard it. And when Li Chu left, he was still muttering. Snake letters have branches. Right. The implication is probably that this is nothing unusual. It's not unusual for a snake to fork in its mouth. But when it becomes a human being, it's not unusual for it to fork again. Looking at Li Chu's back, Yu Qian sighed slightly. This apprentice is good at everything. Respectful. Filial. Polite. And looks like me. It's just that my brain is a little weird. It wasn't this serious when I was a kid. And I thought it would get better when I grow up. But who knew it would get worse in the past two years? Taoist priest, you pondered. Is it time to find a match for him? It was just across the yard. And Li Chu didn't bother to hold an umbrella. The needlework of the Taoist robe was dense and the fabric was hard. When we arrived at the front hall, there were not many water droplets on the body. And all fell off with a shake. It's just the lust paved in the backyard. And my shoes are a bit dirty. He glanced down. And the pilgrims who came also saw it. So he smiled and said, I'll pay for it later, and pave your backyard with blue bricks. Li Chu looked up at him and nodded. The visitor was sitting on a futon, wearing a brocade mysterious dress, a belt inlaid with flowers and jade, and a collar embroidered with gold thread. He also looks pretty good, with thick eyebrows and big eyes, fair complexion, and a rather heroic face. This man is the seventh young master of the Wang family in Yuhang town, named Wang Longji. 
and he is also an old acquaintance of Li Chu. Wang Longqi is considered a kinder person among the local rich second generation. Although he is not motivated, he is not naughty either. With his family background and appearance, he has always been popular with girls. He met Li Chu because of the girl. Chapter 18 Can This World Get Better? By the way, it was a stormy night half a year ago. Wang Longqi went to a brothel in Hangzhou to attend a gathering of friends and friends. He played until midnight before riding home on horseback. On the way, it suddenly started to rain heavily. There happened to be a pavilion in front of him. So he went in to take shelter from the rain. Who would have thought that there was actually a young girl living alone in that building? Who was very charming and beautiful. This girl was beautiful and enthusiastic. She not only invited him into her home to bathe and change clothes, but also asked him to drink sugar water. Wang Longqi had just had a wild night in a brothel, and he was like a saint, without any evil thoughts in his heart. But as soon as he entered the girl's bedroom, he seemed to have lost his soul. And somehow, he got into a fight with the girl. When he woke up again, he found that he was sleeping next to a deserted grave. He turned pale with fright, and he clearly remembered that the girl asked him to marry her at this time tomorrow. There were rumors about the ghost bride in Yuhang Town in the past few days. It was said that the ghost bride specially attracted young men to visit her grave. After they had sex with her, they had to marry her. Otherwise, she would come to kill the other man's family. But how can a living person marry a dead person? The dead cannot be resurrected. So the living can only be allowed to die. Nowadays, two or three middle-aged men have died mysteriously. And the Yaman is also investigating this mysterious case. Wang Longchi thought that he must have met the ghost bride. So he hurried to find Chao Tai Fook. Zhou Dafu brought him to see Li Chu. The next night, Li Chu went to the ghost bride's grave with him. As expected, the ghost bride appeared. She was wearing a phoenix crown and harem, riding a rat carriage, dressed as a bride, and floated over. The moment she landed, she looked at Wang Longchi, then at Li Chu, and then, without hesitation, he said to Li Chu, you finally came to marry me. Wang Long didn't know whether he should be happy or worried on July 1st. The story ends with Li Chu's ruthless sword. Wang Longqi made friends with Li Chu, although they didn't meet often. In his heart, Li Chu saved his life and was definitely his lifelong friend. In Li Chu's heart, Wang Longqi donated a large amount of incense to the Yun Temple and was definitely his good friend. This good friend came to the temple in a hurry on such a rainy day. Wang Longqi knew Li Chu's character. So he didn't talk nonsense. He got straight to the point. I came to see you this time because I recently fell in love with a girl. Li Chu subconsciously asked, Is it a human or a ghost? Of course it's humans. Wang Longqi ran away as if on conditioned reflex. Angrily. I've always liked humans. That time with the ghost was an accident. As he spoke, he felt that his reaction was a bit big. So he smiled sheepishly, sat back, and said aggrievedly, you don't know what I've been through in the past six months. You really can't blame him for being so sensitive. After he slept with the ghost bride last time, it took him a month to raise his young energy at home to fully recover. Originally, I was full of joy to return to the world. But when he went out to play again, he found that his incident had been spread out for some reason. Whenever you go out, there will be someone pointing fingers behind you. It's okay for the friends of the undead knight, who are close friends in life and death, to make fun of themselves with these nicknames. The most desperate thing is that he found that the girls in the brothel began to dislike him. For this reason, he even eavesdropped on the whispers of a red shopkeeper and an old madam in Chunminlu. That person has been slept with by a ghost. Isn't it unlucky? Absolutely. If a person eats something that a ghost has eaten, wouldn't it be the same as stealing a tribute from a grave? Can it still be cured? Hey, stop talking. You're so scared. Whoever wants to go, I won't do his business. It's a pity that such a rich young man was ruined by ghosts. Alas, who will dare to want this unclean man in the future? Humph. If a fly doesn't bite a seamless egg, it must be because he was so fancy and dressed up in the middle of the night that he was targeted by the female ghost. Hearing these words, Master Wang Chi was so angry that he was shaking all over. His whole body was sweating in cold weather. His hands and feet were cold. And tears flowed down unsatisfactorily. Do you think this world can get better? After many days, he still couldn't help but burst into tears when he recalled it. Wronged, Li Chu listened to his complaints, nodded, and then looked at him calmly. Wang Longchi's wet eyes widened and he said angrily, Don't you sympathize with me? 
I haven't touched a woman for half a year. Li Chu nodded, and then continued to look at him calmly. Wang Longchi wanted to say something more. But looking at Li Chu's handsome face, it seemed that the words, 18 years, were written all over it. The sadness and anger gradually disappeared. You are a waste of natural resources. If I looked like you, those brothel girls would never dislike me. Wang Longchi muttered, paused, and then whispered, I guess I will sleep with a female ghost. Okay. Li Chu said expressionlessly, It's time for you to tell me why you came. Oh, I almost forgot. Wang Longchi was too involved in this rare opportunity to express his feelings. He retracted his thoughts and started talking again. I am forced to withdraw from the world. If you think about it carefully, I have had enough fun these years. And it's time to find an honest girl to get married. But it's easy to play. But it's not so easy to get married. My Wang family is one of the richest families in Yuhang town. The real wife I want to marry must come from a scholarly family. Be virtuous and virtuous. Be beautiful and intelligent. And be loyal. Filial. And loving. That's all. I searched and searched and searched. Hey. I actually met one the day before yesterday. Mentioning this. Wang Longchi's eyes regained their sparkle. I was astonished the first time I saw her. Her background. Appearance. Conversation. And temperament were all perfect that I had never seen before. I made up my mind at that time that I would not marry anyone other than her in this life. But? What a shame that Zhao Liankai insisted on interfering with her. But he actually fell in love with this girl. He doesn't show off his own virtue by peeing like a dog. Yet he dares to compete with me. In Chunmenlu, he was good at doing this. In Hangzhou City, I also let him do it that time. Wang Longji became angrier as he talked. Zhao Liankai was none other than the young master of the Zhao family. A wealthy family in Yuhang town. The reason why Wang Longji just said that the Wang family is one of the best, rather than unique, is because of the existence of the Zhao family. The Wang family counts one, and the Zhao family counts two. The Zhao family counts one, and the Wang family counts two. He digressed from the topic to recount the grievances between the two. Li Chu put his hands into his sleeves boredly. Seeing this, Wang Longji hurriedly sat upright and continued. In the morning, he and I bumped into each other on a narrow road. He actually mentioned that I was deceived by ghosts again. Hit someone without slapping someone in the face. And scold someone without exposing one's shortcomings. That guy it's really hateful. I almost got into a fight with him. If someone hadn't stopped me. Ha ha. I guess everyone in his family would start playing Swana now. Don't think I'm bragging. Back then. Li Chu frowned impatiently. We made a bet out of anger. Wang Longchi hurriedly returned to the topic. Isn't there a ghost building at the Lu family archway? His family has rented out the land. And the ghost building has always been there without moving. He made a bet with me that we would both go and stay in the ghost building for one night. Let's see who gets it. I can escape intact. Whoever dares or is afraid to run away will lose. From now on, he will not be allowed to snatch any girls from the other party. And if he sees them on the road, he will have to stay away. Then he gave in. It wasn't me who gave in first. So he added another condition. We can both bring someone in with us. Naturally. I thought of you first. Li Chu. Are we friends? Wang Longchi held Li Chu's sleeve. Only you can help me now. Li Chu calmly took out his sleeves. Lu family ghost house. As a person from Yuhang town. Of course, he has heard of this famous place. Unexpectedly. These two rich second generations were going there to commit suicide. It feels a bit troublesome. Wang Longchi saw his hesitant expression and immediately said, Please help me this time. I will renovate the entire Dune Temple for you and double the size of the Taoist Temple. Li Chu raised his head and said slowly, This is not about money. We are friends. Chapter 19 All the dangers in the world are on this face. Zhao Lianchen looked at the small building in the distance that still had a hint of gloom under the sunny day. His expression was very indifferent. And he even sneered in his heart. It's nothing more than idle talk in the countryside. What great evil thing could there be? Is it worthy of me to take action on such a trivial matter? He wanted to scold Zhao Liankai loudly like this. But he gave him too much. If calculated carefully, the two should be cousins. And Zhao Liankai seems to be a few months older. In terms of genealogy, Zhao Liankai was born in a branch of the Zhao family who was assigned to Hangzhou to manage business. And Zhao Liankai was the eldest son of the main family member. No matter what, Zhao Liankai's status should be higher than Zhao Liankai's. But this matter has changed since Zhao Lianchen was diagnosed with spiritual roots when he was six years old. 
There is only one person in a million who possesses spiritual roots. And the entire Zhao family has only produced this cultivation seed for decades. He immediately became the key training target of the entire family. The principal spent a lot of resources to buy him an opportunity to participate in the Zhengdao sect's general election. The Zhengdao sect is one of the 12 immortal sects. One of the top sects in the world. As long as you can get started, your future will go without saying. But the selected elder only used two sentences to kill Zhao Liangchen's future. He glanced at it with disgust, touched it with disgust, smacked his lips, and said, This kid has average bones and is too ugly. Let's forget it. At a young age, Zhao Liangchen experienced for the first time what a bolt from the blue meant. Fortunately, he had family support behind him, and the Zhao family asked everywhere to send him to the local Feilai sect in Hangzhou. The Feilai sect is also considered a famous sect in Hangzhou prefecture, with quite a lot of background. It is considered the leader among the sects that are two levels lower than the Twelve Immortal sect. Zhao Liangchen secretly made up his mind from the day he entered the school to make the people of the Zhengdao sect regret it. Thirty years in the east of Hadong. Thirty years in the west of Hishi. Don't bully young people into being ugly. So he worked hard in the Feilai sect. Practicing while others were practicing. Practicing while others were eating. Practicing while others were naked. And practicing while others were sleeping. Day and night. Without interruption for more than ten years. Relying on such a tenacious Taoist heart. He became the fastest growing person among this generation of disciples. In his weak years. His cultivation at the peak of the Qixi realm was enough to dwarf some people in the group even if he was brought back to the Zhengdao sect. But. When it came time for Feilai sect to select the chief disciple, he thought he had no suspense, but was told that selecting the chief disciple was more than just cultivation. Several elders discussed it behind closed doors, and finally selected the junior brother, who was only at the early stage of the Qixi realm. Because the younger brother is handsome, Zhao Liangchen was stunned. The master advised him that the chief disciple is not only the best disciple, but also the face of a sect and the representative of the sect walking in the world. You are indeed not suitable. The master said it tactfully. But that's what it means. You are ugly. The younger junior brother was already attracting much attention. After becoming the chief disciple, after several exorcisms, carefully arranged by the sect, he quickly rose to prominence, gained a large number of fans, and became the most popular new star of the immortal sect in Hangzhou. As expected, the reputation of Feilai sect also improved accordingly. The more he stood out, the angrier Zhao Liangchen felt. What's wrong with being ugly? What's wrong with being ugly? Are you ugly enough to eat your rice? He can only fight against all this by practicing harder. He believes that one day, he will use his strength to make those who underestimated him regret. No matter how you say it, they are cultivators. And the most important thing is to pursue the great road and slay demons. Can those handsome people still rely on their faces to ward off evil spirits? Snort. Cousin! Cousin? Zhao Liangkai barked twice. Only then did Zhao Liangchen get out of his thoughts and look at his cousin. Zhao Liangkai has a big face, a pair of mung bean eyes, a garlic nose, and his face is half pockmarked and half acne. Zhao Liangchen gets very angry every time he sees his appearance. That's the most annoying part. He looks almost exactly like me. Yes, although these two are cousins, they look like twins. The difference may be that due to long-term practice. Zhao Liangchen's energy and energy are very full. His expression and posture are also more indifferent. And the overall feeling is ugly and cold. But Zhao Liangkai spent all day doing things. And he was already exhausted. He looked even more vain and ugly. What's the matter? Zhao Liangchen asked coldly. What I want to say is that we not only have to deal with the evil spirits in the ghost building. The boy from the Wang family will come soon. Cousin, do you have any magical powers that can help me deal with him? That is, in case there are no ghosts in the building. We have to scare him out too. Zhao Liangkai said with a mean smile. Yes. Zhao Liangchen nodded. I just caught a few imps a while ago, which are more than enough to deal with mortals. But, he changed the topic. Since you said that person is also from a wealthy family, he should be able to hire practitioners. If he is protected by practitioners, these small tricks may not be easy to use. Hey, don't worry. His Wang family doesn't have the relationship we have. Zhao Liangkai came closer and said, I guess he just hired a nearby Taoist monk or something. And he might as well be a charlatan. Even if he can find a cultivator, can he still be more powerful than you? Cousin? Zhao Liangkai knew that his cousin liked compliments and would lick him within three words. 
But what he said is true. Zhao Liangchen is indeed a master in the world of Hangzhou Prefecture. To be stronger than him, you must be in the Divine Harmony Realm. A strong man of that level cannot be easily summoned. Zhao Liangchen nodded slightly and agreed. When Zhao Liangkai saw this, he seemed to be encouraged and immediately shook off his tongue. If you ask me, our Zhao family must have smoked from the ancestral graves to have a figure like you. Cousin, I have never seen a more talented cultivator than you in the entire Hangzhou prefecture. I estimate that the entire Halua, there are not many people in the dynasty. Ha ha. In the Xianmen Imperial Examination next year, people at the same time as you will be really miserable. I am worried about them. Zhao Liangchen wanted to maintain his stern image, but he couldn't help but raise the corners of his mouth. He hadn't heard such a compliment in a long time. In Feilai sect, he had never had a good relationship with his fellow disciples. However, before, with his cultivation, he was able to ride on top of Juechen. But there were still two licking dogs behind him. Unexpectedly, after the chief disciple lost the election, those people not only kept their tongues, but also often laughed at him in front of others and behind him. He was silent for a year because of this. He wanted to slap them in the face after breaking through. But he was stuck at the bottleneck and never made any progress. This time, in addition to receiving a large reward from Zhao Liangkai, I also wanted to relax. Now it seems that Zhao Liangkai can still make him happy. Zhao Liangkai was licking passionately when he saw two figures flashing out from Po's side. A man wearing brocade clothes, thick eyebrows and big eyes. A blue Taoist robe. Otherworldly. He suddenly changed his expression and sneered. Wang Longqi, you really dare to come? It was Wang Longqi and Li Chu who came here. When Wang Longqi heard him choke, he naturally did not suffer any loss. Since some people think that he has a long life. Of course, I want to see how he died. Okay, let's go in and see who died. Whoever is cowardly is your grandson. The two of them choked each other for a while. And Wang Longqi and Li Chu also came closer. In order to maintain his stern image, Zhao Liangchen stood with his hands behind his hands and looked into the distance. Until then, he slowly turned his head and swept his indifferent eyes over the faces of Wang Longqi and Li Chu. His pupils suddenly shrank sharply. His eyes seemed to be stuck in a swamp, and his facial features froze at the same time. Sluggish. Zhao Liangkai, who was beside him, realized something was wrong and hurriedly nudged him with his elbow and whispered, Cousin? Zhao Liangchen regained consciousness for a moment, but still stared at Li Chu, his lower lip trembling involuntarily. Li Chu had a calm expression. His eyes were as indifferent as him. His temperament was as cold as his, and his overall feeling was handsome and cold. As for why Zhao Liangchen was staring at him, he didn't care. Every time he goes out on the street, there are anywhere between 180 people staring at him. You can't just go up and ask what you're looking at. Snort! After a long while, Zhao Liangchen snorted heavily, as if he had been wronged in some way, turned around and walked away. Zhao Liangkai hurriedly approached. Cousin! What's wrong with you? It's okay! Zhao Liangchen shook his head. He suppressed the excitement in his heart. But he still couldn't help but a voice roared crazily in his mind. What was probably the reason? Yes. Why? At this moment Zhao Liangchen felt. All the dangers in the world are on this face. Chapter 20 Let's go in together. Looking down from the hillside, you can see that the entire Liujia archway has been abandoned. Only a few dilapidated wooden fences of houses are left in the former village. When the wind blows, the old houses make an overwhelmed sound. There are many villages with the word, Lu, around Yuhang town, such as Daliu village, Shaolu village, Shangliu village, Xiaoliu village, Lujiaji, etc. But if you ask further, you will find that there is almost no one named Lu in the whole town. Even if there is, it must have been moved in recent years. All this is because there was once a Lu family that was the largest family in Yuhang town. It had a long history. Many ethnic groups and some members of the family were officials in Chaoga. But such a wealthy family in the countryside was somehow involved in a major rebellion 70 or 80 years ago. All the people living here in Liujia Archway were direct descendants of the family. And they were all killed at that time. In the surrounding villages, all the people named Lu were exiled to the north to guard the border. Overnight, families were confiscated and their families exterminated. That scene may have been so cruel that some elderly people still tremble when they think about it. You can imagine how much of a shadow it had on their teenage years. From that day on, the small building where the owner of the Lu family lived became a gloomy and haunted house. 
It was rumored that anyone who entered this small building would not survive the night. And an adult from Chao Eon K came to deal with it. But that adult also left with a dejected face after one night, leaving only a message that no one was allowed to approach, because there are no residents here, and everyone knows that this place is haunted, so they will not take the initiative to approach it. So the Yaman just issued a notice and did not send people to guard it at all times. No one could have imagined that in a few decades two rich second generations would come here to seek death out of jealousy. After the brief encounter, Zhao Lianchen felt that his Taoist heart had been hit hard. So he turned his back and calmed down for a long time. Zhao Liankai tugged on his sleeve. Cousin, look at the pretty boy Wang Longji found. How is his cultivation? Huh? Zhao Liankai raised his head and was suddenly awakened. That's right. As a cultivator, as long as you are stronger than him. That's all right. Thinking like this, he turned around and came to the two of them again. Without looking at Wang Longji, he stared straight at Li Chu and asked, I'm from the Feilai sect. Xiao Lianchen. I wonder which mountain and temple this fellow Taoist practices in. Although he thought this person was a bit strange. Li Chu still replied politely. The Yun Temple on Shirley Slope. Li Chu. She. Zhao Liankai sneered. He turned his back to Zhao Lianchen and said. It's a broken Taoist temple here. There is an old Taoist priest leading a young Taoist priest. This one is probably the younger one. Zhao Liangchen's eyes also regained a look of confidence. I carefully inspected him just now, and there was no real energy fluctuation on his body. He is indeed a charlatan. Zhao Liangkai pounded his right fist on his left palm, looking very happy. Okay, I will test his cultivation level. Zhao Liangchen sneered and turned around. When he said this, he meant to teach Li Chu a lesson on the spot and reveal his identity as a liar. Is there anything better than slapping a pretty boy in the face? In his world, there should be no more. Hey, cousin. Don't worry. Zhao Liankai grabbed him. What? Zhao Liangchen looked at him sideways. If you expose him now, won't Wang Longji be afraid first? What should he do if he breaks the contract? Zhao Liankai said with a bad smile. Let's let him enter the ghost house with this liar first. And wait until tonight to slowly concoct them. Ha ha. Okay. Zhao Liangchen nodded. Li Chu stood there, watching the two of them turn around and whisper at every turn, feeling a little weird. So he said to Wang Longqi, Do you think these two people are weird? Wang Longqi tapped his head with his index finger. The Zhao family has always had trouble here. After a while, Zhao Liankai turned around again and said, Wang Longqi, let's not talk nonsense. Now, hurry in before it gets dark. As agreed, we will each choose a room to spend the night there. Who runs away? Even if you lose. Okay, let's see if you still dare to steal your wife from me after tonight. Wang Longqi snorted coldly. Are all women your wife? Crazy. I don't care about others. Miss Gong Sun and I are already half together. When did it happen? Why didn't I know? I've already agreed. So that's half of it. Now we just have to wait for her to agree. And the other half will be there. If I weren't afraid of letting you taste the sweetness, I would really want to wake you up. The two people were bickering and were about to walk down the hillside when they suddenly heard someone shouting from the top of the hill. Stop. Looking around, I saw a tall figure standing there. She was wearing a blue and white long skirt and a fringed blouse with a double-breasted blouse. She had picturesque features and her skin was like snow. She stood in the breeze with her clothes flying in the air, giving her a sense of independence from the world. Li Chu had seen this person before, and he turned out to be Gong Sun Ro. Then Wang Longchi smiled. Miss Gong Sun, why are you here? Zhao Liankai also suddenly showed an ugly and enthusiastic smile. Oh, Miss Gong Sun, are you here to see me? Hey, why are you here, little sister? Behind Gong Sun Ro was a little girl who looked to be 15 or 16 years old. She wore a girlish bun and a flowing green dress. She was quite smart and cute, but compared to Gong Sun Ro, she was a little immature. So she was not noticed at first. She jumped up and down and came to the crowd before Gong Sun Relay, and said with a smile, Brother, Cousin, I told Sister Gong Sun about you, and she seems to be very angry. Oh, aren't you causing trouble? Zhao Liang Sai's expression changed drastically. Gong Sun walked over, and her expression was indeed not very good. Her brows were lightly knitted, and there was anger in her eyes. But beauty is beauty. Even if she looks angry like this, she has a unique charm. As she walked towards them, 
Her eyes flickered back and forth between Wang Longqi and Zhao Liangkai, as if she was about to say something. But she quickly caught a glimpse of another figure. His expression suddenly froze. Gong Sun Ro blinked twice quickly, as if by accident or surprise. Little Tao is priestly. With this greeting, the anger she had just brewed instantly turned into uncontrollable joy. Just like the ice and snow melted and the clouds dispersed. Li Chu nodded towards her and said H. Lo. Miss Gong Sun. Wang Longji's heart skipped a beat. He was so familiar with this scene. This was how the ghost bride fell in love with her. And he couldn't help but secretly thought, This is bad. He smiled stiffly. Li Chu. Miss Gong Sun. Do you know each other? Slightly intertwined. Little Taoist Master Li is my savior. The two said at the same time. After hearing Li Chu's answer, Gong Sun Ro glanced at him. As if he was a little hurt. Li Chu Yun is calm and gentle. No matter how stupid Zhao Liankai was, he could still feel that something was wrong in the atmosphere. Why did Miss Gong Sun seem to forget everyone else as soon as she saw this little Taoist priest? He hurriedly asked, Miss Gong Sun, why did you come to see me? He bit, find me. Hard. Gong Sun Ro came back to his senses and then stared at the two of them again, saying, I heard from Xiao Miao that you two made a bet to spend the night in this ghost building because of me? Uh. Wang Longqi hesitated and pointed at Zhao Liankai. He suggested it. Zhao Liankai immediately said anxiously, He was the one who provoked me first. Snort. Hearing the woman in front of them snort softly, they immediately dared not make any more noise and lowered their heads like two trained dogs. Gong Sun Ro originally wanted to scold them. His father had just taken office as the magistrate of Yuhan County, and they came here to seek death. If something happened to the young masters of the two largest families in the town, wouldn't it cause big trouble for my father? What's more, they claim that they made the bet because of themselves. If something happened, someone might gossip about them. It would be fine if the rumors about the Lu family's ghost house were false. But if they were true, I couldn't imagine the consequences. She came here this time to stop them resolutely. But she raised her eyes and looked at Li Chu in front of her. And her heart suddenly moved. Then I heard Gong Sun Ro say in a firm tone, Since you said you came here because of my bet, Okay, then I will go in with you. Ah? Chapter 21 No Fighter Ghost From a distance, the Lu family ghost house doesn't seem very big. But when you get closer, you realize that this four-story attic occupies a fairly large area. But it's just exquisitely designed and doesn't show off from the outside. There are more than ten rooms arranged around each floor. There is a complete awning and net bag in the center of the patio. The upper part catches rainwater and the lower part prevents children upstairs from falling completely different from the dilapidation of the entire Lu family archway outside. This building seems to be quite well preserved. Decades of wind and rain have not damaged a single door or window, leaving not a trace of stain. This in itself is also a strange thing. The girl who came with Gong Sun Ro was named Zhao Xiaomia, and she was Zhao Liang Tsai's half-sister. She tugged on Gong Sun Ro's clothes and kept begging, Sister Gong Sun, please, please let me come with you. Gong Sun Ro was unmoved and just shook his head lightly. If you come out to play with me, then I will be responsible for you. The situation inside is unknown. What if there is danger? Zhao Liangkai also wanted to let Zhao Xiaomi go home. But Zhao Xiaomi never dumped him. When he saw him opening his mouth, he glared at him. And Zhao Liangkai immediately shut his mouth. Zhao Xiaomi is not afraid of him. He is afraid of Zhao Xiaomi. He was fooling around outside and he didn't know how many things were caught in the hands of this sister. The elders in the family also doted on her. If she complained, she would be able to live without food. Zhao Xiaomu continued to act coquettishly. If there is any danger, wouldn't you be the same? That's right. Wang Longqi intervened and advised. Miss Gong Sun, otherwise you two should not come here. This is indeed not a good place. Gong Sun Ro looked at him, but actually looked past him at Li Chu next to him, and smiled lightly. I'm not afraid. Zhao Xiaomi rolled her eyes. Sister Gong Sun, think about it. After entering, they can share a room with two people, but you can only sleep in a room by yourself. How terrible. There is no one to take care of you. Just in case. Those ghosts specialize in bullying people who are alone. What should you do? Gong Sun Ro pondered for a moment, as if he still didn't want to agree, but didn't say anything else. Zhao Xiaomi smiled and hugged her arm directly. You can't leave me. Zhao Liankai was silently making plans in his mind. It seemed that Miss Gong Sun was still afraid. Hee <laughs> hee. It's easier to handle if you know you're afraid. 
in such an environment. If I use some small tricks to scare her, wouldn't she take the initiative to jump into my arms? Gong Sun Ro glanced at Li Chu's side face again, and her heart skipped a beat. I also thought, in such an environment, if I was afraid, could I justifiably throw myself into Taoist priest Li's arms? Wang Longqi was a little closer to Gong Sun Ro, and he could smell the faint fragrance at the tip of his nose, and his mind was swayed. I also began to think, in such an environment, how can I make Miss Gong Sun throw herself into my arms instead of someone else's? These people had their own thoughts. Only Zhao Lianchen and Li Chu were calm and composed. One was ugly, and the other was handsome, maintaining their own style. Everyone first walked around the open space on the first floor and found that not only were there no snakes, insects, rats, or ants in this building, there was not even a single plant. The green bricks in the open space have been eroded by so many years of rain and are slippery without a trace of moss. Only then did Zhao Lianchen speak. The solitary Yin does not exist. The Yin energy in this building is too strong, and the Yang energy does not exist. It seems that the theory of ghosts is not false. After saying that, he looked at Li Chu coldly. Ordinary charlatans should be looking for excuses to run away by now. Right? Li Chu didn't look at him at all. Just nodded in agreement. In fact, before he even entered, he felt that the Yin energy in this small building was stronger than the mass graves in Chilipo. It would be strange if there weren't some ghosts living in this place. But since the ghost here has never left, it shouldn't be a powerful character. His judgment had a certain basis. Because most of the earthbound ghosts he met were indeed low in ghosts. Such as lantern monsters and wraiths. But it doesn't make sense. Because for many cultivators, the resentful spirits are already considered powerful. After looking up and down, Zhao Liangkai pointed to a room and said to Gong Sun Ro, Miss Gong Sun, according to my observation, this room is the best room in the building. It is spacious and clean, and it is close to the door. It's on the second floor, and there are cortices outside. If there's any emergency, you can just jump out and you won't be hurt. Gong Sun Ro nodded. Noncommittal. Wang Longji said, So you have been paying attention to the door. It seems that you have been thinking of escaping. Huh? I'm thinking about Miss Gong Sun. Then you make excuses and say you want to live next door to Miss Gong Sun so that you can escape easily. Right. Wang Longchi sneered. You? You're talking nonsense. Zhao Liang Tsai's little thought was exposed by him. And his face suddenly turned red. Okay. Then you dare to live on the highest fourth floor. The place farthest from the stairs? Wang Longchi pointed to the heights. Why not? Zhao Liang Kai said loudly. Okay. Then we'll live next door to Miss Gong Sun. Wang Longchi turned around and rushed to push the door open. Gong Sun Ro originally did not agree to live in the room he chose. But when he saw that Li Chu and Wang Longchi had entered the next door, he smiled, nodded to Zhao Liang Kai, and walked in gently. Zhao Liang Kai was stunned for a few seconds before he realized that he seemed to have been tricked. He looked at Zhao Liang Chen aggrievedly. Cousin, you have to make the decision for me. Ha uh ha. -huh. Zhao Lianchen looked at the darkening sky above his head and sneered. Let them go. The moon is full tonight. But for some reason, when I look at the moon from the Lu family ghost tower, it always seems to be shrouded in a layer of gray mist. No matter how big the moon is, it has no brilliance. The room was spotless. The bed, screen, and table were all clean and tidy. As if someone cleaned them every day. No matter where my hands touched. They were cold and had an eerie smell. The more I smelled it, the more it made me feel a little nauseous. Zhao Liangkai couldn't help but feel the hair on his back as he sat on the chair. As night fell, the uneasiness in his heart became more intense. He couldn't help but said, Cousin, do you think this place is cleaned by ghosts every day? Zhao Liangchen was meditating on the bed, cherishing every moment to practice, which was a habit he had developed over the years. After insisting on running for a big week, he opened his eyes in displeasure and looked at Zhao Liangkai with the eyes of a fool. Otherwise? Could it still be a human being? Ah? Uh? Zhao Liangkai stood up in shock. A little panicked. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Don't make a joke about it. Although I wanted to scare them. I didn't want to see a ghost. As long as I'm here. What are you afraid of? Zhao Liangchen's eyes were stern. I think it's just that some people in the Lu family were unwilling to leave. And their souls stayed here and refused to leave. Oh. If they dare to show up. I will clear the haunted house here. What's the difficulty? When Zhao Liangkai heard what he said, he felt a little confident. After all, 
he had always known that his cousin was powerful. After he got the idea, he started to have other thoughts. Cousin! He came over and said, You said you would use means to scare them before. What did you mean? It's getting dark now. Can we take action? Upon hearing this, Zhao Lianchen took out a small black bottle from his sleeve. To deal with them, just use these little devils. He pulled out the stopper of the small bottle with a talisman sealed on the mouth, poured it down, and a thick white mist like suet flowed out, filling half of the room in the blink of an eye. In this white mist, several small figures gradually appeared, seemingly insubstantial but not insubstantial. They all hugged their knees and huddled together, with their heads buried in their knees. Zhao Lianka was frightened when he saw it. What is this? Wufu Ghost, also called Boy Ghost. I caught by chance some time ago, Zhao Lianchen said. Zhao Liankai had vaguely heard some rumors about unconquered ghosts. Death under the age of eight was called the tragedy of unconquered ghosts. Children of this age could easily turn into ghosts. Because they died before they had even enjoyed the pleasures of the world, they would feel unwilling to do so. But children are simple-minded and don't have too many grievances, so they usually won't cause much harm. As the white mist slowly melted away, these figures became clear. They were four boys and one girl. They were all wearing thick clothes and looked like they were made of paper. When the white mist cleared, the boy ghosts raised their heads. Immediately, Zhao Liankai heard a loud, crisp, excited and uniform question. Have you eaten? Chapter 22 Don't Be Afraid. It's a ghost. What to eat? I just know how to eat. Zhao Liankai frowned and snorted. The few kitties across from him heard his unkind tone and immediately stood up straight from the smoke. Count! One! A girl's voice sounded. Two! Three! Four! Three! Um! When the smoke completely dissipated, what appeared in front of Zhao Liankai were five little dolls. At the head was a little girl wearing a big red cotton padded jacket, with two braids that reached the sky. Although her face was pale, she was fleshy, so she didn't look scary at all even a little cute. Behind her are four male dolls, all wearing black jackets and with a small braid on the back of their heads. The oldest is only five or six years old, and the youngest looks to be about three years old. They are all chubby. Five dolls, six braids. The little girl turned back and glared at the youngest baby. How many times have I told you? After four comes five. It's five. The little doll pursed his lips, looking a little scared, but he didn't dare to refute. Wrong. A male doll in the middle came out to persuade. Xiaowu can only count to three. Sister, why don't you let him stand in third place? The little girl said loudly. He is Xiaowu. How can he stand in third place? It's okay with me. The boy who called me three times whispered. Then from now on, is it okay for him to be in front of you in line for meals? The little girl refused to give in. When Xiao San heard this, he immediately shook his head and said nothing. Between brothers, it is okay to give up one seat, but not to give up one's meal. Cough. Zhao Liangchen coughed lightly. The little girl immediately turned around, and the five child ghosts looked at him with their big round eyes, like a group of chicks waiting to be fed. Now I want you to do something for me. Once you do it, you will have something to eat when you come back, Zhao Liangchen said. No problem, the five little devils said in unison. Zhao Liangchen gave Zhao Liangkai a look. Just give them orders. Okay. Zhao Liankai nodded and did not dare to move forward. He stood in front of his cousin and said, There are two things I want you to do. His original plan was to use Zhao Liankai's methods to scare Wang Longqi away and win the bet. But now that Gong Sun Ro is here, he suddenly has a bold idea in his mind. There are people in the two rooms on the second floor below. There are two men on the left. Go scare them and drive them away. Remember, you must be cruel to them. Several little kids bared their teeth when they heard this revealing two shiny teeth to show their ferocity. Then, you go to the room on the right. There are two girls there. Don't be so fierce this time. Just scare them a little. I will wait outside. As soon as they scream, I will rush in immediately. He smiled mischievously. At this time, you are just pretending to be afraid of me. And I will beat you away and let me save them. Do you understand? Understood. Heroes save beauties. The little girl gave him an, I understand. Look. Hey, go ahead. After the explanation was completed, the five little dolls lined up in a row and floated out lightly without their feet touching the ground. When he got to the wall, he didn't open the door. He just walked through it with a whoosh. Zhao Liankai swallowed. 
but when he thought about Wang Longqi and Li Chu being scared to death by them later, he couldn't help but smile on his ugly face. Immediately, the two of them also walked downstairs and hid in the corner of the second floor. As soon as Gong Sunru and the others started screaming, Zhao Liankai rushed out to save people. After a few casual shouts, Zhao Liankai cast a spell to take back the kid. A seamless plan. Zhao Liankai came to pursue Gong Sunru, not only because he couldn't walk when he saw the beauty, but also because of the instructions of the Zhao elders. These days, no matter how rich you are, there are two types of people. Officials and practitioners. The former has power. The latter has magic power. In the idea told to him by the elders of the Zhao family, with Zhao Liangchen here, the Zhao family would be protected by cultivators for the next hundred years. If Zhao Liangchen can get Gong Sun Ro again, the family will have a pillar of officialdom. With these two major helpers, the family's takeoff is just around the corner. The Wang family is not even worthy of carrying shoes for the Zhao family. Wipe your saliva! Zhao Liangchen's disgusted voice interrupted Zhao Liangchen's lust. The first time I met Miss Gong Sun was at a banquet the day before yesterday. She was fluttering in white clothes and looked like a fairy descending from heaven. From that moment on, I decided not to marry anyone other than her in this life. To this day, I have been in love with her for two full days. It wasn't until I met her that I realized what love is and what love is. Li Chu frowned and looked at Wang Longqi, who was walking around on the ground like a male cat in heat, feeling that this would be a difficult night. Maybe a ghost would be better. At least it would make him quiet for a while. The girl Wang Longqi and Zhao Liangkai were vying for turned out to be Gong Sun Ro, which he thought was quite a coincidence. But thinking about it, I'm not surprised. After all, Wang Longqi had seen quite a few girls in Yuhang Town over the years, so it was impossible for one to suddenly appear and shock him. Only Gong Sun Ro, who came from Chaoga City, had such great charm. But Li Chu didn't know what this had to do with him. She had only met Gong Sun Ro once. And it could be said that she had no friendship at all. She had never donated a penny of incense to the Yun Temple. But since entering the room, Wang Longqi has been chattering in his ear, pretending to talk about how deep his feelings for Gong Sun Ro are. As if he means something. Did he want Gong Sun Ro next door to hear it? Then you should stand next to the wall and say it. Just when he began to consider whether to knock the noisy Wang Longqi unconscious, there was a sudden knock on the door. Boom. 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 Huh? Could it be Miss Gong Sun who came to see me? Wang Longqi hurriedly opened the door. But after opening the door, I found nothing outside. Weird, he muttered, closed the door and came back. But before I took a few steps, the knock on the door rang again. Thump, thump, thump. Who is it? Wang Longqi shouted. But no one answered. He went to open the door and found that it was still empty. Hiss, he took a breath. Wang Longqi turned around and came back. But this time his pace was very slow. Boom. Boom. Just when the knock on the door rang again, he quickly turned back and opened the door immediately. I caught you. Huh? Even though he moved so quickly this time, he still didn't see the person knocking on the door. Wang Longqi felt a little scared, closed the door, and said to Li Chu, Is there really something dirty? Li Chu silently looked towards the corner. There is flowing Yin Chi there. He. Ha ha ha. He. The laughter of children suddenly sounded in the room. More than one. As if there were a group of children playing in the room. It seemed that someone tripped Wang Longqi, causing him to almost fall. Ah, Wang Long and the seven monsters screamed and rushed to Li Chu's side, trembling. What the H, L? Li Chu, did you see it? Li Chu said calmly. Don't be afraid. It's a ghost. Eh? Wang Longqi vaguely felt that there was something wrong with what he said. But before he could think clearly, he saw Li Chu stood up and walked towards the center of the room. Then there was an ouch, as if someone was trying to trip Li Chu. But he screamed. The next second, he saw with horror that four or five ghastly little ghosts suddenly appeared in the middle of the originally empty room. They all look like children, but their faces are pale, and they appear hanging in the air. Bite him! A little girl's voice shouted. A figure wearing a red cotton jacket rushed to Li Chu's shoulder first opened his shiny fangs, and bit down hard. Then, bang. Then four more small figures rushed up without hesitation. They hugged Li Chu's arms and thighs tightly, then opened their mouths and bit them down viciously. The expression is extremely fierce. Then, five consecutive bangs. Chapter 23 Ling is confused. There are many methods of ghosts. 
But when it comes to a specific ghost, it may be relatively poor. Ghosts of all sizes may be able to use illusions and other techniques. But to put it bluntly, they are just blinding methods. It is still difficult to rely on illusions to kill people. Only high-level ghosts can master those terrifying tricks. Most ordinary ghosts can only attack humans by using spiritual power to turn the virtual body into a physical entity. For weak ghosts, their spiritual power is not enough to materialize the whole body. So they can only materialize part of the body first. For example, the spirit of the little girl from Xiaoyo village appeared in the form of a pair of ghost claws. As for the five child ghosts at present, they have only been transformed into ghosts for a short period of time. And they usually do not work very hard to absorb in qi. So their Taoism is very weak. The only part they have materialized is their teeth. This is just for the convenience of eating. But after today, it may not be convenient. Li Chu originally wanted to follow the Yin Qi to kill these little devils. But because the Yin Qi was really not strong, it was only as strong as 15 lantern monsters. So he didn't take it too seriously. Who would have thought that these little devils were so courageous that they actually rushed towards him, showing their big fangs and biting him together? Following five crisp bang bangs that sounded almost at the same time, several little devils let go. They covered their teeth, stepped back, touched the wound of the broken tooth in disbelief. And then, wow, they actually sat on the ground together and cried, looking at the little ghosts crying heartbrokenly. Li Chu blinked, and a thought flashed through his mind. Conflict? I didn't even take action. The little girl covered her mouth and sobbed. Why are you so hard? Several male dolls around nodded together. Their teeth fell on Li Chu. Not only could he not bite, but he also felt something suddenly rebounding the force of his bite back several times. And the teeth fell apart instantly although the pain was less severe after becoming ghosts. They still cried very sadly when they thought that it would be inconvenient to eat in the future, and it would take several years to get new teeth. Li Chu saw that their grievances were not serious and their intelligence seemed to be very high. So he wanted to ask them where they came from. So he said, Stop crying! It is difficult to stop a child from crying if several little ones turn a deaf ear, especially when there are other children crying around. It is easy for them to influence each other and make the situation worse. Li Chu had no choice but to say one more thing. Don't cry! He never liked shouting. So his tone was always very calm. Which of course had no effect on these children. Wang Longqi was timid in the background. Just wanting to join in the fun. Suddenly I felt my feet move. And a sudden change occurred. Boom! A strong burst of fire burst out from under the bed. And at the same time, a pair of terrifying arms appeared. The arms were covered in bright red scars with smoky black scars and their flesh was hideous and skinless. So hot! Shouting like this, it suddenly stretched out its hand from under the bed board and grabbed Wang Longqi's ankle. Wang Longqi immediately shouted, Li Chu! Save me! Before he could shout, Li Chu had already turned around when he felt a sudden burst of strong Yin Qi behind him. Huo Liagui grabbed Wang Longqi's ankle with his left hand, and actually started to make a hissing sound, like meat being roasted on a sizzling plate. Wang Longqi started to scream, and he didn't know whether he was burned or frightened. Behind these hands was the ugliest face Wang Longqi had ever seen in his life. He had seen ghosts before. But in order to confuse people, the ghost bride naturally transformed into a beautiful appearance in his eyes. Although the five little ghosts in front are sinister, they are chubby and not scary. The face of this fire-burning ghost can no longer be called a face. It is just a rotten piece of flesh roasted by the fire. Its eye sockets have also been burned dry. I don't know what it uses to see the way. So hot. It continued to scream strangely. And after its face came out, it wanted to crawl out its entire body. The six little braids of the five little ghosts jumped together and shouted in unison, Ghost! The other four dolls immediately hugged each other around the little girl, trying to hug each other for warmth. But the little girl quickly remembered something and pushed them away in disgust, saying, We are ghosts too. Why should we be afraid of them? Huh? Just when they suspected the ghost, something even more terrifying happened. The young Taoist priest in front of him suddenly pulled out the iron sword from his back and then slashed out with one strike. The sword rises. The sword falls. The sword light flashed past. It was as if the whole world was shaken. The fire ghost that hadn't fully crawled out disappeared in an instant. Disappeared completely. With this sword strike, the five little ghosts suddenly lost all sound and their six little braids were raised high to the sky. Sure enough, ghosts are not scary. People are scary. Ouch. Wang Longqi, who was at the center of the storm, didn't even see what was happening. 
he only felt a white light flash in front of his eyes. And the hand holding his ankle was released. And he immediately fell to the ground. If you look closely at your ankles, it looks like they have been burned with a soldering iron. A circle of your pantyhose has been burned into the flesh. But he didn't care about this. He raised his head in a hurry, crawled to Lichu's side, and asked in horror, What's going on? I don't know. This house is a little strange. Li Chu looked at the large hole cut out under the bed board, which revealed the room downstairs, indicating that it did not lead to other places. But what happened to the ghost that just appeared without warning? After pondering for a while, he suddenly remembered that there were five child ghosts behind him. Turning around, he saw the five little devils, who had been disobedient no matter how much they tried to persuade them, sitting in a row, looking up at him with their big black eyes. Honestly, clever. Ah! Just when Li Chu was about to ask something, he suddenly heard screams coming from the next room. The five little ghosts looked at each other. One, two, three, four, five. Eh? Who's next door? Hearing Wang Longchi screams one after another from the room over there. Zhao Liankai, who was squatting in the corner, was so excited that he couldn't help but secretly praise those little devils for their reliability. After waiting for a while, sure enough, just as the sound in the room subsided, a woman's scream was heard from next door. It's time. Zhao Liankai turned around and glanced at his cousin, receiving an encouraging look, and then immediately rushed out, shouting, Miss Gongsun, here I come. Bang. He flew up and kicked open the door of Gongsun Row in Zhao Xiaomi's room, and saw two girls running out of the door in panic. Little sister, Miss Gongsun, what's wrong? He asked in a pretentious manner. There is a ghost there. Zhao Xiaomi pointed at the bottom of the bed and shouted. Zhao Liankai took a quick look and saw a baby's little hand stretching out from under the bed board, seeming to be touching something. Mother! 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 Don't kill me! In the dark room, the childish screams did not arouse pity at all, but instead made people feel creepy. Hee <laughs> hee. You are quite good at stirring up the atmosphere. Zhao Liankai smiled imperceptibly, then immediately put on an indignant face and shouted loudly. Hey! You ghost! You dare to disturb Miss Gonsun! You are really hateful! After saying that, he strode over and grabbed the chubby arm. Brother! Zhao Xiaomi shouted, looking stunned. Gongsun Ro's expression was similar. Mr. Zhao? None of them could have imagined that Zhao Liankai would be so bold as to catch ghosts with his bare hands. Come out! Zhao Liankai felt that he had never been so arrogant before. He roared loudly, held his head high, and his chest filled with anger. He stepped forward and twisted his waist, moving his shoulders and elbows. Wow! He pulled the ghost thing out from under the bed board and carried it in his hand. It turned out to be a bright red baby. He looked small, with dripping blood flowing all over his body. He was hanging there with one arm, and there seemed to be a confused expression on his wrinkled, ugly face. Huh? Xiao Liankai frowned, a little puzzled. Among the five little ghosts just now, none seemed to be this small. The baby's brows were also frowning, and he was also wondering what was going on with the person in front of him. As a more ferocious infant spirit among ghosts, this is the first time in its long ghost life that its dignity has been trampled on. The man in front of him was so arrogant that he didn't even dare to act rashly for a while. To be honest, I was a little confused. Chapter 2400 Ghosts Night Parade Just when Zhao Liankai and the infant spirit were confused, Zhao Lianchen, who was a few steps behind, also came to the door. When he looked up, he saw that what Zhao Liankai was holding was not the child ghost he had raised at all, but a bloody infant spirit. The infant spirit is the form of a baby who was killed in his mother's womb. If you think about it carefully, it should also be a kind of resentful spirit, and it's the most vicious one, being abandoned by your mother before you were born. How full of resentment must there be? Seeing Zhao Liankai like this at this time, his eyes suddenly widened and he shouted, Hurry up and let go! That's the Yingling! Infant spirit? Zhao Liangsai's pupils tightened. His mind was a little blank just now. This voice was like a heavy hammer that woke him up. The brief confusion just now turned into intense fear and thousands of words were condensed into one word. Grass. He threw away the ghost object in his hand, turned around and ran away. How domineering he was when he came. How embarrassed he was when he ran away. Engling also woke up at this time. So you are afraid of me? Since you are afraid of me, then I am not afraid of you anymore. Its small body turned around in midair, then jumped into the air towards the running figure. Cut! 
Naturally, Zhao Liangchen would not sit idly by. He flicked his fingers, flashed his bracelet, and instantly turned into a flying sword. A rainbow of sword light pierced the infant spirit. Bang! The infant spirit was hit in the middle by the sword rainbow across the sky, pierced through the chest, and nailed to the wall behind. But Yingling's evil reputation didn't come out of thin air. Not only did he not die after being struck by the sword, but he saw it holding the blade with its small hands and pulled out the flying sword with a hiss. Blood splattered everywhere, and with a strange scream, the blood spurted from these wounds suddenly turned into a river of blood, rolling forward. At this time, Zhao Liangkai ran to the door, and the river of blood behind him quickly caught up with him and wanted to devour him. Zhao Liangchen grabbed Zhao Liangtsai's shoulders and threw him backwards. He picked up a talisman with his left hand and pushed it out with his palm. The rolling river of blood hit the talisman. A red light flashed, and it exploded. But it wasn't over yet. After the river of blood, the infant spirit's body suddenly jumped out, covered in blood and with a hideous appearance. Cut! Zhao Liangchen shouted again, and the flying sword that had been thrown to the ground by Aang Ling immediately lit up again and flew back upside down. Laugh! The blood flashed again, and Ying Ling's small body was cut into two pieces. Kill! Zhao Liangchen held the flying sword in his hand again, and couldn't help but feel distressed as he watched the light on the sword flicker and fade. This magical weapon, the flying sword, was stained by the blood of the infant spirit, and its spiritual light was damaged. It had to spend a lot of effort and materials to refining it. Immediately, his heartache turned into anger, causing him to glare at Zhao Liangkai fiercely. You idiot! You are so courageous! When Zhao Liangkai saw that Yingling was dead, he popped up his chest and said sarcastically, Isn't it because I saw Miss Gong Sun was frightened that I was too anxious? But Gong Sun Ro didn't care about his heartfelt expression. When she saw Li Chu and Wang Longchi coming out of the next door, she immediately approached them. Miss Gong Sun, are you okay? Wang Longchi asked. It's okay. Gong Sun Ro shook his head and saw Wang Longchi limping and asked, Are you injured? Hey, I was fighting a ghost just now. And Li Chu and I finally killed it together. Wang Longchi said. The money was given. Li Chu thought. And in his heart, he forgave Wang Longchi for his shamelessness. Shameless. The five little devils said in unison. They also followed Li Chu and floated out in a row. Seeing Zhao Liangchen over there, he quickly slipped over and hid behind Zhao Liangchen. These little brats. Wang Longchi suddenly felt something was wrong and pointed at Zhao Liangchen. Zhao Liangchen ignored him and quickly collected a few imps with black bottles and then said in a deep voice, There is a big problem in this building. Let's get out first. Ah? Uh? Hasn't the ghost been killed? Zhao Liangkai said reluctantly. He and Wang Longkai had a bet. So naturally they didn't want to leave easily. Zhao Liangchen glared at him again and said, The energy here is too strong. There are more than just three or two ghosts. Maybe there are some in every room. What? Everyone was surprised. Li Chu was not surprised. As the night got darker, the yin energy here became more and more intense. And he felt it. It's just a little strange. Because he can't feel the origin of these yin qi. It's like they appear out of thin air. Wang Longchi looked back at the circle of pavilions. There may be nearly a hundred rooms. Large and small. And each room has a ghost. Isn't that hundreds? He swallowed and looked at Zhao Liangkai. The bed is void. How about we go out together? Zhao Liangkai frowned. Intending to say harsh words but he did not dare to stay any longer. So he said, Since you regret it, I will give you a chance. Zhao Liangchen took the lead and walked downstairs. Several people followed him closely. Wang Longchi walked the slowest because of his injured foot. Li Chu slowed down to accompany him. Gong Sun Ro wanted to get closer to Li Chu. So he also slowed down, and the six of them gradually divided into two teams. The three members of the Zhao family walked in front. And Zhao Liangchen reminded them in a deep voice. Be quiet. Don't disturb them. Okay. Zhao Liankai quickly nodded in agreement. Before he could finish his words, a big, withered, black face suddenly emerged from the door on his left. Ah, Zhao Liankai was frightened by this sudden move. He stumbled two steps and hit the fence. His body bent, and he screamed and fell down. Fortunately, there was a net bag underneath. But the net bag had been there for decades and was no longer strong. In addition, since he was obese, the net bag broke through with a loud bang and fell to the ground. This time, the movement became louder. Zhao Liangchen made a gesture with his left hand, pointed at the ghost's head, 
and struck out with a fire talisman with his right hand. Before the blackface ghost who poked his head out could see anything clearly, he was burned by the flames and went back into the house. When Zhao Liangchen looked back, his expression changed drastically. All the closed doors began to tremble. And in the blink of an eye, more than ten ghosts emerged from the door wall and began to float faintly. Among these ghosts, there are pale-faced, white-haired and scrawny old men, babbling opera singers, green-faced strong men wearing armor, elegant female ghosts wearing former dynasty costumes, and many more non-human ghosts. The only thing they have in common is that they are all of high moral character and none of them are easy to deal with. Zhao Liangchen frowned, grabbed Zhao Xiaomi's arm, jumped up, flew down, and landed next to Zhao Liangkai. Zhao Liangkai was still rolling in the broken net on the ground, moaning and screaming. Zhao Liangchen kicked him on the butt and shouted, Stop screaming! Holding both of them in his hands, he quickly moved towards the door on the first floor, wanting to leave this place of trouble and trouble as soon as possible. At this moment, a strange roar was suddenly heard, and a huge creature sprang out, blocking the way. Li Chu, on the other hand, was guarding Wang Longqi and Gong Sun Ro, still walking at a leisurely pace. Gong Sun Ro looked at more and more ghosts appearing around her. Her face had already turned pale, but her courage was not weak. She bit her lower lip lightly and remained silent. Li Chu couldn't help but take another look at her. This girl Gong Sun looked soft and frail, but she had a strong temper. Wang Longqi, on the other hand, was already limping when he walked. In fear, he felt his calves cramping and his movements became even slower. Especially when he looked up, he found that almost all the ghosts in the room had come out and were gradually moving downwards. There were all kinds of ghosts that could not be seen at a glance, and the whole person was frightened. Suddenly, hundreds of ghosts are walking in the night. It's simply despairing. He gritted his teeth and said loudly, Li Chu, you take Miss Gong Sun and leave first. Don't let me drag you down. After you go out, take good care of Miss Gong Sun for me, and I will bless you in the underworld. Don't worry about me. I will be a good man again after 18 years. He wanted to say such words righteously. But at this moment, a three-headed yiksha in the sky couldn't restrain the bloodthirsty murderousness in its heart and swooped down. The three heads all have green faces and fangs. And they look ferocious. This image alone can scare some timid people to death. Its six sharp claws, knotted with muscles, reach down. And one of them can crush the head of a liger. The sudden fear made Wang Longqi unable to speak and his heart almost stopped. Then, Li Chu in front didn't even look at him. He drew his sword and waved it. Boom! Sharp white light passed through the body. And the sword light was only halfway through when the ghost body of the three-headed Yiksha could no longer withstand it and collapsed. Li Chu then turned around and looked at Wang Longqi. Did you just call me? Well, I told you to be careful. Wang Longqi Chi said. Oh! Chapter 25 Why Don't You Leave? Yeah, you! Zhao Liangchen's face was as sinking as water as if facing a formidable enemy. What stood in front of them was a huge red-haired ghost with a human face, an ox body, and horse legs. It had a pair of huge bronze mirror-like eyes that reflected the cold light. Legend has it that in the ancient times, Yuchi was originally a god, but he was killed by someone, fell into the weak water, and turned into a fierce beast of the ghost tribe. From then on, this bloodline only spread in the underworld. There is only one place in the world where there may be remaining species of the wild cat. This place is actually related to the ghost country on Earth? Cold sweat slid down Zhao Liangchen's ugly face. Just being exposed to this word was enough to make a young cultivator like him feel awe-inspiring. But it was far away, and he didn't need to think about it. The problem before him now was to escape. The Ya Yu who has achieved great success in Taoism has the power to be invincible to gods and ghosts. In ancient times, the Ya Yu emerged from the ghost kingdom. And it was the great god Ho Yi who killed him. Of course, the relic of the gatekeeper in front of me would not have that kind of strength. But Zhao Liangchen was not Ho Yi either. It's no use thinking too much. A glimmer of light flashed in Zhao Liangchen's eyes. Hundreds of ghosts were watching behind him. And a wild dog in front of him was blocking the way, forcing him to fight his way out. Wind! Rain! Thunder and lightning! It's okay if he doesn't take action. Once he takes action, it will be his strongest method at the moment. When he failed to be elected as the chief disciple, the master gave him a Leibu evil talisman in order to comfort him. Heavenly thunder is the righteous way in the world. And this thing is the most effective against evil spirits. The thunder is rolling. Although he later learned that every time his junior brother exorcised evil spirits, 
he used more than a dozen Lebu evil killing talismans to kill the opponent, which lowered the value of this talisman in his heart. But its own power will not be reduced. In an instant, a bright dark blue light illuminated the entire ghost building, and countless ghosts above screamed in fear and fled away one after another. The dog blocking the door was bombarded by the twelve thunders triggered by the talisman, and it also let out a fearful howl. It's now! Zhao Lianchen suddenly soared into the sky. Although the flying sword stained with the blood of the infant spirit was spiritually damaged, it could still use his strongest killing move. The secret sword passed down from male to female and the sect flew towards him. A flying sword technique! Zhao Lianchen drank unconsciously, as if this could increase the power of the sword. A rainbow light as thick as a bucket fell from the sky. A sword came from the west, and a fairy flew from the sky. Nervous emotions seemed to flash through the giant pupil, and with a bang, the red hairs all over its body suddenly stood up. It seemed to be burning. No, it just burned. It's a flame as red as blood. The sword light pierced into Yuchi's body, and at the same time it was burned by the blood flames. Three feet. Zhao Lianchen gritted his teeth and secretly hated it. The flying sword only penetrated three feet into Yuchi's back, and the rainbow light on the sword was wiped out. And it finally sank in. If it were the divine sword Yellum given to my junior brother by my sect, with my own cultivation level, I would definitely be able to penetrate this ghost body and kill it completely. If it had not been contaminated by the blood of the infant spirit before, my flying sword could have penetrated at least three feet further and penetrated to six feet, thereby causing heavy damage to the ghost. Unfortunately, time is also destiny. The sword penetrates three feet, which is a depth that can make it feel pain. The level is probably just enough to anger it, but not enough to affect its combat effectiveness. It's just the right amount of bad. As a man, Zhao Lianchen experienced a feeling of urgency and sadness for the first time. If only it could be deeper. But Yuchi didn't think so. It originally thought that this sword could only be rubbed outside. Unexpectedly, it actually broke through its body protecting blood flame and caused pain, which made it feel surprised and angry. As a result, its pupils were filled with blood, and blood flames erupted all over its body. Rampage. The strong death threat instantly enveloped Zhao Lianchen and his younger brothers and sisters behind him. Zhao Liankai was paralyzed. He did not expect that he would encounter such a thing because of his suicidal thoughts. How could there be evil spirits in the small town of Yuhang that even my cousin couldn't deal with? It was difficult for him to understand. Zhao Xiaomiu cried directly. I want to go home. Zhao Liancheng could feel the despair of his younger brothers and sisters. But at this moment, he was helpless. In fact, he still holds the trump card in his hand that can get him out. But in that case, it would be equivalent to abandoning everyone else. But? The Ye Yu in front of me definitely has the strength of a ghost general. He really can't deal with it. As for the others, Buddha said so. The father is dead, and the mother is married. And the individual takes care of himself. Sorry. When I go back, I will definitely find someone from my sect to avenge you. Just before he secretly chanted a spell, and wanted to use his escape powers, a calm voice suddenly sounded from behind him. Why don't you leave? Zhao Lianchen turned around, and saw that Li Chu and the others had caught up. What Li Chu asked made Zhao Lianchen stun for a moment, because his expression when asking was too serious and serious, so much so that Zhao Lianchen was confused for a moment when he heard it. Is there a problem with him or with me? Um, why don't I leave? Yeah. Why the H? L don't we leave? Don't you recognize such a big turtle in front? Even if you don't know it, you can still tell that this thing is very vicious. Right? He also asked. Please show me one of them. Hey, wait. While he was complaining in his heart, Li Chujin walked up slowly, as if he didn't see the rampaging squid at all. At this moment, Zhao Lianchen couldn't guess whether Li Chu was a liar or a fool, and the Ye Yu, whose whole body was burning with blood flames, also showed its cruel fangs at him. The outline vaguely resembles the majesty of its ancestors in ancient times. Roar. The squid roared. Zhao Lianchen's eyes seemed to have seen the scene of Li Chu being torn apart by the Ye Yu. He actually felt a strange sense of pleasure when he thought of that extremely handsome face being chewed by the Ye Yu. So what if the face is pretty? It doesn't taste any better. But the next second, all his emotions were replaced by shock. He saw Li Chu holding the sword in his hand, raising it, and then lowering it, followed by a magnificent and domineering sword energy. What kind of sword is that? Zhao Lianchen suddenly remembered his master, a powerful cultivator at the peak of Shina Realm. 
when he led himself to defeat a two-headed river dragon. He used the most powerful sword energy he had ever seen before, and destroyed one of the dragon's heads with one sword. From that moment on, he decided to choose the flying sword as his core weapon, just to become a powerful swordsman like his master. When I think of this, it's not because Li Chu's sword is as strong as his master's. But after seeing this sword, he suddenly felt that his master was trash. For some reason, at this moment, he suddenly wanted to point his finger at his master's nose and curse. Are you worthy of teaching someone how to use a sword? Pooh. Yuchi's body couldn't bear the powerful sword energy and instantly shattered. Once the ghost's incorporeal body suffers too much damage, it will collapse on the spot. But in fact it is difficult to achieve this level. When Zhao Lianchen killed the infant spirit, he only cut it off. And this dogfish may be hundreds of times stronger than the infant spirit, especially the remnants of the prehistoric times. Its body is still surprisingly strong even if it turns into a ghost. Under Li Chu's sword, it was as brittle as something that could break with just a poke. This can only be described in four words. So scary. Zhao Lianchen looked at Li Chu's back as he walked out of the small building. Even from his back, he could see Yu Xu Lingfeng's temperament. Handsome and powerful. Unknowingly, two lines of tears flowed from the corners of my eyes. Wait, why am I crying? 300 miles northwest of Yuhang Town, there is a white bone mountain. There is a corpse cave on Baigu Mountain. In the cave where the corpse was lying, two hoarse and dull voices suddenly sounded. Something happened over there in the ghost building. Someone went in and left alive. What? My king seal is about to be broken. And there must be no trouble with the arrangements there. They probably didn't find much. But what if? Didn't you release the squid? The other voice was silent for a while before speaking again. I let it go. It was dead with one sword strike. What's there to say? Oh? It's a little Taoist priest who doesn't know where he came from. He's very scary. If I personally try to keep them alive, they might not be able to come back. In short, we must keep an eye on things in Yuhang Town. As long as my king returns to the world, no one can stop us. Hope so. Night. Deep and empty. Chapter 26 said a small goal first. The sun is shining brightly. Under the old locust tree, Yu Qian was sitting at the mouth of the well eating watermelon. When Li Chu came over, he saw that the master looked so immortal even when he was eating watermelon. Every time he rolled up his sleeves or spit out the seeds, he exuded an indescribable temperament. Hey, want a piece? Yu Qian said with a smile. Thank you, master. Li Chu also sat down. Yu Qian looked at Li Chu and thought that his apprentice looked so handsome and handsome when he ate watermelon. When he poked his head and wiped his mouth, he really looked like me back then. He twirled his beard and said with a smile, Thank you. These fruits were sent by Miss Lee yesterday. They came to you. So I got the advantage. Miss Lee? The name is quite obscure. I forgot it. She is a girl with a very thin waist, long legs, full breasts and round hips, and a good figure. Li Chu shook his head and couldn't remember. Oh, she has a mole on the left side of her heart. Yu Qian added. Huh? Li Chu was even more confused. By the way, she still left 50 tails of silver. Li Sini. Li Chu immediately recalled. She is a disciple of Chao Tian Quebec. We have handled a mystery case together before. And the 50 tails is the reward I deserve. As he spoke, he blinked again. Does Li Sini have a mole on the left side of his heart? No. His doubt was why Li Sini had to do such a small thing as sending money. In the past, Chao Tai Fook would directly send a small catcher, and she should have returned to Hangzhou a long time ago. Yu Qian said in time, She seems to have other things to ask you for, but seeing that you are not here, she has to leave first. Oh! Li Chu nodded. Yu Qian ate another piece of watermelon, wiped her mouth, and glanced at Li Chu. Aren't you going to ask someone about something? She will come again if there is something important. Li Chu shrugged indifferently. Alas! Yu Qian looked at his apprentice inside, feeling that iron could not turn into steel. Master, this disciple has something to ask. When Yu Qian interrupted him, Li Chu almost forgot his purpose. Oh! What's the matter? I have a doubt. If there is a group of ghosts, they stay in one place peacefully, and humans do not disturb them, and they do not harm anyone. In this case, can I destroy this group of ghosts? Li Chu asked seriously. Don't you always do this kind of thing? Yu Qian asked. In the past year, Li Chu has been leveling up monsters in Shilipo. Although he doesn't know the purpose, he is aware of this behavior. 
But these ghosts are higher in spirit and have intelligence. Which is different from the lantern monsters. Li Chu said. Yu Qian thought for a moment and replied slowly. Uh-huh. There is a saying that has been circulating among us cultivators throughout the world. Monsters can be taught. But devils are difficult to teach. Li Chu leaned forward. Showing an attitude of humbly asking for advice. It means that the four kinds of evil things. Demons and ghosts. Are actually different. Monsters are formed by the cultivation of all living beings and are a sublimation of life. There is no good or evil in monsters themselves. Those who do good are good monsters. And those who do evil are bad monsters. Good monsters can educate and guide. Just like visiting them every day that little fox. We can live in peace with. Only the bad monsters need to be eradicated. Monsters are born alien creatures. Essentially no different from birds and beasts. Likewise, if they stay on their own terms, Humans should not intrude on them, because they have their own path to follow. My own way, Li Chu murmured, seeming to be thinking. Monsters are transformed from other creatures. Yu Qian's expression was slightly serious. Once it becomes a demon, it is difficult to turn back. If it is allowed to survive in the world, it will definitely cause bloodshed and massacre. And it must be eradicated. Ghosts are also the ghosts of other creatures. Due to various reasons, they did not embark on the path of reincarnation and stayed in the world. But no matter what the reason is, this is not the path they should take. From the moment they were born, they have we have gone astray. Therefore, no matter what the circumstances, destroying ghosts is equivalent to helping them return to the right path. For devils and ghosts, they can be destroyed as soon as they encounter them regardless of good or evil. It is precisely because of this that the elimination of ghosts is called salvation. And salvation can accumulate merit. Regardless of whether they have intelligence or not, they can, cannot be counted as killing. So, the criterion for judging whether to kill or not is whether the living being is on the right path. Right, Li Chu asked. You can say that. Yu Qian smiled and nodded. Li Chuo also nodded if he gained something. Seeing Li Chu stand up and leave, Yu Qian muttered to his back. I don't know where a ghost can be so unlucky. That night, the Lu family ghost house. The storm last night seemed to have no impact on the place and the atmosphere was still so peaceful and eerie. But as a figure wearing a green talus robe slowly approached, the picture became a little more beautiful. In fact, Li Chu has been thinking recently that the experience points that lantern monsters can provide are getting less and less. It would be great if there was a new, slightly more advanced leveling point. But he was not familiar with the place far away, so he might get into trouble. The appearance of the Lu family ghost house perfectly meets his needs. Few people, many ghosts, close to home. And currently, it seems that ghosts here can appear out of thin air. In this case, it is likely that there will be an endless supply. It was simply prepared for him to level up. The only concern is that these ghosts used to live here peacefully. If no one came to seek death, they would not sneak out and harm people. So wouldn't it be a bit inhumane to come here to upgrade them by yourself? Yu Qian's words today relieved his worries. I am not leveling up or killing these ghosts. It's about educating people and helping them go astray. Just like a doctor who treats illnesses and saves people. A teacher who teaches and educates people is a great and noble act. I am destroying you for your own good. Of course, there will also be some pain associated with the process of treatment or learning. But he promised it would only hurt a little. After you feel the pain once, you can start a new life. With such a noble mood, Li Chu walked into the gate of Lu's ghost house again. At this moment, the light of righteousness shines on the ghost tower. He followed the order and knocked on the door starting from the first one. Is there a ghost here? There are strange sounds of babbling inside. It seems. Li Chu opened the door and walked in. And saw a ghost dressed as an actor. He was wearing a spring shirt and water sleeves. He couldn't tell whether it was a boy or a girl. When it saw Li Chu coming in. It sang in a high-pitched voice. It hurts. It hurts. I pushed him gently. He gradually trembled at the sound and blushed slightly in shock. Li Chu listened and felt that this opera singer was a bit unseemly. But he still said very politely, Hello! I'm here to save you! It may hurt a little. Just be patient for a while. It will be fine soon. The opera singer seemed to understand what he said, and wanted to express his opposition personally. But Li Chu didn't give it a chance. Laugh! A flash of sword light flashed, and the babbling tone still echoed in the room. But the ghost body disappeared out of thin air. Degree success. Li Chu felt that he was a little more noble. Correspondingly, it is one step closer to level 72. 
after walking out of the room and looking at the full four-story attic. Li Chu felt that he could set a small goal first. Let's get to level 100 first. 300 miles northwest of Yuhang Town. Bone Mountain and Corpse Cave. Two hoarse and dull voices sounded again. This time, there was an obvious feeling of panic. That little Taoist priest is back. He knocked on the door from room to room looking for ghosts and killed them one by one. In just one night, he emptied the entire ghost building. What? You can't do anything about him? If you had seen him drawing his sword, you wouldn't have said such stupid things. We have to do something. Otherwise, the day my king lifts the seal, you and I will both be guilty. The other voice was silent again, then spoke again. I'm praying that he doesn't come back tomorrow. Chapter 27 The Koi Girl Came to My Door Someone discovered that the water in the Heishui River was becoming clearer. The originally dark watercolor has turned into blue waves after the changes in recent days. Some people say that a passing immortal punished the water ghost, while others say that the water ghost became a river god and began to clear his name. There are more supporters of the former. After all, no one wants evil ghosts to achieve positive results. However, despite the water ghost's many years of power, no one dared to take a chance in the water. At most, some brave young people would run over and take a quick look at the river. At noon that day, the grass was growing and the orioles were flying. A little girl with twin ponytails came from the direction of the river bank. From a distance, she was wearing a Yunshan Luo skirt covered with colorful tassels. Her skin was as white as crystal and her facial features were as delicate as a porcelain doll. She wore twin ponytails and swung them as she walked, looking cute and cute. As he walked, he opened his big and bright eyes and looked at everything around him curiously. As he got closer, he could still hear her mumbling something plausibly. Probably some words like, Hello. My name is Yuer. Excuse me. After walking for a while, she saw a farmer carrying a hoe and quickly threw off his long legs and chased after him. Hello. She rushed to the farmer and then stopped, almost unable to stop. The farmer frowned when he saw someone suddenly rushing out from the side and almost hitting him. But when he looked again, he saw a fair-skinned and beautiful girl. Her raised eyebrows suddenly spread out, and the corners of her straight mouth were raised. Girl, what's wrong with you? He put down the hoe and asked kindly. The girl took a few breaths and then asked quickly. Hello, my name is Ewer. I'm looking for a very handsome little Taoist priest. Do you know where he is? Oh, you must be talking about Taoist priest Shaoli. The farmer knew who she was asking without even thinking. He patiently pointed the way to the girl. You keep walking along this willow embankment. Don't cross the river. After you get off the river embankment, turn left, walk three miles, and you will see a small hillside. Duyun Temple is there. On the hillside, Taoist Priest Shaoli is usually inside the temple. Thank you. The girl named Yuer thanked her seriously and walked happily along the river embankment. The farmer looked at the girl's cheerful back, smiled, picked up the hoe, and continued on his way. What he didn't see was the girl who walked less than a hundred steps along the embankment shortly after he turned around. Suddenly he stopped and looked blankly at a bridge in front of him. She scratched her head. Huh? Do you want to cross the river? At this time, an old man happened to be walking down the bridge. And the girl hurried over. Hello. My name is Ewer. I'm looking for a very handsome little Talus priest. Do you know where he is? She repeated this sentence. Oh. Mr. Lee. Right. You keep walking along the river embankment. Turn left when you get off the river embankment. And you will soon reach Dune Temple. The old man laughed and patiently pointed the way to her. Thank you. The girl bowed to the old man and walked happily down the river embankment. After quickly walking across the short river embankment, the girl went down and was suddenly stunned again. She looked blankly at the fork in front of the road. Huh? Which way should I go? She looked around and saw a peasant woman wearing a headscarf. So she ran over and said, Hello. Wan Longchi's movements were very quick. He came back from Lu's ghost house the day before and had already arranged for the Taoist temple workers before his injury healed. All the buildings in Diyungwen must be repaired. The front and back yards must be renovated. And a guest room must be built so that when guests come in the future, Li Chu will not have to run over and squeeze in with the master. The whole yard was under construction. And the master and apprentice had no choice but to move the small horse and sit outside the gate, watching the lively scene inside side by side. On his face was the same happy smile. It was as if he was looking at the country he had built. The Taoist temple cannot operate these days. 
Wang Longqi originally invited the master and apprentice to stay at Wang's house for a few days, and asked them to wait until the Taoist temple construction was completed before returning. Yu Qian refused at first. Although there was nothing valuable in the temple, he had some treasures that he was afraid of seeing or losing. So he had to stay and supervise the work. Li Chu, on the other hand, has always stayed away from unnecessary interpersonal interactions. In his opinion, Wang Longqi's contribution was enough to prove the friendship between the two. Those unquantifiable politeness and enthusiasm can be avoided if possible. That's why this scene happened. The master and apprentice sat in rows outside the threshold, doing nothing but happy. Suddenly there was the sound of particularly rapid footsteps behind him. Li Chu turned around and saw a dazzlingly white girl running towards him. She looked very excited, with her hands open, her tassels fluttering, her hair messy and dusty. Li Chu stood up calmly. This was not the first time he met a girl he was extremely excited about. Just when the girl was about to pounce on him, he calmly stretched out a finger. Chirp. His index finger was poking the girl's forehead, completely blocking the girl's forward momentum. The girl bumped into Li Chu's finger, paused, and was bounced back. A small red mark instantly appeared on her forehead. Ah! It hurts! She covered her forehead and squatted down. Li Chu sat back on the pony and said, Sorry, Du Yun Temple has not been open in the past few days. I came here especially for you. The girl rubbed her forehead for a while, raised her face again, and looked at Li Chu with her big shining eyes. You are the handsome little Taoist priest my grandfather mentioned. Right. Li Chu blinked, not knowing how to answer. Next to him, Yu Qian smiled and said to the little girl, Although I don't know who your grandfather is, but within a few hundred miles of Yuhang town, the most handsome Taoist priests are all in our Duyun temple. Well, it must be you. The girl looked at Li Chu's face carefully, and then nodded heavily. Is something wrong? Li Chu asked. The girl said seriously every word. My name is Yuer. My grandfather told me to come to Yuhang town to find a very handsome little Taoist priest. I will recognize him as my master. Only he can save our people. Rescue people? Li Chu turned his head, feeling a little confused. Master? Yu Qian also quickly caught the key point, his eyes shining with interest. The girl added, My grandfather said that he had seen you. After you got rid of the water ghost, it came to thank you. Are you not a human being? Li Chu suddenly remembered who she was talking about. After getting rid of the water ghost that day, an old man turned into a koi carp expressed his gratitude to him in a dream. It turned out to be him. Yes, my grandfather is the leader of the koi clan, and I am the most beautiful colorful koi in our clan. Yu raised her nose as she spoke, feeling a little proud, but she soon became depressed again. Koi! Yu Qian's eyes brightened when he heard this. Our whole family was captured by bad guys, and I was the only one who escaped. My grandfather asked me to come to you. He said that only you can save them. Please, I recognize you as my master. Please help us. You are begged. Poor. Don't worry about anything else. Can you tell me where they are first? Li Chu said. I don't know. They were captured by bad guys. You were shook her head. Then who captured them? Li Chu asked again. I don't know. I don't know him. You were shook her head again. Then how do you want me to save your people? Li Chu finally asked. I don't know. But, but my grandpa said that only you can save them. You were finally said pitifully. Li Chu fell into silence. Yu Qian also shook her head, thinking that she was a pretty girl. But she was a fool. Chapter 28 It's great to have koi fish. The breeze blew through Li Chu's clothes, as if a crow was flying over Diyun Temple. The air became quiet for a while. After a while, it was Yu Qian who broke the silence. Little girl, please recall carefully. Did your grandfather give any hints on how to save them? Did you not know or just forgot? You opened her innocent and beautiful big eyes for a long time and tried to search for memories in her mind. But she soon found that there were fewer and fewer things in her mind. I only remember that I sneaked out to play outside. And then my grandfather suddenly contacted me with spiritual skills. He said a lot of things to me, saying that they had been arrested and asked me to find the little Taoist priest. When I went back, I found that the clan people were gone and I don't remember anything else. She said hesitantly. It doesn't matter. Yu Qian said with a smile. In that case, you can stay here for now. Once we have clues about your tribe, we can go rescue people. Uh, fish. Okay. Yuer's eyes wandered over the master and apprentice for a while, feeling a little tangled, but finally nodded. Well, anyway, 
Grandpa asked me to recognize him as my master. Your girl. Li Chu wanted to say something, but Yu Qian pulled off his sleeve, gave him a wink, and asked him to turn his back. It's a great opportunity for the koi to recognize its owner. There are many benefits. So just accept it. Yu Qian reminded. But Li Chu frowned slightly, still feeling a little bad. He has always felt that all living beings are equal, and he has never thought about monster slaves before. Koi's so-called recognition of her master does not mean that she will be your slave, but that her luck will be bound. Yu Qian explained, after recognizing her master, she can help you increase your luck. The better your luck will be. Wang, her practice can also be greatly benefited. It's a win-win situation. Her grandfather asked her to come to you. Maybe because he saw your luck before and thought you could be a promising host. That's it. Li Chu nodded in understanding. He turned around and said, Miss Yu, you will stay here for the time being. You don't need to call me master from now on. Just call me Li Chu. From now on. Whenever I get news about your tribe, I will go to the rescue as soon as possible. You are blinked. Okay. Master. For the first time, Li Chu felt that language was so pale and powerless. Ha ha. You can't blame the little girl. Yu Qian laughed softly. She hasn't completely transformed yet. Although she looks like a human now, she shouldn't be able to adapt to the human memory method. When her cultivation level increases, she will it will get better slowly. The spirituality of koi fish is extremely rare among the generally ignorant aquarium tribe. Not only do they possess the unique ability to transport things, but they can also comprehend the mystery of transformation earlier than other monsters. If your cultivation level is still shallow, even if you can transform into a human form, you will only have an empty body, and you still have a long way to go. For example, the your girl in front of me can be regarded as a person with a fish brain, or a fish with a human body. Suddenly there was an additional member in the temple, which was a big deal. The master and the apprentice were about to discuss how to arrange her in the future, when they suddenly heard a noise from the workers over there. Not long after, the foreman came over holding a small box. Taoist priest you. Taoist priest Shaoli. This was dug under the old wall. It should have been buried by the predecessors of your Taoist temple. Right? The workers hired by the Wang family were all strong laborers from nearby villages. And they were familiar with the Yun temple. So they had no intention of being greedy. What's more? Under Sanqing's gaze. Those little thoughts are gone. Li Chu took a look at the box he sent. It looked like it was old. The cover was damaged and covered with mud. He didn't know how long it had been buried in the ground. I took it and opened it. There was actually a box of silver inside, which was full. I'm afraid there wasn't even a hundred tails. Ouch. Master and disciple were ecstatic. De Youngwen has been built for some years, and there has been a lot of groundbreaking before. This is the first time money has been dug out. Yu Qian looked at Xiao Yu with kind eyes. It seems that our Diyun temple is really about to turn a corner. Do you like this thing? Xiao Yu has been looking at them with her innocent and beautiful big eyes. Ahem. Yu Qian coughed lightly. Practice people naturally don't value money. Li Chu also said seriously, money is something external to the body. But well, you should always be happy when you find money. Yu Qian added. Yes. Li Chu said. Really? Then I'll give these to you. Yu reached into her ordinary little chest, took out a small purse, and poured out a pile of scattered silver coins, copper coins, and even a small goldfish as thick as a finger. How come you? A water tribe member. Have so much money? I picked them up. You were said in a nonchalant tone. I don't know why. But I always pick up these things every time I go ashore to play. I thought the shiny ones were quite pretty. So I kept them all. Li Chu looked at her deeply. Then, he solemnly said, Please stay in Yun Temple. Evening. When Li Chu went to the Lu family ghost house, he made a special trip to see Xiao Yu. She temporarily lives in a large water tank in the kitchen. The bottom of the water tank is covered with continuous fine sand. She has a slender body of more than four feet. And the scales all over her body are colorful and extremely beautiful. Seeing Li Chu's face on the water, she spit out a string of bubbles. Although her transformation into human form can last for a long time. One problem during this time is that she cannot sleep. Li Chu observed carefully and found that the reason was that she would not close her eyes to sleep. This problem is not complicated to say. But asking a fish that is used to sleeping with its eyes to close its eyes to sleep is just like asking a person who is used to sleeping with its eyes to open its eyes to sleep. It is still a bit difficult. So I had to let her return to the water in her original form at night. The water tank was still a little cramped. 
Li Chu thought that the next step in building a Taoist temple was to build a special pool for her. It doesn't matter how much you spend. Koi is worth it. I don't know how many wealthy families have dug ponds specifically to raise koi, but they only raise ordinary feng shui fish that are not spiritual. A psychic koi like Xiaoyu, and a very rare colorful koi, is something that can only be encountered but not sought. Going one step further, it may be a lucky beast that can affect the destiny of the country. In addition, the top priority is to develop her hobby of walking. Yu Qian is responsible for this and takes the little girl out for a walk every day. Just walk the fish. This is what old people like to do the most. Especially when you can pick up money when you go out. Moreover, the transportation of koi can not only help people pick up money. When Li Chu arrived at the Lu family ghost house, he found that the experience points of the ghosts transformed tonight were extremely high. He just broke through level 72 last night. And by the end of tonight, he was already close to level 73. He couldn't help but sigh in his heart. It's great to have Koi. Bone Mountain and Corpse Cave. Two Sima faces. Two deep voices. I organized a group of elites to resist tonight. The outcome is no different. They are all killed instantly with one sword. I suspect that the little Talus priest may not have noticed that their strength is different from before. If this continues, within two months, my king's people will be killed by him. Can you avoid the limelight first and let the ghosts in the spiritual world come out first? After the spiritual world loses the support of my king's power, the ghosts in it will die if they cannot be replenished with in energy for a long time. What should we do? We can only speed up the process of breaking the seal. As long as my king returns to the world, all enemies will pay with their blood. Chapter 29 You can't spend the copper coins that buy your life. The gentle mountain breeze stirs the clothes. Under the grass among the flowers, the fluttering butterflies are like a girl's skirt. Lively and jumping. Outside to Yun observation, three little horses were lined up in a row. Yu Qian led Li Chu and Xiao Yu are in the same posture with their left hand holding their chin. And they looked inside in a daze. I felt happy on the first day, fulfilling on the second day, and a little bored on the third day. Only Xiao Yu remained cheerful, asking from time to time what this one did and what that one did. Of course, it was probably the question she asked yesterday. Sometimes she remembers that she asked this question yesterday, but she still has to ask it again, because she couldn't remember what the answer was. The days in the Taoist temple are like this, like idle white clouds outside the mountains, passing leisurely. The arrival of Lee Sini broke the calm. Her dress today is very eye-catching. The dress is rose red, and her left shoulder is splayed. The entire white and round shoulder and half of the deep collarbone are exposed. Her chest is straight, and her tight waist allows her proud curves to be seen at a glance. A pair of long snow-white legs were faintly visible at the slit of the skirt. Her long hair was still tied up high, and her beautiful eyes were shining, locking onto Li Chu's lazy figure from a distance. As she approached, all the workers laying bricks in the front yard became distracted. But they were not scolded because the foreman was also dumbfounded. When they got closer, Li Sini saw Xiao Yu sitting next to Li Chu. The girl's delicate face and clear eyes made her eyes suddenly appear nervous as if facing a powerful enemy. Wait for her eyes to fall on the girl's chest again. The tension was immediately relieved by seven points. Since ancient times, heroes have loved the mountains. But it is unheard of for a horse to ride on the plains. Taoist priest you. Taoist priest Xiao Li. Li Sini greeted. Li Chu watched Li Sini walking forward with his head held high and took a special look there. Um, sure enough, there is a mole. This frank and undisguised gaze naturally fell in Li Sini's eyes. She smiled. Ha, huh? man. After some mental activities that both parties were unaware of, she clarified the main topic of her visit today. In short, the wraith case is not over yet. I came to see you the day before yesterday. You were not there at the time. And something had already happened by then. The incident happened on the second day after the exorcism in Xiaoyu village. Before Lei Sini left for Hangzhou, two detectives were buying sesame cakes together on their way to the squad room in the morning. Unexpectedly, one of the detectives suddenly died suddenly as soon as he turned around after taking the sesame cakes. He died without warning. At that time, he frightened the other police officer out of his wits. He called the police officer for a long time before he remembered that he was a police officer. After the body was carried to the yamen for inspection, the widower once doubted his life. Because there is nothing wrong with this body. The agent is usually in good health. Has no disease. No poisoning. No trauma. 
and no even mood swings. What a great living person. Just died out of thin air. It seems that it can only be explained by a mystery. Just when Chow Tai Fook was at a loss, something caught his attention. The hawker selling sesame seed cakes handed over all the money the police paid to buy the sesame seed cakes to the yamen, saying that he did not dare to accept it because it was money from a dead person. It's just a few copper coins. It's not a big deal. Usually Chow Tai Fook wouldn't care, but he had no clue at that time. So he just stared at the copper coins in a daze. After staring at it, he suddenly realized something was wrong. Normally, copper coins are written with Balua Tombao. But one of these coins is written with Insi Tombao, which is unprecedented. He immediately handed the case over to Lee Sini. Lee Sini reported it to Chow Tian K. And the news he got was that the Insi Tombao was the copper coin of the ghost country. The kingdom of ghosts on earth is said to be a kingdom established by countless ghosts remaining in the world of the sun. It is illusory but actually exists. It has been passed down since the ancient times to this day. And every time it appears in this world, it will bring great disasters. The matter is serious. Chow Tai Fook went to find out where the detective got the ghost country copper coins. He didn't know if he didn't find out. But he was shocked when he found out. It turns out that this copper coin is related to the previous two cases of resentful spirits. On the day of the Xyalukan massacre, the dead policeman went to collect the body, and it was he who found the little girl's body at the foot of the mountain. This copper coin was held in the little girl's hand at that time. When collecting the corpse, the copper coin fell on the ground, and he picked it up without looking carefully. At that time, another colleague also said to him that taking advantage of dead people might lead to retribution. But he was greedy for petty gains, and he even said with a smile, that this would be regarded as his reward for helping her collect the body. Later, he casually took the copper coin and went out to buy sesame cakes. As soon as the money was spent, he died. Chow Tai Fook has also been a head catcher for many years, so he still has the sense of smell he should have. He immediately went to check the body of the Shue family's eldest wife. After the eldest lady committed suicide that day, the Shue family took care of her body. Zhou Dafu led people to pry open the eldest lady's coffin and found that she indeed had a copper coin in her mouth. It is. In Si Tong Bao. Connecting back and forth. The hidden thread in the darkness finally surfaced. Why do mysterious cases occur frequently in Yuhang Town, and rare ghosts appear one after another? There is a powerful ghost behind it. Although the case has not yet come to light. This has completely proven his innocence. He did not do anything wrong or falsely report any conspiracy. It's not that I lied. I was targeted. Do you understand? Chow Tai Fook was elated. After that, it was Lee Sini who was worried. She asked her master again and confirmed that the copper coin was a method used by ghosts, which was called life buying money. This is an extremely vicious trick that specializes in beguiling people with grievances. Use the money to buy people's lives, and the people will turn into resentful spirits after death. As for the death of the policeman, it was indeed an unreasonable disaster. He spent other people's money to buy his own life and gave away his own life. Fortunately, he didn't have any resentment in his heart. So he didn't turn into a resentful spirit. She realized that there was indeed the big case she was looking forward to. If it could be solved, it would definitely be a great achievement. But at the same time, she was also worried about whether her ability was enough to solve this mystery. After all, the last time she dealt with a resentful spirit, she almost capsized. That's why she came to Li Chu for help the day before yesterday. But it was all in vain at that time. So she had to find a way on her own. After sorting through the previous cases of resentful spirits, she found that the ghosts behind them should have the ability to feel resentment. Whenever there is strong resentment, it will go over to bewitch and make people sacrifice their lives for it in exchange for the opportunity to turn into a resentful spirit and take revenge on the person. Before the evil spirit appears, someone must die first. So she asked Chow Tai Fook and a group of police officers to keep an eye on them day and night. Once someone disappeared or died in Yuhang County, they must report it as soon as possible. Sure enough, within two days, new news of death came. When she was telling this, the men, women and children of the young wing gathered around, as if listening to the story. After listening to what she said, Xiao Yu shrank her shoulders in fear and whispered, So will you die if you pick up other people's money? Yu Qian quickly patted the little girl's shoulder and said comfortingly, Don't be afraid of you. We only pick up flowers, but don't spin them. I promise it will be fine. If Xiao Yu doesn't dare to go out to pick up money after hearing this, it will be a big loss. 
She is now a key figure in the revitalization of Diyun Temple. Li Sinid looked at the handsome profile of the little Taoist priest. Can you come and help me? Li Chu had been a little bored these past few days. So he didn't think much and nodded directly. Okay. A smile suddenly appeared on the woman's face. Just like a flower blooming. She took the initiative to mention. The bounty will be the same as before. If we can find out the real culprit behind the scenes, we can increase it. Li Chu nodded calmly. With Xiao Yu as a stable source of income, he really doesn't have to worry too much about the unstable bounty from the Yaman. Making money is a lot of trouble. But it's not as easy as picking it up. He agreed to help this time. Partly out of a righteous heart that wanted to maintain the peace of Yuhang Town. Well, at least a little half. Okay, let's go see the dead now. Li Sinni quickly stood up. Where to go? Li Chu asked. Li Sinni said. The building is full of spring. Chapter 30 The Good Girls in the Brothel Chum and Lung is the only brothel in Yuhang Town. Originally, even if there were prostitutes in Yuhang Town, they were just wandering prostitutes and could not get on the stage. Since Chunminlu opened its doors, it has quickly become a gathering place for local, literati, with its beautiful environment and first-class services. This is the gentle hometown of men in Yuhang Town. And it is also a thorn in the side of women in Yuhang Town. Whenever it gets late, why does every household have to keep an eye on their husbands? Lest anyone makes excuses to go shopping on the street where Chum An Tower is located. Most people don't have the opportunity to visit. But it's great to wander around and see those half-dressed, good girls, leaning on doors and railings to show off their coquettishness. Sometimes you might even catch a flirtatious look, which is also great. The senior scholar Wang Long Chiwang once said that Chum Minlun is not inferior to those brothels and Chiwan in Hangzhou. What he is comparing here is naturally the most critical part of the brothel. The good girls. A large brothel must have all-round talents. Young girls who are new to the world. And charming ladies who have been through battles for a long time who meet the various demands of customers, can only be regarded as good girls from the bottom. On top of this, there must be a skilled waiter who can do it. The requirements for a prostitute are not just good looks. In order to be famous, one must have the ability to impress others. If you want someone to treat her like a treasure, you must have both sex and art. In Chunminlu, there are several such prostitutes. The person who died last night was one of them. The deceased's name was Ron Hongmei, and her stage name was Mei Xiang. She was a waiter in Chunminlu. Standing outside the elegant pavilion, Li Sinni introduced. She pouted her lips and reminded, We'll go in later. So don't look around. Yeah. Li Chu nodded. Literati have always liked to gather at night. During the day, the Chunminlu has few doors and courtyards. Few pedestrians. And no one could come in or out of the two open small doors. It was quiet inside. With a lazy air of powder. Occasionally, one or two disheveled women would open the window, stretch, yawn, get some air, and then close it again. But today, the closed window immediately opened again. The sleepy good girl rubbed her eyes and immediately turned around and screamed, Sisters, Li Sinni still made a mistake. When Li Chu entered a brothel, it was not a question of whether to look around, but a question of being looked at. Even if the women nearby see the handsome man and feel admiration for him, they can only look at him coyly and coquettishly. The girls in the brothel didn't care about this. In the blink of an eye, a large group of warblers and swallows surrounded Li Chu, chattering and almost touching her. This made Li Sinni very angry. Li Chu blinked. He also lacked experience in dealing with this situation. So he could only use a cold expression to signal strangers to stay away. Fortunately, there was Li Sinni, who had a bright eyebrow and a sharp look at his side, who helped him ward off the crowd. What are you doing? What are you doing? You look like you have never seen the world. A lazy voice came from behind the crowd. All the good girls immediately restrained their behavior and stepped back. It seemed that the person coming was quite dignified. Lee Sinni breathed a sigh of relief and looked in the direction where the crowd separated. Here is Chun Sanyang. The boss of Chun Minlu. It is said that Chun Sanyang was a popular person in Shenluo City back then. Later, after saving enough money, she redeemed herself and came to Yuhang Town to open Chun Man Tower. Shalua City is the second largest city in the Hollywood dynasty, and it does not have the majesty of an imperial capital like Chaoga. The entertainment industry is extremely developed, and it has always been known as the flower capital. It can be said that it is boundless. The annual Huada Conference is the largest event in the Hollywood dynasty. Chan Sanyang is worthy of being born in Shenluo City. She is a good girl who has been trained to be extremely professional. 
so she can make a name for herself as Chun Man Lu in a short period of time. She was wearing ordinary home clothes. A white silk shirt with a double breast. A plain lining and trousers. The clothes were not eye-catching. But she couldn't hide her plump figure. It can be said that her breasts are like peaks. Her butt is as full as the moon. And her waist is like a willow that has not put on weight even after being a boss for several years. She is tall and has a swaying movement when she walks. Giving her a natural charm. In comparison, the nice girls around me suddenly looked tacky. She had met Lee City in the morning. And she smiled like a crescent moon. Masterly! Haven't the Yaman already come to check and confirm that Mei Xiang committed suicide? The body has also been restrained. Why is it here again? Oh, we have brought such a handsome little Taoist priest with us. Are we going to give him salvation to Mei Xiang? Li Sini looked at her vaguely coquettish demeanor and looked at her unkindly. He said with a straight face, It is certain that Miss Mei Xiang committed suicide. We came here because of other things. This is Taoist priestly from Diyun Temple. This is me. Please show some respect to those who are specially invited to exorcise evil spirits. Oh, what else? Take us to Miss Mei Xiang's room. And I will talk to you in detail. How do you behave with so many people around? Li Sini glanced around and frowned. Compared with those good girls. She was dressed like a lady today. Okay. Come with me. Chan Sanyang agreed. Turn around and waved her hand. Let's go. Let's go. Look at each of you. As if you have never seen a man since you were born. I have never seen such a handsome man. A good girl muttered in a low voice. I'll send you to the young one to become a monk tomorrow. Chan Sanyang glanced at her. And while scolding her, she raised her hand and slapped her plump buttocks hard. The two of them followed her upstairs. After taking two steps, Li Chuji said seriously, We won't accept anyone now. Chan Sanyang glanced at him, narrowed her eyes and smiled. The little Taoist priest is really interesting. Li Sini looked at her smiling face and then at her chest, like facing a powerful enemy. The second floor is the room for the hostesses. Each bedroom is much larger than the ones downstairs, and each has a hall. Each hall has an elegant name. As soon as I went upstairs, I heard a pleasant sound of the piano. It was not loud, like trickling water, but it penetrated deeply into people's hearts and made people feel peaceful unconsciously. After passing the vestibule, they saw the piano player on the terrace in the center of the attic. This is a woman dressed in lotus-colored gauze. Behind eight screens, only a graceful shadow is revealed. Behind you are the flowing clouds and the distant sky, and in front of you is a Yao Qin. The picture is quite artistic. Li Chu suddenly stopped here and paused for a moment. He felt that this woman looked a little different, but he couldn't tell what the difference was. If you look closely, you will see that her face is covered with an extra layer of veil, making it difficult for people to see her face clearly. Chan Sanyang smiled again and said, This is Miss Bai Luo, our new prostitute here. But Miss Bai Luo only sells her art and not her body. Let alone her body. She doesn't even want to show her face. Oh! Li Chu agreed and wanted to continue walking. Suddenly the sound of the piano stopped. And the girl by Luo put away her green fingers and asked, Does the little Taoist want to see my face? Her voice is soft. Soft and pleasant. That won't work. Chan Sanyang shook her head first. You said at the beginning that whoever saw your face was the one you were going to marry. Miss by Luo stood up. Her clothes fluttering in the wind in the courtyard. And said with a smile, If the Taoist priest is interested, then there is no harm in showing him. The implication is that it is somewhat worth pondering. Immediately, Li Chu said seriously again. No need. Li Sini suddenly smiled and pulled him away. Only Miss Bai Luo was left alone and messy in the wind. The interior of Chun Man building is huge. So I walked quite a distance before arriving at Mei Xiang's bedroom. As one of the hostesses, Mei Xiang's bedroom is also spacious and elegant. With a hall and an inner and outer room. The maid serving Mei Xiang was also called over. The little maid was only 12 or 13 years old this year, although she had been scared for a while. She still cried awkwardly when asked. I slept in the outer room last night, and the girl slept in the inner room. She was fine before going to bed. Who knows? Who knows why she hanged herself quietly? Chun Sanyang stroked the little girl's shoulder, patted her, looked at Li Sini again, and said angrily, I've already asked this question this morning. Why do I have to recruit this child again? Because Mei Xiang died in a strange way. Li Sini replied calmly. When she committed suicide, she held a copper coin in her hand. Right. Yes. The copper coins were also collected by the policemen of the Yaman. 
The maid replied. Li said he was silent for a moment, and then said, We can conclude that Mei Xian will turn into a resentful spirit after death. Ah? Chun Sanyang was shocked. She was well informed and knew what the resentful spirits were. After being shocked for a while, she shook her head and said, That's not right. Mei Xiang has never suffered any grievances on weekdays. Even if she has something that doesn't go her way, how can she be so resentful? This is what I want to ask you. Li Sunny said, Who has Mei Xiang had grudges with in daily life? And who is the person she most wants to take revenge on? This is the crux of the matter. Even though Mei Xiang died in Chunminlu, but wherever her resentment gathers, her resentful spirit will always go there. If you want to prevent her from harming others, you must first find out where her resentment lies. She stared at the little maid and asked. The little maid was so frightened by her that she shook her head and couldn't say anything. Chun San Yan hugged the little maid and replied. The girls in our building only come into contact with so many people. Mei Xiang is usually proud and arrogant. And her relationship with the few prostitutes in the building is not very good. But when it comes to becoming even ghosts want revenge. Which is really out of the question. Li Sunny thought for a while. Then changed the question. Did Mei Xiang complain to you about anything? Did she scold anyone before she committed suicide last night? You have been by her side. So you should have heard it. The little maid sobbed twice. Thought for a while. And said, Girl, last night, she did scold a man for being a wolf-hearted, unkind, unjust, and not caring about old friendships. Who? It's the seventh young master of the Wong family. Chapter 31 Of course, I choose to forgive her. Do you think I am having a bad time? I bump into ghosts when I go out. Ghosts are different. Now I'm fine. I don't go out at home. And I can still get into trouble like this. Wang Longchi looked at Li Chu and Li Sini with a grimace. Feeling sad and angry. Li Chu thought about it and thought it would be pretty good if a resentful spirit came to his home. It is very convenient to defeat monsters and upgrade. But then I thought about it. I had to take advantage of the opportunity before being infected with this kind of resentful spirit. So let's forget it. This is too much trouble. But that's right. There are no good things in the world that come without hard work. If Wang Lingqi could see what he was thinking, he would definitely be impressed by his godlike logic of cause and effect. Li Chu was indifferently lost in thought. While Li Sini curled his lips at Wang Lingqi. Oomph. If you hadn't been ruthless and unrighteous, and always gave up, how could you have ended up like this? From Chao Yan Kei's standpoint, she must of course protect Wang Lingqi's life and prevent people from being harmed by resentful spirits. But from a woman's standpoint, she despised Wang Longqi's shameless behavior. Conscience of heaven and earth. I don't know why Mei Xiang has resentment towards me. It's not me who started the chaos and gave up in the end. Wang Long swore with his seven halberds. Li Chu, you remember what I told you two days ago? Chun Man, there is a red shopkeeper and an old madam in the building who say bad things about me behind my back. And that person is Mei Xiang. Li Chu nodded. Alas, Wang Longchi sighed again. I remember when she and I spent time together. We were in love for a long time. And we were engaged for life. But who would have thought that after I was deceived by the female ghost? Not only did she not care about me. I deliberately avoided her and mocked me behind my back. It was only from then on that I saw her true face and completely distanced myself from her. She is a person who uses you in front of others and doesn't use you in front of you. Yesterday morning, she suddenly called the little maid to ask me to go to Chunminlu for a talk. Maybe she was short of money again. After all, we are too. Speaking of this, he suddenly glanced at Li Sini. The coyote ink cultivator still had dignity. So he retracted some vulgar words and pondered for a while. After all, we have been Guan Bao's friends for many years. She is ruthless. But I am righteous. But just what I was about to agree. I suddenly remember Zhao Liang Kai. Once he knew that I had gone to Chumla during this period, he would definitely go to Miss Gonson. I was arranged in front of me. So I said we would make an appointment another day and ask the little maid to take back a hundred tails of silver and give it to her. You can say that I was benevolent and righteous in treating her like this. She was still complaining about me before she died and even turned into a ghost to seek revenge on me. It is really unjustifiable. After listening to what he said, Li Chu thought for a while and said, then if she comes to see you at night, you can try to explain it to her. Maybe it can purify her resentment. In his opinion, since the eldest lady could dissipate her resentment because of a face she didn't know before, then maybe it's not that difficult to purify her resentment. Forget it. Wang Longchi shrank his neck. You should give her a happy life. 
I will go to her grave and explain slowly in the future. We can't relax at Chun Man building either. Lee he said. From what you said, it seems that Miss Mei Xiang's resentment towards you is not that strong. So maybe her resentful spirit will still appear in Chun Man building. Yeah. Li Chu agreed with her statement. Li he said. How about we divide our troops into two groups? One of us stays here to protect him. And the other stays at Chun Manla? Li Chu pondered for a moment, slightly feeling that something was wrong. The last time Li Sini dealt with a resentful spirit, there was an accident before he could decide whether to object. Wang Lumchi shouted first. Okay, then let Li Chu stay with me. The tone emphasized an urgent tone. Li Sini raised his eyebrows. What do you mean? Wang Lumchi blinked and said weakly. What do you mean? You are so eager to ask Mr. Li to stay because you think he is better than me? Li Sini asked. Of course. That's what I think. Wang Lumchi said confidently in his heart. Loud thief. But just think about this dangerous statement in your mind. And of course, he won't say it foolishly. He smiled politely and said, No, if you want to protect me, you will inevitably have to stay in the same room late at night. We are alone, and the impact will definitely be bad. My father has taught me since I was a child that honor and integrity are more important than Mount Tai. Li Sini nodded with satisfaction. Of course she knew it in her heart. Li Chu is indeed stronger than himself. But how can outsiders know about this? If word spreads that I, the purple guard of Chao Yan Palace, rely on outsiders to handle cases. How can I become famous? She peeked at Li Chu. Li Chu was still thinking about something, looking unconcerned. Li Sidi smiled slightly. The little Taoist priest's character who doesn't care about fame is really great. Love it. Love it. At this time, Li Chu raised his eyes and said to Wang Longqi, Why don't we go to Chunmanlu together? Ah? Huh? Wang Longqi was startled. And then a strange smile appeared on his face. Why don't we get together? Is Miss Li still here? Or are you not even avoiding this between you? Li Sini scolded. What are you thinking? She immediately understood what Li Chu meant. Chun Manlu is dead. But Wang Longqi is alive. Bring him back to Chun Manlu. No matter who the resentful spirit's grievance is on. He can only come here. Once the resentful spirit appears, things will be simple. When Wang Longqi went to Chun Manlu, it was like going home. He entered the gate and arrived at Mei Xiang's room in a familiar way. He leaned back on the bamboo chair as usual and said leisurely, Red branches. Serve tea. Hongji is the name of the little maid. After calling out and getting no reply, he finally realized that this was no longer the same as when he came here before. Alas! He sighed again, sighing affectionately. Why does Mei Xiang suffer so much? Li Sin he said quietly from the side. She hung herself by stepping on this chair. Hey, Wang Longji quickly stood up and changed his seat. After a while, Chan San Yang came again with a little maid Hongji. When Chan San Yang saw Wang Longji, she rolled her eyes at him. Mei Xiang was also the girl she had brought up since she was a child. So she definitely had feelings for him. When I met Wang Longji at this time, I was inevitably angry. Wang Longji hurriedly apologized and said, San Yang, please don't look coldly at me. I am already sad enough when Mei Xiang passes away. Hey, Master Wang Chi still has a heart? Why didn't he see you serving snacks when that person was alive? Now that he's been forced to death, he's just pretending to be here. Chun San Yang folded her arms. Her expressions of mild anger and amorous feelings were rippling. Wang Longji spread his hands and greeted the little maid. Come on, Hongji. Tell San Yang carefully. Did I give you a hundred tails of silver yesterday to give to the girl? I didn't say anything harsh. Just say see you another day. Don't rush it. Right. After that, he told Mei Xiang about bad things about him behind her back, explaining why he alienated her and how magnanimous he was. Wrong. After hearing this, Chun Sun Yang's face changed. Which old madam is arranging people behind her back? I have to teach her a lesson when I go back. But Master Wang Chi, you got her pregnant, and you just want to get away with a hundred tails of silver. Isn't that too disrespectful of a bitch? I don't know about this, but I still call you benevolent and righteous. You know, I just think you are humiliating our girl. Aw? Wang Longchi's expression suddenly changed after hearing this. Mei Xiang is pregnant? Li Sin he said. The Yaman autopsy revealed that Miss Mei Xiang is indeed two months pregnant. Two months? Wang Longchi was shocked again. I only found out about this this morning. The girls in our building have always used their own methods to ensure safe entry and exit. And will never get pregnant easily. Chun Sanyang said. 
I think Mei Xian also wants to redeem herself. Only then will she find a way to get close to you and borrow money to get into a rich family. She didn't dare to let me know about this. If I knew, I would have to stop her. This silly girl. How can a man have a conscience? Li Chu glanced at her silently. She hurriedly added, Taoist priest Xiao Li is so handsome. Of course, it's a different matter. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. Wang Lungchi shook his head repeatedly. Chun Sanyang said, She has only been in love with you. How can she be someone else's? I haven't seen her since half a year ago, let alone sneaking in every opportunity. It's absolutely impossible. Wang Longchi flatly denied it. Chan Sanyang frowned, and then suddenly looked at the little maid Hongji. The little maid was trembling all over. Mei Xiang is still hooking up with others? Chan Sanyang asked. The management of the hostesses in Chunminlo is very strict. Of course, a good ordinary girl can welcome visitors from all directions with a smile. If a hostess does this, it is tantamount to lowering one's status. Therefore, Chan Sanyang made a rule that after the bridegroom is combed, there can only be one guest entering the ceremony for a period of time. If you want to change to the next one, you have to break up with the previous one. Violations will result in heavy fines. It is precisely this kind of rules that attracts the admiration of all the red betters in Chunminlu. Because literati know that as long as they catch up with this girl, they will be her only one, even if it is temporary. This mentality is completely different. The little maid hesitated and said, Actually, the girl has always been in love with Master Wang alone. The child is indeed not Master Wang's. Chun Sanyang asked, Who is the other person? Yes, the little maid said. That man is young Master Zhao Liangkai of the Zhao family. It's him. Wang Longchi suddenly felt as if he was struck by lightning and collapsed on his chair. This feeling is similar to his wife stealing someone behind his back. And the person who stole, it was his lifelong enemy. No wonder Mei Xiang dared to ignore her, because she had already climbed onto another high tree. Li Chu cast a look at him. Be strong. Chan San Yang looked at Wang Longchi with a complicated expression. Master Wang, it turned out that I wrongly blamed you just now. I apologize to you. In addition, I have never known about Mei Xiang. Now, now that everyone is dead, I still care about what to do. Wang Longchi smiled bitterly. Of course I choose to forgive her. Chapter 32 Rescue Today is definitely a dark day for the entire literati in Yuhang Town. Because just in the evening, when everyone came to Chunminla in small groups or secretly, they saw that the door here was closed, and a high no war sign was hung outside the door. All the literati could not help but lament. Spring fills the building. At this time in the past, it was a time of feasting, singing and dancing. But today it was quiet. The good girls in the building were gathered into several rooms on the second floor, so they could be protected. Everyone gathered together, and whispers broke out one after another. Although Mei Xiang has a bad temper and doesn't have many friends on weekdays, she will inevitably feel sad when she thinks that a person she saw alive yesterday may suddenly turn into a ghost and come back today. In Mei Xiang's bedroom, Zhao Liankai pursed his lips and sighed. Mei Xiang did say that she was pregnant with my child. But how could a brothel girl get pregnant easily? She clearly plotted against me. If it had been before, I would have married her as a concubine. It's nothing. But if I take her in now and let Miss Gonsan know about it, what will I think? So yesterday morning, she sent someone to invite me to meet at Chunminlu. So I turned her down. I gave her a thousand tails of silver to let her take care of herself. Isn't it heartless? This child is enough for her whether she wants it or not. Have a good life for a while. Who knew she was so resentful? He hesitated and felt a little aggrieved in his words. As he said that, he looked at Li Chu earnestly. Chao Tao is masterly. You must save me. You have great magical powers. And it is absolutely no problem to conquer the evil spirits. Maybe a few days ago, he had no impression of Li Chu. But after experiencing the Lu family ghost house, his impression was too deep. Take my cousin as an example. After returning from the Lu family ghost house, Zhao Yanchen hid in his room and cried all night, talking in his sleep about things like handsome and capable of fighting. The next morning, I went back to Hangzhou with red eyes, saying that I would never go down the mountain again unless I entered the state of trance. It can be seen how strong the psychological shadow Li Chu brought to him. Wang Longchi said, Since you feel wronged, why not wait until Mei Xiang comes back and explain it to her? Maybe it can purify her resentment. Go away. Zhao Liangkai glared at him. Stop talking sarcastically. 
Is this an idea that anyone can come up with? Wang Longchi chuckled evilly. Li Chu touched his nose and felt offended. Think about it. Casualties are easy to occur during the process of exorcism. And occasional accidents are inevitable. Right? For example, some rich second generations who speak out loud. Zhao Liangkai didn't know whether he felt Li Chu's gaze or something. He turned his head and gave Li Chu a licking smile. Miss Li is in the corner, standing like a minion. She squinted her eyes and looked at the people in the room for a while. Then pulled Li Chu aside and said quietly, I will do the exorcism this time. So don't move yet. These words were similar to what she warned Li Chu last time. But the meaning was completely different. Last time, she was afraid that Li Chu would make a rash move and cause trouble for her. This time, she was afraid that Li Chu would strike too quickly and would have no chance to show off. Looking at the faces of Zhao Liangkai and Wang Longqi, Li Xinyi felt unhappy. Why are they smiling like a dog when they are facing Li Chu? And they are smiling perfunctorily when facing themselves. It's like I'm just a useless face. He must revive the prestige of Chao Tian K. Li Chu glanced at her, then nodded and agreed. He has always been an elegant and easygoing person. The night was getting darker, and it was soon midnight. Zhao Liangkai was uneasy and frightened. He wanted to say something, but no one listened. So he had to sit by the wall and tremble alone. Wan Longchi fell asleep peacefully. Ever since he found out that the child was Zhao Liangtsai's, he felt much more relieved. Although I felt a little uncomfortable when I heard the news at first. But thinking about it carefully, now it is actually a good thing. Because in this way, Mei Xiang's resentment will most likely not be on her. I'm so clean. So he slept peacefully. He even snored. Li Chu was sitting cross-legged, closing his eyes and concentrating. Got windy. His clear eyes suddenly opened. Yin Chi is coming. After seeing more ghosts, he became more and more sensitive to the magnitude of Yin Chi. He noticed that something wasn't right with the Yin energy that came. The Yin Chi of a normal wraith is about the strength of 200 lantern monsters. And this Yin Chi is about as strong as 443 lantern monsters. A little stronger. But I remember the confident and determined look in Li Xinyi's eyes when he told her not to move yet. She should be determined to win. Anyway, it is only slightly stronger than ordinary resentful spirits. And there should be no difference to the orthodox cultivators of Chao Tian K. Thinking like this, he closed his eyes safely again. Snapped. The lights in the entire Chun Man building were extinguished in an instant. Suddenly there was a sound of panic. And there were screams. The panic spread quickly like a camp bombing. Don't panic! The adults from Chao Tian K are here! Let's stay where we are! Chun Sun Yang said loudly, quickly stabilizing the situation. The cold wind blew in from the terrace and windows. And the windows were pushed open one by one. The wind was bone chilling. I'll go out and take a look. Lee Sinny pushed the door open and walked out. Everyone was placed in several nearby rooms. She came to the corridor and could observe the situation in several rooms at the same time. Immediately, she saw a piece of liquid flowing over the corridor. Bright red color. Sticky texture. Is blood. She frowned, feeling that things were not simple. Sure enough, following the large flow of blood, a small shadow crawled over. Like a baby, but smaller. Baby spirit? Li Sinny's heart exploded. How could there be such a thing? But she soon realized that Mei Xiang committed suicide while pregnant. Mother is not the only one who has turned into a resentful spirit. Oh no! The infant spirit's body was bright red. Its wrinkled face. And its two small eyes were still white. When it saw Li Sinny, it suddenly grinned seductively. Giggle. Puff. As it laughed strangely, a large flow of blood swept forward at an extremely fast speed. Li Sinny was now in the middle of the corridor, unable to escape. So he raised his hand and made a talisman. Bang! A broad golden shadow appeared out of thin air, intercepting the first wave of Blood River impact. But with a chirping sound, the talisman also lost its spirituality, tore apart automatically, and fluttered down. The blood of infant spirits is a very strange existence that can contaminate magical instruments and talismans. This is also a major reason why many cultivators are unwilling to encounter infant spirits. But Li Sinny had no choice. She could only summon the flying sword. With a whoosh, the famous sword, Xiao Yi Begonia, was grasped in her hand. She made some moves with the jade fingers of her left hand, swung the sword with her right hand and shouted, Little Plum Blossom Sword Chi. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. An invisible sword energy separated from the sword body and transformed into dozens of people in an instant. Like arrows flying all over the sky. 
the little infant spirit was suddenly filled with arrows. Puff, puff. Ah. A burst of sword energy fell on him like raindrops. And the infant spirit let out a wail and rolled all over the ground. But as the sword energy comes to the body and blood light bursts out, as soon as those blood drops leave its body, they will turn into a thicker blood flow and merge into the blood river. Lee Sinny gritted his teeth. This is another troublesome thing about the baby spirit. As long as the damage you do to it doesn't kill it, its blood river will become more powerful. And its attack on you will also be exponentially stronger. In short, this is a ghost whose attack power is stronger the lower its HP. Sure enough, the river of blood this time was even more turbulent. Lee Sinny felt distressed and made a sword flower dance with a long sword in his palm. And the transformed sword light instantly formed around shield, blocking another impact of the blood river. But her body was shaken back a few steps by the blow. And the light of the flying sword also dimmed. If she encountered such a ghost in the wild, her choice would definitely be to turn around and run away. With every additional round she fought, her magic weapon would be more contaminated. But there were so many people in the rooms on both sides to protect. And she couldn't do this. So, she resolutely resorted to her last resort. Shao Tao is priestly, she called softly. At this time, Li Chu was asked to come out to help. And there was no longer any psychological burden. If it were an ordinary resentful spirit, of course I could deal with it. But first of all, the rates created by buying life money are stronger than ordinary race. This has been learned before. After that, this is still a unique infant spirit among the resentful spirits. Counting both inside and outside. This infant spirit is now already high in the sky. And may already be close to the strength of a ghost general. So what's wrong with me asking for help? It's not my cup of tea. I'm being targeted. Huh? Li Chu opened the door when he heard the sound. He originally thought that he really didn't need to take action. Li Sini faced him and said one word concisely and calmly. Save! Chapter 33 Wouldn't it be over if I killed him with one sword? When the yingling at the end of the corridor saw Li Chu coming out, he suddenly arched his body, his back high, and became fierce like an angry animal. And his white pupils glowed red. Most of the resentments of ordinary infant spirits are directed at their mothers. But this time, they should only be directed at their fathers. So they are more vicious toward men. Li Chu silently guessed in his heart. Of course, this doesn't matter. Anyway, such pitiful and hateful evil things as infant spirits must not be allowed to survive in the world. Early salvation and early support. Doing all this is for the good of the children. Behind the windows on both sides, there are countless pairs of eyes hidden, secretly glancing at the scene outside. Some of the timid ones were so frightened that they fainted. But there were still many brave ones who saw the ferocity of the ghosts. When Li Sinny came out just now, no one said anything. When Li Chu appeared, a good girl couldn't help but exclaim softly, Come on! Little Taoist Li! As soon as he finished speaking, he heard a loud bang. It seemed that someone slapped her somewhere. For fear that she would provoke the ghost, Li Chu heard it, nodded toward the source of the sound, and said politely, Thank you! After hearing this, the other good girls couldn't bear it any longer, and many of them started shouting together, Come on! Little Taoist Priestly! Taoist Master Shao Li is the best! Little Taoist Priestly! I want to give birth to a monkey for you! Hey! Don't bring any personal items with you! Don't be nervous! Mr. Li! We love you no matter you win or lose! This is a gloomy corridor where all the lights are turned off. The wind howls, and rivers of blood flow. Because of Li Chu's appearance, they suddenly entered a strange and warm atmosphere. Li Chu could only give a general nod. Thank you, girls. Li Sini put his hand on his forehead, with black lines all over his face. Are these people not afraid of death when they see a handsome guy? Or do they really not know how ferocious Yingling is? In order to make Li Chu be more vigilant, she specially reminded, You must be careful. The infant spirit is different from ordinary resentful spirits. Its blood river can contaminate human magic weapons. And every time it is hurt, the power of the infant spirit's blood will be enhanced. You have to be careful of its strength suddenly becoming stronger. Li Chu looked at her, as if he wanted to say something. But before he could speak, the yingling opposite could no longer bear it. The sudden noise around him made him feel as if he was being despised. I am abandoned, disgusted, and afraid of this world. I have been deprived of the right to be born. Now you don't even want to look at me. Ah, from now on, I want the world to feel pain. The infant spirit's resentment reached its peak in an instant. And with extreme anger, it rushed over like a wild beast pouncing on its prey. 
Rampage! Accompanied by it, there is a vortex of blood river that can't be seen to the edge. Usually, when faced with the rampage of a resentful spirit, even cultivators who are stronger than it can only retreat and dare not attack it directly. In an instant, there was only blood in everyone's sight. There was a sudden silence in the field, and after a moment, there were continuous screams. They were worried about Li Chu's safety, and they were also worried about their own safety. The evil spirit of this infant spirit is so strong that once Li Chu fails to exorcise the evil spirit, no one here will be able to escape. But there was only enough time for the cry to come out. Then it was like something had blocked my mouth and I couldn't scream anymore. They didn't know what happened. They only saw an even more dazzling silver light, filling the entire world they saw. Light up the mountains and rivers. Li Sini stood behind the little Taoist priest and saw his movements clearly. Simply draw your sword and swing it. The sword rises. The sword falls. It's no different from last time. It seemed like it was just chopped out casually, compared with the terrifying whirlpool of the blood river in front of him. His movements were as careless as waving away the flies around him. But this sword happened to have thousands of sword lights. The river of blood came back fiercely, and in front of the sword light, it turned into a chicken and a dog, and was swallowed up and eliminated in an instant. Like hot soup pouring snow. It melted unreasonably. In the white light, the young black shadow survived for an extra moment. But it was only for a moment. After that, he was also annihilated in the sword light. It is complete annihilation. It's resentment. It's ferocity. It's unwillingness. It's anger. All turned into ashes. The sword light also disappeared in an instant. And then everything returned to calm. As if a heavy white snow had fallen. In the blink of an eye, the dust settled. Li Chu sheathed his sword calmly. Turned his head again and said what he had not finished. Why do you want it to increase its strength? Wouldn't it be over if you kill it with one sword? He clearly remembered that when playing games in the past, this was the best strategy to deal with those sustained characters that got stronger as they played. Just use a high burst to kill instantly in a short period of time. Speaking of which, since Li Sini knows the characteristics of Yingling, why doesn't he do this? Strangeness. Interesting. Li Sini's brain continued to wander. After hearing this, a smile forced out of his dull face. She could imagine that Li Chu would destroy the Yingling. But she never expected that it would be such an understatement. Yes, since it becomes stronger when it is injured. Why not kill it with one sword? What you said makes sense. He he. If asked by another person, she would definitely say it. Is this a question that people can ask? But, after Li Chu struck out with this sword, Li Sini suddenly felt that what he said was not so abrupt. Maybe he really thinks so? A burst of noise broke out around her, and the good girls around her suddenly cheered when they saw that Li Chu had solved the battle with such a dazzling sword. Especially after drawing the sword, Li Chu's clothes were in tatters, his face was clear, and his whole person exuded an ethereal and refined aura. It's like a god descending to earth, who wouldn't be moved by the thought of such a person protecting him. They were about to pour out, and they would definitely surround Li Chu. Who knows how many people would give him kisses, thinking of that terrible scene. Li Sini immediately cheered up. She shouted, Don't move yet! Stay calm! Miss Mei Xiang's evil spirit hasn't appeared yet! Yes! Calm down! Chun San Yang's voice also sounded, stopping the enthusiasm of all the good girls. Li Chu also felt that he seemed to have escaped some crisis and quickly retreated to the room. In the room, Zhao Liangkai huddled in the corner and asked worriedly, Isn't Mei Xiang the one who came just now? No! Li Sini said, it's the infant spirit she is carrying, which is your child. Ah. Zhao Liangkai was shocked and couldn't speak for a long time. And he didn't know what was going on in his mind. Then everyone waited for Mei Xiang's resentful spirit to appear. The resentful spirit does not have complete spiritual intelligence. And does not have the mentality to run away when the enemy is too strong. So as long as her resentment is here, it will definitely come. We waited until dawn. When the cockrow sounded, Wang Longqi, who had slept all night, opened his eyes, yawned, looked at the people around him, and asked vaguely, Is it successful? In terms of exorcism, he has absolute confidence in Li Chu, Zhao Liangkai said dully, with two big dark circles under his eyes. Bei Xiang didn't come. Huh? Wang Longqi touched his chin in confusion. Does she have other concubines? Impossible. She has already hooked up with you and me. Why does she need to hook up with others? Zhao Liangkai shook his head. But soon, Chao Tai Fook came to the door in a hurry. 
Li Sini had an ominous premonition when he saw the sweat on Chao Dafu's forehead. What's wrong? No. Mr. Li, there is a family in the west of the town where two people died, Zhou Dafu said. Initially, it is inferred that a resentful spirit committed the crime. Chapter 30 for the Rampaging Li Sini. The deceased were a scholar in Yuhang town and his mother. The scholar's surname is Huang. His family used to be a wealthy family. He came here after the decline in his early years. He has been dependent on his mother since he was a child. The death of the mother and son was extremely miserable. They were both disemboweled in their hearts. Livers and lungs were completely taken out. The method was cruel and the energy was strong. So it was believed that the crime was committed by a race spirit. But would such a family have anything to do with Mei Xiang? After visiting, Chao Tai Fook found out that Huang Sheng had always been a filial son and always obeyed his mother's words. But he had a big fight with his mother the day before yesterday. A good neighbor overheard it intentionally or unintentionally. And it seemed that Huang Sheng wanted to marry a girl. But the girl was a brothel girl. And his mother was determined not to allow it. Even at the risk of death. He came to Chun Lu again and called Hongji. The trembling little maid. Hongji recalled it carefully and said that it seemed that Mei Xiang knew a scholar. But she always met the scholar secretly and did not contact him through the maid. So the little maid didn't know much. Mei Xiang only occasionally mentioned something to her, saying that the scholar was handsome, a good person, and worthy of trust. At first, she got along with him as an ordinary girl, but later she confessed that she was a good girl in a brothel, and the scholar did not dislike her at all. After the little maid went to Wang's and Zhao's houses to send invitations, and was rejected the day before yesterday, Mei Xiang went out in person again. When she came back, she looked very bad. Now that I think about it, it may indeed be related to Huang Sheng. It's just that Mei Xiang has never said anything bad about Huang Sheng before. So the little maid didn't think of him. Zhou Dafu touched King Suxu's chin. And he had a clue in his heart. Mei Xiang is also a person. She is in love with the young master of the Wang family on the surface. And she is also hooking up with the young master of the Zhao family secretly. Not only is she hooking up with the two largest young masters in Yuhang town. She also has another honest person there. She is a cunning rabbit with three holes. This is, Chao Tai Fook said. What do you mean by the cunning rabbit's three caves? Zhao Liangkai suddenly asked. You're stupid. Just take it literally. Wang Longchi said angrily. Oh, Zhao Liangkai nodded clearly. Really? In other words, Mei Xiang first went to the Wang family that day and was rejected. Then she went to the Zhao family and was rejected again. Finally, she went to talk to the scholar. Unexpectedly, Wang Sheng's mother firmly disagreed with their marriage. And the outcome was probably not good. Li Sini sorted out. So she felt resentful. At this time, the ghost behind her appeared and tempted her to sell her life and become a resentful spirit to take revenge. But why is her resentment on Huang Sheng? She looked at Wang Longqi and Zhao Liangkai unkindly. Her eyes filled with the meaning of, Why didn't you two losers die? Obviously among these three men, only Huang Sheng is the most innocent. But what Mei Xiang hates the most is him. Wang Longqi and Zhao Liangkai laughed for a while at the same time, and hurriedly said goodbye and left. Thanks to an honest man. They escaped this time. Slipping away. Perhaps she always thought she had many escape options, but she didn't expect that all these men would turn against her, and she would suddenly be cornered. Wang Xing's rejection was the last straw that broke her back. As he said that, Chao Tai Fook sighed again. Oh, we honest people have offended someone. Pooh. Li Sini and Li Chu sighed silently in their hearts at the same time. After arriving at Huang's house, Li Chu suddenly felt a little angry. This is the second time he has felt this way since he came to this world. The Huang family is very poor. The mother and son live in a small corner of Yuhang town, where the poor live. The mother worked hard to raise Huang Sheng. Huang Sheng is also very ambitious, and he is not bad at studying and doing well. Just wait until next year to go to Beijing to take the exam and you may realize your long-cherished wish. It's a pity that he met the beautiful girl Mei Xiang, and he didn't expect to end up like this, with Mei Xiang's talent, appearance and status. Even if she doesn't marry Huang Sheng, she still has many choices. If she had waited for her to calm down, it would never have resulted in such a tragedy. But when she was getting angry, she was targeted by a ghost in the dark. After being bewitched, she completely lost the chance to look back. It seems like a confusing account. But in the final analysis, all the accounts should be settled on those ghosts, who will not be attacked by negative emotions such as resentment and anger several times in their life. 
How terrible would the world be if every grievance led to such a transaction? Li Chu asked. Is there any way to make people feel resentment? His idea is that as long as he can sense resentment, he can know where those ghosts will appear and wait for them. Li Sini thought for a while and said, There is a profound method of reading Qi in the Taoist sect, and you can see all the Qi of heaven and earth. But those are the secrets of Taoist sects such as by Yujing and Qingyong Palace. I am facing the sky. There is no such magical power here. After a moment of silence, she continued. However, after reaching the realm of divine union, cultivators can release their spiritual consciousness and their perception ability will be greatly enhanced. For cultivators with strong spiritual consciousness, it will not be a problem for their spiritual consciousness to cover the entire Yuhang town. In that case, as soon as ghosts appear, they will be noticed. After today's matter is over, I will report to the sect and ask a master to come here to take charge. And we must kill these ghosts. Even though she was on tight guard, a new murder case occurred, which made her quite angry. Yeah. Li Chu nodded gently. Thoughtfully, Li Sini's words gave him a slight sense of crisis. Quite a bit bigger. You have to find a way to improve your perception. My eyesight and ears are good, but I don't have what orthodox practitioners call divine consciousness compared with those cultivators whose spiritual consciousness covers the whole town. Wouldn't I be as blind and deaf now? Correspondingly, demons and ghosts with profound spiritual skills must also have unique powers of perception in order to survive such a struggle. Thinking of myself walking on the road in a daze and being pierced by a flying sword hundreds of miles away, I didn't know what happened before I died. He couldn't help but feel a sense of fear. In the evening, Lee Sidney began to set up the magic circle. This time she furrowed her little eyebrows. And the arrangement was particularly delicate, complex, and cumbersome. Yellow talisman, magical sword, copper beads, silver bullets, jade slips, gold ropes, and red ropes were just dozens of magical materials that Li Chu had never seen before. There are many layers. And there is not a piece of pure land underground within a radius of dozens of feet. When Li Chu asked her with some doubts what she planned to do, two flames burned in her eyes, and she said, Revive the reputation of Chao Tian K. It wasn't until Mei Xiang's resentful spirit appeared that he understood what Li Sini meant. That night, a slim and graceful shadow appeared outside Huang's house. Even though the Huang family's mother and son had been harmed by her, she still only remembered coming here to look for her enemies as she survived on a breath of resentment. She saw Li Chu waiting here. Will you marry me? She asked. The sound is clear and ethereal and quite pleasant to listen to. Provoke her, Li Sini commanded calmly. So Li Chu replied, I don't want to. Why? The long hair of the resentful spirit stood up suddenly, and his clothes began to flutter, and he was full of resentment. Do you think I'm dirty? Li Chu replied, Of course. The clothes around the resentful spirit swayed, and its eyes became scarlet. Li Chu added, Look, she is anxious. The resentful spirit couldn't bear it any longer. Boom. Run away on the spot. But it seems that the one who went berserk was not the resentful spirit, but Li Sini. I saw her fingers flying, and she paused suddenly. Under the body of the resentful spirit, an intricate golden magic circle intertwined with sword energy suddenly lit up. Gorgeous, luxurious and grand. Nine palaces plum blossom sword formation. Li Sini shouted and flashed his fingers. She boom. Dozens. Hundreds. Thousands of countless sharp sword energy suddenly gathered together and shot into one place making a roaring sound. Mei Xiang was instantly wrapped in a plum blossom-shaped golden light, and she didn't know whether she was alive or dead. In fact, according to the power of this formation, 99% of them are already dead. But Li Sini didn't care. She flipped her fingers and shouted again. Copper thunder and silver electric array. Boom. The copper pills and silver bullets she buried underground were all valuable thunder pills and electric beads, which had strong restraint and damage to ghosts. This scene is indescribably gorgeous. Like a huge firework rising into the sky. Li Chu felt that if she was willing to arrange it like this last night, the Yingling doll might not be able to escape. But it's not over yet. Mei Xiang's shadow was completely invisible in the thunder and fire. But Li Sini triggered another formation to whip the corpse. Golden Gate Divine Cable Formation. Immediately, a Golden Gate phantom appeared out of thin air and crashed into the center of the open space. Dozens of thick red chain phantoms were wrapped around it dancing around, looking for the ghost's shadow, trying to pull it into the golden gate. But nothing was pulled. Poor Mei Xiang. 
the resentful spirit, had long been turned into flying ashes, and her ashes were scattered to an unknown place. Bang! After a long time, the dazzling light in this area disappeared. At this time, many nearby people had already walked out and saw the shocking light and shadow in the air. Some even started to kneel down to worship, thinking it was a miracle. Li Chu was also a little shocked. It's indeed a big prestige. Miss Li clapped her hands with satisfaction and looked into the distance happily. Although she was so distressed that she almost burst into tears for such a grand display today, it was worth it as long as enough people saw it. The repeated attempts to exorcise evil spirits in the past were absolutely unacceptable to her, especially last night, in front of so many people in Chunmanlu. He asked Li Chu for help. If word of this spreads, how will I get around in the future? She needs to use a big scene to let everyone see her strength. Thinking of this, she glanced at Li Chu and found that Li Chu was also looking at her. She couldn't help but snicker in her heart. I think Taoist Master Li must have a new understanding of me now. Li Chu secretly thought in his heart that Chao Tian K was worthy of being an immortal sect on earth. Even a rookie disciple under the sect could display such a bluffing magical power. Li Sini turned back shyly, his eyes becoming firm again. Although Taoist Master Xiao Li is very handsome, but from the perspective of a disciple of the immortal sect, he must let the people of Yuhang Town know. The Yun Temple is just for fun. If you really want to exorcise evil spirits, you have to watch me facing the sky. Chapter 35 Mind's Eye Technique, From Beginner to Master The Chan Man Lu incident came to an end, but Li Chu did not feel relaxed. There is still a thick shadow hanging over the small town of Yuhang. When he left Chan Man Lu, Chan San Yang quietly said to him, If Mr. Li doesn't want to work hard in the future, he can come to me. As he spoke, he gave a charming look. Li Chu disagreed with this. Are you kidding me? How can it be possible if you don't want to work hard? This world is so dangerous. And there are ferocious and mysterious ghosts even at the doorstep of my home. If I don't work hard, will I just sit there and wait for death? Chan Sanyan looked at him and felt that what he understood seemed to be slightly different from what she wanted to express. But she didn't know how to explain it. The day after he solved Mei Xiang's resentment, Li Chu came to Zashu's studio again. The old shopkeeper of the miscellaneous study room still looks the same. Dressed as an old scholar, smelling of old papers, taking a nap in the dusty light pillar, seeing Li Chu walk in, the old shopkeeper opened his eyes and asked with a smile, The little Taoist priest is here again. What books are you looking for? I'm still looking for some practice skills. The iron claw shirt last time worked very well. This time I want to see if there is any method that can enhance people's perception, Li Chu said in detail. He was afraid that if he spoke a little vaguely, the old shopkeeper would take him to see something forbidden. Oh, have you mastered the iron claw shirt? The old shopkeeper asked in surprise. He was a little unbelievable that someone could actually master the secrets in this store. Slightly successful, Li Chu said modestly. Little Taoist Master Li is really talented. The old shopkeeper could only say this. Can't talk about it. Perception ability, the old shopkeeper muttered, and walked to the last box of martial arts skills. In fact, he was not very familiar with the contents of this box. He originally bought it just for decoration and as a bookshelf. After all, they are all ordinary goods that are not worth mentioning and are circulating on the market. Anyone who wants to practice martial arts seriously knows that he must at least find a formal sect and find a serious master. How can anyone go to bookstores all day long to look for secondhand exercises? What's more, Li Chu is still a Taoist priest. It can only be described as weird. But weird things are weird things. And you can't help but do it when business comes to your door. The old shopkeeper immersed himself in searching for a while. And finally took out a hard gray yellow book from underneath. It seems that the book is not necessarily younger than him. Mind's eye technique, from beginner to master. Li Chu took it and looked at the cover. Feeling confused. Oh, this book has a great background. The old shopkeeper recalled. It is said that the founder of the mind's eye technique was a senior in the world who was known as the Blind Eye Divine Sword. This senior had amazing cultivation and sword skills. The most surprising thing is that he is blind. How can a blind man have such high attainments in swordsmanship? It's because of his mind's eye that he can sense people's breath. When facing the enemy, he doesn't lose at all. Logically, this level of skill shouldn't be spread so widely. But Senior Gumu Shinjian is so upright and honest. And for the welfare of the whole world, he completely abandons the distinction between sections. This skill has been published countless times and spread all over the world and set great aspirations. 
The senior said that he has a dream, which is to help more people get rid of the shackles of the body. Let all blind men in the world become sword masters. Senior Guma Divine's sword is so noble. Li Chu couldn't help but admire him. A feeling of admiration arose spontaneously. There are red flowers and green willows on the ten-mile slope. Girls in colorful clothes are running and jumping among them. Lively and beautiful. Beside her was another graceful beauty wearing a blue paper umbrella and a flowing cloud dress. Miss Gongsun. Li Chu greeted. The person walking and playing with Xiao Yu on the grass was none other than Gong Sun Ro, whom he hadn't seen for a few days. Little Taoist masterly. Gong Sun Ro also greeted him gently. He lived up to his name, with gentle features and eyes. Uh? Xiao Yu next to her raised her eyes and looked at Li Chu. She paused and seemed to recall something before happily greeting. Master, are you back? Li Chu looked at her and then at the small shoulder bag on her waist, which was intended to hold money for her. Of course, I go out empty-handed every day and come back loaded with money. At this time, the small shoulder bag was already quite large. Li Chu's eyes were filled with kindness. She was as kind as Yu Qian sitting on the threshold watching the two beauties playing. I heard that Diyun Temple has been renovated recently. So I came here to visit and see if there is anything needed. Gong Sun Rose smiled softly and sat down opposite Yu Qian. Yes, Miss Gong Sun is very thoughtful. Yu Qian looked at his apprentice with a smile and said meaningfully. Li Chu just nodded slightly and said, Thank you, Miss Gong Sun. Besides, Gong Sun Ro hesitated for a moment and then said, I also have something to ask Taoist Priestly. Speaking, last time, Ching Yi Tower sent assassins to kill my father and my daughter. Fortunately, Taoist Priestly took action by chance and we escaped. But my father got the news yesterday. The top brass of Chingy Tower heard that the eight-armed Shura had broken his halberd. They were very worried. Furious. They are ready to send more advanced assassins to carry out the mission until death. When Gong Sun Ro is sad, her brows are lightly furrowed, like the misty distant mountains, making people feel pity for her and want to caress the dark clouds away for her. So I was wondering if I could ask Talus Priestly to help us one more time to protect us for a while. Li Chu pondered for a moment and said, Master Gong Sun is an official of the Imperial Court. How could Chao Yan Ke allow a demon to assassinate him? Huh. Gong Sun Ro smiled helplessly and sarcastically. Of course a court official shouldn't be like this. But what if the person who wants my father's life is also a court official? And he is currently a court official who is a hundred times more powerful than him. Of course. This will suppress all his demands. That's too much. Yu Qian was the first to say angrily. In broad daylight. The traitor colluded with Chingy Tower to murder Zhongliang. Disciple, please move to Miss Gongsuan's house for a while. Absolutely. Protect their father and daughter. As he spoke, he winked at Li Chu. Li Chu was stunned. The master had a, you know what to do. Look in his eyes. But he didn't understand it at all. But looking at Gong Sunru's sincere and beautiful eyes, his sense of justice did not allow him to refuse. So Li Chu nodded and said, it's so natural and obligatory. Thank you. Taoist priest you. And thank you. Taoist priest Shao Li. Gong Sun Ro thanked him repeatedly. His eyes bright. It was agreed that Li Chu would go to the county office to report tomorrow morning. And Gong Sun Ro left happily. Master, you are just now. As soon as Gong Sun Ro left, Li Chu asked Yu Qian what he meant just now. You can't say this kind of thing too openly. He <laughs> he. Yu Qian showed that. You know? Smile again. Everyone who understands understands. Li Chu was even more stunned. Anyway, Miss Gong Sun is a rare good girl. She looks good, has a good figure, and is a nicer person. Yu Qian looked up at the sky and muttered as if carelessly. Yeah. Li Chu nodded in agreement. But he still didn't understand what Yu Qian meant. Seeing his indifferent expression, Yu Qian frowned and said directly, Her father is still a county magistrate. You must cherish this opportunity. Oh, I understand. Li Chu said suddenly. Gong Sun Ro didn't mention the reward just now. So he was too embarrassed to ask. Now that the master reminded him again and again, he suddenly understood. Gong Sun Jia is the county magistrate. If you protect him yourself, if the task is completed, the reward will not be small. Without further ado, go improve yourself now. After that, he walked into the yard with high spirits. Yu Qian looked at his excited eyes and felt that he probably understood it wrong again. He immediately sighed and thought to himself. You understood? You know shit. Chapter 36 Senior Gumo is really a god. 
because the front hall was being renovated. Li Chu could only practice new techniques in his bedroom. The lighting in the small room was not very good, and it was a little dark. But Li Chu didn't care much about it. He carefully took out the book. The art of mind, from beginner to master. From his pocket. The movements were very gentle. For fear that a piece of paper would be turned into dust with just a slight twist of the fingers. After all, from the cover to the pages, this book is completely yellowed. He was reading this little pornographic book in the dark little room. The book was very old. But he read it carefully. The principle of the so-called mind trick seems not complicated at all. Everything in heaven and earth breathes. As described in the book, you need to close your eyes and use your body and mind to feel the breath of all things. That is, the chi of all things. This kind of chi cannot be explained simply by smell, breath or aura, but a very abstract form of invisible spiritual essence that is naturally emitted by the existence of living things. Just like there are no two identical leaves in the world. There are no two identical chi in the world. However, because of their different types, states, and emotions, these chi will gather into different types of collections, such as good spiritual energy, blessings, joy, bad in energy, evil energy, resentment, etc. The world seen by the mind's eye is the world of chi, according to the description in the book. This technique is extremely difficult to practice. The first threshold is talent. Some people cannot feel the existence of chi, even if they meditate for a lifetime. The second threshold is time. Even after feeling the chi, if you want to spread it to a radius of three feet, it can take as short as three years and as long as ten years. As for what Li Chu was thinking, sensing the entire town would probably take hundreds of years at this pace of cultivation. But Li Chu is not worried about speed. As we all know, he has always been a fast guy. Just like the high school textbook said that it takes three years to study. But he finished it in less than one year. It was said that it would take 30 days to practice iron clothes shirt. But it only took him one afternoon. So you still have to try it to know how long it will take. After reading the whole book, he turned to the opening chapter again. And then followed the instructions to sit cross-legged and meditate. With his five hearts pointing toward the sky. And fell into a meditative state. Feel the breath of everything in the world. Find the rhythm breath breath. Then, he had a nice dream. It was a great sleep. He hadn't slept much in the past few days. And no matter how energetic he was, his body would still go into hibernation at the right time. An hour later, he opened his brilliant eyes again. I actually fell asleep and didn't feel sleepy at all. Li Chu murmured. He has been feeling strange about his body recently. No matter how long he hasn't slept, he never feels sleepy and is always full of energy. But if you are in a familiar sleep state, you can fall asleep quickly in one breath. My feeling of being trapped seemed to have disappeared. Also disappearing was his hunger. He had tried skipping meals several times, but he never felt hungry. Similarly, when eating, you rarely feel full. You can only taste it. It's like I don't need to eat anymore. He was a little worried. Could it be that something went wrong in his cultivation? I remember my master said before that Bigu has always been a myth. In this world, even land gods need to replenish their energy regularly. They might be able to eat a huge amount of food in one meal and then go without food for a long time. But inescaping is impossible. Even the gods on land are impossible. So it's even more impossible for me. Can't figure it out. However, these problems are not urgent. The top priority is to practice the art of mind first. He re-entered meditation and felt the breath of everything in the world. Call. Suddenly, he found that the whole room was turned into hazy smoke black, white, yellow, basically light and dark colors. No, I was meditating at this time and didn't open my eyes at all. Could this be chi? Doesn't it mean that many people cannot feel it throughout their lives? Appeared after just one nap? Well, it's okay. Not really surprising. He tried his best to focus his mind, trying to see more clearly. Sure enough, under the smoke, there was a hazy outline of an object. This room has a breath and its breath is very old. The flowers and plants in front of you have breath, and their breath is very lively. My sword is breath, but its breath is tired. It was as if the body had been hollowed out. Have you used it too much in your daily life? He tried to expand his spirit outwards, and a large number of images suddenly flooded into his mind. Everyone and every object in Diyun Temple is emitting their own arrogance. Some weak, some strong. In the whole yard, the most powerful one was the old locust tree. 
It's green, chi, almost covering the sky and the sun. There seemed to be a faint stream of chi flowing underground. But it was blocked by the manhole cover. And my own spirit couldn't penetrate it. The workers turned into humanoid figures intertwined with red and blue, which should represent the yin and yang chi in the human body. People with red as the dominant color have more yang chi. And people with blue as the main color have more yin chi. In addition to the red and blue auras, there would occasionally be a faint black aura floating through them, which should be their emotions. Working under the bright sun may put some people in a bad mood. Li Chu suddenly thought, does it mean that when the black energy fuses together, it means that people are full of resentment? At this time, is it possible for ghosts to take advantage of this? His perception was like a huge spider web, covering all directions, expanding a large area every time he entered. Gradually, the chi, for several miles around came into view. Mountains, rivers, flowers, birds, insects, and fish all have their own atmosphere. Li Chu was extremely shocked by such a world. Does the world still have such a side? Or is this what it truly looks like? When his brain felt a little dizzy, his perception had already covered half of Yuhang Town, which was 10 miles away, and he saw the thick smoke of human fireworks. However, he clearly felt that his spirit was still very full and not exhausted. Maybe it's because it's the first time the brain has processed such a huge scene. So it feels tired? Out of caution, he temporarily withdrew his perception. After all, it's your first time so it's better to move more slowly. There is no rush in going deeper and deeper in the future. Opening his eyes, Li Chu looked at the clairvoyant in front of him. With unexpected surprise in his eyes, I really didn't expect that I could find such a magical technique twice in a row from Zashu, compared with a previous iron claw shirt. This time's mental skills are even better. This not only enhances his perception, it is not an exaggeration to say that it allows people to come into contact with the essence of the world. After a long time, he couldn't help but sigh. I am truly a god. A sneeze. Somewhere in Jiangnan continent. A blind old beggar sneezed hard. He rubbed his nose and muttered. Ooh sesame cakes are so fragrant. It makes our noses itch. Following the smell. He came to a sesame seed stall. He he. The blind man showed a flattering smile. Boss. Please do me a favor and give me two sesame seed cakes. They are so delicious. The seller of sesame seed cakes was a short man and he waved his hand impatiently. Go and beg for food elsewhere. I am a small business, and I don't have enough food for you. Hey, I don't want to eat your sesame cakes in vain. I can tell by the sound. Brother, you are a unique martial arts genius. In this way, I will pass on to you the unique secret book I created back then. You also no need to call me master. Just make pancakes for us too. As the old blind man spoke, he took out a tattered book from his arms. The art of mind's eyes, from beginner to mastery. The short man took a look at it and said with a smile, You can tell it's a lie just by looking at the name of this crappy book. Even a fool wouldn't believe it. You still want to exchange it for sesame cakes? Why don't you change it if you don't want to change it? It's a lie. The old beggar muttered a few words and turned to leave. The short man greeted, Forget it. Leave this book and I'll get you a sesame seed cake. Okay. The old beggar held the sesame cakes and left happily. Now you've been fooled. The jewelry vendor next to him laughed and said, When he was young, this old blind man said he was a blind sword and cheated all day long. Now he passes that shabby book to everyone he meets. He he. Wipe it. My butt is too hard. Hey, don't I feel sorry for him? The short man selling sesame seed cake shook his head and said with a smile. Chapter 37 I bumped into a Taoist priest. The moon is bright and the wind is light. Leaves cover the window lattice. There was the sound of water dripping in the small, dark room. Tick-tock. Tick-tock. No. Not water. But blood. Ah Chiang stared at his fist. Gritted his teeth. And the grief and resentment in his heart couldn't help but surge. Why? Why is this world so unfair? He raised his head and asked. He once had a childhood sweetheart. The name is Asian. The two grew up together. And for more than ten years, they only had eyes for each other. He has long regarded Asian as his wife. And Asian has long regarded him as her husband. I thought that once he saved up enough betrothal gift, all this would happen naturally. But a few days ago, he heard that Ajahn was going to marry a wealthy family in the county. He couldn't believe it. So he ran to Ajahn's house to ask. Ajahn's parents did not let him in. They said you should not come to Ajahn again. Why? 
He said that no one has deeper feelings for Ajahn than him. He didn't lie. He always believed that no one in the world loved Jin more than him. Ajahn's parents scoffed. No matter how thick it is, can it be thicker than other people's betrothal gifts? Today is Ajahn's wedding day. Achyong rushed over like crazy and stopped the sedan chair. He finally met Ajahn. He just wanted to ask if Ajahn was not willing to marry that old man. As long as she says yes. He took her far away and never cared about anything else. But Ajahn said, Don't come to me again in the future. I'm afraid I'll misunderstand you. Did she do it voluntarily? Did it turn out that the friendship we had for so many years was all fake? He was beaten half to death by servants from a wealthy family and thrown into a stinking ditch. It was not until midnight that he stumbled back home. But the physical pain is not as bad as the heartache. It felt like a piece of my heart had been cut out. And it couldn't be filled back no matter what. He felt like a fool. He had been fooled by this thief for more than 10 years. Why? Why do you do this to me? He tore his clothes painfully. At this moment, a gloomy voice suddenly came to mind. He he. Because you are too weak. Who? Achyong's eyes widened violently. The room was empty. And there was no second person at all. Who is speaking? Is it an illusion? Because you are too weak. You are destined to be stepped on by others. You hate them. You hate that big dog. He is old and disrespectful. And he still marries a young and beautiful concubine at a young age. You hate that stinky woman. She doesn't miss her old relationship. And she doesn't show any mercy when she sees you being beaten to death. You hate her parents. They are dismissive of you. But they are obedient to the rich. Uh huh. You hate too many people. But... You just if you can hate. You can't do anything. The voice was still in my ears. Extremely clear. And definitely not fake. Achyong's heart was pounding and he asked in a panic. Are you a human or a ghost? Is it a human or a ghost? Does it matter? The voice was erratic. But it seemed to be full of endless temptation. The important thing is that I have a powerful power that can make these people you hate pay with their blood. The price. Strength. What are you talking about? Achyong leaned against the wall shivering. You are destined to be an ant in this life. Even if you are stepped into the mud, you will not be able to struggle. You can only carry this resentment until you die. And I have a power that can make you stronger and make them better in the next life. Regret for provoking you can make this unfair world tremble for you. Do you want it? Achyong's eyes widened. He breathed heavily for a while and said in a shaky voice, I want to. That? Are you afraid of death? The voice became more and more seductive and Achyong's eyes gradually lit up with a strange look, and he fell into a strange emotion. He was like a traveler who had been thirsty for more than ten days in the desert and suddenly saw fine wine and barbecue in front of him, and a strong and uncontrollable desire burst out from the bottom of his heart. I'm not afraid. Then all you need is a simple transaction. How to trade? Look back. Achyong felt a little strange when he heard this sentence, because he was clearly leaning against the wall, but he still looked back obediently. This sight made his hair stand on end. It turned out that there was a face on the wall behind me. The facial features are clear. The eyes are lively. And the face is alive. Hey, were you scared just now? Remember this fear. And think that what you bring to them in the future will be a hundred times a thousand times this fear. Are you eager? The face gradually rose up. And then led to the body below. Soon, a strange figure wearing a blue robe appeared in front of Achyong's eyes. Who are you? Achyong asked tremblingly. In fact, he has already guessed that the other person is not a human being. Perhaps it would be more appropriate to ask you what kind of ghost you are. I am an envoy from the ghost kingdom. At the same time, I am also here to help you, my friend. The ghost continued speaking in a soft and seductive voice, while taking something out of his arms and handing it to Achyong. He opened his hand, and in his sharp nailed palm was a small, dirty copper coin. Take it away and you can have frightening power. But you have to sell your life to me. In this unfair world, this is a rare fair trade. Do you agree? Achyong was so scared that he wanted to turn around and run away. But there was another voice in his heart telling him to take the copper coin and take revenge on them. Death is no big deal. Just drag those people to die together. I, at the moment when his heart was beating violently, suddenly a clear voice came from the window. I disagree. Um, the ghost frowned and looked out the window, and a chill suddenly broke out all over his body, making Achyong couldn't help but shiver. He turned around and saw an impossibly handsome little talus priest standing outside the window, wearing a brand new blue talus robe. 
with a bamboo hairpin casually tied into his bun, and his demeanor was indescribably chic. A Chong's first thought was that if I looked like this, Manny Ejin wouldn't leave. Right. But he quickly dismissed the idea. If I looked like this, would I still want her? When he was thinking wildly, the little Taoist priest said to him, Sorry. The door was not opened. So I climbed in through the wall. Oh. Achyang nodded blankly. The blue robe ghost narrowed his eyes. Where did this little Taoist priest come from? He really doesn't know how to live or die. It was about to raise its hand to kill the little Taoist priest. When suddenly a flash of lightning flashed in its mind. Wait. Taoist? Could this Taoist priest be that Taoist priest? It looked carefully at Li Chu and the iron sword behind him. Seems unremarkable? But out of caution. It still asked, Little Taoist priest, Have you ever been to the Lu family ghost house? How many times have I been there? Why? Do you have anything to do with the ghosts inside? Li Chu asked, If this ghost wanted to chat with him, he wouldn't mind chatting with him. It would be better if he could figure out its origin and its purpose of creating wraiths. But his wish failed. After hearing him say, I've been there a few times, the face of the ghost opposite changed drastically, like an animal whose fur suddenly exploded. The ghost body trembled, then turned around and ran away. The speed was astonishingly fast, almost turning into a blue light. In order not to let it go, Li Chu could only quickly draw his sword and strike out with one strike. The blue robe ghost had used the strength of several lifetimes to escape in an instant, but when it felt the terrifying pressure of the sword behind it, it still realized that death was coming. It only had time to send a message to the distance with all its strength. I bumped into a Taoist priest. Ah. Chapter 38 Kill the Taoist Priest Li Chu sheathed his sword and looked at the empty night ahead with some regret. Although I killed this ghost, I didn't gain much. He vaguely felt that things would not end so easily. Ah Chiang turned his head and looked at the empty yard in front of him. Somewhat doubtful about life. Where is my wall? Is such a big wall going to disappear at the drop of a hat? The little Taoist priest's voice interrupted his shock again. Please come back with me, Li Chu said, before Ah Chiang's resentment dissipates. It is best not to let him stay here to avoid accidents. You must be more cautious at this time. After all, human life is at stake. Oh! Ah Chiang stood up quickly. He was actually a little scared. But when a person is in front of you and can clear away everything more than ten feet or even dozens of feet away with a sword, it is difficult for you to say no to him. Li Chu walked in front without saying a word, and he followed behind with a low eyebrow. After walking around a few streets, Ah Chiang immediately recognized that this was the road to the county government office. He bravely asked, Are you the master of Chao Ian Kei? No, I'm from the Yun Temple outside the town. Li Chu shook his head and replied simply, Oh, you are Taoist priestly. Right. Ah Chiang immediately remembered. He had heard people say before that there was a particularly handsome little Taoist priest in the Yun Temple. When he thought about Li Chu's face, he immediately met him. Then, he suddenly thought that Ajin had told him this. Another wave of sadness. Li Chu knew that he should be very sad. But he was not good at comforting people. They took him all the way to the county government office. Where there were three shifts of government officials who had recently stepped up their guard duty. And the arrester Zhou Dafu personally led the team. He left Ah Chiang to Chao Tai Fook and left him to handle the aftermath. Returning to the backyard of the government office, I saw Li Sini waiting in the yard. Solved? Li Sini knew what he was going to do. Well, it went very well, Li Chu said. Li Sini looked at him with a complicated expression. The two of them had discussed the matter of Wang Chi the day before yesterday, and he wanted to report it to the sect and ask for experts to come over, who knew that he would be able to monitor the entire Yuhang town tonight. Just now, Li Chu discovered a place full of resentment. He went there in advance and waited. And as expected, he eliminated a ghost that came to confuse people's hearts in one fell swoop. But? Li Sini wanted to question the man in front of him loudly. Why are you so fast? But she knew that asking would not yield any results. She had already asked during the day. And Li Chu told her with a calm face that he had mastered the mind-sighting skills of the senior blind eye divine sword. Li Sini immediately gave a charming look. Desire? Want. When a beautiful woman looks like this, not many men can say no. What's more, Li Chu had no intention of protecting himself. Senior Guma Xinjian is so great, and he spreads his unique secret skills into the world. How can he be a petty person? So, he carefully took out a hard little pornographic book. If Li Chu had not taken out this book, and it had been replaced by a second person, 
Li Sini would have definitely thought that he was a liar. But Li Chu's expression was so serious that she really believed his lies. She took the secret book from Li Chu's hand as if she was holding some treasure. But when she saw the cultivation methods above, she felt a little doubtful. Just by closing your eyes and feeling like this, without any magic tricks, one day you will suddenly feel the breathing of all things in the world. No matter how you look at it, it looks like a lie. No kid would believe this kind of nonsense. Right? But she still practiced according to the above method for a whole day. Feel nothing. It is indeed a lie. But she didn't feel disappointed either. Because that's how it should be. And only fools would be fooled like this. Miss Lee jumped. But Li Chu explained seriously. To observe Chi. You need the mind's eye. You don't have it yet. Just feel it slowly. Indeed. That's what the book says. But Li Sini always felt like this was a personal attack. And no matter how much she doesn't believe it. Li Chu's current ability to gain energy is real. She couldn't argue with that. So angry. Bone Mountain and Corpse Cave. This place was once a lush mountain. It is said that during the Battle of Hulua Ding Ding, the army killed more than 100,000 southern soldiers here, and the entire mountain gradually became barren of grass. Hundreds of years later, a flash flood broke down the mountain wall, and a large number of bones were washed out. Filling the surrounding areas, the locals reburied the mountain of bones. And then, fearing that it would attract evil spirits, they invited the immortal master from the Qingyong Palace, one of the twelve immortal sects, to come and perform a ritual ceremony for the place. From then on, this mountain was called White Bone Mountain. Later, the cave where the bones were buried was called Fushir Cave. So it goes for hundreds of years. At this time, there was moonlight slanting in the corpse cave, reflecting four shadows of different shapes. Sitting to the east is a figure wearing the clothes of the former dynasty. The plain white robe has long sleeves and fluttering. If you look carefully, you will find that there seems to be nothing underneath the clothes. Looking up again, there was actually a skull on the clothes. The bones were white and the eye sockets were empty. There were two ghostly fires swaying faintly in them. It raised a hand and it turned out to be a white skeleton. As it moved its fingers, a loud cry echoed in the cave. I bumped into a Taoist priest. Ah, uh, the cry ended with a shrill scream. This is Lan Kai's message. It just went to Yuhang Town to collect life silver, and only sent back this message. It should have encountered something unexpected at this time. The skeleton in white said in a low and hoarse voice. Taoist priest? Is he the Taoist priest who went on a killing spree in the ghost tower? Sitting in the south is a tall ghost wearing heavy armor. Its face cannot be clearly seen in the moonlight, and only the bloodstains and rust stains on its armor can be seen clearly. It seems that it has experienced countless years. The sound was hard and unpleasant, like metal rubbing against each other. It's probably him. The white-robed skeleton responded. What happened in the ghost tower before? We were worried that if things continued like this, all the people who had betrayed the ghost kingdom with us would be killed by him sooner or later. So we accelerated the collection of life silver. I didn't expect that even collecting life silver would fall into his hands. Confused. As long as the king's seal is unlocked, those inferior subordinates will be able to get rid of them as much as they want. So in a hurry for success, I ended up ruining a ghost general. Ha ha. Sitting on the west side, facing the skeleton is an extremely generous figure. He is about three feet tall and his shoulders are more than one foot wide. Although it resembles a human in shape, it is clearly not human. Its voice was also extremely broad and loud. And its sneer echoed in the cave. Black Fong. The white-robed skeleton shouted. You have to know that Lan Kai and I decided to speed up the collection of life silver. And it doesn't mean that we won't be killed if we don't rush to unlock the king's seal. It's possible that the Taoist priests are here for us. That's right. The last ghost in the cave, sitting in the shadow on the north side, has a charming and lingering voice. It turns out to be a woman. She said slowly. Where could such a powerful Taoist priest suddenly appear in this small town in the south of the Yangtze River? It's probably either by Yujing or Nyobi from Qingyong Palace. He found some clues and is staring at us here. Then what should we do now? I want to hear your plans. The white-robed skeleton asked. The armored ghost in the south said, The king's seal is about to be broken. All we need is more life silver. Why don't we go elsewhere to collect life silver? Even a little further away. As long as it's safe. The white-robed skeleton remained silent. The ghost called Black Teeth to the west said, Where else can we hide? Aren't we hiding far enough? Let me tell you. There will be other cultivators elsewhere. It's just a Taoist priest. 
It's better to kill him directly. He is done with it. He always pins his hopes on my king. How can life silver be so easy to collect? Before that, we might be killed one by one. The woman with a charming voice hesitated. Even so, we don't know the strength of that Taoist priest yet. Hey, you added. If he was really a person with a high level of cultivation, he would have come here long ago. How could we sit here and discuss it so calmly? Can. The woman wanted to say something more. But the skeleton in white robe said, Okay. Black Fong and I coincidentally agree. The white robe skeleton said, I also think that killing him earlier is the best choice. He first went to the ghost tower to kill. And now he is preventing us from collecting life silver. It's clear that he's coming for us. Hey, you said it well. We can't always place our hopes on our king. Hee <laughs> hee. Haya laughed twice. Its laughter was still echoing in the cave. When the white robed skeleton said again, Then I'll leave this matter to you. Hey, ya. To investigate the Taoist priest's background first. And then make preparations. Qing Jia and Hong Ling will be dispatched by you. So be sure to do everything possible. Black Tooth's laughter stopped abruptly. It hesitated a little. Paused. And asked, Bai Jian. You? The white robed skeleton immediately replied. I want to stay here to refine the life silver that I collected earlier. It is the critical moment when I cannot escape. If the speed of breaking my king's seal is delayed because of this matter, it will be more than worth the loss. But you are? Haya wanted to say something else. Just listen to the white robed skeleton saying, Haya, you can't do it. Right? What you just said was the most impassioned. I thought you were truly the number one ghost general. If you are afraid, we can also discuss it in the long term. How could I be afraid? Black Tooth roared, stood up suddenly, and strode out of the cave. Vigorous and vigorous. The sound of footsteps was as simple as a blank piece of paper. Chapter 39 Killer, I slapped you. I made some dragon bone soup. Taoist Priestly, please give it a try. Gon Sun Ro was wearing a homely silk dress and walked in with a cup of soup. The soft fabric fits the body, revealing slender and graceful lines, like a continuous spring mountain. At this time, she should be in her most authentic state at home. Her long, lush hair is a little scattered, and there is no makeup on her face. But she is still gentle and pleasant. Thank you. Li Chu took the soup cup, opened the lid, and smelled it. It was very fragrant. We didn't have the habit of drinking soup in Chowga. But when we came to the south, we found that everyone loved soup. And we gradually started to like it. Gong Sun Ro sat next to him and said softly, Li Chu buried his head in the soup bowl. There were many edible ingredients in the soup, such as chestnuts, yams, and pork bones, in line with the principle of not wasting it. Li Chu fished it out and ate it. Gong Sun Ro touched her flat and soft belly again. I've gained a bit more weight recently because I drank too much. Li Chu waited for the soup to cool down a little, then simply picked up the bowl and raised his head to drink. If other people did such an action, it might seem inelegant, but when he did it, it felt inexplicably free and unrestrained. Gong Sun Ro asked again, What do you think of Taoist Masterly? I have been learning it for three or four days, and this is the first time I have given it to someone other than my father. Call. Li Chu put down the soup bowl, breathed a sigh of relief, and then smiled and said, The taste is very good. It only took me three or four days of learning to make such a soup. Miss Gong Sun is very talented. Gong Sun Rose suddenly smiled with a crooked brow. She packed up the soup cup and took it out again. These tasks were originally done by servants in the government office. But she still came in person. Going to the kitchen. She filled another bowl of soup before sending it to Gong Sunja. Although it was already late. Gong Sunja still handled official duties before the case. From an official perspective. He is indeed a good official. In the short time since I arrived in Yuhang County. I have already cleared away the backlog of old public cases in the county. The reputation of County Magistrate Gong Sun also spread quickly among the people. Dad, try tonight's soup. Taoist Priestly just said it tastes good. Gong Sun Jido. Uh huh. Gong Sun Chase smiled. The ones who practiced a few days ago gave it to me first. If it tastes good today, I will give it to Taoist Priestly first. Right? The father and daughter lived in two adjacent courtyards in the government office. After Li Chu moved in, he was arranged to live in Gong Sunj's courtyard. Therefore, the old father saw his daughter's actions just now. No way. If you keep talking nonsense, I won't let you drink from now on. Gong Sun Ro pouted. Okay. Okay. I'm scared. I'm scared. 
Gong Sunja laughed a few times and began to drink the soup. The room was quiet for a while. And suddenly, Gong Sun Ro murmured, It would be great if Shao Tao's priestly had always lived here. Ahem. Ahem. Gong Sunja didn't swallow a mouthful of soup. He choked when he heard these words and coughed for a long time. Dad, what's wrong with you? Gong Sun Ro came over and patted him on the back. Ahem. You girl. You just expect your father to be assassinated every day. Right? Ahem. Gong Sunja glanced at his daughter. Gong Sun Ro didn't think so much just now. But when his father asked, his face turned red. But she couldn't help but think about it. If my father didn't have to be assassinated, I could still see Talus Priestly every day. It would be great. Um, the moonlight is clear. Li Chu walked out of the room and climbed up to the roof quickly along the ladder. This is what he recently discovered. When performing the mind eye technique, the effect will be better if there are no obstructions around. At the same time, the higher you are, the better the effect will be. Reminiscent of the old-fashioned antenna at home. Li Chu chose a location on the roof. Although he killed a ghost last night, he did not relax his monitoring of resentment. Gradually, he found that he liked the feeling of looking down at everything from the clouds. There is no strong resentment today. Very good. It seems that the entire Yuhang town has spent another civilized and harmonious day. There is a lot of loose resentment. But this level of resentment is not enough to attract ghosts. So there is no need to worry. He was about to withdraw his mind sighting skills when he suddenly realized that something was wrong. Outside the wall across the courtyard, there stood a human figure composed of Yin and Yang. There is nothing wrong with this. But in an instant, a powerful earth yellow arrogance suddenly burst out from outside this humanoid body. Li Chu had seen this kind of anger in Xiao Yu. It's evil spirit. Normally, a monster in human form would not be discovered without the use of magic. Their demonic energy will be well contained within their bodies. In this situation, there should be a big demon in disguise lurking behind the wall and using all his demon power. And at the moment Li Chu was thinking about it, it had already soared into the sky. The target is Li Chu. Came so fast. Leopard 5 is the silver metal killer in Chingy Tower. Nicknamed Thunder Fist. His style of conduct was cruel and his methods cruel. The objects he assassinated never left whole bodies behind. But he felt that he couldn't blame himself. But that those people's bodies were too fragile. It was just a punch. And those people exploded. How could you blame yourself for punching too hard? He he. It is obsessed with this feeling. Every time I see a human being's flesh and blood shattered by a punch from him. It explodes into pieces flying all over the sky. He was so excited that he couldn't help himself. Because of this. Although it is a silver metal killer. It receives an exceptionally large number of orders. As a high-end force in Chingy Tower. Killers at the silver metal level usually control the level of orders they receive to maintain their own worth. But Leopard 5 doesn't care. It doesn't refuse anyone who comes. Compared with making money, it is more obsessed with killing itself. Same goes for today's order. It was just to kill a middle-aged human who had no strength to restrain a chicken. Previously, a bronze fool named Eight Arm Shura actually failed, and there was no news at all. According to the rules, it is time to upgrade to the silver metal killer at this time. But other silver metalists are unwilling to take over because it is too simple. So here comes Leopard 5. It changed its mind when it discovered the target's identity was a county magistrate. Why only kill one person? There are so many humans here to protect him. So it makes sense to kill them all. Todoroki feels great for a while. It's always exciting and exciting. Hey, let's start with this little Talus priest meditating on the roof. Judging from his calm expression. I'm afraid he wouldn't have guessed that he was going to die soon. Leopard Wu bent his knees, activated his demonic power, and jumped into the air. Bang. Its body suddenly rose into the air like a cannonball and smashed straight towards Li Chu. When Leopard Wu strikes out, it is its strongest punch. The name of this boxing is The sky is falling and the earth is falling with the purple gold hammer. Hundreds of souls died under this punch. But no one could survive. A punch always kills. Hey, hey, hey. When he clenched his fists, Leopard 5 already had a sinister smile on his face. Explode? Explode before my eyes. There is no more beautiful picture in the world than flesh and blood flying around. In the flash of lightning, Li Chu had just withdrawn from the mind sighting state and had not had time to react. He was punched on the back by Bao Wui. Boom! Knocked down with one punch. Both of them had their own feelings. Bao Wui was shaken. Then suddenly turned his head. Dodged faster than when he came. 
and turned back the way he came. Then he jumped quickly, almost turning into a demonic wind, and escaped from the Yuhang County government office. When Li Chu stood up, it had disappeared like a flash of lightning. Huh? Li Chu frowned in confusion. He felt someone hit him on the back. Although it was not painful enough, it still felt quite heavy. But it was obvious just now that he had such strong arrogance and was coming in a menacing manner. The result is just to give yourself a painless punch? What is this? Just take a photo? He didn't even see the figure of the assailant clearly. It had already fled far away. So there is no way to guess its purpose. After thinking about it, the only reasonable guess he could think of was that this was the monster's plan to lure the tiger away from the mountain. Find a minion to pat yourself. Once they chase him, they will come to assassinate the unarmed magistrate Gong Sun. Of course Li Chu would not be fooled. He sat cross-legged again. But this time he was more alert. It was just because the perception range of the mind's eye technique was too large that it was not very sensitive to the changes around him. Be careful in the future. This situation of being easily approached will never happen again. The situation just now was too dangerous. If the punch was a thousand times more powerful, wouldn't he be injured? Thinking of this, Li Chu couldn't help but feel scared. Chapter 40 Why Hasn't the Killer Come Yet? Escape. 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 Can't look back. Never look back. Leopard 5's heartbeat was like thunder, almost shaking his eardrums. It ran for an unknown distance, like a gust of wind before it dared to stop for a moment and take its first breath. Immediately, I felt a sweet and fishy taste well up in my throat. This was followed by severe pain in the viscera and dantion. There is also a limp right arm. His entire right arm should be shattered into powder. Right? What scares me the most is the injury to my dantion. It didn't dare to check, but it already had a vague feeling. His demon pill should have cracked. The demon core is broken. The five internal organs are displaced. And half of the body's bones are broken. In simple terms, it means die for a monster that has been incarnate for many years. Death is actually not a very simple matter. Especially Leopard 5. It is flexible, powerful, and extremely fast. This is the guarantee that it has been running around killing people for many years. But it can always escape and scathe. Those who can catch up with it cannot defeat it and those who can defeat it cannot catch up with it. But it didn't expect that it would die in such a ridiculous situation. When it hit the little Taoist priest with a purple gold hammer, punch with all its strength. But there was no feeling of physical tearing, and the opponent didn't even move. It sensed something was wrong. Could this little Taoist priest have a body made of diamond? Even if it's a mountain, it should tremble a little after I punch it. Right? What makes it even more unexpected is, just a moment later, the force he exerted was doubled back. Suddenly, everything was destroyed. This punch caused great terror. Leopard 5 was instantly frightened. It turned around and ran. But as it ran, it could still feel the force of the countershock raging in its body. Ah. After a long time, it stopped in a green forest, leaned against a tree, and took a few deep breaths. Since death is inevitable, it is better to leave some strength and do something useful. The little Talus priest didn't chase him at all. In fact, Bao Wu felt it. From beginning to end, he didn't even look at himself. Indeed, a little demon like himself may be just an ant in his eyes. If the ants are provocative, they can be killed by the force of the counterattack alone. So why bother chasing them? But, why does a human being have such a terrifying body? Why did such a great god suddenly appear in this small town in Jiangnan? Since you have such cultivation, why didn't you reveal it earlier? Ah, it's really unacceptable to die like this. But there was nothing we could do. Such an enemy is not even something it can arouse hatred for. Correct. It quickly took out a palm-sized bluebird statue from its arms, which looked colorful and lifelike. The statue held a scroll of paper in its mouth. It took it out, opened it, and wrote a few words in blood. Taoist priests are scary. Don't come. Afterwards, Leopard 5 stuffed the paper roll back into the mouth of the statue and then injected the last bit of his demonic power into it. Call out. After the statue was injected with demonic power, it faced the wind and turned into a real colorful blue bird, quickly flying into the sky. Call! Seeing the blue bird fly away, Leopard 5 finally exhaled. If his sworn brothers and sisters knew that he died here, they would definitely come back to avenge him. The final outcome would definitely be the complete annihilation of the entire army. Never do this. Baowu stared blankly at the direction in which the blue bird flew away. He did not close his eyes for a long time. 
Now the blue bird has become a living creature. Instead, it was Leopard 5's turn to come to life. At the end of its life, it seemed to see running under the sunset that day, which was its lost youth. The days go by quickly, and summer is coming to an end in a blink of an eye. Li Chu lived in the government office for some time. These days, everything is calm in Yuhang Town. If there are serious grievances, the Yaman police will come to deal with them overnight. They will never give up until the dispute is resolved. And justice is never late. The ghost never appeared again, which made Li Chu doubt whether there was really only one ghost causing trouble behind the scenes. The only thing that changed was the soup said by Gong Sun Ro. She made different soups for Li Chu every day, such as Soft SH, L Turtle, Wolfberry and Lily Soup, Ganoderma Lucidum, Candy Dates and Old Duck Soup, Mutton and Cordyceps Soup. Li Chu also had doubts. Why does the soup every day sound like it is kidney tonifying? Gong Sun replied with red cheeks. There is no harm in taking more supplements. Li Chu thought about it. Really? Another thing is that he has been in the government office these days, and has not had much contact with the outside world. I didn't know that I was already famous. In the past, he relied on repeat customers to exorcise evil spirits, such as Chao Tai Fook, Wang Lung Chi, etc., so his reputation did not spread. But this time in Chun Manlu, all the good girls noticed his handsome and handsome appearance in front of everyone. In this era, the hubs of information circulation are basically large restaurants tea shops, Golan and other places with dense flow of people, and brothels are relatively upper-class existences in these places. Whenever the literati who went to the brothel party talked about some topic involving a mystery, they would inevitably be teased by the good girls about little Talus Priest Lee's deeds and his appearance. Soon these things spread throughout the streets and alleys of Yuhang Town. That day, Gong Sunja went out for a banquet. The banquet was held at a restaurant in the town, and Li Chu also accompanied him. There is a special stage in the restaurant for Mr. Shu to tell stories. The storyteller mentioned the gavel and spoke loudly. The most painful thing is the cold weather at night. I can't help but feel so haggard. Invite wine to destroy the intestines and get drunk after three cups. Search for fragrance and frightened dreams at dawn. The lady with the hairpin head and the phoenix shietching has tears. But I have no chance to spend the tea flowers. The lonely heart and the moon in the small building are as hard as a hook and hard to round. Snapped. Everyone, today we are not going to talk about princes, generals, talents, and beauties. We are going to talk specifically about a strange man in Yuhang Town. This strange man lives on a slope 10 miles outside the town. The Diyun Temple on the slope is one of the Diyun Temples. A little Taoist priest named Li Chu. This little Taoist priest. In the private room, Li Chu's face turned red. Most of the people who listen to these ghost stories are men. The storyteller told the story of Li Chu and most of the people sitting below were girls. And they are obviously familiar with Li Chu's deeds. And they cheer in advance every time they hear something exciting. In addition to those calling, Daon Chao Li, there are also those calling, Miss, or I love you. And even worse, there are also those calling, Mother loves you. It made Li Chu restless for a while. After the old gentleman finished telling Li Chu's story, they immediately dispersed with a very clear purpose. But in just a short period of time, the reward money left was more than usual in a day. The old storyteller smiled, his wrinkled face showing the joy of catching a glimpse of the coat of wealth. Li Chu waited for them all to disperse before he dared to leave the private room. Be careful. Recently, the passenger flow into Yun Temple has also increased sharply. Yu Qian has been besieged by women of all ages and has been hosting them for many days. In the first days, the number of pilgrims suddenly increased. And he was so happy that he couldn't close his legs. But as the number of pilgrims increased, and they came in an endless stream, the old Taoist priest gradually couldn't bear it anymore. Every evening, he would be so tired that he would beat his back, holding a teacup filled with wolfberry, looking tremblingly in the direction of Yuhang Town, with tears in his eyes. Disciple, when will you come back? Master misses you. In fact, Li Chu had been wondering in the government office, why haven't the killers from Qingyi Tower come yet? Is its plan to make Gong Sun to die of old age? Um. Chapter 41 The Lucky Charm of Koi After waiting like this for a few more days, Li Chu still didn't wait for the killer to come to Qingyi Tower, but instead waited for a professional team. On this day, a group of four young Taoist priests came to the Yuhan County government office. They were all dressed in blue-green Taoist robes with white bottoms, sleeves and leggings. They were three men and one woman and they were all full of energy. 
after handing in the greeting card. I found out that these people came from Shinshu Temple outside Chaoda City and were disciples of Taoist priest Chang Shochong. Gong Sunja had a deep friendship with Chang Shochong, and he wrote to him for help when he left Chaoda. It was a pity that Chang Sho had not returned from his travels in the clouds at that time. He returned to Shinshu Temple a few days ago and saw Gong Sunche's letter asking for help. He immediately sent four of his disciples to come to help and obey Gong Sunche's orders. Gong Sunja was immediately overjoyed. He introduced Li Chu to a few people, and when he mentioned that he came from Diyun Temple, ten miles outside the town, several disciples of Shinshu Temple showed a little disapproval in their eyes. Shinshu Temple is a famous Taoist sect that has been passed down for thousands of years. It has a high status and is second only to the twelve immortal sects in the world. It's normal to feel a little arrogant when facing this kind of little Taoist priest from the countryside. Li Chu nodded politely. He has always been polite and doesn't care what others think of him. The young Taoist priest who led Sheng Zidwen said directly, Since we are here, we are naturally responsible for the safety of Master Gong Sun. It is best not to interfere with the rest of the people. When he spoke, he didn't even look at Li Chu, although they both belonged to Taoist sects. The difference between the two sects is like a natural chasm, and not everyone can be worthy of being called a Taoist friend. Gong Sun just face changed, and he was slightly unhappy. He glanced at his daughter next to him. Gong Sun rose stood up and said, Taoist priestly saved our lives and is a great benefactor to my father and daughter. Although these Taoist priests are famous disciples, they are new here and are not familiar with the situation here. They may still need Taoist priestly's help. The young Taoist priest's attitude towards her was quite gentle. And he said slowly, Master ordered us to come here and let him be sent. If Miss Gonsan insists on keeping him, we will naturally have no objection. I just feel that there is no such thing necessary. Gong Sunru's eyebrows moved, as if she wanted to say something else. At this time Li Chu said, It doesn't matter if you don't need me here. I also want to go back to the Yun Temple. He is indeed happy to have someone to replace him. These days he has not leveled up, has not made any money, and has gained nothing but a lot of kidney replenishment. Although Gong Sunro was reluctant, since Li Chu wanted to leave, she had no choice but to reluctantly send Li Chu out. There was an ugly Taoist priest in the Shinshu Temple team. When he saw the scene, he muttered angrily, Young boy, I think it brought back some unhappy memories. The leading young Taoist priest looked at Gong Sun Ruping's elegant back, with a flash of cold pride in his eyes. Snort, seeing the ten-mile slope with red flowers and green willows from a distance. Li Chu felt relaxed, finally returned to a familiar home, staying at a daze in the main hall, eating with the master, and then going to the Lu family ghost tower to level up. What a pleasant and comfortable pace of life. But he soon froze. It was as if I had seen some strange scene. The renovation of the young one has been completed. And the scale has nearly doubled. Mainly the expansion of the backyard. But this does not make him feel strange. What makes him feel strange is that. The courtyard in front was now full of people. And the queue had already reached the door. It looks like a crowded place. Is it still the Diyun Temple that I am familiar with? Especially when the women in line saw Li Chu. They suddenly burst into chaotic screams, and some of the brave ones even rushed over. Li Chu suddenly felt terrified. Danger? Turn around and run. After a lot of tossing and turning, he finally got rid of the crowd and rolled into the front yard. The hairpin is crooked. The clothes are messy, and there are red stains on the face. Good guy. Even when faced with Bai Guiyaku, he had never been so embarrassed. When I returned to the Taoist temple, I saw Yu Qian sitting cross-legged on the futon looking like an immortal. Xiao Yu, dressed in a female crown, sat obediently on her knees, holding a small basket in her hand. They all looked very tired. The crowd who originally offered incense all ran out to chase Li Chu, and they took a short rest. The coy girl looked at Li Chu, lost in memories for a while, and then smiled after a while. Master, you are back. Li Chu was quite touched to see that she still remembered him. After seeing Xiao Yu's dress, he asked a little strangely, is Miss Yur also a Taoist priest? I just asked her to come out in this outfit to help with the reception. When you are away, everyone likes to look for Xiao Yur when they have something to do, Yu Qian said, with a bit of sadness in his tone. Probably the melancholy of the former middle-aged and elderly female idol in Yuhang Town, suddenly reduced to the third most popular Diyun Temple, resulting in a huge gap. Why? Li Chu asked. Because they all like to hear me bless them. Hee <laughs> hee. Xiao Yu said with a smile. At first, 
An old woman saw Yu in the Taoist temple and told her about her family. Xiao Yu said, I wish you all your wishes will come true. As expected, she got a big fat boy when she went back. Um, oh, she was born by her daughter-in-law. Yu Qian explained hurriedly. Afterwards, several people received Xiao Yu's blessings and all of them achieved their wishes. Xiao Yu is famous nearby. What do you wish for now? I'll come to talk to her and ask for a transport talisman to go back. Li Chu glanced at the basket in Xiao Yu's hand. And sure enough, it was filled with delicately folded talismans. He was a little surprised. Xiao Yu can draw talismans. The reason why he was surprised was that Di Wen had never sold talismans before. He will not. And the master never gets distracted on these trails. No. Xiao Yu shook her head in denial. She is a koi. So she can draw whatever she likes. Yu Qian twitched his beard and smiled. Nowadays, the luck charms painted by Xiao Yu can be sold for 500 yuan each. Li Chu was even more surprised this time. Two talismans in this way cost one tail of silver. Judging from the number of pilgrims outside, hundreds of them could be sold in a day. This is faster than picking up money. He couldn't help but hold Xiao Yu's hand deeply and said, Thank you for your hard work. Xiao Yu was a little confused. But she felt that she was being praised and happy. Of course, among so many pilgrims, Xiao Yu's reputation only accounts for a small part. And most of them are famous because of Li Chu Kai. Due to the commotion caused by Li Chu's first appearance, the master and apprentice decided to temporarily close the gate. Li Chu thought that he would have to put up a sign outside tomorrow saying, Respect Taoist priests. Be civilized and offer incense. Well, I have to add that touching is prohibited and violators will be fined. Heavy penalties. He had just closed the door and was about to go back to the backyard to rest when he heard a knock on the door. Sorry, it's closed today. Please come early tomorrow. Li Chu said. Li Chu? Is that you? Li Chu? Open the door. I have something to ask you for help. A surprised voice came from outside the door. It's Wang Longchi. Li Chu's heart moved, as if he saw friendship shining in front of his eyes. Chapter 42 Revenge Ghost Alliance After many days, Wang Longchi's complexion improved a lot, and the corners of his eyes and brows became brighter again. Behind him was a young man dressed as a Confucian scholar. He was wearing a double-breasted gown of coarse indigo cloth with a plain lining. He had a slim build. His face is also thin and pretty. But his facial features are a bit hard. And his face seems to be incapable of making expressions. When looking at people, his eyes move very slowly. Sluggish. Li Chu led them to the front hall. Carefully closed the door again. And then sat down on the futons. What's wrong? Did you encounter evil spirits again? He asked Wan Longchi. Hey. It has nothing to do with me this time. It's my friend. Wang Longchi patted the Confucian scholar next to him. The Confucian scholar seemed to have woken up from a dream. He raised his hands to Li Chu and said, Xiaosheng Chen Zian has met Taoist priest Xiao Li. Hello. Li Chu nodded gently. Chen Zian said H, low and stopped talking. Wang Longchi sighed and continued to speak for him. Zian and I were classmates. Li Chu was slightly surprised. Wang Longchi squinted his eyes. Don't look surprised. I know what you mean. I have been studying for several years. And my studies are quite good. Li Chu was even more surprised. Wang Longchi actually went to school. He is really beyond appearances. Chen Zian said from the side. Seventh young master has indeed been my classmate for a few years. My husband often praises him for his smart mind. If he studies hard, he will definitely gain fame. Yeah. You don't know how much my husband liked me back then but it's a pity that his daughter liked me more. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been kicked out. Wang Longchi sighed when he mentioned his youthful past. Li Chu had no interest in his erotic past and said flatly, Tell me why you are here. Oh, that's it. Wang Longchi immediately returned to the topic. Xiang currently lives in Hangzhou and took his wife back to Yuhang town to visit relatives in the morning. But when passing by Miafeng Mountain, his wife disappeared mysteriously. Missing? Yes. We were walking side by side in the mountains. The clouds were calm and the wind was light just a moment ago. But suddenly, there was a strange wind on the ground, which made us unable to walk. At this time, a temple appeared next to us, and we wanted to go in to take shelter from the wind. Who knew as soon as I stepped in? I turned around and my wife disappeared. No matter what, I couldn't find any trace of her again. Chen Zian said in a deep voice. He spoke very slowly, and his eyes were dull when he spoke. He didn't know if he was frightened. Wang Longchi added. 
In the past few days, there have been rumors in the town that there are monsters in Nyuffing Mountain. Zian is worried that his wife has been kidnapped by the monster. He asked me for help, hoping to find some people to follow him into the mountain to find his wife. I thought, if there is a monster, it must come to you. If you are free, why not help him once? Are there monsters in Nyuffing Mountain? While Li Chu was staying at the county government office, he had very little information and had not heard anything about it. But it shouldn't be a very powerful monster. Otherwise, I would have seen monster flames rising into the sky when I looked up. As his experience at exorcism gradually increased, Li Chu was no longer as timid as he was at first. After all, courage comes from strength. When he met so many evil spirits, none of them could withstand his sword. His confidence in himself has also improved slightly. A little smaller. He still clearly knew that he was only in a small town of Yuhang. And he could not sit in a well and look at the sky and underestimate the evil spirits in the world. But at the same time, he feels that now at least in this three-acre area of Yuhang town, he can be a little stronger. So he nodded and said, Okay, without further ado, we will set off immediately. Naturally, the faster he could go into the mountains to find someone, the better. He immediately turned back to the backyard and said H, low to Yu Qian. Yu Qian smiled and nodded. Come back early. Let's have hot pot tonight. Soon. Li Chu, Wang Longji, and the slightly dull scholar Chen Zian were on the road to Miufeng Mountain together. There are many hills in Jiangan Island. And there are many mountains and rivers in Yuhang County. But they are usually small lumps of land, and there are few real mountains. Miufeng Mountain is the only big mountain nearby. The mountain is high but not dangerous. Deep but not steep. And covered with lush forests and bamboos. It is a good place for outing. However, in recent days, some monster legends have leaked out. More than one person claimed to have seen traces of monsters in Nyofing Mountain. So there are no more tourists with their families. At this time, under a steep rock wall in the mountain, a three-foot-tall giant sat cross-legged. It was dressed in black and had an evil spirit all over its body. Under the blue sky and white sun, it seemed as if there was black arrogance emanating from the whole body. The face is human-like but not human with a pair of black fangs sticking out, and a tangled king pattern on its forehead. Next to it stood another tall man wearing ancient armor. But compared to the size of the giant, even the tallest man seemed a bit small. The armored man's face was bloodless and livid. He stood upright, and even looked a little stiff. If you look at its hands, you will find that its nails are horribly long. The two ghosts were relatively silent. After a long time, a red shadow suddenly flashed over. What appeared was a small and lonely woman in a red dress, with wide clothes, flowing sleeves, and fluttering ribbons. But she couldn't cover up her long white legs, which were looming and alluring in her movements. These three people, or rather these three ghosts, were the ones who had appeared in the corpse cave before. Black Fong! Ching Jia! They are setting off! The woman in red slowly fell down, revealing a face that looked stunning at first glance. Her delicate eyebrows, eyes, Mouth and nose were all perfect. But if you look at such a perfect combination of facial features into a face for a long time, it will look a bit weird. Have you taken the bait? Ching Jia's voice was harsh and unpleasant. Like metal friction. Yes. Sure enough. It's exactly what I thought. If we came directly to him, he might be suspicious. Hey, you smile ferociously. But if we go to find him through his friends, he won't suspect it's fake. A good plan for Mr. Montenegro. The woman in red also showed a charming smile. Hey, you looked at her. Thank you for keeping an eye on his movements. This is the most dangerous mission. Actually, I have been observing the little Talus priest for so long. Apart from his extremely handsome appearance, he is ordinary in other aspects. And he seems to have no real energy at all. Hong Ling hesitated. I wonder if we have found the wrong person. Hey, you said. Impossible. We have been searching for information in Yuhang Town for so many days and everyone is saying that he is the best at exorcising evil spirits. Who is he? What do those mortals know? They just follow what others say. It doesn't look like he has the strength to kill on Kai. Maybe he is his master? Hong Ling guessed. The old Taoist priest in Dianwen has a masterly demeanor that is almost overflowing all day long, which is indeed very suspicious. Black Tooth's brows furrowed, and the word Wang on his forehead popped up. No matter what, since he is here, he must die. If it's not him, then we will find someone else. Qin Jia licked his lips stiffly. If he is weak, then the plan we have designed for so long will be in vain. 
In that case, I will definitely let him die in the most painful way. Hong Ling looked at the two ugly things in front of her and sighed cryptically. What a pity for that pretty face. Be sure to peel it off later and treasure it. Chapter 43 White Fox Blocks the Road Myofeng Mountain looks lush and green from a distance. When you get closer, you can hear the whine of the mountain wind passing through the forest valley from south to north. The sound is like the whine of a flute, but it actually has a bit of melody. This is also the origin of the mountain's name. It is almost autumn, and there is a bit of coolness in the mountains. The sound of footsteps trampling on fallen leaves gradually approached, and a group of three people arrived at the foot of the mountain. Li Chu also walked quietly without saying a word. Chen Zian remained silent, his movements a bit stiff, although he was the one who led the way to find his wife. He walked last. Therefore, only Wang Longqi's voice sounded from time to time along the way. Back then, there was an old lady's temple on Niofeng Mountain. It was said that it was very good at praying for children, and people often came here to offer incense. But later this old lady's temple became abandoned. Do you know why? Because later, when Taoist priest Yu Qian and you came to the Yun Temple, they all said that they were looking for him to ask for a better son. Ha ha ha. Why don't you laugh? Wang Longqi gradually stopped talking, feeling that the atmosphere was a bit strange. It's normal for Li Chu not to like to chat. But Chen Zian was not like this before. No matter what he said, he would support him even though he often invited him to dinner, thinking that he might not be able to find a wife. He might not be in the mood to joke. Li Chu had used his mind's eye to explore the entire mountain before. This vast mountain was full of mixed auras, evil spirits, and people. But he couldn't find out where Chen Zian's wife was. His mind's eye technique can only look at the spirit, rather than truly seeing broadly like the spiritual consciousness of a high-end cultivator. We can only follow Chen Zian up the mountain to check. The three of them soon reached the mountainside. This is the narrowest part of the mountain road. It is a narrow path with cliffs on both sides guarding it. You can only go straight forward. When passing by here, the mountain wind became much stronger. Li Chu's nose suddenly twitched twice. The smell of the wind was wrong. There is evil spirit. Before I had time to look around carefully, I heard a rumbling sound. When I looked up, I saw a round boulder rolling down from the top of the cliff. Look, if this weight is hit, the three of them will turn into meat paste. Back off! Wang Lunchi shouted, taking the lead and taking a few steps back. At this time, Jin Zian's movements became much more agile, and he also retreated continuously. Li Chu, on the other hand, did not dodge in a hurry. He stood on the spot calmly and fearlessly, and first cast his gaze on the top of the mountain wall, where the boulders rolled down. A white shadow flashed past. He frowned in surprise. Boom! There was a loud noise, and the boulder fell to the ground. Half of the road trembled, and the sound echoed far away in the wind although it looked scary when it rolled down above their heads. In fact, the place where the boulder fell was still two feet away from them, so there was no danger. Li Chu looked away and looked at the boulder in front of him, and heard Wan Wangji shout, Oh no! The way forward is blocked! This, Chen Zian's expression also changed. There is only one way up the mountain. If we take a detour, we may have to walk for two hours, Wan Wangji said anxiously. Two more hours would mean that it would be getting late and it would be troublesome to find someone by then. Then I heard Li Chu say lightly, Get out of the way! Um? Wang Lungqi was startled and quickly retreated behind Li Chu. This tone was all too familiar to him. Sure enough, then Li Chu unsheathed his sword, waved it in the air, and scoffed. Bang! The boulder blocking the road ahead suddenly exploded, turning into pieces of rubble and falling into the air. It also revealed the astonished faces of Wang Lungqi and Chen Zian, who were originally behind the stone. Wang Longqi opened his mouth wide, and even Chen Zian, who had dull features, gave an exaggerated expression. They couldn't figure it out at all. How could a man chop such a huge boulder into pieces with an iron sword? However, Wang Longqi was used to this kind of surprise brought by Li Chu. After all, he had seen more shocking scenes. He quickly regained his composure and patted Chen Zian on the shoulder. Well, let me just say that Li Chu is very strong. When he said this, he looked proud. Chen Zian nodded dully and said, Taoist Priest Li is truly a god. Li Chuyun put away his sword lightly and shook his head. I'm just starting out on the path of cultivation. After that, he walked forward resolutely, his cloth shoes stepping on the gravel-covered mountain road, and his footsteps were extremely humble. The two people behind him followed suit. According to Chen Zian's description, 
The small temple where he and his wife took shelter from the wind was halfway up the mountain, out of the forest, in an open space not far away. However, the three of them walked for a long time in the forest on the mountainside, but they still didn't see him. What's going on? Wang Longchi breathed heavily. Where is the temple you were talking about? Chen Zian looked a little bad. He looked around at the terrain and said, It's obviously right in front. But? Let's look for it again. Li Chu silently observed the surroundings and then said, After walking for about half an hour, the three of them still had not left the forest. What's going on? When did there be such a large forest in Yelfing Mountain? Wang Longchi's legs were so tired that he collapsed on the ground. Chen Zian's expression changed drastically, and there was a faint fear in his eyes, as if he was afraid of something. Li Chu looked around and said, This is the third time we have come back here. What? Wang Long stood up in confusion. Is it a ghost hitting the wall? It's almost like a blindfold, but it should be done by a monster. Li Chu nodded. Just now, he discovered that there was always a faint evil spirit surrounding this place. The taste is somewhat familiar. This kind of blinding method is different from illusion. It changes the surrounding terrain and covers up the real path. So no matter how strong his mental power is, he will inevitably fall into it. He has never encountered this kind of situation. But now that he knows the situation, there will always be a way. It was like being in the examination room and suddenly encountering a question I had never seen before. At this time, you should not panic. But calm down and think. Familiar principles often hide in unfamiliar topics. So Li Chu sat down quietly. Wang Longchi asked, What's wrong with you? Li Chu replied calmly, I'm thinking of a way. Wang Longchi turned around and said to Chen Zian, It seems that your wife was really captured by a monster. This is obviously because the monster used magic to block the way and did not dare to let us find her. Chen Zian ignored him and looked at Li Chu. Because before Wang Longchi finished speaking, Li Chu stood up. Have you thought of a solution? Wang Longchi asked in surprise. He knew that Li Chu was always fast. But wasn't this a little too fast? Yeah. Li Chu nodded. He thought about it. This deception method uses terrain to confuse people, such as surrounding trees, rocks, etc. So, as long as there are no such things around, the blinding method will naturally have no effect. He drew his sword again. Wang Longchi felt something was wrong in the atmosphere and quickly pulled Chen Zian back a few steps. Immediately, a roar sounded in the mountains. A sword. Boom. The white light of the sword light turned into a huge wave, sweeping across the mountain forest sideways. Everywhere they passed. Trees fell and rocks shattered. The forest was not big to begin with. But when it was swept away by the billowing sword energy, only a few hundred bare wooden piles were left in an instant. Ouch. Wang Lungchi shook his head in disbelief. Isn't this so exaggerated? Chen Zian also widened his dull eyes. His eyes moved vaguely somewhere. And he suddenly shouted, There! The trees blocking the view disappeared. And the scene in the distance suddenly appeared. You can see that in the open space not far away, there is indeed a small dark temple. It looks very abrupt and a bit weird indeed. The three of them quickened their pace and hurried over. At this moment, a beast roar suddenly sounded next to him. And a white shadow flashed. Pounced on Chen Zian. This time Li Chu didn't draw his sword. He pulled Chen Zian next to him and pulled him behind him. Puff. When the white shadow saw Li Chu standing in front of Chen Zian, it immediately changed its direction, flicked its tail, and landed in front, revealing its figure. It turned out to be a white fox with a slender body and a fluffy tail. It lay on all fours, looked at Li Chu, and whined. Looking at Chen Zian again, it immediately bared its teeth, showing its fierce look. Is this the monster that kidnapped your wife? Wang Longchi asked. I don't know. Chen Zian shook his head in panic. I only know that my wife disappeared in that temple. Why are you blocking our way? Li Chu asked. He was familiar with this white fox. Every morning it will be the first to come to Dian Temple. It is more pious than anyone else. It is the little fox who is about to transform. He believed that this white fox would not do anything harmful to nature. The white fox blocked the door of the temple with a ferocious look on his face. His intention was very clear that he would not let a few people in. Wang Longchi said, This fox is clearly a monster. It doesn't dare to let us in. Wu, Bai who bared his teeth fiercely at him. Li Chu said softly, Get out of the way. Woo 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 woo. The white fox barked anxiously a few times, as if it wanted to say something, but it had not yet transformed, nor had it learned to speak human words. 
seeing that it could not be stopped. It suddenly turned around, ran to the door of the black temple, and raised its hind legs. Hiss. A column of white water. There happened to be a wind passing by, and an indescribable smell of urine came down the wind. Wang Longchi quickly covered his mouth and nose and exclaimed, This fox is so wicked! Damn it! This is a seal! The white fox peed into the temple. It was like a seal had been placed on it, making it difficult for anyone to get close to it. Chapter 44 Swallowing the Little Taoist Priest Alive This small temple suddenly appeared in the mountains, with the three characters, Tiger Temple, written on the plaque. It was small in size, with a single door and no windows. It was completely dark, as if it was dyed with ink paint. The temple was backlit, and it was so dark inside that it was hard to see clearly. A white fox that usually worshipped gods urinated into it so arrogantly. It seemed that the gods enshrined inside were not some kind of gods. Just when Li Chu was wondering what Bai Hu was doing, he suddenly heard a woman's tender cry coming from the temple. Miss Sir! Chen Zian's expression changed drastically, and he suddenly lost his composure. Madam! He immediately wanted to rush to the temple. But the white fox bared its teeth at him at the temple gate. Li Chu had already stepped in first. Seeing that he could not stop Li Chu, the white fox looked around, then suddenly turned into a white shadow and ran away in a flash. Li Chu covered his mouth and nose with his sleeves, resisting the smell of fox urine and walked into the tiger temple. He saw that inside the small temple, all the internal organs were intact. As soon as you enter the temple, the light and sound outside seem to be cut off, and there is a layer of faint light inside for illumination. What is enshrined on the altar is a black and gilded tiger with dazzling eyes. It looks like it is descending from a mountain. And its evil aura is extremely fierce. Especially the pair of hanging tiger eyes facing the entrance of the temple. And the hungry tiger that is really staring at its prey. No different. The space in this temple is extremely small. And you can see the end at a glance. There is no woman at all. But I don't know who made the coquettish cry just now. Li Chu quickly looked around and locked his eyes behind the statue. If something could be hidden in this temple, it could only be there, hidden by the altar. He walked forward quickly and saw that there was indeed a deep cave hidden under the black tiger, which looked strangely glowing with dark red light. Li Chu didn't dare to step in directly, but stuck his head to the left and took a look. At this glance, his pupils shrank sharply. He saw two rows of bloody corpses hanging in the cave, all of which were fresh and uncorroded human corpses. If it were just a corpse, it wouldn't be enough to move him. But in the first row on the left, which is the closest, there is a thin scholar in civilian clothes hanging. It's obviously Chen Zian. Boom. Before he could turn around and take another look at Chen Zian, outside the temple door, the door of the tiger temple slammed down. That's right. The gate of this temple actually looks like a gate falling heavily from above. Suddenly, there was no light, and the world was dark. Then the ground under Li Chu's feet began to tremble, and the whole temple shook violently. This small world begins to reveal its true colors. Wang Longqi outside the temple gate also heard the cry. Seeing Chen Zian's expression change drastically, Li Chu rushed into the small temple first, and he also showed an eager expression. But he was thinking in his heart. The fox's urine was so loud when he smelled it from afar. If he went in now, maybe the young master would faint inside immediately. Still pretending, he shouted twice. After they all go in, I can just look out for the wind so he pretended to shout twice. There are people inside. Save people quickly. Next to him, Chen Zian continued to shout. Madam, wait for me. Don't be afraid. The two of them shouted together for a long time. Then, they all discovered something was wrong. They looked at each other and found that neither of them took a step forward. A thought came to my mind at the same time. Could this guy be acting too? What Wang Lengqi was thinking was, this is your wife inside, not mine. I don't want to endure the filthy smell and go in. So why can't you? What Chen Zian was thinking was. Had he discovered it? At this time, he pointed behind Wang Longji and said, Chi Xiao, look behind you. Um? Wang Longji turned around and saw a stunning woman in a swaying red dress walking towards her. At a startling glance, she was as beautiful as a fairy. He suddenly lost his soul and was about to get closer. But after taking a few more glances, he realized something was wrong. This woman's facial features are all excellent, with perfect willow eyebrows, almond eyes, turned nose, and red lips. But when put together, there is an indescribable awkwardness. It's like they shouldn't be on the same face. Wang Longqi's reason quickly returned. In this wilderness, 
there suddenly appeared such a charming and strange woman. And it seemed that Chen Zian knew her? Why? He looked at Chen Zian, who looked at the woman with great respect. This time Wan Longji became even more suspicious. Ha ha! This skin is actually not bad. The woman in red suddenly laughed, her voice ringing like a silver bell. It's a pity that after seeing the skin of the little Taoist priest, looking at the other men is a bit boring. Listening to her words, no matter how stupid Wang Longji was, he knew that this person was coming from the wrong place. He smiled cautiously and said, The girl talks very interestingly. The woman in red changed the topic and her eyes suddenly became sharp. Funny! I'm going to skin you! Boom! Just as she finished speaking, the black gate of the small temple suddenly fell, and a heavy sound shook Wan Longji's legs. Don't scare me! I'm not afraid of you! Wan Longji said, taking a dozen steps back. Something doesn't seem right about this situation. The woman in red seemed to be teasing him deliberately, slowly approaching and saying, I'm a ghost! Aren't you afraid? Wan Longji glanced at the closed temple door, swallowed, forced himself to raise his chest, and said, Afraid? Afraid? This young master is nicknamed the Undead Knight. Will I be afraid of a female ghost? Then you are very powerful. The woman in red smiled softly, as if she was about to take action. Wan Longji hurriedly shouted, Don't act rashly. Let me tell you. The little Taoist priest, who went in just now, is the evil nemesis of Yuhang Town. He and I are close friends and brothers who have died. You dare to mess with me? Call him or the sword will cut you. Yeah. Before he finished speaking, he saw a sudden change in the situation in this small black temple. And suddenly, there was a loud rumbling sound from top to bottom. The entire temple seemed to have been uprooted from the ground and lifted up together. The next second, there was a flash of light. And the entire temple turned into a huge black tiger head. This tiger head seems to be black and gilded with brilliance looming. A pair of tiger eyes are menacing and terrifying, and a pair of pure black fangs are like swords and halberds. Then its entire body emerged from the soil and roared toward the sky. Roar. Suddenly, the evil spirit was overwhelming, turned into a violent storm. The wind was filled with a sickening chill. The wind follows the tiger. The dark wind comes from the ghost tiger. Wang Longchi was so frightened that he sat down on the ground. This is actually a huge black tiger nearly 10 feet long. It drilled its body into the ground, leaving only a tiger head on the ground that transformed into this temple. And Li Chu threw himself into the tiger's mouth, eaten alive by this black tiger. Wang Longchi secretly screamed three times again. Bad? 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 He looked at Chen Zian, the man who had led him, and Li Chu here all the way. At this moment, he looked up respectfully at the appearance of the black tiger, clearly knowing that this would happen. Only then did Wan Longchi realize that he had been tricked by this guy. Hearing a gust of wind behind him again, he turned around and saw a tall man wearing heavy armor landing on the ground. It was livid all over, obviously not alive, and every move was very stiff. A right hand with sharp nails was holding a dying white fox. Although Wan Longchi saw this kind of thing for the first time, one word quickly came to mind. Zombies. This fox almost ruined our life. I don't know what relationship he has with that little Taoist priest. Let him die with the little Taoist priest. The sound of the armored zombies was extremely unpleasant. Like metal friction. And Wang Longchi couldn't help but shudder. Just when Wang Longchi looked over, it happened to look at Wang Longchi and asked in a cold voice. Just now you said that you and the little Taoist priest are close friends? A lifelong friendship? The tone was solemn. Wang Longchi shivered all over. He hesitated for a moment. Smiled uglier than crying and said, Actually, they are just ordinary friends. There was a pause. He added, Not very familiar. Chapter 45 Why Does Your Belly Glow? Black Fawn was a great demon when he was alive, and turned into a ghost tiger after his death, bringing with him tyrannical strength in the ghost kingdom on earth. Ordinary ghosts must undergo at least hundreds of years of practice and accumulation before they can be promoted to ghost generals. And from the first day that Hei Ye came to the ghost country, he was the first among the ghost generals. But a few years ago, when the king chose one of his ghost generals to be promoted to ghost commander, he chose Bai Jin. When he directly asked the king why he did not choose himself, the reason given by the king was that Bai Jin had a brain. Heiya went back and wondered for a long time. Bai Jin looked like a skeleton, but there was nothing inside the skull. Where was its brain? It took a few years for it to figure it out. Maybe the king meant that he had no brains? It was a little angry but didn't dare to refute. When the king was still there, 
as the most brave and capable ghost general. His status was not lower than that of Bai Jian, the handsome ghost. But when they followed the king and rebelled from the ghost country, the king was soon sealed again. The situation got worse. As the ghost coach, Bai Jian became the team's decision maker. Qing Jia, Hong Ling and Lan Kai also supported Bai Jian. They all believed that the skull had a brain. Ridiculous. It was determined to prove to them that it was very smart by killing the Taoist priest this time. Tiger head and tiger brain. Sure enough, its strategy was successful. The little Taoist priest threw himself into the tiger's mouth unprepared and was swallowed by him. After transforming into a ghost, its stomach is no longer an organ. There is a cave full of sinister energy. Any living creature sent into it will die within an instant. And no one will be spared. After a period of time, it will be refined into a ghost to help it deceive more prey. Roar. It let out a triumphant roar. Roaring in the forest, Wang Longqi sat paralyzed on the ground, looking desperately at the zombies, painted skins, and ghost tigers in front of him, thinking in his heart, how can he escape and scade? Maybe you can use a beauty trick to seduce a female ghost. After all, that's all. It's not the first time. Zombies always want to suck blood and kill people. Why not use the help of the fox? If the white fox can urinate on itself, then the zombie will probably not be able to eat it no matter how hungry it is. I wonder if the poor white fox still has the mood and ability at this time. The huge black tiger King Long Chi didn't even dare to look at it. He could only make calculations in his mind. I first take out the dagger for self-defense. If it rushes towards me, wouldn't it be nice to slide a shovel under its belly and disembowel it directly? Wang Long Chi immediately made up his mind and immediately changed from sitting to kneeling without any hesitation. He knelt on the ground and shouted miserably, Princes, please spare your lives. After much thought, it was all false. And he was not a fool. In this situation, it was obvious that begging for mercy was the only way out. The terrifying black tiger only took two steps to get here. It smacked its lips and suddenly asked, Hey, why does my mouth smell weird? Qin Jia picked up the white fox in his hand. And Hong Ling quickly gave it a look to stop it. And then said, Aya, stop asking. You don't want to know. Black T's barbed tongue licked back and forth. The more he licked, the more he felt the taste was wrong. At this time, Chen Zian, who was small next to him, said, Ai Shenzhen, I have done as you asked, and you have also eaten the Taoist priest. Can you let my wife out now? Your wife? Hong Ling stepped forward and asked charmingly, Look carefully at my nose. Does it look like your wife? Chen Zian stared at her face for a few times, then said with a look of panic on his face, Didn't you say that after I finish these things, you will put my wife back? Black Two smiled sarcastically. You don't really think that the people who were eaten by me can be resurrected. Do you? But I'm obviously still alive. Chen Zian shook his head. Are you really still alive? Black Tiger put his head close to it, bringing a smell of fishy wind and anger. You are just a ghost whose soul has been refined by me. I was like you just to prevent extraneous things. Say, now, if you don't obey my orders, then I can make your soul fly away at any time. You lied to me. Chen Zian's strength seemed to be drained from his body, and he collapsed on the ground. He didn't care about his own life or death. But hearing that his wife could not be resurrected immediately made him despair. Hey, you sneered. Qing Jia, they are all at your disposal. Qing Jia smiled ferociously, revealing his white fangs. Wang Lungqi looked pale. Stop! Chen Zian suddenly raised his head and shouted. Since you have already harmed my wife, can you please let Qi Xiao go? He is my best friend, and he is also innocent. Qin Jia looked at him. Then at Wang Longqi, nodded slowly and said, Okay, I have always respected people who are loyal. He was a general in the army during his lifetime. He was shot to death by thousands of arrows in order to cover the retreat of his comrades. After death, he still attached great importance to loyalty. Really? Can I go? Wang Longqi suddenly found his life in desperate situation and was overjoyed. He quickly got up and then looked up at the huge black tiger. I have one more question before I leave. Black Tooth lowered his head, his dark pupils reflecting the weak figure of the human being. Wan Longchi pointed at it. Why does your belly glow? Um? Hey, you lowered his head, but could not see the condition of his lower abdomen. But both Hong Ling and Qing Jia could see it, and they soon showed horrified expressions. A little white light came out from under the now huge tiger body of Black Tooth. It was just a spot of light at first then extended into a line. And soon, the white line expanded into a wide crack. 
The billowing white light pours out like a giant wave. This is sword light. Boom. Hong Ling and Qing Jia's eyes flashed with incredible shock at the same time. And they had the same thought in their minds. How can this be? Black Tooth's mind was running out of ideas. Its tiger head and tiger brain were cut in half in an instant as the white line continued to extend. One tiger became two tigers. The people and ghosts present watched this extremely large ghost tiger being ripped apart in two pieces. Immediately, a cyan figure appeared from it and landed lightly. His appearance is handsome and his temperament is out of this world. As if an immortal descended from heaven to cleanse the world. He was dressed in green clothes, clean from beginning to end, without a trace of dust. It seemed as if he had not just been eaten, but had gone to take a bath and change clothes. Hong Ling screamed, Come together! Okay! Qing Jia agreed and flew over. Flying stiff. Those who can become ghost generals and escape from the fierce fighting in the ghost country all have super abilities. Qing Jia is no exception. From an ordinary zombie to a rare flying zombie. It has experienced ups and downs along the way. And has never faced such a moment of huge crisis. But past experience tells it that when you think the enemy is invincible. If you try again, it will often be afraid of you too. Really. Just after he got out of trouble. Another powerful enemy Pafong suddenly came. And Li Chu was really shocked. In desperation. He quickly swung his sword again. Just now. Hei Yu was cut into two pieces with one sword. This sword was Qing Jia. Qing Jia has always been very confident in his own physique. The zombie body is stronger than steel. And can fly into the sky and escape from the earth. Even cultivators with great supernatural powers rarely have a way to restrain flying zombies. It never thought that someone could kill him with a single sword. After Qing Jia's upper and lower bodies were separated, its lower body was still rushing forward, while its upper body had fallen to the ground. The moment before it lost consciousness, it saw Han Ling's back. It has flown far away from Yofeng Mountain. It turns out that it just shouted, Come on, because it wanted to rush forward on its own to buy time for it to escape. Qing Jia cursed in his heart. Grass. Female ghosts are not loyal. Chapter 46 The Upcoming King The Green Hills are speechless. Only the wind rustles. The sunset comes quickly. The moment Hei Ye was beheaded, Chun Zian, the road ghost, also disappeared with him. His expression was very peaceful, perhaps thinking of finally being reunited with his wife. Wang Longji stared blankly at Chun Zian as he disappeared, with complicated eyes. Why are you even a ghost? Looking back on my own time, going to a ghost house to commit suicide was not included. The girl I met on the road was a ghost. My former best friend became a ghost. And my former friends were also ghosts. He collapsed a little, lowered his head, and began to doubt life. Is it possible that there are no living people in this world at all? A green Taoist robe came to him. Wang Longchi calmed down a little. No matter how many ghosts there are in the world, Li Chu is definitely not one. Li Chu picked up the seriously injured white fox on the ground and took it back to Di Yongwen for treatment. Now that I think about it, this white fox may have been practicing in Niofeng Mountain and accidentally discovered the plans of several ghosts. So it wanted to prevent him from entering the temple. Li Chu was quite moved when he thought that it would even resort to urinating in public to prevent him from putting himself in danger. Wang Longchi's melancholy only lasted for a short period of time. When the two reached the foot of the mountain, he began to talk more. This fox is so smart. Why don't you take it home and raise it? I promise to treat it with good food and drink. After knowing that this was a good fox, Wang Longchi also became very interested in it. This is not an ordinary fox. It is a demon fox that is about to transform. Li Chu explained. Transformation? It's just that it's about to turn into a human form. Huh? Wang Longchi's eyes brightened even more. What a vixen. If only we could cultivate the relationship between master and servant while it has not yet transformed. Li Chu looked at the light in his eyes, which was a little difficult to understand. Isn't a fox that turns into a human still a fox? What's so exciting about it? Strangeness. You can ask it after it recovers from its injuries. If it agrees to accept you as its master. I have no objection. Li Chu said calmly. When we returned to the Yun Temple, it was already dark. Yu Qian was a little surprised when she saw the white fox in Li Chu's arms and asked. Is everything going well? Li Chu nodded. It went smoothly. Did you help the scholar rescue his wife? No. What about the scholar? Dead too. Yu Qian blinked. How could this be considered a success? At that moment, Li Chu told Yu Qian the whole story. After hearing this, Yu Qian's eyes narrowed. These ghosts are here specifically for you. Um, 
Li Chu had already felt something was wrong before. This is clearly a trap for themselves. They even found out their interpersonal relationships and used Wang Longqi to lure themselves into the trap, which is hard to guard against. In fact, when he was swallowed by the black tiger and enveloped in the sinister aura, he smelled a hint of danger. If you stay in such a strong evil spirit for a year and a half, your body may really suffer some damage. Thinking of this, Li Chu couldn't help but feel scared. These ghosts are so vicious. In order to set a trap for themselves, they also killed an innocent couple. However, he has always behaved in an elegant and easygoing manner. What kind of ghost could have such a deep hatred against me? Soon he thought of the life-buying coin. Isn't the matter of resentful spirits really that simple? Thinking that there was a group of extremely ferocious ghosts hiding in the secret staring at him. Li Chu felt a little like a light on his back. However, this trip was not without rewards. The experience value brought to him by the black tiger and zombies was beyond imagination. Zombies are equivalent to approximately 2,200 lantern monsters. And black tigers are equivalent to approximately 4,396 lantern monsters. Judging from the experience points, this is the strongest opponent he has ever encountered so far. Although the fight scenes are similar. In this way, his level directly broke through level 73 and started to approach level 74. In the later stages, the experience points required for each level increase will increase significantly. But correspondingly, the subsequent growth in strength is also considerable. In this extremely dangerous world, strength is the only foundation for success. Previously, he felt that he could be a little stronger in this three-acre area of Yuhang Town. But now, he has cautiously withdrawn this confidence. Even in such a small place, unexpected crises still lurk and may break out at any time. Well, it's really scary. While he was thinking wildly, Yu Qian had already bandaged the white fox. Xiao Yu kept stroking the white fox's fur on the side, looking very happy. Furry, slippery, and easy to touch. Yu Qian's eyes were bright and he said, it would be great if we could keep it here to raise it while we are healing it this time. While it is not transformed, we can cultivate the relationship between master and servant. Stand up. A vixen in human form. That's famous. Li Chu looked at the light in the master's eyes and felt a little familiar. It seemed like I had seen it somewhere just now. Bone Mountain and Corpse Cave. A skeleton wearing a broad robe and long sleeves sat on the ground. Opposite a frightened woman in red. There used to be up to five ghosts sitting in a circle in this cave. But later it became four. And now there are only two ghosts left looking at each other. The night wind swept in. And both ghosts felt a sense of desolation. I knew that that good-for-nothing black tooth would definitely fail. But I didn't expect that two ghost generals would be killed directly. Bai Jian said in a deep voice. It was my mistake. No. It's not. Hong Ling shook her head. Aya's strategy was very successful. It swallowed the little Taoist priest but he came out and scathed. There was panic and disbelief in her tone. What kind of physical state does he have? Bai Jian asked. I can't feel the fluctuations of his true energy. And he doesn't look like a warrior. He may be some kind of magical ancient inheritance. Hong Ling said. In short, he is not someone we can deal with. Bai Jian looked at Hong Ling and sighed slightly in her heart. It was obviously frightened. They all escaped from the tragic battle in the ghost kingdom. And they shouldn't have been like this. You can imagine how scary that Taoist priest was. It stood up and said, Since this matter is so serious, it seems that I have to ask the king to make a decision. Hong Ling raised her head. Do you want to wake up the king? Although it may arouse the king's wrath, there is really no way to deal with it. The death of three ghost generals is already an unbearable pain. Watching by Jian's back walking towards the depths of the cave, new fear appeared on Hong Ling's face. The fear of Taoist priests fell from the sky, and the fear of that king was deeply imprinted in the hearts of every ghost general. Much more profound. Deep in the cave, there was a rumbling vibration, like magma rolling underground. Not long after, Bai Jian came back again. Every frame around it was shaking uncontrollably and making rattling sounds. How is it? Hong Ling asked. Bai Jian's tone was solemn. The king may want to meet him in person. Chapter 47 New Fashion in Jianghu The white fox is gone. The monster's physique was already much stronger than that of humans. It received careful care for a few days and recovered from its injuries in a short time. But it rejected Yu Qian's invitation to stay. The friendship between Bai Hu and the master and apprentice in the Yun Temple is, at best, a passionate relationship. But at worst, it's just a few acquaintances. 
It was willing to take the risk to stop Li Chu that day, which was the most benevolent thing. It would be a bit wishful thinking to want it to give up its freedom to recognize its master. In the middle of the journey, Wang Longji even came over excitedly and asked Bai Hu if he wanted to follow him, and deliberately revealed the smell of copper all over his body. But obviously, the good girl's tried and true tricks don't apply to the good fox. Without saying a word, Bai Hu brought him some hot water. Wake up on the spot. The days of Dianglin have also become busy. Since Li Chu's return, there have been many pilgrims every day. 90% of them are women. Most of the other 10% of men came to see Xiaoye. That's right. Now Koi Girl also has her own group of fans. In addition to her pure and pleasant appearance, the main reason is that people nearby are spreading the word that with a blessing from this little girl, all your wishes will come true. Warning signs were also erected outside Sanqing Hall to offer incense and respect Taoist priests in a civilized manner. No touching. Violators will be fined. This sign can indeed warn most of the pilgrims who come here, but for a small number of wealthy people, the fine warning is no more than a clear price tag. There are still people who want to take risks to get up close and personal with Li Chu. At this time, he would often show off his dodge skills and give a stern warning. The Yun Temple is not an illegal place. This girl. Please be careful in your words and deeds. Surprisingly, often the colder his attitude is, the more obsessed those people will be. Just like some legendary special physique. Li Chu was greatly confused. The master of the temple, Yu Qian, was also lost for a while at first. But there was nothing he could do about it. The old sisters, who had followed him, had all passed the age of fanaticism. The waves behind the Yangtze River pushed the waves in front. Pushing the waves in front onto the beach. Well, but soon, he pulled away from his sadness and showed the extremely high quality of a Taoist helmsman. Taoist priest you erected a pilgrim list in the front yard of Diyun Temple, recording the names of the ten pilgrims who donated the most incense in a month. The pilgrim who ranks first will receive a free visit by Taoist Li to exorcise evil spirits. The remaining nine pilgrims will receive a secret consecration talisman. Invisibly, it creates an atmosphere that the closer you are to the top of the list, the deeper your love for Taoist Li is. The pilgrim suddenly went crazy. Now the Taoist temple receives more incense in one day than in the previous month. Yu Qian's face smiles like a blooming chrysanthemum every day. But Li Chu felt that this was not a good idea. After all, they were a Taoist temple. They made money by helping people eliminate disasters. And they were not a gathering place for literati. Yu Qian seemed to see that he was worried. So he comforted him and said, Disciple, times have changed. In our time, people with big fists spoke louder and people with strong strength were right. But that's not the case now. How can there be so many evil spirits to kill for you? There are not so many swords and swords in the world today. Who has more followers? Whoever is responsible will take charge. Look at the ancient inheritances, the twelve immortal sects, and the hidden families now. They all have to introduce a few representative people walking in the world. Like Zhang Yunting of Shishao sect, Qing Jianling of Guanghan sect, and Zhang Luming of Chao Yan Palace the most popular in Hangzhou Mansion. There are often thousands of young heroes and fairies who are famous all over the world. There are tens of thousands of fans, and the streets are empty wherever they go. Their sex will also profit from them and try their best to maintain their image. Every time these people walk in the world to attend a fairy sect event, they have to find someone to design the way to appear, wear clothes worth a thousand gold, and ask for money later. Find the storyteller man Halua to tell your story. Compared with these people, what we are doing can only be regarded as a trivial matter. If you can use your fame to push our Dehun Temple out, why not do it? Li Chu nodded. He understood the truth. In fact, he was very familiar with this situation. In the previous life, it was a normal behavior to chase stars. But I didn't expect that such a circle would form so early here. Although he still thought it was weird. He didn't raise any objections. Because they gave too much. One day in early autumn, a group of three people stepped into the land of Yuhang Town. The leader was a tall and powerful man with blonde hair and a beard. His upper body was semi-naked, and his muscular chest and slender arms attracted passers-by's attention. On his left is a tall and thin man with a sharp mouth and monkey cheeks, and a small black beard on both sides of his lips. He is the kind of person who does not look like a good person at first glance, but looks more and more bad the more you look at him. On the right, there is another eye-catching woman. She wore a double-breasted white skirt, lined with an embroidered red tube top, 
and tied her slender waist with an aqua satin ribbon, with a lazy demeanor. The most eye-catching thing is her chest, which has a towering, majestic and majestic shape. She has a double-flowered bun on her head. Her skin is like cream, and her eyes are bright, making her a rather elegant beauty. It's a pity that such a pleasant face will always be ignored at first glance. The blonde man looked at the bustling town ahead and said in a loud voice, We are here. If we don't succeed in avenging Lao Wu, we vow not to return to Chingy Tower. The tall and thin man said in a sharp voice, Brother, please keep your voice down. By the time, the people selling sesame cakes on the roadside will know that we are here to avenge Lao Wu. The blonde man hummed, and then said in a voice that was as low as possible but still loud, The mission Lao Wu was assigned was to assassinate the Yuhan County Magistrate here. Killing a mortal shouldn't be a difficult job. But since some people have failed one after another, it means that the county magistrate must be protected. As long as we continue to attack this county magistrate, we will probably be able to see the person who killed Lao Wu. Hey, brother, please be patient. Have you forgotten what we discussed when we came here? The tall and thin man stopped him quickly. Didn't we agree to discuss it in the long term? The blonde man frowned. Then where do you think it grows? The news from Lao Wu is that the Taoist priest is frightened and asked us not to avenge him. With Lao Wu's temper, what does it mean that he can say such a thing? He is really frightened. Since we still if you decide to come, of course you can't die recklessly. Let's first investigate whether there are Taoist priests around the Yuhang County Magistrate to protect him. If so, what are their origins? Then we can plan for the other party's realm and ensure that he is protected. Hit and kill. This is what revenge should look like. Right. The tall and lanky man slowly advised. The blonde man said sullenly. Okay. Then I will listen to you first. The woman in white next to her suddenly yawned lazily, and the buttons of her tube top suddenly tightened, causing pedestrians on the roadside to take a collective breath. Itchy. My nose is itchy. The woman felt that the atmosphere around her was a bit strange. She squinted her eyes and looked around casually, and asked curiously, Huh? Why do everyone here have nose bleeding? The tall and lanky man covered his nose and said in a loud voice, Perhaps the weather has been dry in autumn recently? Let's find a place to settle down first and think about it in the long term. The blonde man also covered his nose and said, Okay, let's take a long term view. Chapter 48 The Lover in My Dream Although autumn in Jiang Nanzu came late, it finally arrived, and the weather gradually turned cooler. Li Chu looked at the female pilgrims, who were still in full bloom and wearing cool clothes, with a little doubt. Aren't they cold? What's the difference between this kind of girl who is willing to show off her beautiful figure regardless of whether the weather is hot or cold? And a fairy? The only thing we can do is to send them fiery eyes and provide them with a touch of warm comfort. Yu Qian said plausibly. Li Chu seemed to understand. Near noon, there was some commotion among the pilgrims in the front yard. Someone shouted, Which little bitch dares to jump in line? Bring her back. Shameless. Don't you know you have to abide by the rules if you want to see Taoist priestly? Get out of the way. I am the purple-clothed guard of Chao Yan Palace. Who dares to stop me? Li Chu quickly went to lead the visitor to the backyard. Li Sini, with messy hair and upturned eyebrows, was sitting at the stone table pouting, arms folded across his chest, looking bulging with anger. Of course, even if you don't feel angry, you still feel angry. Li Chu poured her a cup of tea. She looked at the little Taoist priest and said quietly, It's really hard to see you now. Li Chu nodded. The temple has been very popular recently. Li Sini's tone was sour. Yes, you are famous now. When I returned to Hangzhou a while ago, I heard someone talking about you. Li Chu said calmly. I just made a lot more money. I know a lot of people when I go out. And a lot of people praise me when I do things. Other than that, there is nothing good about me. Li Sini's chest rose and fell violently twice. And some words that would be blocked were on his lips. But looking at Li Chu's face, she finally held back. She, Lady Li, has been working hard in the world for so long. What is her goal? Isn't that all? You actually still have a nonchalant tone? In those publicized deeds of little Taoist Priestly, there is no trace of her. But most of them are comments such as Hugging the thighs. Lying to win. Bastard. Coyote Yank's little minions. How infuriating. What's even more annoying is that when he encounters something he can't solve, he still has to ask Li Chu for help. Since the race spirit case, she has been stationed in Yuhang County. It had been calm for a while, and it was time for her to return to Hangzhou. But two days ago, 
Li Chu told her that he was plotted by several ghosts. Li Chu just told her as a matter of routine that an innocent person was killed because of this. But Li Xinyi smelled something different right away. Ghosts that can appear during the day are usually called sun-wandering ghosts. And every sun-wandering ghost is by no means a benevolent type. Because the nature of ghosts is to like the night. Even if they can withstand the strong yang energy during the day and survive, their strength will be weakened a lot. Those who dare to commit crimes in broad daylight are no ordinary day wandering ghosts. Maybe they are all ghost generals. According to Li Chu, at least three ghost generals gathered in Yuhang town. Although he killed two of them. But behind this, there must be a bigger fish. She wants to explore the truth behind the resentful spirit case more and more. Maybe she can find out a handsome ghost. If this matter is really solved, then not only will he become famous, but at least he will not be able to get a promotion or a salary increase. So she simply stayed. As for why Li Chu was able to survive unharmed in the trap set by three ghost generals and then kill two of them, she no longer wanted to ask. If you ask too many questions, your life will lose momentum. Having said that, the reason why she came to see Li Chu today had nothing to do with the resentful spirit case. When she was in Yuhang County, Chao Tai Fook secret cases in the county would be reported directly to her. And she would handle some minor matters casually. But there was a strange thing recently that she couldn't handle. Facing the cool breeze, she slowly preached to Li Chu. There is a Gei Jiazwang at the foot of Niofeng Mountain, which is also part of Yuhang County. There is only one big landowner in Gei Jiazwang. That is Mr. Ji's family. The rest of the people in the village are basically tenants who farm the land for Mr. Gu. This kind of landowner is not like the Wang family and Zhao family in the town who make a fortune in business. But they have been passed down from generation to generation. And they may not lose even if they are really rich. In Mr. Ji's generation, although he married seven concubines, he only had an only daughter. As he got older, he became more open-minded and did not plan to have another son. He only regarded this daughter as the apple of his eye and loved him. Miss Ji's appearance is pretty. Her personality is lively and she has always been popular. Mr. Gu also hoped to find a better son-in-law. He searched and searched, but he has not yet chosen a husband for his daughter. Starting half a month ago, Ms. Gu suddenly began to feel depressed and became sickly. However, many doctors were consulted, but none could tell what the illness was, and they could only say it was a heart disease. When I asked Ms. Gu if she had anything on her mind, she just blushed and said nothing. There was a little maid who went to wait on the young lady in the middle of the night. She heard her talking in her sleep every night. Listening to her talking in her sleep was like talking to someone, asking questions and answering them. If you listen carefully to the content, it was quite unpleasant. After many times, the little maid did not dare to hide it. So she reported the matter to the master. Until this moment, the Gu family did not think about evil spirits. They only thought that there was something wrong with Miss G's health. Mr. Gu thought, could it be that his daughter was getting older and had not gotten married? So she started to miss men? So he began to think about recruiting a son-in-law. As soon as he got the news, young men from all over the country came to him. Now Miss Gu was no longer silent. She cheered up and tried to survive. Crying, making trouble and making trouble. When there was a commotion, Mr. Gu persuaded me that you will get married sooner or later. And there is nothing wrong with marrying earlier. Unexpectedly, Miss Gu replied, I have already set my sights on Zhang Lang in this life and I will not marry anyone except him. When this sentence came out, the whole family was shocked. It turns out that the young lady already has a sweetheart? Could it be that the reason she is so sick these days is because of lovesickness? Mr. Good didn't want to stop her. It was a good thing for his daughter to have a sweetheart, no matter who the young man was. He had to give away his family wealth to make his daughter happy. But the daughter refused to tell whose family this man belonged to. Finally, after coaxing and lying, she revealed that it turned out that Zhang Lang was a person who had been coming to her dreams every night for the past month. He has a peerless appearance, can be said to be as rich as Jade, is talented, and can speak volumes. She is well informed and understands all the little thoughts of her daughter's family. All in all, there is simply no more perfect lover than him in the world. In her dream, Miss Gu had already gone to Wushan with him, and there were many clouds and rains, and heavy rain. It was also after these days of heavy rain that Ms. Gu always felt more and more depressed when she woke up. But she didn't think it was Zhang Lang's fault. She just thought it was caused by her overthinking. She didn't know where Zhang Lang came from or where they were going. But she felt that the relationship she had with Zhang Lang these days was like nothing she had experienced in the previous 20 years. And she was willing to die. Master Gu was shocked. 
What kind of sweetheart is this? She is obviously charming. He did not dare to neglect. So he quickly reported it to the government, hoping to invite the master of Chao Yan K to kill the ghosts. Unfortunately, Miss Gu was very resistant, and Li Xinyi was unable to learn much about the situation with her. She stayed outside Miss Ji's bedroom for two days, but there was no trace of evil spirits. But Miss Ji's sleep talk still exists. Like, this is not some evil illusion. But the evil spirits are coming and going in dreams. She remembered a legendary ghost. Nightmare. This kind of ghost specially enters people's dreams to absorb their yang energy and uses it to practice cultivation. It is very difficult to deal with. In desperation, she had to come to Li Chu. This has almost formed a kind of inertial thinking. Li Chu didn't have much experience in dealing with such ghosts. But he didn't refuse. After all, I couldn't just watch a young girl being killed by a ghost. So I had to give it a try. At that moment, he came to Gei Wang with Li Sini. In the entire Gei Wang, there is only one large mansion that occupies an extremely vast area. There is no doubt that this is the home of the landlord Mr. Gu. When he came to the Gu family's house, Master Gu naturally thanked Li Chu profusely and held Li Chu's hand and made a promise. As long as the harmful ghosts are eliminated, there will definitely be two benefits. However, Li Chu is no longer the young Taoist priest who has never seen money. He just said calmly, I will try my best to get rid of the ghosts and rescue Miss Gu. This is definitely not a matter of money. Master Gu felt that the little Taoist priest's hand was obviously stronger and nodded repeatedly. I understand. I understand. How can the little Taoist care about these vulgar things? But I only have these vulgar things. If my daughter is safe this time, the reward just promised can be doubled again. Li Chu's hand strength doubled in a flash. And Master Gu grinned when he pinched it. After some pleasantries, he personally took the two of them to Miss Ji's residence. As soon as they entered the courtyard, they heard Miss Ji's weak but sharp voice. Stop your wishful thinking. John Lang is the best man in the world. And we have already promised three lives. Even if I starve to death and hang myself here, I will never be tempted by others. Get out! Then there was a sound of banging things. And a group of women dressed as matchmakers slipped out in disgrace. Lee Sinny clicked his tongue and whispered. This Miss Gu is getting more and more difficult. Chapter 49 The moment he saw Li Chu, he lost his life. And John Lang was a passerby from then on. Miss Gu was lying on the bed at this time, with unkempt hair and a sallow complexion. Her once fair and round face had become thin and sunken, and her vaguely beautiful eyes were lifeless. But she didn't care, because as long as she entered the dream, she could return to her flower-like appearance, even more beautiful than her previous appearance. As long as you look good in front of your lover. Isn't that enough? She had been feeling increasingly weak recently. And just shouting at those matchmakers made her dizzy from exhaustion. I didn't want to yell. But those matchmakers went too far. They boasted that they were unparalleled in the sky and on earth. In fact, they were all trying to gain their own property. If you really drag those men over, they are not even worthy of carrying your own Jean Lang shoes. Snort. As she regained her energy, she heard footsteps again. The little maid came to the outside of the screen and said, Miss, the master has brought someone to see you. Miss G's brows furrowed again. And she said angrily, Didn't I say that I won't see anyone? So all those people will be embarrassed? Before he finished speaking, his voice gradually became quieter. She thought maybe her eyes were dazzled. What did I see? A disgusting fat man with a broad body that blocks his vision. Oh, he turns out to be my father. Behind the fat man, followed a young man in Taoist robes, green clothes with white lining and long gown, with a natural and unrestrained air. Her temples were hanging down, and she tied her hair casually with a bamboo hairpin, which seemed casual but full of romance. Those eyebrows and eyes were shining brightly, as if the stars in the sky were broken into them. Why are those nose bridges and lips so perfect? Why? Can such an appearance and temperament really exist? Ah, Miss Gu couldn't help but turn red and groaned. Mr. Gu hurriedly stepped forward and asked, My dear, what's wrong with you? Are you feeling uncomfortable? Well, Miss Gu quickly covered her mouth. What? The statement just now was clearly a groan from the heart. Did you make a sound unconsciously? It's so embarrassing. However, who can hold back after seeing such a face? Li Chu looked over and looked at Miss Gu. At that moment, she felt that the little Taoist priest's eyes were like two sharp arrows piercing her heart. With a clear cracking sound, Something seemed to gush out. Warm and slippery. Oh my god. 
There is such a gorgeous man in the world. The tears of the West Lake are my water. I would rather turn into a ball of flame with you. Li Chu looked at Miss Gu and thought to himself that the darkening of the hull, the gloomy complexion, the dull eyes, and the presence of Ai Mucus were indeed signs that a ghost had stolen Yang Chi. The same was true for Wang Longqi, who had been pestered by the ghost bride for one night. It's just that Miss Gu is a little more serious. If nothing is stopped, she may die in a few days. Looking at each other for more than two breaths, Miss G's heartbeat almost stopped. He was looking at me lovingly. Oh my god, oh my god. Wait a moment. Miss Gu suddenly remembered that she had not washed her face for three days. Is there still a poop in my eyes? Ah. She covered her face with the quilt. Mr. Gu suddenly felt worried when he saw his daughter's face change suddenly. Her eyes wandering. And she suddenly didn't dare to see people anymore. My dear. What's wrong with you? Miss Gu hid behind the quilt and said angrily. Dad. Please stop talking. I am willing. Ah? Uh? Mr. Gu was stunned for a moment. What do you want? Who brought him here? Miss Gu stretched out a skinny hand and pointed at Li Chu. I brought him here. Li Sin, he said. Miss Gu glanced at her secretly. A little confused. Which matchmaker are you from? I don't think I've ever seen it. Anyway, you can go and get the reward of 100 tails. I agree to this marriage. Li Sin, he blinked. I. Whose matchmaker am I? It's been two days since I came to your house to exorcise evil spirits. So you don't remember who I am? And which marriage did you agree to? You must have fallen in love with Taoist Priestly. Right? Are you thinking about shit? Do you agree in it? Okay? Do I agree? Do the thousands of female compatriots in Yuhang Town agree? So angry. But still keep smiling. Lisa he forced a smile. Miss Gu, you may have misunderstood. I am not a matchmaker. Huh? Miss G's eyes rolled. It doesn't matter whether you are a matchmaker or not. Is he here for a blind date? Li Chu looked confused. Of course not. Uh. Miss Gu fainted without saying a word. Be good. Be good. Mr. Gu quickly patted her cheeks and pinched her. And at the same time said, Chow Tao is priestly. My daughter is very weak now. You must speak tactfully so as not to irritate her. Excuse me. After a lot of trouble, Miss Gu was woken up again. Miss Gu looked at Li Chu weakly. Aren't you here for a blind date? Mr. Gu immediately looked at Li Chu nervously. Li Chu pondered for a moment. And then said, To put it mildly, Absolutely not. Miss G's vision went dark, and she almost fainted again. Thanks to Li Sinny's slap on her face. She woke up on the spot. She covered her burning face and looked at the people in confusion. Li Sinny pursed his lips at Li Chunu, indicating that it was him who did it. A happy smile suddenly appeared on Miss G's face and the heat on her face turned into a secret feeling of relief. Ah, Li Chu said seriously. Miss Gu, you are in a very dangerous situation now. We are here to save you. Ah? Miss Gu suddenly looked horrified. Really? Yes. Li Chu nodded. You are probably confused by a nightmare. It is stealing your Yang Chi. If this continues, you may die within three days. It's so bad. What should I do? Miss Gu opened her big eyes and looked at Li Chu fragilely and helplessly. Li Chu said, You can meet it as usual tonight, and I will try to see if I can eliminate the ghost. Okay, little Taoist priest, you must save me. Miss Gu took the opportunity to hold Li Chu's hand. I am only 19 years old, and I don't want to die yet. Miss Gu, please rest assured, we will do our best. Li Chu calmly pulled out his arm, and his upper body followed the trend and performed a tactical tilt back, widening the distance between him and Miss Gu. Can you sleep with me tonight? I'm afraid. Miss Gu asked with her eyelashes twinkling. Huh? Li Chu and Mr. Gu were stunned at the same time. Li Sin he said hurriedly. We will monitor the situation inside and outside the bedroom at all times. Miss Gu can rest assured that we will never leave you alone. That's what people said. Miss Gu blushed and said shyly. Li Sin he was speechless for a while. Her eyes were as wide as bells. She had already seen through Miss G's little trick. And she couldn't help but sneer in her heart. You may be a young girl in reality. But in your dream, it has been raining continuously for so many days. Why are you still pretending to be innocent? So Chow Tian K's purple-clad guard snorted coldly and said, But Miss Gu, don't be fooled by your Zhang Lang and become confused again. If you can't control yourself, then we can't save you. You? Zhang Lang? Miss Gu was startled. Her eyelashes kept flickering. And who is he? Written all over her face? This made Li Sin he couldn't help but admire it. Okay, 
That's enough. I am truly yours. Good Suiwa. Chapter 50 Am I Invincible in the Dream? Dreams are a very magical thing. As the saying goes, Think about it every day and dream about it at night. But people can't really control what they dream about at night. Moreover, dreamers often do not know that they are in a dream. And all the feelings in the dream are regarded as real. It's like a world that was created briefly. Legend has it that if a person dies in a dream, a ghost called Nightmare may be born. It has the ability to enter and exit other people's dreams and can absorb people's young energy in their dreams to practice. After the top practice deepens, you can also force people into dreams. This kind of ghost rarely appears, but once it occurs, it is difficult to deal with because it is easy to harm people as long as it is in a dream. No one can fight against it. If you want to eliminate this kind of ghost, you must find its true location and suppress it. That night, Li Chu and Li Xinyi stood outside Miss Ji's bedroom, each closing their eyes and meditating. There were two faint air dragons swimming around the end of Li Xinyi's nose. The tail ends of the air dragons were circling, rising and falling rhythmically with the movement of the heavens in her body. Li Chu, however, did not need to rely on breathing skills to increase his strength. He was observing his surroundings with his mind's eye. Although the nightmare comes and goes from the dream, there is no real trace. But just because you can't see it with the naked eye, doesn't mean it's not there. He wanted to use the chi-gazing method to sense it and see if he could find some clues. As he became more proficient in the use of the mind's eye technique, he gradually gained some understanding. The range of perception of the mind's eye technique is related to the degree of infusion of his soul. If he only senses the 10 feet in front of him, then he can move around freely without being affected. But if he amplifies his perception to the entire Yuhang town, then he will have to devote himself to it, and the other senses will be much slower. This is actually a more dangerous state. After a long time, Lee Sinny completed two great cycles. He slowly opened his eyes and looked at the moon that had already passed the zenith, feeling a little confused. Why is it so peaceful tonight? She whispered. In the past nights, Miss Gu would have started talking in her sleep. Immediately, I heard a faint voice coming from inside. I'm not asleep yet. Lee Sinny slapped his forehead. No wonder. The nightmare can pull sleeping people into dreams but it can do nothing to those who are awake. So in theory, you can avoid being harmed by nightmares by not sleeping. But it's just talk. If Misko wants to be completely done with this nightmare, she can't hide. According to their prior agreement, Misko will try to find out the origin of the nightmare tonight. That is, where its true body is. Unexpectedly, she actually suffered from insomnia. Li Chu heard their voices in his ears. And just as he was about to open his eyes, he suddenly saw a nearly transparent smoke lingering on the roof of the Gu family. Coming! Is this the power that nightmares rely on to enter dreams? Unfortunately, the smoke was too ethereal, and Li Chu did not see the path it took, because Miss Gu did not fall asleep. The smoke never entered and hovered above the roof. I heard Miss Gu say meaningfully in the room, When I was a child, I couldn't sleep, and my father would pat me gently to coax me to sleep. Now if someone can come in and pat me, I should be able to fall asleep. Li Chu didn't answer. He was observing the smoke with all his heart. Li Xinyi stood up excitedly. I'll do it, Miss Gu hurriedly said. No, it's not troublesome. I feel it. When she refused repeatedly, Li Xinyi had already opened the door, strode to the bedside, and struck her lower neck with a skillful hand knife. The force of this hand knife was very precise, just enough to make her lose consciousness, but without causing additional damage to the body. And it's very relaxing. Lee Sinny clapped his hands happily. I've been unhappy with you for a long time. Snort. As Miss Gu closed her eyes, the swirling smoke began to sink slowly and completely integrated into her body. Green mountains, green waters, birds chirping and flowers fragrant. In a picturesque scene, two figures suddenly appeared. Miss Gu changed from her previous decadent attitude. She was now wearing a goose yellow blue silk skirt with pearl tassels and a fairy bun on her head with a string of pearls with bright eyes and white teeth, red lips, and a slender figure with a bit of fragility. She looks particularly lovable. In front of her stood a man in emerald green robes. The man wears a green round hat and laid with emerald jasper and a long gown. And he has an elegant demeanor, with a face like a crown jade and bright eyes and starry eyebrows. She is truly a rare beauty in the world. It's no wonder that Miss Gu was fascinated by Li Chu before she met him. But at this time, when Gutsuehua looked at her lover in front of her, the obsession was no longer in her eyes. 
replaced by a complicated look. She hesitated and asked softly, John Lang, you told me before that your name is John Yuyen, a Chowda scholar, but you haven't told me yet. Why did you come to Yuhang County? John Yuyen looked at the woman in front of him strangely. Sui Hua, why do you ask this? Because I want to see you. Not like this in a dream. I want to see the real you. Miss Gu said hesitantly. John Yuyen stared at her. A flash of light flashed in his eyes. And then his expression suddenly changed. His tone suddenly became fierce. You betrayed me. Miss G's face turned tense, and she said in a panic. John Lang, what are you talking about? I'm just asking casually. John Yuyen sneered. Do you think you can hide it from me? In the dream, I am omniscient and omnipotent. And you can't hide your thoughts from me. Miss Gu took a few steps back. And then she understood why she had thought John Lang was so knowledgeable. It's not that he is considerate at all. But that all his thoughts are invisible to him. This is too scary. Let me see who it is. Who can change your heart? Wouldn't it be better to be with me? Here I have the most beautiful appearance and the most powerful ability. There can't be anyone more perfect than me in the world. How could you change your mind? Zhang Yuyan's eyes were sinister. His words were low. And the emerald hat on his head was shining. As he said that, he suddenly turned his head and looked into the distance and said angrily, Is it him? He's actually right next to you. As he stretched out his hand to grab it, a hazy mist appeared out of thin air. When the mist dissipated, Li Chu's figure appeared. Li Chu was quite surprised. He was not asleep at this time, but was in a state of perception with the mind's eye technique. It's just that the soul is more immersed, which can be regarded as deep meditation. And the nightmare can actually pull people who are deeply meditating into dreams. The mystery of this method is obviously not something that a dreamer can simply explain. The key points therein probably require a lot of research. This is the first time he has entered someone else's dream world, although he was forcibly pulled in. After a little experience, it seems that it is no different from the outside. While he was silently observing his surroundings, Zhang Yuyan also fell into silence. It is a nightmare. A ghost. And everything around it is a dream weaved by it. Including its own body. This appearance was created based on the most handsome facial features in his memory. A perfect face that only existed in his imagination. But today it realized that the existence of human beings was beyond imagination. In short, he never dreamed that people could look like this. After a moment of silence, its handsome face, which could be called perfect but not as good as Li Chu's, gradually became distorted. Zhang Yuyan suddenly roared. I want you to die. Boom. With its command, the color of heaven and earth changes. In this dreamland, it is the master. It can have all the power it can imagine. I won't say that I am a land god, but at least I follow my words. Amidst the roar, a thick beam of bright light fell from the sky, like a punishment from heaven. Li Chu's slender figure was instantly swallowed up. Ha ha. Die. Zhang Yuyan laughed ferociously. Killing someone in a dream will not cause him to die on the spot, but it will cause trauma to the person's soul. If it stares at Li Chu and kills Li Chu whenever he sleeps, it will be like stealing Miss Ji's yang energy, and sooner or later, he will die of soul exhaustion. That's how it's intended. There are actually appearances in the world that I have never dreamed of. This is really intolerable for ghosts. But soon, something even more intolerable happened. When the sky-reaching beam of light dispersed, the mountains below were almost flattened. But there was a figure standing up slowly. Li Chu frowned. The nightmare in the dream was indeed powerful. And the power of the blow just now was simply suffocating. He was actually knocked down and suffered minor injuries. There was blood flowing from the corner of his mouth. He wiped it and then pulled out his sword. Zhang Yuyan was a little sluggish. That is why, ah, uh, I am a nightmare. This is my home field in a dream. In the dream, I am invincible. But what is this strong sense of death threat? When Li Chu swung that sword, Zhang Yuyan remembered it. The so-called invincibility in dreams actually has limits. This limit is its imagination. Everything in the dream can be realized according to the nightmare's imagination. The so-called words follow the law. But imagination is not something that is fabricated out of thin air. It must have been seen, smelled, and heard. And at least there is a concept before it can be realized. Just like all the most handsome facial features it has ever seen combined together are not as good as Li Chu's face. The ultimate strength it has seen seems to be inferior to Li Chu's sword. No way. The moment the sword came to his head, a trace of absurdity flashed through Zhang Yuyan's mind. Is there really such a person in the world? I must be dreaming. Ah, it hurts so much. 
Chapter 51 Secret Key The moment Zhang Yuyan's figure was swallowed by the sword light. The entire dream was shattered. Miss Gu and Li Chu woke up at the same time. Li Chu's divine light paused, and he immediately closed his eyes again and opened his mind. In the vast sky, there is a misty smoke escaping rapidly. A single beheading in a dream is not enough to destroy this nightmare, but it can cause it to suffer considerable damage. Li Chu followed the trail and saw that the smoke finally landed in a hidden mountainside of Neofeng Mountain. Sure enough, the distance that nightmare can move is also limited. Is your old nest in Neofeng Mountain? After the dust settled, Li Chu opened his eyes again. He saw a delicate little face in front of him, looking at him with the eyes of a monster. Li Chu frowned. What? Li Sinhi just listened to Miss Gu who woke up and told her what happened in her dream. And her three views were overturned. Nightmares are invincible in dreams. Isn't this common sense? But why Li Chu could kill Nightmare instantly with one sword in a dream? This is a bit too shocking. But considering that he is Li Chu, it doesn't seem so shocking. She couldn't think of any good explanation other than monsters. After looking at it for a long time, Li Sinhi calmed down and said, The Nightmare was killed by you once in a dream. And the trauma it suffered was far greater than that of ordinary people. It should not be able to come out to cause trouble for at least a year and a half. It's just that we still have to find its true nature to completely eliminate this trouble. I found it. Um, his true body should be in Neofeng Mountain. I remember its trajectory and can go there and find him now. Li Chu said. Li Sin he looked at the little Talus priest in front of him. And his heart that had just calmed down began to waver again. Don't know what to say. This ghost is also unlucky. Maybe celebrities in the Shina realm or even the dragon transformation realm would not be able to deal with this kind of nightmare that has become so easy. But it happened to meet Li Chu. It doesn't matter if you are hacked to death in a dream. And you still have the ability to follow the trajectory to reality and suppress your body. Strike fast and hard. While she was in a trance, Li Chu had already stood up. And he was about to set off with his long sword on his back resolutely. He has always been active in bullying ghosts that are weaker than himself. Immediately, Master Gu and the maids of the Gu family were called to take care of the young lady. And they went straight to Miaofeng Mountain. Miss Gu still had the heart to chase Li Chu and say goodbye. But as soon as she raised her head, she let out an ouch. My neck hurts. Miaofeng Mountain is not far from Gei Jiazwang. And it was still dark when the two arrived. Li Chu looked for it based on his memory. There were some blocked roads along the way. And he also took a long detour. By the time we found the hillside, it was already dark. The climate in this season can only be said to be slightly cool. But here, it actually feels a bit cold. This place is hidden in the center of the mountain. If you push aside the fallen tree branches outside, you will find that the inside is completely sealed by ice. Li Sinhi knocked it with his hand and found that it was ice harder than iron stone. It looked like it had been there for several years. There was a vague mass of ink inside and it was hard to see what was sealed inside. She thought for a moment and said, This ice wall contains sword intent, like the ice-sealed sword seal of Guanghan sect. Guanghan sect is also one of the twelve immortal sects and the only sect among them that only accepts women. Its disciples are known to be aloof and aloof, and not many of them are walking around in the world. The mountain gate of Guanghan sect is located on Xianyu Mountain in the north, which is thousands of miles away from Jiangnan continent. It would be a strange thing for a disciple to come here. Li Chu didn't know the magical powers and secrets of these rivers and lakes. He only knew one thing. The body of nightmare is under this ice, he said. Li Sinhi nodded took out four fire talismans from his arms and placed them on the four corners of the ice wall. Then he used his true energy to activate the talismans and four fire dragons suddenly appeared, hovering outside the ice wall, dancing fiercely. Under the tongue of fire, the water flowing out of this hidden mountain quickly merged into a gurgling stream and the true appearance inside was gradually revealed in front of the two of them. The belly of the mountain is hollow and was filled with solid ice before. Now after all the ice has melted, an open space is revealed. In the middle of the open space, sitting cross-legged, was a young man wearing a blue and white Taoist robe. Also because of the ice, his face was as lifelike as before. Li Chu looked at his attire and felt vaguely like he had seen him before, but was not sure for a moment. Judging from the way he was sitting at this time, I am afraid many people would just think that he was sleeping, but would not guess that he had been dead for who knows how many years. Although they looked different, Li Chu recognized them immediately with the familiar Qi. This is the true form of that nightmare. Li Sinhi pondered for a while and said, He should have been frozen to death while meditating. He was unwilling to accept it and turned into a nightmare. 
as long as its body is suppressed. The nightmare will disappear. As she spoke, there was a flash of light on her wrist, and the famous sword, Chiyo Yubagonya, was held in her hand again. After spending a lot of money on re-refining it, Chiyo Yu Haitang has now regained its previous sharpness, and the sword light is heaving and sharp. Lee Sidney was about to make a hand and recite a mantra when he suddenly heard a scream. Wait a minute! From the corpse, a misty smoke floated gently and gradually formed a human shape. This nightmare, who was seriously injured by Li Chu finally showed up. The ghost named Zhang Yuyin begged for mercy. Please give me a way out. I have been practicing hard in the mountains for many years before I became acclimated. And I have never dared to harm anyone. Li Sinhi scolded. If we hadn't stopped you, Miss Ji's Yang Chi would have been stolen by you within three days. And you still said you didn't dare to harm anyone. That was just a small thought. From now on, I will definitely change my mind and become a ghost again. I will never dare to do it again. Snort. Lee Sinhi naturally would not listen to his nonsense and raised his hand to kill this nightmare. Wait a minute. I have a treasure to offer and I'm willing to exchange this treasure for a small ghost's life. Zhang Yuyin shouted loudly. Huh? Li Chu raised his eyebrows slightly and said, Listen to what good things he has. Li Sinhi raised the tip of his sword and put it away again before it fell. Zhang Yuyin rolled his eyes and said, You two need to agree first. If the younger one gives you a treasure that satisfies you, you must promise not to kill me. Li Chu nodded. I can guarantee that she will not kill you again. Li Sinhi suddenly frowned and looked at him. But he just waved his hand to stop her questioning. Zhang Yuyan waved his robe sleeve and saw a fluorescent light on the chest of the corpse below it. A sparkling object wrapped in a cloud of smoke flew in front of the two of them. Li Chu opened his hand to catch it and found that what fell in his palm was a residual seal. It seems that a large white jade seal has been cut into four pieces. And this is just one of them. There is a complicated word, secret, engraved on the seal. Li Sinhi took a look and exclaimed, The secret key! She looked at Zhang Yuyin with sharp eyes. Where did you get this thing from? Which secret realm is it the key to? Zhang Yuyin said, I don't know. Since I turned into a ghost, I have lost the memory of my previous life. I only remember that this is a very important treasure. But I don't know what it is or where it came from. Li Chu asked. Is it expensive? Li Sinhi took a deep look at him and said. It's a priceless treasure. I'll tell you more about it later. Okay. Li Chu nodded and pulled out the iron sword with his right hand. Zhang Yuyan's whole body trembled with smoke and screamed. You are going back on your word. I don't. Li Chu replied calmly and swung his sword down. Laugh. A burst of satisfying experience flowed into his body. Chapter 52 A Few Things About the Secret Realm the secret realm is a mysterious realm that is independent of this world. Some are eternal and eternal transformed worlds. And some are opened up by cultivators with the wonderful method of the universe. Throughout the ages, many great powers have found or opened up a secret realm of their own and then refined it into their own caves. These refined secret realms are hidden and safe. And people without the treasure key cannot enter at all. When a great power falls, some will hand over the secret realm to the sect or pass it on to their disciples. But there are also many people who fail to hand over the key due to various reasons. And these secret realms become ownerless lands. Almost every powerful person with profound Taoism will accumulate a lot of cultivation wealth through years of practice. Such as elixirs, talismans, magic weapons, and magical powers. These things are stored in secret realms and may never see the light of day. At this time, the secret realm means treasure. If it is a wild outer world that has not been refined by humans it will be even more precious. Because the outer world is usually larger than the secret realm created by humans. It is an extremely valuable asset for a sect. Take the 12 immortal sects as an example. Each immortal sect has at least one such world of transformation. It is extremely important for large sects to have a secret place of inheritance. Because of this, various sects in the rivers and lakes are extremely eager to search for secret realms. Before almost every large-scale secret realm is opened, it will attract several sects to chase and snatch it. The final result will often become everyone's collaborative exploration and joint control over time and also form some unwritten rules. But the big sects pay attention to the rules and will not quarrel with each other. Many small sects will not talk so much. A secret realm may contain the wealth of cultivation that can make the entire sect jump. This is enough to make many cultivators crazy. The bloodshed caused by the secret realm has never stopped for many years. As the saying goes, a common man is not guilty, but a treasure is his fault. This is the truth. 
A secret place may be a great treasure. Or it may be a life-threatening talisman. The danger is not only outside the secret realm, but also inside the secret realm. If the wild alien world has sufficient spiritual energy, it is likely that some naturally raised spirits will be born. They will regard this world as their own territory and will carry out the most violent attacks on uninvited guests who intrude. If it's empty, you have to be even more careful because that means that it may not be possible to survive in this secret realm. And there may be some terrifying existence that can make all living things extinct. Secret realms that have been refined by powerful sacrifices are equally dangerous because this is a world in the hands of others. Each secret realm owner will transform the secret realm according to his own preferences. This means that each secret realm has different rules of heaven and earth. I once saw a secret place where only women were allowed to enter. If a man entered, it would cause thunder and fire. It is said that there are also rules in the secret realm that prohibit wearing clothes, which is very immoral. There are also some powerful people with out-of-the-box personalities who will specially design various levels. Only those who enter can get treasure rewards by completing the levels. There are also some extremely insidious poisons hidden in the mechanism just to kill all the intruders. There are not a few powerful people with such dark psychology who want to let the intruders be buried with them. As for the entry threshold of the realm, it is the most common. Some secret realms are only accessible to those below the dragon transformation realm or only those below the divine harmony realm are allowed to enter. Of course, if the cultivation level exceeds the power of the master of the secret realm, you can naturally break through by force. However, this may cause huge damage to the items in the secret area and all major sects strictly prohibit this behavior. In short, although this thing is precious, it is hot to touch. On the way back to Yuhang Town, Lee Sinny took the trouble to explain everything about the secret realm to Li Chu. Li Chu heard clearly, thought for a moment, and said, Why do I think you have been scaring me? Do you want me to think this thing is very dangerous? And then give it to you on your own initiative? Well, but that's the truth. Li Sinny blinked and said, and the treasure key you got is only a quarter and is incomplete. If you don't know where to look for the rest of the treasure key, then this thing means nothing to you. Then what do you want to do? Li Chu asked. How about you give me the treasure key? And Chaofian K can give you part of the monetary reward? Li Sinny said. Li Chu nodded. It's exactly what I want. He had no intention of leaving this thing behind. Although Li Sinny's words just now emphasized the danger in the secret realm, they were all true. If it was a complete treasure key, he might have to think about it. But this thing is incomplete, and I don't know where to find the next part. So it really doesn't make sense. If it can be converted into money, it will naturally be good. Lisa he said, How about you make a price? I have something to say first. It is still unknown what treasures are in this secret realm. And it is not a complete treasure key. Don't expect the lion to open his mouth. Yeah. Li Chu pondered for a moment and said, 500 tails. Okay, 500 tails of gold. Don't go back on your word. Li Sinny decided in one breath. Quite impatiently, Li Chu's pupils were not easily aware of the earthquake. He didn't want gold. 500 tails of gold. That is, 5,000 tails of silver. You can buy a quite grand mansion even in Hangzhou Prefecture or Chaoga City. This is only a quarter of the key. This shows how valuable this secret realm is in Li Sinny's heart. It seems that he has underestimated its value. Then Li Chu said calmly, Don't worry. I will take the things back to Guanli first. And I will only wait for you to bring the money. I am absolutely honest. Li Sinny thought of the promise he made to the nightmare just now and muttered, A man's mouth is a liar. Um, it's nothing. Li Sinny hurriedly shook his head and changed the subject. Actually, I have always been curious. You don't seem to be a very vulgar person. Why do you care about money so much? You must know that many practitioners are not interested in gold and silver. They are treated like dung. Why do you care about money? Li Chu thought for a moment and said, As a general equivalent, money is a great invention of human society. Since then, many things that cannot be quantified have had their value. For me, many of the thoughts and feelings of others are incomprehensible to me, and I can only come to terms with them through general equivalents. Li Sini was confused when he heard this. After a pause, she asked again, but I don't usually see you spending money. And you both master and apprentice are quite simple. What do you plan to do with so much money? Li Chu replied without hesitation. Buy a house. Ah? Li Sinny was stunned when he heard this. Li Chu's eyes had a light that penetrated the world. In this world, anything you do may go wrong. 
but buying a house will never go wrong. Lee Sinny slowly raised a question mark in his heart. Question mark. Just as the two of them were going down the mountain, two figures slowly left on the other side of Miofeng Mountain. Li Chu had met these two people. The ugly Taoist priest from Shinshu Temple and the ordinary looking but short Taoist priest Pudong. Brothers and sisters. Walk side by side. Taoist priest Pudya sighed. I've been doing this for three days. But I've gained nothing. I'm going to be scolded by senior brother Zhang again when I go back. The ugly Taoist priest said angrily. It's all the fault of Bird Mountain. The bird is so big. And we have to search carefully. I'm afraid it won't take us ten days and a half to complete the search. It's really unreasonable for him to curse like that. My junior uncle is coming to Jiangnan continent soon. Senior brother Zhang is also anxious to show off in front of his junior uncle. After all, they say that our next temple master will most likely be our junior junior uncle. Humph. <laughs> the ugly Taoist priest snorted coldly. If he is in a hurry, he can do it himself. It is his brother who is missing here. If he doesn't come here, what does it mean if he is just urging us over there? Hey, senior brother Shui, be careful what you say. Taoist priest Pu Ai quickly gave him a hand. Senior brother Zhang stayed in the county government because he was staying in the county government. So he must protect Master Gong Sun. After all, this is our nominal mission this time. The ugly Taoist priest sighed. He is so protective. He just likes that girl. He is greedy for other people's bodies. He is despicable. Senior brother Shui, just talk about these complaints to me. But don't let others hear them. Senior brother Zhang has a bad temper. Is my temper better? Even in front of him. I would say so. He <laughs> he. The bright moon hangs high. And the mountain is silent and empty. The two Taoist priests did not notice that a pair of sharp eyes were staring at them from behind. As the saying goes, the mantis stalks the cicada, and the oriole stalks behind it. Chapter 53 The Master of Meishi Jai Li Sini couldn't bear to stay up all night and rushed back to Hangzhou Mansion. In her opinion, exchanging 500 tails of gold for a quarter of the secret key is a huge bargain. Not just her. I'm afraid every sect cultivator would think so. In the eyes of most practitioners, Gold and silver are useless after a certain level. And only things that can be beneficial to practice can be called wealth. The secret realm is definitely a windfall. Obtaining this quarter of the secret key can even be said to be a greater achievement than killing a ghost commander. After all, for a sect at the level of the 12 immortal sect, people will only take it for granted to eliminate no matter how powerful the ghost is. And it will be difficult to increase its reputation. The secret realm can directly bring huge benefits to the sect. And compared with the weekly chew, a behemoth like Chaofian K has a huge advantage in finding the remaining three treasure keys. Sure enough, when she returned to Chaofian K's residence in Hangzhou and reported the situation, she was immediately commended by her superiors. She has done quite well during this time in Yuhang Town, where there have been frequent cases of resentful spirits. She will be credited with settling down the town. Although someone did it, Ms. Lee also paid for it. The 500 tails of gold were approved easily, but there was still a problem. Matters in the secret realm were of vital importance, and it was impossible for Li Sini to handle it alone. Real experts had to be sent there to ensure that everything was safe. After all, the process of finding the secret realm cannot guarantee that there will be no others coveting it. It is a matter of profit, and no one will give in because of your reputation as Chaotian Quebec. On the contrary, the larger the sect, the more it deserves a bloody lesson. But Chaotian K is different from other immortal sections. Its disciples are distributed in 72 prefectures in Kyushu. This is a quite terrifying number. Even among giants of the same level as the 12 immortal sects. There are not many whose forces are so thinly divided. At the same time, because there are many sects in Hangzhou, with dozens of large and small ones, it is easy to find help when exorcising evil spirits. Therefore, there are not many Chaotian K masters assigned to Hangzhou prefecture. Many times, they are more accustomed to exorcising evil spirits by cooperating with outsiders. Li Sini would rather ask Li Chu for help many times than hire people from the sect. This was mostly due to the lack of manpower. Of course, the most important thing is that Li Chu is so easy to use. Good quality and low price. However, it is possible to exorcise evil spirits through cooperation. But it is obviously not possible to find a secret place. Matters involving fundamental interests must be handled by our own people. But at this time, all the experts stationed in Hangzhou Prefecture happened to be sent out. After all, there were dozens of small counties like Yuhang County in Hangzhou Prefecture. 
and there were quite a lot of shenanigans in total. Not every place has a Li Chu. Just when the boss was thinking about where to draw manpower. Listen, he said. Maybe I can ask my master to come out. The boss was overjoyed. It would be great if the master of Meishi Shai could come out of the mountain. Listen, he's master. Known as the master of Meishi Shai. Also known as Master Meishi in the world. Is a famous figure in Chao Tian Palace. In recent years, her practice has reached a bottleneck. And she has been in seclusion at Meishi Shai outside Hangzhou. Ignoring other things. But Li Sini was her disciple and often visited his master. So he knew her condition better. It is true that master's practice has reached a bottleneck. But it is far from a critical juncture. The so-called retreat is just to relax for a while. Anyway, in Chao Tian K, people in retreat can take long-term paid leave. This is the advantage of relying on the imperial court. After everything was finalized, she immediately left the city and came to Mei Shijai. Seven miles out of the city, there is a hillside full of plum trees, with a clear stream surrounding it. When the plum blossoms are in full bloom, they will cover the mountain stream. Hence the name. Mei Shijai is on the back of this hillside. Master Mei Shi is not a nun, but a nun. Kaodiank is not a Taoist sect, but its disciples cannot help but worship Buddhism and believe in Taoism. Master Meishi became a monk on her own and has nothing to do with spiritual practice. Li Sini came to Meishi Shai and knocked on the door. After a while, a gentle voice sounded. Sini, come in by yourself. Li Sini then respectfully pushed the door open and entered, passing through the front courtyard and coming to the backyard. Master Meishi was burning incense and meditating in a clean room. It seemed that she had not moved for a long time, and she was just transmitting sound. Disciple pays homage to Master. Oh, it's been a while since you came to my place. What's wrong? Did you have fun with that little Taoist priest from Yuhang Town? Master Meishi opened her eyes and teased. A person's appearance does not age easily during cultivation. Although she is called Master Tai, she still looks beautiful and energetic. Compared to a girl like Lisini, her eyes have a bit more tranquility accumulated by the years. Although she was wearing a large plain white gauze water fire robe, it still couldn't cover up her plump and beautiful figure which was full of charm. Li Sini stood in front of her, looking like mother and daughter, and looking like sisters. Oh, master, you are making fun of me again. Li Sini snorted, moved a futon, and sat across from Master Meishi. I am here this time because I have something important to ask you. Oh, what's important? Master Meishi asked with a smile in her eyes. Li Sini said, I would like to ask you to go out to the mountain. Um, immediately, Li Sini told everything about what he had seen and heard these days. Anyway, he was his master in front of him. So there was nothing to hide. Of course, she still had to hide her infatuation with Li Chufa. After hearing this, Master Mei Shi thought, The secret realm is indeed an important matter. I have never heard of a powerful person near Yuhang Town before. I don't know where the secret realm treasure key is wandering here. Anyway, I have nothing to do. So I will come and have a look. Li Sini was overjoyed. Thank you so much. Master, by the way, I'm also going to meet that little Taoist priest who makes you miss me. Master, what are you talking about? Li Sini's face turned red. I didn't mention him much. Yes, if you don't think about him all the time, why would you keep avoiding him? Master Mei Shi stood up and walked outside with a smile on her face. Li Sini said nothing again. Master Mei Shi came to the courtyard, flicked her robe sleeves, and with a cry, a plum tree branch appeared out of thin air in front of her. Although this plum branch had no roots in soil, seven plum blossoms were hanging on the branch. It was extremely magical. This plum blossom branch hung in the air, swelled in the wind, stretched a hundred times, and turned into a huge branch as thick as a roof beam. And the seven plum blossoms on it also grew to the size of a millstone. Let's go! Master Meishi said H, low, raised her steps, and sat down on a plum blossom. Li Sini also followed up with another plum blossom. This grown plum blossom is soft and strong. And there is a refreshing fragrance when sitting on it, which is quite comfortable. Li Sini buried his face on it and took a deep breath. I haven't sat on Master Seven Wonderful Flower Branches for many years. I still remember that when I was a child. I love playing on this plum blossom. You should practice hard and quickly. When you reach the realm of divine union, I will give you one as a gift. Master Mei Shi smiled gently waved her sleeves again, and the plum branches slowly rose into the sky and flew away. In just a few moments, Meiji had already reached the sky above Shirley Slope, 
seeing many people waiting in the Yun Temple below. Master Meishi landed far away, and the master and apprentice walked over on foot so as not to disturb the people. Li Sini was now familiar with the road, so he shouted from far away, Come to Chao Yan Gate to do something. Li Chu heard the sound and came out. Li Sini said, This is my master, the master of Meishi Shai. You can also call me Master Meishi. Li Chu hurriedly bowed. I've met Master Tai. Master Meishi's eyes lit up when she saw Li Chu. You do have a good appearance. My disciple told me before that you have a stunning appearance. But I thought she was exaggerating. Li Chu smiled. Thank you, Master, for the compliment. I feel ashamed to deserve it. You two can go in first. He did not hesitate to send a smile, because he knew that these two people were here to send money. Leading the two of them into the courtyard, Master Meishi said, Your Taoist temple is quite lively. In terms of the popularity of incense, it is probably as good as many grand temples in Hangzhou. As she said that, she saw the monthly incense list in the courtyard. At the end of the month, the numbers on it were already very exaggerated. And she praised, It's quite a pioneering work. Li Chu said, It's my master's idea. It seems that your respected master is also a wonderful person. Master Meishi walked into the Sanqing Hall with a smile. Li Chu pointed. This is my master. Master Yu? He didn't finish his words because he noticed that the moment Master Meishi saw her master, her shoulders shook. The beautiful eyes suddenly glazed over. In her eyes, it seemed, full of stories. He called out, but got no response. So he couldn't make any more noise. Yu Qian was even reading the palm of a female pilgrim. She touched it over and over again for a while before saying a few words. It should be major evil, little evil, etc. The female pilgrim was so frightened that she clenched his old hand. After a long time, the female pilgrim he coaxed bought two lucky charms and left. And then he straightened up. When he raised his eyes, he saw Li Chu standing at the door with the sad-looking Master Mei Shi. Yu Qian was also stunned on the spot. He blinked, as if he was recalling something quickly in his mind. After a while, he softly called out, Meyer? This sound seemed to call back Master Meishi's soul. Her eyes turned red instantly. Her lips moved. And she shouted tremblingly. Brother Lei. This sound was full of heartbreak. Chapter 54 Master's Ex-Girlfriend This call of Brother Lei made Yu Qian's face turn red. And he couldn't tell what his expression was. He quickly stood up and came to Master Meishi. He stretched out his hand as if to hold her. But his arm stiffened halfway and then retracted. In the end, he just smiled and said, Come and sit in the backyard. He turned around and walked in front. Master Meishi followed behind without saying anything but with red eyes. Xiao Yu were behind Yu Qian and Li Sini behind Master Meishi. The eyes of the two girls were burning with the fire of gossip at the same time. Something happened. Absolutely something happened. Li Chu seemed calm. But he followed closely. And when passing by Xiao Yu, he told her, We'll entertain you here. But me, Xiao Yu said reluctantly. Li Chu patted her on the head and slapped back her next words. Shall you or purse her lips in grievance? I also want to watch the fun. You bully the fish. The backyard of the young one. Beside the stone well. Yu Qian and Master Meishi sat opposite each other. He poured two cups of brewed tea. One for Master Meishi and one for himself. His movements are calm and his manners are casual and elegant. Accompanied by the cool breeze. The clothes are fluttering. The temples are swaying. And the fallen leaves are carried on the shoulders. An unspeakable aura of dust is exuded uncontrollably. Master Meishi was fascinated by it for a moment. In a daze, she seemed to see the spring on the long street that year, riding horses together. And the mist and rain were like a dream, taking shelter from the rain under the eaves, looking into a pair of deep eyes. It's like the breeze carrying fine snow in the Huashan Mountains. Ah! The pale face in his memory overlapped with the wrinkled old face in front of him. Her tears finally couldn't help rolling down in large numbers. And she cried, Brother Lei, you are old. Oh, yes. Yu Qian smiled casually. You are still so beautiful. You are even more beautiful than before. He picked up the teacup and took a sip. Master Mei Shi looked at Li Chu standing behind him and asked, Is he your son? No wonder he has the demeanor of your youth. Puff. Yu Qian almost spit out the tea. He quickly wiped his mouth and explained. No. No. Li Chu is just my adopted apprentice. Not related by blood? Well, if you insist that he looks like me, I will admit it. Maybe it's because he's been around me for so many years and has stolen some of my temperament. 
Master Meishi burst into tears and smiled. Behind him, Li Sinhi saw that the atmosphere had eased slightly. He put his hand on Master's shoulder and asked, Master, why do you call Taoist Master you brother Lei? During her years in Meishijai, she had vaguely known that Master had an unspeakable person in mind. But she had never imagined before that this person was actually Yu Qian. She had always thought that Master Li Chu was weird. Well, let's talk about what's weird specifically. Weird. She was a little worried. Could it be that her master was deceived in the first place? Master Meishi stared at Yu Qian and said, Daoist Master Yu, but your name that was spread throughout Hangzhou back then was Li Lei. Um? Several people looked at him curiously. Yu Qian smiled sarcastically. When traveling in the world, you have to prepare a few pseudonyms. And he flicked his robe sleeves, looked into the distance, and sighed. People like me, no matter where I go, are always burdened by my false reputation. And I can't hide away even if I want to. But I have no choice but to change my name every time I pass by. Name. So that you can be quieter. In the past few years, I have been in the Taoist sect. And I have inquired about you many times with people in the Taoist sect. But no one knows. I didn't expect that you changed your name. Master Meishi said sadly. I can't even imagine that with your extremely high level of cultivation. Actually hiding his name in a Taoist temple outside this small town. Yu Qian said. The Great Tao Temple. The Small Tao Temple. What we cultivate is the Tao. What does it have to do with the Tao Temple? His tone was full of a masterly demeanor that he couldn't hide. Li Sinhi blinked curiously and asked in a low voice. Is Taoist master use cultivation level very high? She had always thought that Li Chu's master was an old man with no skills who could only stare at his own chest. Of course, even if you have the ability, it will not affect your evaluation of other behaviors. Master Meishi recalled, 30 years ago in Hangzhou, who didn't know about the sudden appearance of Taoist Li Lei. He was as powerful as Jade and had unparalleled beauty. He had a lotus blossom on his tongue at Shuangfei Temple in Hangzhou and defeated Shuang in debate. One of the top 10 eminent monks of Fei Temple. He also killed the demon with his strength in Yindang Mountain. Raised his wine and stepped on the moon before returning. It's a pity that no one has actually seen him take action. And those who have seen his magical powers are all dead. Yu Qian waved his hand. It's okay not to mention it. Yes, it's okay not to mention some things. But there are still some things that should be mentioned. Master Meishi changed the subject and her eyes became evil. I have been looking for you all these years. Just to ask you. Did you why did you leave without saying goodbye? Since we met today. God must have given me an answer. Yu Qian's eyelids twitched. Sure enough. No matter how old a woman is. She can change her face at any time. Li Chu's pupils also shrank. Although Master Meishi's tone was calm, he had already keenly sensed the dangerous aura from it. I'm afraid that if the Master says something wrong next time, there will be a bloody storm immediately. He had heard Li Sinhi mention the name of Master Meishi. She was a famous person in Chaotian Palace, and her cultivation was at the peak of the Dragon Transformation Realm. She was not weak at all. But? The Master's cultivation is astonishing. So he can naturally suppress her. Even if there was a fight, he probably wouldn't need help. As a junior, it's better to watch honestly. Yu Qian's throat rolled up and down several times. And after pondering for a while, he slowly said, Mayor, the reason why I left without saying goodbye was all your fault. Blame me? Master Meishi was startled. Sentiment has been filled with hatred since ancient times. And this hatred lasts forever. Yu Qian suddenly read two lines of poetry. Shaking his head, he continued, I have always been a person who doesn't like restraint. Your feelings for me are too many, too sincere, and too heavy. They weigh heavily on my shoulders. I'm afraid that it will decrease even a little bit. It also makes me heartache. But it has reached its peak and cannot increase. Only decrease. I am afraid. Gradually, I have been bound by this feeling. Instead of watching it disappear day by day, I think it would be better to leave while it is still the strongest. In this way, we can both leave the deepest shadow in each other's hearts. When we meet again after so many years, we will feel the same in our hearts. Isn't it nice to let it go and sit here calmly? Master Meishi asked. Have you let it go? Yu Qian smiled, looked at her with inscrutable eyes, and remained silent. For a long time, Master Meishi looked up at the clouds in the sky and whispered, So love will disappear. Right. When the master and apprentice left Yungwen, it was still early. In fact, they didn't stay long in total. The conversation between Master Meishi and Yu Qian 
was only a few words. But for the two people who reunited after a long separation, it seemed that enough was enough. After leaving the money and taking away the secret key, Master Meishi got up and left without lingering. After going out, Lisa Ni asked carefully, So Master, when you named me, did you give me the last name Lee because of him? Master Meishi's family name was Han. After adopting her, she named herself Lee, which she had been curious about before. Now that I think about it, maybe it has something to do with Yu Qian's pseudonym. Yes. Master Meishi didn't say much, just nodded. Master, you have been looking for him for so many years. Why did you leave after only saying a few words? Lee Sinny asked again. Master Meishi smiled and said, When I was young, I always felt that the past was more difficult and I had to seize everything. But now that I am older, I feel that the future is long. Anyway, he can't leave without saying goodbye like he did back then. He can run away. Can the Taoist priest still run away? You are planning. I plan to complete the sex mission first. And then let's go to Myofeng Mountain. As soon as Master Meishi turned around, the stern light shone in her eyes again. Into Yun Temple, Yu Qian was twirling his beard vigorously. He was distracted for a while and kept mumbling. No! No! After thinking for a long time, he raised his head and said to Li Chu, Disciple, why don't we run away? Li Chu was stunned. Isn't Mrs. Meishi already gone? Well, seeing how easy it was for her to leave, I guess she didn't plan to let me go so easily. Yu Qian sighed repeatedly. This was the first time that Li Chu saw Yu Qian in such a panic. I can't help feeling that emotional matters are still too complicated and can even disturb the master's mood. Feeling the fresh banknotes in your arms brings you peace of mind. Doesn't this thing smell good? Chapter 55 A Pair of Mandarin Ducks and Two Taoist Priests Mufling Mountain at this time. The ugly Taoist priest and the short Taoist priest slowly opened their eyes, leaning against a thick tree trunk, looking at the rustling branches and leaves above their heads and the fine blue sky. A little dizzy. Senior brother, what's going on? It seems we were attacked by someone. After being confused for a while, the two of them recalled what had just happened. When I returned to the government office last night, I was scolded again by senior brother Zhang. And then I was kicked out of So Shan again early this morning. I don't know when the end of this huge Miofing mountain will be found. Obviously, when the young uncle comes, he can scan the entire mountain with his spiritual consciousness. It is estimated that he can scan the entire mountain in two days. But in order to flatter his junior uncle, senior brother Zhang insisted on letting them search the mountain in such a primitive way and wanted to show his junior junior uncle the results. There was no way, no matter who allowed him to have high cultivation and high status. The two minions had no choice but to go out and work, full of bad luck. Unexpectedly, they had not gone far up the mountain when suddenly there was a sound of wind behind them, and their vision went dark and they fainted. Speaking of which, the two of them were also disciples of Shinshiguan. Although he is not very old, his cultivation level is still in the middle or even late stage of Chisi realm, so he will not be subdued so easily. I don't know where the person who made the sneak attack came from, but he struck so quickly. Just as I was thinking about it, I heard a shrill voice next to me. Hey, are you guys awake? Um, the ugly Taoist priest and the short Taoist priest moved a little and found that they could only turn their heads and then they could fully see the situation at this time. It turned out that they were both tied to this big tree. The two people quickly struggled with all their strength. Of course, ordinary ropes could not tie up the cultivator, but the material they were tied to was unknown, and they could not break free for a while. The more they struggled, the tighter they became, which was so tight that the two of them were almost tied. Out of breath, the high-pitched voice said again, Don't struggle. The Dahai Viper Dragon's tendons shrink and tighten when encountering the true energy. They are specially designed to deal with cultivators. The two had no choice but to give up and look at the speaker resignedly. There were three people next to the tree, looking at them with evil eyes. One was a burly and fierce blonde man, and the other was a tall and thin man who didn't look like a good guy. They were both sitting cross-legged on the ground. These two men are the kind that if you accidentally glance at them while walking on the street, your heart will tremble, and you will feel that you are either going to be robbed of your money or your sex, and you will lose something in appearance. Not to mention the scene like this. The two Taoist priests couldn't help but feel nervous at the same time, hoping that they were just seeking money. There is another man standing next to these two men. Wait a minute. It's so big. The two Taoist priests couldn't help but look at each other, and both saw a hint of shock in each other's eyes. Why is it so big? 
Monster. Must be a monster. But isn't this what we should focus on now? But it's really big. Really. After a brief eye contact, the two Taoist priests reached a silent consensus. If it were her, it wouldn't matter. The third person is a woman with a lazy manner, wearing a lotus white wide sleeve double breasted skirt, a light gauze draped over her shoulders, a flowing ribbon, and a brocade white embroidered tube top with two mandarin ducks embroidered on the tube top. The poor mandarin duck was quite overwhelmed and already somewhat deformed. Yes, these were the three people who came to Yuhang Town that day, determined to avenge Leopard 5. They secretly watched several Taoist priests from Shinshu Temple for many days and finally figured out the behavior of two of them, and chose Miufing Mountain to take decisive action. The blonde man came to the two of them. He was silent. But his pressure was so powerful that the two Taoist priests felt a chill in their hearts at the same time. There are three faint traces of golden beard on each side of the strong man's cheeks, which cannot be seen unless you look carefully. When the ugly Taoist priest saw this, his eyes suddenly widened and he shouted, Golden Lion! You are the gold metal killer of Chingy Tower! Golden Lion! He had seen this person at the gate of Chaoga. No, he was a wanted person for this monster. At that time, it sneaked into Chaoga City and assassinated an important official of the court, and then escaped and scathed. Now that he was furious, the fortune teller who ordered him to go to Tian Kei worked hard to figure out the identity, origin and image of this beast. It's a pity that I never caught it. Although he couldn't remember the appearance, these golden beards still impressed him deeply. Humph. Jean sure sneered. Since you recognize me, you must have heard my name. So I won't hide it from you. It pointed at the two people next to it. These are my sworn brothers and sisters. Li Si and Mao Jio. I came to you today because I have something to ask you. The ugly Taoist priest looked at the people in front of him and said to himself, Oh no! There are monsters in Qingyi Tower who kill without blinking an eye. It is natural for them to be inhumane. If they fall into their hands, it will be difficult to escape. You don't have to be afraid. The tall and thinly C said, As long as you answer the questions obediently, we will never hurt you. The woman next to her, Mao Jio, suddenly said lazily, Why are these two people looking so lewd? Li Si immediately said, Poke them blind. Don't! 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 I just like you Anong and have no other intentions. The ugly Taoist priest begged for mercy loudly and quickly withdrew his gaze. Poor Taoist priest simply closed his eyes. Otherwise, it would be really difficult to control. Stop talking nonsense. Let me ask you. Where are you Taoist priests from? The blonde man asked directly. Be careful with the view. Be careful with the view outside Chaoga City. Cho Shuang Taoist replied. Are you here to protect Gong Sanjia? Yes. Our master is the famous Chan Shou Chong Chong Jinren in Shinshu Temple. Taoist Puai swallowed his saliva and said. Our master has a good relationship with Lord Gong Sun and heard that he was in danger. So he asked us to protect him. Moreover, my master is very defensive. If he knows that someone has harmed his apprentice, he will definitely find the murderer no matter where he is in the world. Humph. Jean Cher sneered again. Do you think I will be afraid? Pudong Taoist priest shrank his neck and said weakly. It's just a kind reminder. Okay, then let me ask you again. How many people are here this time? Four. Cho Shuang Taoist replied. Five. Taoist priest Pu quickly answered this time. Huh? Jean Shur's face froze, and he twisted his neck. How many are there? The short Taoist priest and the ugly Taoist priest looked at each other. Where did the five come from? These monsters are ferocious. What if they know that only a few of us are here and go to the government office to kill them? No one in Yuhang Town can stop them. What's the meaning? Let's just say that Uncle Junior is already here and can scare them. Good. Senior brother. Stop looking at that pair of mandarin ducks. If you look at it again, I can't help it anymore. I'm ready. The ugly Taoist priest said slowly. Five of our junior uncles from Xing Zugwen have also arrived. I just forgot about them. Uncle Junior? The tall and thin man frowned. I've been watching you for several days, but why have I never seen this person? Well, my little uncle arrived early. He has always been reclusive, so it's normal that he didn't see him. Taoist Puai explained. A strange smile appeared on Jean Shur's face. Is he highly cultivated? My junior uncle Jiang Shouin has the appearance of an earthly immortal. He is astonishingly talented and beautiful as the best in Chaoga City. We are not sure how high his cultivation level is. Yesterday, he was in the early stage of Dragon Transformation Realm. And today might be in the middle stage. Yes, tomorrow may be the late stage. But in short, 
It is very powerful, Pu Diao Taoist priest said in an extremely exaggerated manner. The ugly Taoist priest understood his intention and secretly praised his cleverness. If the realm of the young master uncle is not clearly stated, these monsters will not be sure, and it will be easier for them to become afraid. Ha uh ha! -huh. Let me tell you! How could these losers kill Lao Wu? It turns out there was a big fish, Jin Shi said with a sinister smile. Um, the ugly Taoist priest and the short Taoist priest were stunned at the same time. What does this mean? Who is Lao Wu? It's almost done. Ninth sister, let's deal with him, the tall and lanky man said. Um, Mao Jiu walked forward slowly, looking directly at the two Taoist priests with his beautiful pupils. Look at my eyes. Don't move your eyes downward. Let you look at my eyes. Don't you understand? Look up. After some scolding, the two Taoist priests finally raised their eyes to look at her. Suddenly, the sky was spinning and the sky was colorful. The two Taoist priests had the last thought at the same time. Oops. Soul destroying. Chapter 56 The Young Master Riding a Donkey Backwards On the official road outside Hangzhou Mansion, a donkey walks slowly out. This donkey's coat is bright green and its eyes are bright. It looks more powerful than an ordinary tall horse. Leaning on the back of the donkey was a little Taoist priest wearing a blue and white Taoist robe. He looked to be in his teens, maybe older, with a baby face that was hard to tell. He has a fair complexion, long and narrow eyes, and a somewhat casual demeanor. There was a bun on the top of her head, and she was taking a nap on the back of a donkey. There are wind-blown green grasslands on both sides, and in the distance, there are green mountains with continuous ridges. Together with a little Taoist priest riding a donkey, it creates a rather freehand picture. However, the rapid sound of horse hooves broke this impression. The Taoist priest frowned slightly and squinted his eyes to see a group of young men riding horses from behind, shouting and catching up. This group of people should all be children from wealthy families, dressed in brocade clothes, riding big horses, and galloping wildly, causing a lot of excitement at the gate of the city. When passing by the little Taoist priest, someone looked at his donkey sarcastically and jeered several times. What's more, he deliberately cracked the whip next to the donkey's ear, hoping to scare the donkey. After they passed by, the little Taoist priest seemed not to care and closed his eyes again to take a nap. But when the group of young men riding horses continued to move forward and gallop for a while, they suddenly discovered that another donkey appeared on the official road ahead. There was also a baby-faced little Taoist priest on the donkey's back exactly like the one before. Huh? They were a little strange. And the bold ones came over and asked unceremoniously, Taoist priest, were you left behind by us just now? Why did you come to the front again so quickly? The little Taoist glanced at him and closed his eyes again. It's obvious that I don't want to pay attention to you. Humph. The young man snorted coldly and with a slap on the horse, the horse galloped away. A burst of smoke suddenly enveloped the donkey behind its butt. Eat ashes? The horse's hooves flew, and this time, they ran faster than before. However, after not running for long, they saw another donkey appearing in front of them. There is still the baby-faced little Taoist priest on the donkey's back. All the teenagers suddenly showed expressions of seeing ghosts. Someone did not believe in evil, and stepped forward and shouted, Taoist priest, did you use magic? How come this donkey can keep running in front of us? The little Taoist priest didn't even bother to open his eyes this time. He just waved his hand casually as if to shoo away flies. The young man had received such a cold treatment, so he raised his hand and raised his riding crop to whip it. But he didn't dare to aim at the unknown Taoist priest, and instead whipped the donkey's buttocks. I want to see if you can still be so calm when your donkey is frightened and runs away. But before the whip fell, the donkey the Taoist priest was riding raised its head and let out a roar. The sound was like thunder, exploding in the clear sky. Several teenagers were startled and almost fell off their horses. But what was more frightened was the horse under their crotches. I don't know what kind of power there is in the donkey's brain. All the horses around were so frightened that they urinated and quickly ran away with their whips. And they were in a panic. Some ran towards the grass. Some returned the same way. And some just threw the night into the ditch beside the road. The originally peaceful official road was now filled with their strange cries. My horse is frightened! My horse is frightened! My horse is gone! So does my horse! The little Taoist priest on the donkey's back seemed to be asleep, and seemed to have seen their miserable situation and smiled softly. Not long after, the donkey appeared outside Yuhang Town. The little Taoist priest then stood up slightly 
and looked at the fireworks in the market around him. Showing great interest, the donkey walked outside the Yuhan County government office. The little Taoist priest got off the donkey and said to the porter, I am a poor Taoist who has come to pay a visit to Lord Gonson. Please let me know. The concierge saw that he had a good demeanor and knew that he was not immortal. He said, Wait a moment, and hurriedly went to report. After Gong Sunja received the news, he immediately came out personally, followed by Zhang Yushi, another disciple of Sheng Zuguan. Ha ha! I often heard the name of Taoist Master Jiang Shao when I was in Chaoga City. It's a pity that I haven't seen him, but I didn't expect to see him here, Gong Sunja said with a smile. I am traveling all over the world, looking for opportunities to break through. I happened to visit Jiangnan Continent and heard that some of my nephews were here. So I stopped by to have a look. I'm really sorry for disturbing Lord Gongsuan's official duties. Jiang Shouyin also saluted politely. Gong Sunja kept saying, Where? Where? But in fact, he is still a little busy. The previous county magistrate did not leave him with any capable manpower. The Yuhan County government office was basically a bunch of losers. He is currently planning to recruit two masters, or staff, to help him handle his affairs. I was just discussing something with someone when I heard that the young master uncle of Sheng Zuguan was coming. So I hurried out to see him. Jiang Shouyin is also quite an outstanding rookie in the immortal sect in Chaoga. Considering his age and cultivation, he is extremely talented. But to say that Gong Sun Che respected him so much, it was not enough. More importantly, he is almost the next successor designated by the old master of Shinshi Buan. This is why he is valued by many people. After a few casual greetings, Gong Sunja returned to the front hall, leaving Zhang Yushi and Jiang Shouyin talking. Zhang Yushi was the former leader of the Sheng Zuguan disciples here. He always gave people the impression of being cold and arrogant. And he was also irritable and arrogant towards other junior disciples. But in front of Jiang Shouyin, he smiled brightly and was very well behaved. Although he is five or six years older than Jiang Shouyin. This time I see that my uncle's divine light is restrained and his true meaning is harmonious. I guess the three elements are in harmony and the time to transform into a dragon is not far away. Zhang Yushi licked it very skillfully and took it at his fingertips. It's hard to say. Long men is sad. It may happen tomorrow or he may not be promoted in this life. It still depends on the opportunity. Jiang Shouyin shook his head. Young master uncle trained his body at the age of nine. Developed the Qi Si at the age of eleven. And entered the state of divine union at the age of fifteen. Even the legendary Tianling root is nothing more than this. If you say that you can't transform into a dragon, I, Zhang Yushi, will be the first to refuse. Zhang Yushi patted his chest and said, Jiang Shouyin glanced at him and said, Don't flatter me all the time. How are you doing with the tasks assigned to you? Uh, Zhang Yushi's tone was stagnant. I am here to protect Lord Gongsun every day. Junior brother Shuek and junior brother Lu are responsible for all the secret tasks. Although they have been searching Nyofeng Mountain day and night recently. They have not found anything yet. Reward? Well, you are not in the state of divine union and cannot separate your consciousness from the body. Searching the mountain is a bit slow. I can just search later. Jiang Shouyin said. How dare you do such a thing? Little uncle? Jiang Shouyin frowned. The Qianlong secret realm is very important to me. As long as I can find it. I don't have to worry about it. I'm afraid that people from the Guanghan sect will get there first. Zhang Yushi blinked. People from Guanghan sect are here too? I heard that there is a Zayochi disciple of Guanghan sect who is about to break through. There is dragon transformation fruit in the hidden dragon secret realm. It would be strange if they don't come. Maybe they will come earlier than us. Humph. The bitches of Guanghan sect. They were most likely the ones who harmed my brother back then and falsely accused him of being innocent. My brother's life and death are still uncertain. Zhang Yushi gritted his teeth. Jiang Shouyin patted his shoulder. The truth of the matter is unknown. So don't be impatient. The other party is one of the twelve immortal sections. If something irreparable happens without reason, you will probably become registered disciple. Yes. Zhang Yushi could only nod. He understood what Jiang Shouyin meant. Once he became a registered disciple, he could be kicked out of the door at any time, thus putting aside all responsibilities. Those who make mistakes will become registered disciples even if they are not registered disciples. This is the sect's old routine. While the two were talking, the concierge suddenly sent in a letter. Zhang Yushi took it and handed it to Jiang Shouyin. The little Taoist priest opened it and saw a line of large, crooked characters on it. You two are in our hands. If you want them to survive, 
asked Jiang Shouyin to come to the south peak of Miofeng Mountain tonight at midnight. Jiang Shouyin was a little surprised when he saw the letter. I had just gotten off the donkey for a moment. Why did a local enemy come to my door? Strangeness. Chapter 57 Who did I offend? Jiang Shouyin looked at Zhang Yushi. Have you ever made enemies with anyone during this time? Zhang Yushi quickly shook his head. We follow the master's teachings and do not dare to be presumptuous. We protect Master Gong Sun on the surface but secretly step up the search for the secret realm. Junior brother Shui and junior brother Lu are in the mountains all day long. How can they make enemies with others? Moreover. Moreover. The other party named you because they came for you. After hesitating for a moment, he didn't dare to say the next words. Jiang Shouyin realized what he meant and laughed angrily. I just arrived in Yuhang town. How could I have any enmity with the local people? If I made enemies elsewhere, how could I come here in advance to plot against the two of them? Yes. Yes. John Yushi nodded quickly, paused, and then said, Junior brother Shui and junior brother Lu are not weak in cultivation. There is no one in this Jiangan town who can deal with them. Could it be Guanghan sect, people? Jiang Shouyin pondered for a moment and shook his head. This is not the Guanghan sect style of doing things. That's all. It's useless to think about it. I'll go and take a look tonight to find out. John Yushi said, Okay. How about I go with my junior uncle? Even though this way only junior sister Yuning is left in charge of the Yaman office. I am still worried about my junior uncle's safety, and I am afraid of falling into the killer's plan to lure the tiger away from the mountain. But I must not let the little uncle be in danger alone. He struggled for a while between what was true and what was false. Jiang Shouyin rolled his eyes silently. Just stay here. If I can't handle it, what difference will it make if I add you? Zhang Yushi secretly breathed a sigh of relief. But his face was full of self-blame. It's all useless, disciples. I can't help my junior uncle. If you really want to help, just go and feed the donkey for me. It's still of some use. Jiang Shouyin said lazily. Yes. Zhang Yushi responded and went out. But Pinpin felt that this was not quite right. Night. Milfing Mountain is particularly quiet tonight. The baby-faced Taoist priest rode his donkey backwards and slowly climbed the mountain. He was lost in thought on the donkey's back. What kind of hero kidnapped his two nephews and asked them to rescue them by name. From Chagas City to Yuhang Town. Or in other words. Most of his previous ten years of life. He practiced silently. I have always been cautious and modest when dealing with people when I went out and asked myself that I had no big enemies. If it is because of killing evil spirits. He also always eliminates evil and never leaves anything behind. Could it be that the other party came for Shinshi Guan? Want to secretly kill his prudent hope while he is traveling? It makes sense to think so. But? Although he is often said to be amazingly talented and beautiful, he also knows it well. He may be called a genius, but he is not a monster with heavenly spiritual roots, powerful reincarnation, or a natural immortal body. He is worthy of others' effort to kill him, whether it is a demonic cultivator or a fellow righteous person. There is no need to let those few figures shining like stars target themselves. Could it be that they were just kidnapping people for money? Impossible. The other party never mentioned money at all. If it's about looking for sex, he had an impression of the appearance of the two nephews. If that was the case, he could only give the kidnappers a thumbs up and praise them as true men. Wait a moment. An electric light flashed in his mind. What if the other person's sexual desire is directed at you? He touched his smooth and tender skin and thought about his jade-like temperament. I had an epiphany on the spot. Everything is explained. Where did the enemy come from? It's just that someone is greedy for his own body. Ha uh ha. -huh. Today's bad guys are despicable. But you still have a vision. He felt that he had defeated the other party's purpose. So he couldn't help but smile. With the corners of his mouth raised. Suddenly I heard a woman's cry from the other side. Help! Jiang Shouyin seemed to be in a trance all the way. But in fact, his consciousness had been covering an area of dozens of feet in radius. And he could see every plant and tree in the night. At this moment, a woman in white gauze clothes was seen running out of the forest. Looking frightened. Judging from her appearance, she seems to be a beauty. And judging from her figure and so on, she is so big. No matter how good-hearted Jiang Shouyin is, he is still a teenager. What's more, I have been practicing cultivation for many years. And I have never seen such a scene. The woman ran all the way over. Jiang Shouyin quickly sat up straight on his donkey's back. The donkey brayed twice. Jiang Shouyin's face turned red. He couldn't sit still anymore and got off the donkey. At this moment, the woman ran out of the forest. 
she accidentally tripped over a bush and fell in front of her. Jiang Shouin hurried over, stretched out his hand to hold up the woman's forearm, and asked warmly, Girl, what danger have you encountered? Taoist! The woman held his hand and hugged his arms to her chest. Jiang Shouin suddenly felt like three souls were leaving his body, and heard the woman whisper in his ear, There are monsters on this mountain. Monster? Yes. Taoist priest, save me. That monster is so fierce. The woman shouted and raised her head. She looked into Jiang Shouyin's eyes, and her beautiful pupils suddenly turned, and strange colors burst out. Unexpectedly, Jiang Shouyin closed his eyes instantly. At the same time, he had already grasped a palm thunder in his left hand and pushed it out with one palm. Bang! He was already on guard. This palm hit the woman's chest, knocking her away on the spot and hitting the tree trunk hard. She spat out a mouthful of blood when she landed on the ground. Jiang Shouyin opened his eyes and said, Monster! I've long seen that you are not human. This woman is none other than Mao Jiu. Seeing that the plot failed and was instead injured, Mao Jiu got up and turned around to run away. The movement was extremely fast, and it turned into a white light in the forest in a trance. But how could Jiang Shouyin let her go so easily? He usually seemed to be doing everything slowly, but when facing the enemy, he seemed to be a different person. He barked at the donkey. Wait for me at the foot of the mountain. At the same time, he raised his hand and shot out a small blue sword pill. A clanging sound. The sword pill turned into a sword with ancient pine patterns. And the sword was majestic. Sheng Zuguan's famous sword passed down from generation to generation. Holding up the sky, the ancient sword flew across the sky. Jiang Shouyin turned over and stepped on the blade. And it instantly turned into sword light and swept away. Swordsmanship. When practitioners reach the Qi High Realm, they can use the wind control technique to fly briefly. Only when you reach the Divine Harmony Realm can you control magic weapons to fly. And the coolest one among them is naturally the sword. The Sky Qing sword drew a dazzling tail flame and flew through the forest. Wherever it passed, the trees flew into the air and shattered upon contact. But in an instant, the sword light was about to catch up with the white shadow. Even if Mao Jia was not injured, she could not be faster than Jian Ming. At this moment, a loud roar like thunder was heard, and a golden light and shadow fell from the sky. Came so fast, Jiang Shouyin turned his hand and raised the Taoist Bagua seal, holding up a black and white Nine Palaces Bagua diagram as a shield. Boom! The Bagua seal held up by the whole body was almost shattered by a punch. With a bang, Jiang Shouyin was knocked off the flying sword by a huge force. And the flying sword also stopped. He turned over and landed on the ground holding the sword in his hand, ready to face the enemy. But he saw the golden light and shadow leap away with a whooshing sound, and then disappeared into the dark jungle dozens of feet away. Jiang Shouyin took out a breath and felt tightness in his chest. This person is very aggressive, or it can no longer be called a human being, although they have completely transformed. Once they move their hands, the strong demonic aura can no longer be concealed. It's a monster. Uncle Junior! Uncle Junior! Please save us! Is the junior uncle here? While he was hesitating, he heard someone shouting for help in front of him. Jiang Shouyin followed the sound to search his consciousness and saw two Taoist priests tied to a big tree in the jungle ahead. One is ugly but strong, and the other is ordinary looking and short in stature. They are his two unlucky nephews. He carefully explored his surroundings, making sure there was no ambush at every step, and then slowly walked closer. Uncle Master, you are finally here. The ugly Taoist priest and the short Taoist priest called out at the same time. Jiang Shouyin waved his sword to help them loosen their bonds and asked, What did you do? Why did you provoke such a sophisticated monster? Young master uncle, don't you know? Cho Shuang Taoist asked. Huh? Jiang Shouyin looked at him. At this time, a flash of light suddenly flashed in Pudiao Taoist's eyes, and a long sword suddenly appeared in his right hand, stabbing Jiang Shouyin. Jiang Shouyin was completely unaware of these two men and was hit in the left rib by this sword, thanks to his quick reaction. As soon as the tip of the sword broke through the body, he knocked the short Taoist priest away from the air with one palm. He flipped his hand and clamped the sword of the ugly Taoist priest and kicked him away. It only takes a moment to subdue these two people. At the same time, he realized clearly that these two people must have been possessed by the soul-obsessing technique. It was the method of that which just now. I still don't have enough experience in the arena. So I was so careful. But I still got slightly injured. 
A streak of blood followed the long sword as it left the body. And a strange sound immediately came from the jungle. After several plots, is a general attack still necessary? These monsters are so cunning and vicious. They clearly want to kill themselves. At this critical moment, another thought emerged uncontrollably in Jiang Shouyin's mind and could not go away. That is, who the H, L did I offend? Chapter 58 At this time, a little Taoist priest happened to pass by. Taking a deep breath, Jiang Shouyin dismissed the distracting thoughts in his mind, fully opened his consciousness, and waited for the next challenge. In the electric exchange just now, he had already estimated the opponent's approximate strength in his mind. Very strong. But, although the other party is strong, if you want to completely keep him here, it is not that simple. At this moment, his heart felt clear. And so, the scene in the surrounding jungle was reflected in his mind. There are three enemies. The enchantress was standing in the distance, probably not planning to enter. Behind him, there was a tall and thin black figure squatting on the tree. Its eyes were very bright in the night. Maybe it was waiting for an opportunity to make a sneak attack. Directly in front, a burly blonde man strode over. It seemed that it was a duel between him and it for the time being. Ha! Huh. The golden lion walked over on the broken tree branches, not minding that the clicking footsteps would disturb its prey. I said just take action. But they were worried that you were too strong. So they designed a few small traps. But I said, for the truly strong, these traps will not have any effect. The golden lion had a ferocious smile on his face. And his whole body was full of fighting spirit. Jiang Shouyin looked at it. Actually, I really want to ask. What is the grudge between us that makes it worth all your efforts to kill me? Jean Sher said coldly. It seems you don't know who we are. It pointed to the side. I am Golden Lion. And these two are my sworn brothers and sisters. Li Si and Mao Jiu. After saying that, it pointed to the sky again. I also have a sworn brother named Bao Wu. After hearing what it said, Jiang Shouyin snorted. Then, he asked, But what does this have to do with me? Ha uh ha. -huh. The golden lion glared at him. When you killed my fifth brother, didn't you even know who it was? Jiang Shouyin was silent for a while. He searched quickly in his mind and couldn't remember any monsters he had killed that were similar to them. But the golden lion didn't allow him to think about it and shouted, Today I call you to pay with blood. Bang. Before the words were spoken, it had already taken a step and flew forward like a sharp arrow. It was so fast that after images appeared. Jiang Shouyin frowned, held the Bagua seal in his hand, and stamped his foot equally hard. Bang. This time, under his feet, a huge black and white Nine Palaces Bagua diagram covering a ten-foot radius suddenly lit up. The Golden Lion and he were both in this diagram. Boom. The Golden Lion killed Jiang Shouyin on the spot with one punch. Easy. It turned around quickly without pausing, and glanced around with its lion eyes. As a gold medal killer who has experienced hundreds of battles, he certainly knows that things will not be that simple. A moment of negligence at this time may cause a fatal crisis. Sure enough, there was a flash of light, and all that was shattered by it was a paper-cut figure. Jiang Shouyin's figure appeared ten feet away from it, which was where it started. It seems that things have reversed for both sides. Jiang Shouyin took a breath and raised the sky sword. The ancient patterns on the sword shone. And there seemed to be an ancient sword soul chanting the sword's secrets. Kill demons and suppress evil. This sword can reach the gods. Disease. The secret of Shinshu Guan. The divine will sword technique. With the sound of the sword and the sound of the hunting wind. A line of sword energy struck the golden lion like a tornado across the sky. It shouted loudly. Well done. Fits well. One punch. A real man should fight hard. Boom. Amidst the explosion, the golden lion actually blasted away the powerful sword energy. Although the sharp wind caused many small wounds on its skin, it continued to rush forward as if it was unaware. But closely behind the sword energy is Jiang Shouyin's skylifting sword. It's sword wielding again. Just after executing the sword technique, he threw the flying sword and turned it into a rainbow light. The golden lion, which had just emerged from the collision of sword energy, was almost hit by this rainbow light even with its powerful body. If it is stabbed by this flying sword, it will inevitably pierce through the flesh. But it comes at a time when the old strength has been exhausted and the new strength has not yet been born. He had no choice but to twist his waist in midair and nimbly dodge the flying sword, which looked dangerous. Bang! Its footsteps once again created a circle of deep cracks in the ground. At this time, Jiang Shouyin was unarmed and seemed to be in neutral. Naturally, 
The golden lion would not miss this opportunity and flew out again. Boom. Jiang Shouyin's figure was shattered by it again. The golden lion frowned. And the little Taoist priest actually used the substitute method twice in succession, causing Li Dai out of freeze. It turned around suddenly and saw that the rainbow light of the flying sword had not turned back, but was heading straight into the distance. After the rainbow light left the range of the nine palaces and Bagua, there was a flash of light, and a small human-shaped talisman attached to the sword instantly turned into a real person. That is the real body, in the magic circle set up by Jiang Shouyin. He followed the shadow like a fish in water, and actually made the golden lion spin around. But that's all. He always knew that the opponent was very powerful, and there were two enemies watching him. Even if he used all his cards to win the golden lion, it would be meaningless. So his initial decision was to take advantage of it and escape. Once the sword light is opened, no one will love it. Just fly. The golden lion was furious. This little Taoist priest ran away so quickly. You are not a real man at all. I was just tough, and you got soft. In its extreme anger, it couldn't care less. Raised its head, and let out a long roar that shocked the forest. Roar. Big brother, Li Si, who was hiding in the dark, seemed to want to dissuade him. But he was startled by the roar, and didn't say anything else. Following this lion's roar, many of the animals that were hiding in their lairs on Myofing Mountain died suddenly, and were frightened to death. Jiang Shouyin was about to escape when suddenly he felt a darkness above his head, and all the light of the stars and moon disappeared. He looked up and couldn't help but scream. Depend on! What covers the stars and moon is not dark clouds, but a huge flying lion. It has golden fur all over its body. Its mane is as long as fire, and its muscles are as knotted as a dragon or a snake clinging to it. The most terrifying thing is the pair of horizontal wings on the back that look like they are made of pure gold. With a slight shake, a strong wind filled the sky. And he traveled hundreds of feet. For monsters who are good at physical combat. Of course, their physical strength is the strongest. However, there are many conveniences in becoming a human being. And it is even more convenient to walk around the world. If the real body is easily revealed near a place where humans live, the demonic energy will not be contained and the movement will be too great. No matter how strong you are, sooner or later you will be killed by a powerful cultivator. Just like now. The roar of the golden lion can probably be heard by the people in the entire Yuhang town. This is also quite dangerous for it. But at this moment, golden lion obviously couldn't care less. It wants the enemy who killed Lao Wu to die. Jiang Shouyin was very upset. Isn't this just a lie? He had no time to think too much. And his true energy was flowing all over the sky in an instant. In an instant, the human figure on the sword could no longer be seen. Only a blurry meteor streaking across the sky. Whoosh. At this time, a little Taoist priest carrying a sword happened to pass by. Li Chu had just finished today's evening class and went to Lu's ghost house to complete a round of leveling. However, he was a little disappointed with the results of the leveling. After a period of cleaning up, the quality of the ghosts in the Lu family ghost building dropped seriously. It seems that all the people coming out now are old, weak, sick and disabled, and their experience value is much lower. What he didn't know was that the Lu family ghost tower was the only evil place within hundreds of miles, and could produce a steady stream of in energy. And those poor ghosts are all trapped in a spiritual world for some reason. The replenishment of in chi in that spiritual world was cut off for some reason. And they would all die soon. Just like humans dying of suffocation. Therefore, the more advanced ghost generals opened a passage to allow the ghosts to enter the ghost building in batches every night to absorb the in chi. In Li Chu's eyes, this situation gave him the illusion that a ghost was refreshing. Today, he was shocked to realize that maybe the ghosts in the Lu family's ghost house were not endless. This is so sad. From this point of view, the lantern monster is better. He was walking back to Diyun Temple while thinking about it. When he saw a rainbow suddenly shooting out from the huge black shadow of Myofing Mountain in the distance. As fast as a shooting star, Li Chu had excellent eyesight and could tell right away that someone was flying with a sword. Swordsmanship? he murmured. So cool. So envious. Kinda want it. But just as this feeling of envy lasted for a second, there was a roar. Immediately, an even more terrifying black shadow rose into the sky. Li Chu's pupils dilated slightly. A giant flying lion? Why would such a terrifying monster appear in a small place like Yuhang Town? Could it be that there are gods fighting in Myofing Mountain? Thinking of the previous things about the secret realm, there may have been some unrest there recently. If a fire breaks out at the city gate 
and the fish in the pond are affected. It is best to avoid it carefully. Thinking like this, he wanted to return to Diyun Temple quickly. Unexpectedly, the flying lion flapped its wings twice in midair and caught up with the sword light that had already flown nearly a thousand feet away. Then, a slap. Call out. Just like swatting flies. The flying sword light and the cultivator wielding the sword were swatted down hard. It's so good that he didn't die. The place where he fell was not far in front of Li Chu. Bang. The sword-wielding cultivator looked vaguely like a Taoist priest. He stood up from the smoke almost as soon as he was hit to the ground. He had to do this. Because the flying lion had swooped down. The minions are ferocious. Judging from the power of its swooping. I'm afraid it would be raised to the ground within a radius of dozens of feet. Li Chu frowned. Bad luck. Chapter 59 He actually dared to draw his sword? Jiang Shouying gritted his teeth, frowned and raised his eyes, looking at the arrogant demon in the air, his heart racing. When Golden Lion became famous just now, he didn't care yet. Seeing its body at this time, he immediately thought of it. The Flying Lion is clearly the gold medal killer of Qingyi Tower. Although there are not many gold medal killers in Qingyi Tower, there are still quite a few, and they are not all famous. But the Golden Lion is different. It once committed a major crime in Chaoga City and then escaped. It is a great demon that makes people angry today. Jiang Shouying wanted to break his head, but he couldn't remember where he had offended the people in Qingyi Tower, let alone kill Jin Shi's sworn brother. You know, this organization is something that many people in the world are afraid of avoiding. Because Qingyi Tower has a huge background and is by no means an ordinary killer organization. During the previous dynasty, the Imperial Court's institution for managing spiritual power was called the Tainhei Sanbu. Among them, the Tianbu recruits cultivators from all over the world and is stationed in various places in Jiuzhou, specializing in exorcising evil spirits and other matters. Later, the previous dynasty collapsed and Halua Dingding was established. This heavenly tribe also fell to the Halua royal family and changed its appearance, which is now the Zhongzhou Imperial Court Kaodiang, one of the twelve immortal sects. Therefore, the relationship between Kaodiang and the Halua court has always been distant and elusive. The Ministry of Sea recruited warriors from all over the world and incorporated them into the Ministry of War to enrich the Frontier Army. Therefore, most of the Kaibu were diehard members of the former dynasty and never surrendered. Today, more than 800 years later, although the once huge Haibu has long since been torn apart, several lineages are still fighting secretly to overthrow Halua and restore the previous dynasty. Most of these rebels are under the banner of Kaibu Orthodoxy. The wings are the most evil among the three. What it attracts are all the monsters in the world. Yes, the previous dynasty allowed monsters to enter the dynasty. This move was an important reason why the previous government lost the support of the people. After all, the human race is xenophobic. After allowing monsters to enter the court, many scholars claim that it was shameful to be in the same palace as monsters. But in fact, the monsters who join the wing are all assigned to do tasks that human cultivators are unwilling to do. Surveillance, kidnapping, torture, assassination, and all kinds of shady things are much more convenient for the demon clan to do than for people to do it. During the Halua Dingding Ding period, one of the banners carried was slaying demons and evils. So it was naturally impossible for the Ibu to surrender again. It's just that the winged monsters were unwilling to confront the new dynasty. So they simply hid in the dark and transformed into a killer organization. This is Chingy Tower. The gold and silver killers in Chingy Tower were mostly rising stars, who had transformed after the founding of the Halua dynasty. And they were not afraid of so many sects. But the upper echelons of Qingyi Tower, such as Yayu above the gold metal killer, and the seniors, who have not been born for many years hidden behind them, are all the thousand-year-old monsters left over from the previous dynasty. Once assembled, it will definitely be a force that will give the twelve immortal sects a headache. In other words, if Jiang Shouying died here today, it would be difficult for Shinshu to avenge him. Of course, he wasn't worried about dying. As the most promising disciple of the old temple master, he naturally has the trump card that can save his life in the end. Although it is precious, it has to be used. Many thoughts pass by in a flash. But in fact they were nothing more than a flash of lightning. Then, he turned over his hand and took out a palm-sized white jade talisman. The top was embossed in the shape of a silver shuttle. And behind it were complex formation inscriptions. Bailey Silver Light Talisman produced by Danning Pavilion. This talisman contains a magical power. Once released, it is equivalent to using the universe's most precious 100-mile silver light shuttle, which can instantly teleport any 100s of miles away. 
although it can only be used once. If you use it at a critical moment, you can save a life. Excellent value. In the entire Shinshu Temple, only disciples like Jiang Shouying can get one. Say something ugly. The disciples next to him died. And the losses they brought to the sect were not enough to replace such a talisman. Jiang Shouying took out the Bailey Silver Light Talisman and noticed that there was another Talis priest in front of him. His face. Jiang Shouying, who always prided himself on being handsome, was a little dazed. However, it was just a daze. At this moment when the giant thing above his head was about to pounce down. No matter what he looked like, it was meaningless. He carried an iron sword on his back. But there was no real energy fluctuation on his body. He should be just a little talus priest doing some rituals in the countryside. Right? Unfortunately, I passed by here. And I never thought that I would be involved in the battle between myself and the golden lion. And would be shattered into pieces in the next second. A bit miserable. Looking at him standing there blankly. Looking up into the air. He was probably scared out of his wits. Right? Jiang Shouying couldn't help feeling a little ashamed in his heart. I'm sorry for getting you involved. You endured what I should have endured. But there's no way this is life. Uncle Shen Shiwan said silently to the young Taoist priest in green. Immediately, he threw the white jade talisman high and activated it with the magic formula. He had to be quick. The shadow of the golden lion was like a black cloud pressing over the city. Under the huge power, Jiang Shouying felt suffocated even with his cultivation level. It was the feeling of impending death. Bang! The white jade talisman instantly shattered into powder in the air. And almost at the same time, a large silver shuttle shadow immediately appeared and enveloped Jiang Shouying. The brilliance shrouded his body, which immediately gave him a sense of security. Looking at the little talus priest in green in front of him, Jiang Shouying was a little surprised. He was actually drawing his sword against the flying lion in midair? She. That's right. The little talus priest in green pulled out the iron sword on his back. Although the sword looked very bright, it was obviously just a piece of ordinary iron. In a small town, you can probably buy one for two tails of silver. Then he pointed it at the ferocious and ferocious giant lion in the dark clouds above his head. Like ants setting fire to the sky. Jiang Shouying was convinced at that moment that he must have been frightened out of his wits. Indeed, normal people would collapse when they suddenly see such a scene while walking on the road. But, looking at the clear eyes and calm expression of the little Taoist priest, it seemed that there was not much fear. It was as if he really thought he could kill that behemoth with a three-foot iron sword. Jiang Shouying blinked and had a new suspicion. Maybe he was just a fool? Fortunately, before he saw the little Taoist priest in green being shattered into pieces, he escaped with the brilliance and left the field. No need to witness that cruel scene. It's too late. But it's soon. Jiang Shouying activated the Bailey Silver Light Talisman to escape. And Li Chu reluctantly drew his sword to the sky. In fact, it was just a matter of breathing. Li Chu didn't want to do this. But something unexpected happened. So he had to do this. It seems difficult to end without killing this flying lion. Who makes it as an indiscriminate attack. All this fell into the eyes of Jin Shur. It revealed its true form regardless of the cost. Because it was determined to kill Jiang Shouying. Who would have thought that this Taoist priest could be so slippery? Just after he was knocked to the ground. He instantly turned into brilliance and escaped. The golden lion was furious on the spot. Then, it saw a scene that made it feel funny. There was a little Taoist priest here that he almost didn't notice. He was probably just a weak human passing by. But he was actually drawing a sword against him. How dare he draw his sword? This ant-like existence in its eyes dares to challenge the majesty of the king? The golden lion immediately decided to vent all his anger on this ignorant ant. Its power has not diminished. But its wings are fluttering. And its pressure is even stronger. In an instant, the air along the entire river bank seemed to have been sucked out, spreading its wings in the sky. Its claws are ferocious. Die. Li Chu frowned when he saw this. This monster is so scary. You must go all out with this sword. Chapter 60 A Sword with All Your Strength It was an uneventful night. On a deserted slope ten miles away on the other side of the river, there was a dilapidated earth temple. At this time, a white fox was kneeling in the earth temple. As it bowed and cowed out three times and nine times with pious movements, dark clouds began to solidify in the night sky. What's strange is that this cloud only covers a small area of a few miles in radius. Leaving this soil slope, you can still see the brilliant starry sky. This white fox is the only living thing on this land. After a long time, it knelt down and worshipped and walked out of the earth temple. 
It knew that the most important moment in its years of practice had arrived. Thunder disaster. In order to overcome this tribulation, it has made preparations for a long time in advance. It worships at temples and shrines in Yuhang County, large and small, as long as it can be worshipped every day, just to add a ray of good luck to itself when it is overcoming the tribulation. It also traveled hundreds of miles around, looking for a place to escape the tribulation. Although it lives in Niofing Mountain, there are too many creatures and monsters in Niofing Mountain, including its old enemies. In the eyes of some humans, it seems that demons are a clan. But for demons, most of the time they don't think of each other as being of the same race. They are all different from each other. Jackals, tigers and leopards. It is very common in the world of monsters to harass other monsters while they are going through their tribulations. After all, if other monsters successfully overcome the tribulation and their cultivation level increases greatly, the first thing they might do when they come back is to hunt you down. There is no law in the demon world. Only the law of the jungle. So the white fox came to this secluded barren slope, which was lent to it by the father-in-law of the land. It's very quiet here tonight. The rumble of thunder began to sound, and the black clouds gradually thickened, finally condensing into a sea of clouds. In the sea of clouds, a rolling golden dragon appeared. The thunder tribulation when monsters transform is usually one of the nine thunder tribulations, and you only need to deal with these thunder dragons. But this is by no means an easy task, especially for a wild fox who has only been practicing for a hundred years and has never received any help. It also knows that some monsters will choose to sell their freedom in exchange for some help in practicing and overcoming tribulations, even if they are willing to be slaves for a hundred years. It also knows that as a fox tribe, doing this kind of thing is particularly popular, but it doesn't want to. It is willing to take more risks in exchange for precious freedom. Rumble. The two golden dragons intertwined, causing a harsh roar. The white fox only felt that there was an invisible energy in the world locking him. For a moment, his soul was blessed, and he instantly realized that this was the foreplay of the thunder disaster. It's coming. Roar. I don't know if it was the roar of the thunder dragon or the roar of the wind, but a golden light suddenly fell from the darkened clouds. The thunder dragon emerged from the clouds and began to fade away from its golden color, turning into blue and black. But the divine power has not diminished in the slightest. The whole body of the white fox shimmered with light, which was the result of all the cultivation it had accumulated over the past hundred years. In the face of thunder and calamity, hiding is useless. Even if you avoid it, you will never be able to transform. Only by withstanding the baptism of thunder tribulation head-on can the transformation of the body be completely completed. Boom! The first thunder struck him. And with just one strike, the white fox's glow was instantly extinguished. Not only that, part of the fur on its back immediately became burnt. Fear began to show in its pupils. And it didn't expect that this was just the first blow. His weak barrier was easily broken. It had obviously imagined the power of the thunder tribulation to its maximum. But only at this moment did it realize that it was still too naive. If you compare yourself to a container and the power of thunder and calamity to water, just the first injection fills itself up. And it's about to overflow. Boom! When the second brontosaurus fell, fear had already taken over its heart. And it wanted to avoid it. But you are already under the thundercloud. How can heaven allow you to escape? This thunder dragon directly knocked it to the ground. Its fur was scorched black. And it was almost difficult to get up. This is the second way. No. It's going to be broken. It began to whine. As if begging for mercy. But the cold thundercloud will not produce sympathy. And there are only two endings under the law of heaven. The strong evolve, and the weak are destroyed. Boom. In the third path, the white fox used up the last of its demonic power to fight against it. But was unable to resist even for a moment. The demonic power disintegrated, and the physical body was robbed. If this continues... Its fragile container will definitely burst due to the impact of thunder. That is what is called turning into ashes. Fourth way. Fifth way. Sixth way. Seventh way. Eighth way. Five lightning tribulations fell in succession. With great force. The white fox is already unstoppable. Life and death are unpredictable. Now let alone the fur. From a distance, it looks like a pile of roasted rotten meat. Only a pair of pupils still contained a little life. What supports this bit of vitality may be unwillingness or longing. But nothing matters anymore. It had long been unable to resist. And could only lie down in despair. Letting the thunder and calamity ravage and the ferocious impact had already left it covered with bruises. And it did not dare to even have the slightest thought of resistance. 
The ninth thunder calamity has been brewing for a little longer. But it has not yet fallen. It rolled its eyes, mistakenly thinking that the lightning disaster had passed. But when he raised his eyes, he saw the golden dragon tossing and turning in the sea of clouds. It was still gathering strength. The ninth thunder tribulation is often more powerful than the first eight. Now I shouldn't even be able to withstand an ordinary lightning disaster. Are you going? Regret began to well up in the white fox's heart. At this moment, it still wanted to live more than to be free. But there was no chance. In fact, Li Chu rarely used his sword with all his strength. The only time before that he had used a little more spiritual power was when he faced the water ghosts in the Heishui River. In the usual process of exorcising evil spirits, he usually just swings the sword casually, letting the spiritual power pour out a little at will. And the evil spirits will be killed at will. If you use too much force, it may cause unnecessary damage. So to this day, he doesn't quite know what will happen if he uses his sword with all his strength. However, facing the flying lion that jumped down from the sky, he was determined to use 100% of his spiritual power. There is no way. The opponent is too cruel, too terrifying, too terrible. The giant lion with two wings soaring in the night, with a full moon reflected behind it, is like an epic scroll of gods and demons painted in ink. This scene has a really strong visual impact. This is the only powerful enemy he has ever seen in his life. So he also used his sword for the first time in his life with all his strength. Li Chu even shouted loudly before drawing his sword, which was a symbol of strength. She cut out with one sword. The golden lion's head was already very close to him. Li Chu could clearly see its bloody mouth and halberd-like fangs, as well as its golden pupils. He could even see a hint of sarcasm in these pupils. But half a second later, the sarcasm turned into shock. Those huge pupils dilated crazily, almost as big as the moon. The golden lion almost doubted what his eyes were seeing. What it saw was a wave of sword energy sweeping towards it. What it saw was a huge half-moon-shaped sword light. And what it saw was death. It suddenly couldn't help but want to loudly question itself a moment ago. Is this an ant? This is simply a god descending to earth. The issue is, why would a god happen to be passing by here? Is it because I'm unlucky? Undoubtedly, this was the strongest sword it had ever seen in its life. So strong that it could not even think of resisting. And its life will come to an end here. So scary. As a monster, dying under such a sword seems to be a good destination for me, who has been a sinful monster for 800 years. It's a pity that the Taoist priest was not killed to avenge Lao Wu. Now it just hopes that its younger brothers and sisters won't come over. It's too scary here. Wait a moment. It seemed to suddenly remember something. Taoist priests are scary. Don't come. This sentence suddenly flashed out of its mind. And it was out of control. Shouldn't it? It looked at the man wielding the sword in front of it. Taoist robe. Taoist robe. Ah! It seemed that it wanted to shout something loudly. But it was too late. The sword light flashed across instantly. The flying lion's body is divided into two. The body of a demon is different from that of ghosts. No matter how powerful the attack, the entity will not completely disappear. The lion continued to move forward, jumped dozens of feet, and then landed with a crash, collapsing a section of the river embankment, and then stopped on the bank. The lion's head was thrown high into the air with shock, anger, and anxiety that it was too late to say anything. It didn't land until it was nearly a hundred feet away and rolled a long way. Blood fell from the sky, accompanied by a fishy smell, the bloody wind and bloody rain. Li Chu blinked. The momentum of the rush was so frightening that they flew into the sky and escaped from the ground. As a result, that's it. Why does it feel like killing it is similar to other evil spirits? The body looks so huge. I thought it was strong. But turns out it is puffy? Before he had time to recall what he felt just now, he saw that the half-moon-shaped sword light he had swung past through the body of the flying lion and continued to draw towards the distant sky. And it gets bigger and bigger. And it looks like a new moon disc appears in the sky. Until it disappears from sight. And no one knows how far it will fly before it dissipates. But it is conceivable that everything that hits this sword light will end up with the same fate as the lion. Li Chu secretly smacked his tongue. Is the sword energy wielded with full strength so condensed? It seems that we should be more careful in the future. Fortunately, this sword was directed towards the sky. If it had been towards the ground, it might have been accidentally injured. Even if no one is hurt, it is not good to hurt flowers and plants. When Bai who had lost hope of living in his heart, suddenly, it saw a half-moon-shaped light flying from the sky, which seemed like a new moon. 
Is it an illusion before death? It has some doubts. But the next second, I saw this white light hitting the thundercloud in midair. There was a loud crackling sound of silk. And the origin of this white light was unknown. The condensed thundercloud was shattered with one touch. In the harsh sound. The thunderclouds. The golden dragon rolling in the sea of clouds. And all the power of the thunder disaster that was brewing were cut through by this white light. And all disappeared. Disappeared? It was in a daze. What is this? It's just a little fox who hasn't gone to school. At this time. It doesn't know how to express its feelings other than saying, Hack. Not long after. A white brilliance lit up from around it. At the same time. A warm current is injected into the body. Making it extremely comfortable. As if it is the essence of life. The wound healed with the injection of this warm current. And its body also changed in the brilliance. A pair of slender legs emerged from the white light. And then a pair of slender arms. Bulging forward and backward. With a slim waist and a delicate face. Is this transformation? Is your thunder tribulation over now? Until this moment. It was still a little unbelievable. A white light suddenly flew from outside that day and actually cut through its own thundercloud. When the white light faded, Standing there was a slim and beautiful girl. She was dressed in simple white clothes. Elegant and refined. But also had an unspeakable charm. The most peculiar thing is that there is a big fluffy tail sticking out from behind her. But, oops. The girl touched her tail and exclaimed. This is the price of not surviving the complete thunder tribulation. And his transformation was not completely successful. She switched back and forth between the white fox and the human form a few more times. But no matter what. The tail could not fade away. Always follow your own but. Ah. What to do? The girl scratched her head. Troubled. Chapter 61 Is it him? When Li Si and Malagio rushed to the battlefield. They only saw a huge corpse with its head separated. They did not turn into their original form. But came with human bodies to ride on the wind. So they were slow for a moment. This moment actually helped them escape. I thought I would see the body of a Taoist priest when I arrived. And if nothing else worked. I would let him escape. Never would I have thought that the one who died would be the golden lion. The light in Li Si's eyes flickered. His face was ashen. He couldn't tell what his expression was. And his body was trembling slightly. Mao Jiu's eyes were full of fear. He covered his mouth and took a deep breath. These two demons were in extreme shock and were a little at a loss for a moment. After a while, Li Si calmed down a little. Jiu Mei, I don't know what tricks the Taoist priest hid. But he was able to kill his eldest brother. But in this case, there is no point in us taking revenge. In this way, you stay here and keep an eye on that gang. Regarding the Taoist priest's movements, please contact Feiyu. I will go back and report the matter to Master Jade Lynx. We will fight to the death with Jiang Shouin. No, with the entire Shinshu temple. Mao Jiu glanced at it and nodded. Okay, big brother. Li Si looked at the golden lion's body, gritted his teeth, and stepped forward. Malgio asked, What do you want to do? Lisi said, While it's hot. The golden lion's body partially collapsed a section of the river embankment and stopped on the river bank. It walked to the lower abdomen of the golden lion, and its five fingers flashed and turned into sharp claws. Puff. It actually inserted its sharp claws into the golden lion's lower abdomen, and then stretched its entire arm in. After a while of rotation, it took out a golden ball the size of a fist. It looked dim in color, but it contained evil energy. Demon elixir. Every monster will condense its own demon elixir, which contains most of its demon power, and can be regarded as the monster's first treasure. After monsters in the wild kill each other, they will dig out each other's demon pill as soon as possible and swallow it while it is hot to prevent the demon power in the pill from draining away. But swallowing it directly will actually cause a lot of waste. If it is a human cultivator, they will choose to use the demon pill as a medicine guide to refine it into a new pill. Such benefits may be several times that of swallowing it directly. However, Lisi had no intention of swallowing the demon pill. Instead, he wrapped the demon pill with a layer of demon power and then tore off a piece of his sleeve to wrap it up. Dedicate this 800-year-old demon pill to Lord Jade Lynx. And he will definitely be willing to stand up for us. Lisi said. Malgio didn't object. He just didn't expect it just now. If it remembers, it will do the same thing. Monsters don't have so many taboos. To them, corpses are just corpses. Being able to make the best use of them is indeed the best way to deal with them. Lisi warned Malgio again. I'm leaving now. Be careful. You can't get into trouble again. Yeah. Malgio nodded. 
with a whoosh, black light rolled out, and the raccoon dog transformed into a colorful raccoon that was about 10 feet tall. Its body was lean and narrow, but it had the same appearance as its human form. The flower raccoon spread its legs and flew forward, rolling up a black smoke and quickly blending into the night. The journey is far away, and it can no longer ride the wind. The fastest way is to manifest the body and run. After it left, Maggio took another look at the golden lion's body. The evening breeze ruffled my clothes, bringing a bit of coolness. There was a hint of sadness in her beautiful eyes. But that's all. Coming out of the cruel jungle world, they have long been accustomed to such things. No matter who dies, the sun will rise tomorrow. Early the next morning, at dawn, Jiang Shouying came to the government office with a solemn expression. Thanks to Gong Sunja who gets up early to work every day. Otherwise, he would have woken him up. But Jiang Shouying could not wait any longer. He was teleported hundreds of miles away last night. So he quickly returned to Yuhang Town with his sword. He waited until now just to meet Gong Sunja. Lord Gong Sun, there is a major crisis in Yuhang Town. You must immediately warn the people and ask for help from Chao Tian, Quebec. The little Taoist said seriously. Gong Sun just smiled bitterly. Master Jiang Xiao, let's talk about what happened first. If it was so easy to ask for help from Kao Diank, he would not keep that fool Zhang Yushi to protect him. Someone from Chaoda had already said H. Lo to Hangzhou Prefecture. The magistrate of Yuhang Town could not even think of inviting any soldiers from Chao Tian K. The purple-clad guards at the bottom of Chao Tian Tower like Li Sini have always been able to move freely in Yuhang Town and are not under the slightest control of his county magistrate. Jiang Shouin said, I was intercepted and killed by the demon from Qingyi Tower last night in Miaofeng Mountain. The ones who took action were the gold medal killer Jean Shur and two of his subordinates. They are extremely powerful. Ah? Huh? Gong Sunja was surprised. Qingyi Tower is probably here for me again. But after thinking about it, he was a little confused. Those killers should be hired to kill me. Why are they targeting you? Maybe they want to cut off the people who protect me first? I don't know what kind of evil those killers have but they insist that I kill their brother. Jiang Shouyin said angrily. If I know who framed me, I will definitely not be lenient. Gong Sunja asked uneasily. Isn't Master Jiang Shao a match for the Golden Lion? Huh? Jiang Shouyin smiled bitterly and shook his head. If it is a human form. Fortunately, it turned into its true form last night, and I have almost no power to fight back. That's why I want Lord Gong Sun to warn the people not to approach Miafing Mountain in the near future. It's best not to leave the city. The monster shouldn't dare to openly attack Yuhang Town for the time being. But it's safe to invite some experts to take over as soon as possible. Gong Sunja frowned and fell into deep thought. At this time, a middle-aged Confucian scholar with a wide robe and long sleeves walked into the hall. He had a white face, a gentle smile, and a slim figure. He has the kind of appearance that, although not surprising, is easy to make people like him. He stepped forward and said warmly, Sir, there are many people coming to the door, saying they have a strange thing to offer. Jiang Shouyin looked at the middle-aged Confucian scholar, his eyes flickering slightly, as if he felt something was wrong. So he looked at him a few more times. Gong Sanjo looked at his eyes and extended his hand to introduce. This is my newly recruited master, Mr. Bai Jian. Mr. Bai is knowledgeable and knowledgeable, and he is a person I respect very much. Jiang Shouyin didn't see anything in the end. Then he nodded lightly towards Bai Jian. The Confucian scholar Bai Jian cupped his hands and said, I don't dare take it. Gong Sunja asked again, Mr. Bai, do you have any questions about what they came to offer? He had just heard the news about Jean Shur and was exhausted mentally and physically. If it was some trivial matter, he wanted to leave it all to Bai Jian. He was extremely convinced of the talent and learning ability of this newly promoted master. Bai Jian said, It's a lion's head. Gong Sunja sighed. I don't have the time to eat right now. I'll send someone to the kitchen. Bai Jian chuckled. Sir, this is not a braised lion's head. It is a huge lion's head. The people who came to offer it said that there was a loud noise by the river last night. And this morning, they saw a huge lion's body collapsed. The river embankment. But the body was too huge to be hauled over. We had to send the separated lion's head over first and ask your excellency to take a look. I just went to see it. This lion's head is an extraordinary thing. It should be a big one. The demon's head. Huh? Gong Sanja was startled. Jiang Shouyin couldn't help but feel something in his heart. And immediately said, I'll go take a look. He quickly walked out of the lobby and was led to the front yard. 
Sure enough, he saw a huge lion head placed in the yard. The lion's eyes were wide open, and it seemed that he was extremely unwilling to die. The fracture is smooth, and it should be passed by the sword without any struggle. He had seen the face of this lion in his nightmare last night. It was definitely a golden lion. Unexpectedly, I only saw its ferocious power last night and saw its corpse this morning. His. Jiang Shouyin couldn't help but take a breath. Who is so terrifying that he can kill this monster with just one sword? A cyan shadow vaguely appeared in his heart. With a calm expression. And raised his sword to the sky. It's him. Chapter 62 You must be responsible for me. In the early morning. Li Chu was preparing to go to the front yard to open the viewing door. Yu Qian also wandered to the front hall. There were so many pilgrims now that it was difficult for one person to cope with him. He needed to be involved every day. He is still much more skilled than his apprentice in dealing with people. As soon as the master and apprentice entered the front hall, they saw a young girl kneeling on the futon in the hall. The girl was wearing a white dress with ruffled sleeves. The dress was very slim and perfectly highlighted her voluptuous waist and slim figure. She has very smooth hair a delicate oval face, a high nose bridge, a pair of smoky eyebrows, and a pair of crescent eyes. There seemed to be a charming mist in her eyes, making her pupils unclear. She seems innocent, but also has an indescribable charm. What's strange is that there is a big, fluffy white tail sticking out of her back. Monster? Li Chu's eyes narrowed. Fox girl? Yu Qian's eyes lit up. The fox girl's eyes looked over, and she was obviously silent. But just a weak look in her eyes made people's hearts tremble. She looked at Li Chu softly, pursed her lips slightly, and spoke in a soft voice. The first thing she said was, You have to be responsible for me. Huh? Li Chu was a little confused. Yu Qian looked at the fox girl, then at his apprentice, and immediately stroked his beard with joy. Has the disciple finally come to his senses? My true mantle will finally have a successor. Di Yungwen has postponed its opening time today. In the backyard, Yu Qian and Xiao Yu looked serious, sitting opposite the fox girl. Yu Qian looked at Li Chu who was standing aside with a stern look. Stand still. Let me ask this girl what you did first. Li Chu spread his hands. I don't even know her. The fox girl was about to cry. People have come to ask you to take responsibility. And you still say such things. Yu Qijian snorted coldly and said soothingly. Girl, don't be afraid. I will never protect your shortcomings. And I will definitely uphold justice for you. Yeah. Xiao Yu also nodded heavily and glared at Li Chu. The fox girl lowered her head and said, Thank you so much. Taoist master. Yu Qian waved her hand. Hey, it's all what you should do. Girl, can you tell me your name first? I don't have a name yet. The fox girl shook her head. Um, I have just transformed. And I have never given a human name. Every word of the fox girl is delicate and timid. Even if people know that she is a monster, they will inevitably have a strong desire to protect her. For example, Yu Qian, he sighed directly. You must have suffered a lot in the wild these years. Yeah, the fox girl nodded. Li Chu's heart moved. Are you the white fox from before? Naturally. He remembered that the white fox that came to visit him every day had helped him in Niofeng Mountain and spent several days recovering from his injuries in the temple. Later, it didn't come back for a while. According to the master, it might have gone to prepare for the tribulation. Yes, I am the wild fox who came to pay homage every day. I finally survived the catastrophe the day before yesterday. The fox girl admitted. Eh? Then you keep this tail. Yu Qian hesitated for a moment. Then his eyes lit up. Is it some kind of hobby? At this time, his face was filled with four big characters. Which one my heart? No. Fox girl quickly shook her head. She looked at Li Chu again and then said, that day when I was going through the heavenly tribulation, I passed through the first eight heavenly tribulations. Just when I was about to fall into the ninth tribulation, a sword light flew from the sky and chopped off my thunder clouds. Broken. Even if she were to advance that scene now, there was still some disbelief in her tone. Such a big thundercloud will be gone if you say no. It's hard for anyone to believe their eyes. But it does happen. Upon hearing this, Li Chu's heart skipped a beat even though he was slashing towards the sky. Did he still accidentally injure something? The fox girl continued to talk softly. My transformation is incomplete before the thunder tribulation is over, so I can't get rid of this tail. I asked the father-in-law of the land, and he said that you cut out the sword light. Although everything she said was true, she didn't tell the whole story. To others, 
It sounded like Li Chu had prevented her from fully transforming. In fact, although Li Chu's sword light interrupted the thunder tribulation, the most important thing was that it also saved her life. The father-in-law of the land said that the sword light was created by Li Chu. He also said, the little old man has been practicing for hundreds of years. The cultivation of this little Taoist is the strongest I have ever seen in my life. Little Fox, you want to seize this opportunity. After experiencing that close call, she realized that practicing cultivation is not easy. That's why I came here. I want to seize this opportunity. Yu Qian's eyelids trembled, and she glanced at Li Chu. Is this boy now strong enough to cut off thunder clouds? For those who practice advanced Taoism, breaking the clouds is not a big skill. But those were thunder clouds. Even the weaker nine thunder tribulations still symbolize the majesty of heaven. If someone who is idle dares to challenge Lei Yun, he will probably be chopped into pieces. Right? Don't dare think too much about this matter. Yu Qian quickly picked up the teacup and took a sip of tea to cover up her surprise. Li Chu said immediately, Girl, this is a pure accident. I didn't know anything about it before. I'm sorry for the thunder disaster that affected you. I will try my best to satisfy you with any compensation you want. There was a hint of cunning in the fox girl's drooping eyes, which quickly passed by and turned into soft and weak eyes. Looking at Li Chu, I want to follow you in practice. Can you be my master? She asked. Puff. Before Li Chu could say anything, Yu Qian spit out all the tea in a mouthful and almost choked. How can I get a top-notch demon slave with bulging front and back? Fair skin. Beautiful appearance. Pure and lustful for nothing? You are not asking for compensation. You are giving it for free. Is there such a good thing in the world? Can you get one done for me too? Unexpectedly, Li Chu frowned and asked. Girl, why is this? The fox girl said. Originally, after I transformed, I could enter the human world. But now that I can't get rid of this tail, everyone knows that I am a monster. So I can only live in the mountains. If I want to live a human life, can only recognize one master. Li Chu Dao. Actually, we can get along as equals. Yu Qian stood up and held Li Chu's shoulders. Disciple, how about you accept her first? In the heart of a monster, the only way to establish a relationship with someone is to recognize the owner. The relationship between you can be discussed in the future. Adjust slowly. In fact, it's not that monsters only recognize this method in their hearts, but that the human world, or the current Hulu dynasty, only recognizes this method. If the fox girl is caught by other monks while walking on the street, you say she is my demon slave and I am her master. After some discussion, they will let her back. Even if the lawsuit goes to the yamen, there is still something to be said for it. If you say this is my friend, people will just think you are crazy. The human world does not recognize the intimate relationship between humans and monsters other than master and slave. This is why monsters can only hide their identities or identify their masters if they want to integrate. Of course, it would be too much to explain. And it would involve some bad human nature. So Yu Qian simply said this sentence. Li Chu pondered for a moment. But before he could answer, he saw the fox girl raising her head and looking at him. And asked resentfully, Aren't you willing to be responsible for me? Those who hear it are sad, and those who hear it shed tears. Li Chu could only say, Okay, we can get along in this way for the time being. Just be the same as Xiao Yuer. He pointed at the coy girl. During the days when Xiao Yu came to Diyongwen, she seemed to have become a part of Diyongwen. The master and apprentice took great care of her. Rather than being Li Chu's demon slave, she is more like Yu Qian's little granddaughter. Since she joined, Diyongwen's career has been booming, and both master and apprentice believe it is her contribution. Xiao Yu smiled. She was also very happy to have a monster playmate. Thank you, master. The fox girl also smiled. Just like the flowers blooming in the southern mountains, and the butterflies coming from the North Shore. She was indescribably charming and cute. Li Chu said, You don't need to call me Master. You can just call me Li Chu or Little Tao as Priestly. Okay, Master. Li Chu. By the way, Master, give me a name too, said the fox girl. Li Chu looked at Yu Qian and said, Let the Master do the naming. Yu Qian nodded, stroked his beard, thought for a moment, and said, You are a white fox with a bright and clean nature. Why not call yourself Bai Jie? Bai Jie? Fox girl repeated. His. Li Chu sighed and advised. This name is too mature. It doesn't sound like a girl. So why not call her Xiao Bai? It's as simple and cute as Xiao Yer. 
Yu Qian looked at the fox girl with a smile. What do you think? The fox girl rolled her eyes and said with a smile. I like both names. From now on, my name will be Bai Jie, and everyone will call me Xiao Bai. How about that? Yu Qian nodded with a smile. And Li Chu had no choice but to agree. As he was talking here, he heard a knock on the door from the front yard. Li Chu hurried out. But before he could say anything, he heard someone outside shouting, Li Chu, open the door. Your best friend is here to visit you. As soon as he heard it, he knew it was Wang Longqi again. Li Chu opened the door and welcomed him in. This time he came by himself. And he looked smiling. He didn't look like he had been hit by a ghost again. He didn't know what it was. Entering the front hall, the two sat on the futon opposite each other. Before anything could be said, the fox girl Xiao Bai came over lightly and said, Master, I want to go back and deal with some things first. Is that okay? Li Chu nodded. Of course. You don't have to obtain my consent for all your actions. After that, the fox girl twisted her waist and walked out of the Taoist temple. Wang Lunchi was beside him. His eyes widened. It wasn't until the fox girl walked out of the door that he turned to look back at Li Chu and asked in surprise. Do Taoist priests play so big now? The master's tale has not even been tried by me. Li Chu sighed. It's a long story. Please tell me why you came here. Don't worry. Others. Wan Longqi's eyes shone. Chapter 63 Have you heard of water monkeys? Li Chu rolled his eyes speechlessly. No. That's what he grew. Long? Wan Longqi was stunned for a moment. This was something beyond his knowledge. It's the white fox from last time. The one you wanted to take home and raise. Li Chu said. Oh. Wang Longqi suddenly said. It's it. It was still on my body at that time. As he said this, he didn't know what picture he thought of. And a lewd smile suddenly appeared on his face. She has transformed. But for some reasons, I have to take her in now. Li Chu explained a few words. Then glared at Wang Longqi. What are you here to do? He. Wang Longqi smiled sheepishly. I do have business to come to you. After a pause, he lowered his voice and asked, Have you ever heard of water monkeys? Water monkey? Li Chu thought for a moment, and realized that this kind of thing was quite famous. Almost everywhere there was water. There would be legends of water monkeys. But there are different opinions as to what its true nature is. Wang Longchi looked at his expression, and knew that he didn't know much about it. So he began to preach mysteriously. You know, my family has a seafood business. Our family has a shop that collects the fish caught by the fishermen from the sea. The medicinal materials collected. And some strange things. Li Chu nodded. Yuhang Town is close to the sea and has many water systems. It has many fishing villages under its jurisdiction. The Wang family started their business by collecting overseas goods. Although many other businesses later emerged. This is still the mainstay of their business. In the easternmost part of Yuhang County. There is Wang Yu Village. They are the village closest to the sea in Yuhang County and are a little far away from our town. Our shop has been cooperating with their village for many years and we have a very close relationship. Yesterday was the 15th day. People in our shop went to receive the goods as usual, but this time they didn't receive anything. Of course the boy wanted to ask, but the people in his village hesitated and finally said something surprising. Thing. Their village is not big and they only have two large boats that can go out to sea for fishing. There are dozens of sailors on each boat, taking turns to go out to sea. The ship that went out to sea this time was fine when it went out. But when it came back, it came back with a boatload of water monkeys. Huh? Li Chu frowned. A real water monkey? Yes, it looks like a monkey. But its whole body is covered with green scales. It can move on land. But it must soak in water every few hours. Li Chu asked again. Did the sailor get killed or did the sailor become like this? Wang Longchi said, It should be a sailor. You will know after listening to it. Some villagers thought it was some kind of spirit. If they picked it up, they would beat it. Those water monkeys started begging for mercy and gesticulating. Although they couldn't spit. But he could understand people's language. And he also knows everyone in the village. Only one person on the ship knew some words. And he was able to stand up and communicate with the villagers by writing on the ground. He wrote many things that only the family knew. It can be confirmed that these are the sailors on the ship. Turn people into monsters? Li Chu pondered for a moment. This is a strange thing. After a lot of communication, the villagers finally understood what happened to those who went to sea. They went fishing this time. And the harvest was very poor. 
because all the familiar roots were almost destroyed. So they discussed changing the roots slightly, and they returned with a full load. But on the way back, they encountered a storm. The storm was extremely violent and long-lasting. After the rain cleared and the weather cleared, they found that their ship had been blown near a small island. There is actually a palace on this island. The sailors were almost out of food and water and were exhausted from the storm. So they wanted to go to the island to recuperate. The owner of the palace welcomed them very warmly, saying that he was a down-and-out nobleman who moved all his belongings to this island and built a paradise. He also prepared a sumptuous dinner and invited beautiful maids to dance for them. After they were full of wine and food, he actually asked the maids to attend their bed for them. Those maids were gentle and proactive. Seeing him shaking his head with an ecstatic expression, he seemed to know the details very well. Li Chu wondered, are these written by Water Monkey? Well, I made this up in my own head. Wang Lungchi scratched his head and said with a smile, but the specific process should be similar. When they were leaving the next day, they were still reluctant to leave. The owner said that he was willing to pay a lot of money to buy all the fish they caught. The price offered was more than a hundred times higher than the actual price. So they happily left a boat full of fish and returned home with a lot of gold and silver. So far, it's been a good thing. But then something weird happened. Not far from the island, a sailor turned into a water monkey. The other sailors suddenly thought they had encountered a monster. But soon no one was spared. And they all turned into this. The sailors were extremely scared. But they had no choice but to drive the ship back in this body and then explain to the villagers. Because this incident is so evil. The villagers in Wangyu village dare not tell the outside world for fear that outsiders will think there is a group of monsters in their village. Their original plan was to secretly go to Hangzhou Mansion to report to the people of Chaohian K. But they were worried that if the people from the government did not dare to go out to sea to find the island, they would be merciless and kill all the water monkeys. So it's very confusing. My guy has heard about you. He <laughs> he. I helped you promote it. Wang Longchi patted his chest. So he told the villagers that there is a Taoist priest in the town, Xiao Li, who is very good at exorcising evil spirits. Maybe let him try it. The villagers were very happy. And my guy came back to tell me. I think it's better to ask you to take action than the people from Kaodiank. Wang Longchi looked at Li Chu with earnest eyes. Li Chu hesitated and said, I don't know what the evil spirits are in the unknown overseas islands. In fact, I think it is better to find Kaodiank. After all, the Xianmen has a deep background and many masters. I have had some dealings with Misli, and they are not like people from the Yaman or so. He paused for a moment when he said this. Some words were hard to say, but he understood everything. Wang Longchi seemed to be intentional or unintentional, and murmured in a low voice. Although they have turned into water monkeys, the gold and silver jewelry they brought back in the boat are indeed real. The villager said, If someone can help them save, I would rather take these gold, silver and jewels as reward for these sailors. Li Chu held his hand. We set off immediately. We can't let the villagers suffer anymore. He <laughs> he. Wang Longchi smiled. Okay, but it's not that urgent. I have to go back and pack my luggage. After all, I may have to stay for a few nights this time. I'll pick you up in two hours. Okay. Li Chu nodded. His luggage was very simple. Just a blue robe with a white lining. Because he wears this style of clothing all year round. It often creates the misunderstanding that the little Taoist priest never changes his clothes. But this also has some advantages. That is, you never have to think about what to wear when going out. As soon as he finished cleaning up, he saw Xiao Bai, the fox girl who had returned from outside, rushing in excitedly. Master, I heard that you are going out to exorcise evil spirits. Yes, let me go with you, the fox girl said softly. Huh? Li Chu was stunned for a moment. What are you going to do? The fox girl slowly said. I can do a lot. I can help you with chores, sleep with you, fight for you, chat with you, and I can also imitate humans and cook for you. Li Chi raised his hand. Wait a minute. Is there something strange mixed in? Chapter 64 Li Chu's Equality of All Living Beings The warm sun is high. The breeze is gentle. And the river is like a jade belt. With sparkling waves on the surface. This is the fastest waterway to Wangyu Village. The crisp autumn weather at this time is quite suitable for a boat trip. Both sides of the bank are covered with mountain flowers. Blooming vigorously and brilliantly. There are dots of birds flying up and down among the flowers butterflies flying in pairs, and dragonflies mating. Although autumn has gradually deepened, there is still a faint trace of summer beside the mountains 
and rivers in the south. A small boat went down the river, its light white sails fluttering in the wind, and the word, King, hanging on it. When the boats and rafts along the river saw him, they all took the initiative to avoid him, and some even took the initiative to shout and say, H, lo, the Wang family is not a wealthy and ruthless wealthy family, and has always had a good reputation in Yuhan County. The fox girl Xiao Bai supported the boat and looked at the scenery on both sides with great interest. The river breeze blew up a few strands of hair, revealing her delicate ears and charming profile. So beautiful. Wang Longqi sighed greatly. Seriously? Li Chu. He patted the little Taoist priest beside him. I have never envied anyone since I was a child. But I really envy you. Li Chu thought for a moment. Are you scolding me? Wang Longqi put his hand on his forehead, feeling a headache. However, he was already accustomed to Li Chu's unusual brain circuitry, and he didn't bother to explain. He turned around and went to tease the little fox. He approached in a way that he thought was very handsome, and used his hand to brush his hair. Little white girl, when I saw this river, I suddenly remembered a poem. The fox girl blinked her big misty eyes. What kind of poem is it? Wang Longchi looked far away at the end of the water. Guan Guan Jijiu, in the river island, a graceful lady. The fox girl ignored him, but jumped to Li Chu's side and said with a smile, Master, this is my first time taking a boat. She had been practicing in the mountains before, so she naturally couldn't have the opportunity to take a boat. So she was very excited. Li Chu smiled, looked at Wang Longqi who was still talking to himself in the air, and asked, He, it's just a little trick. The fox girl said she was modest, but her tail was raised unconsciously. Do you know how to perform illusions? Li Chu suddenly realized that it was the little koi's excessive weakness that gave him a stereotype, and he regarded the fox girl as a mascot. But the fox girl has been practicing step by step from the wild. If she didn't have fighting ability, it would be impossible to survive until now. After all, it is a monster that has transformed into a catastrophe. In ordinary mountains and forests, it can be regarded as a big monster. He, he. The fox girl was a little shy and said softly, our fox clan is very famous for our talent in illusion. Li Chu looked at the fox girl expectantly. Let me feel how powerful your illusion is. If there is one more powerful helper, this demon slave will make a lot of money. In the future, the Taoist temple will have more business. If there are things that cannot be handled, she can be left alone. For a moment, Li Chu even thought about the future. Good. The fox girl realized that this was Li Chu's first inspection of her and immediately held her breath and took it seriously. She looked directly into Li Chu's eyes. Her demonic power gathered, and the mist in her eyes began to rotate, becoming more and more beautiful, as if there were bright stars hidden inside. After a moment of silence, it was as if a crow was flying overhead. Li Chu wondered, Why are you looking at me? Let's start. Ah? The fox girl blinked her long eyelashes. Don't you even feel anything? She knew that Li Chu was very strong. Otherwise she would not come to claim his master. But even if he couldn't confuse him with his almost all-out illusion, couldn't he even make him feel something? The fox girl clenched her little hands into fists and silently encouraged herself. No, if you perform so poorly the first time, you will definitely fall out of favor in the future. She mobilized the demon power around her, mustered up 120% of her energy, and looked into Li Chu's eyes with almost glare. Li Chu finally felt it. A hazy mist rose from before his eyes, as if trying to cover his eyes. As soon as he thought about it, the fog dispersed lightly. That's it? He was a little disappointed in his heart. But he still encouraged him. Not bad. Keep working hard. What he didn't know was that the fox tribe was really talented in illusions. The fox girl's illusions were even better than those of the water ghosts in the river back then. But he is no longer the same person he was when he cut the river to kill ghosts. After killing the flying lion, his level has reached level 74. With the upgrade, the improvement in spiritual power was obvious, but the improvement in soul was not so obvious, and he didn't care too much. But in fact, his spirit has become much stronger. It's still the metaphor of mountains and water. For Li Chu, who was at the 71st level, the fox girl's water might be able to moisturize the foot of his mountain. For Li Chu now, the fox girl's water was too little, not enough to make him feel anything at all. Although Li Chu said it politely, the fox girl was keenly aware that the man in front of her was disappointed in her. She felt she had to say something to win him back. So she took the initiative and asked, Master, when will we sign the spiritual contract? Spiritual contract? 
It's the ritual that demon clans must go through to recognize their master. Simple ones include spiritual oaths. Complex ones include spiritual contracts. And some even require inscriptions on demon pills. The fox girl's voice became smaller and smaller as she spoke. She was also very afraid of these rituals. In order to prevent the demon slaves from backlash, the cultivators came up with absolutely harsh methods. Even the simplest spiritual oath is enough to make the monster dare not resist the master's orders. Li Chu shook his head. I don't need these. In fact, there was another sentence that he was embarrassed to say. I do not know either. No one taught him this. When the little koi recognized his master, neither of them knew how to do it. So they simply called him master. Yu Qian, the only knowledgeable person, didn't know why but never mentioned it. But the fox girl was a little hesitant. She didn't know why. But she seemed to be expecting Li Chu to give her some restraint. Previously, she thought Li Chu had forgotten and was happy not to have to suffer this. But Li Chu never mentioned this matter, which made her a little panicked. After thinking about it, she said quietly, Are you not going to accept me? Is it because I didn't satisfy you just now? Huh? Li Chu frowned. Why do you say that? Since I promised to take you in, I won't regret it. But how can it be like this? The fox girl lowered her head and waggled her tail uneasily. There is no restraint at all. Aren't you worried that I will bite you back in the future? Li Chu smiled and asked. Can you do it? Probably not. The fox girl said weakly. Li Chu asked again. Who told you about these rules about recognizing one's master? Logically speaking, the fox girl grew up in the mountains and should not be so clear about human affairs. It's a fox demon sister I know, the fox girl said. She recognized a cultivator as her master. A hundred years later, the cultivator died and her spiritual contract was naturally lifted and she returned to the mountains. We became good friends and she told me a lot about the human world. Later, she couldn't bear it after staying in the mountains for a few years. She said it was too lonely here and that the bustling human world was more interesting. So she left again. She said that to recognize the master is to sign a spiritual contract. And then the master will teach you magical powers, give you magic weapons, give you elixirs, and help you practice. You obey all the master's orders, such as fighting and sleeping. There were some things she was embarrassed to say. The sister also said that to capture a man's heart. You must first capture his kidneys. Li Chu raised his hand to stop her. I don't know what other people's rules are. But my rules at the Yun Temple are like this. His tone was gentle but firm. I will treat each of you monsters equally and treat you as my friend. If I need you to help me, it will never be in order. But help each other. Likewise, you can ask me if you have any requests. If you feel that I if your request goes against your wishes or principles, you can refuse it completely. I will not force you. However, if you do something that violates my principles, I will not show favoritism. The most important principle here is that you are not allowed to harm others. Just like I will not allow others to harm you. All things have animism and all living beings are equal. These words seemed to overturn the fox girl's understanding. After a while, she was still stunned. She thought about Li Chu's words repeatedly. And her eyes slowly lit up. Li Chu added, Let's undo Wang Longchi's illusion first. Yeah. The fox girl nodded obediently. She waved her hand to Wan Longchi. Wan Longchi's eyes dimmed, and he suddenly realized that the fox girl in front of him had run to Li Chu's side at some point. His mouth was dry, but he was full of energy. Miss Bai, I have another Jin Jia song here. The fox girl's face turned red, and she ran into the cabin. He, he. Wan Longchi smiled. She must have been fascinated by my talent after listening to me read more than 200 poems. Li Chu smiled and nodded. The happiest people in the world are always fools. Chapter 65 Going to Sea Wang Yu village is indeed very small. Located on a delta at the mouth of a river. The land is usually very fertile. But they do not make a living from farming. For fishermen living near the sea. The vast East China Sea is a great treasure. After many years of fishing life. The people of Wang Yu village built two large boats from scratch. The young people in the village were assigned to take turns to go to sea on the two boats. Such large boats allow them to go farther to sea, fish more, and live better than other fishing villages. But the farther you go to sea, the greater the risk. There are not only treasures in the East China Sea, but also countless weird things. As we all know, there are far more living creatures in the sea than on land. Correspondingly, there are more evil spirits in the sea. And just like this eternal ocean, 
the evil spirits in the deep sea are also more ancient and mysterious. What happened in Xiaoxiaowang fishing village may be just a drop in the bucket. But for the people in this village, almost half of their families collapsed. So Li Chu took this matter extremely seriously. After arriving at Wanyu village, they saw the old village chief and a group of villagers guarding the place early. As soon as the boat docked, it was warmly welcomed by the villagers. The old village chief took the lead, and the villagers behind him enthusiastically stepped forward to shake hands with Li Chu, especially the eldest girls and young wives in the village. It was said that their husbands and sons had been turned into water monkeys, so they were looking forward to Li Chu rescuing them. In order to appease their emotions, Li Chu had comforted them one by one. But as they shook hands, more girls ran out of the village. And the more they shook hands, the more people they held. Later, there seemed to be a long queue. Li Chu couldn't help but ask the old village chief, Have all the husbands of so many people turned into water monkeys? The old village chief blushed and coughed a few times, and drove away all the girls who came from behind. Originally, the village had prepared a seafood feast to entertain the group. Li Chu was a little moved by this. After the little koi came to Diyun Temple, there was an additional rule in the temple. No fish allowed. Not even putting fish balls in hot pot. So in Yuhang Town, which is adjacent to the East China Sea, the master and apprentice have not eaten fish for a long time. But think about it. Before the little koi arrives, they have to calculate a meal of meat and vegetables for half a month. Without her, there might not be the thriving Diyun Temple today. So I feel relieved. Li Chu could actually understand this. After any creature becomes spiritual, it may not be able to see its own kind put on the dinner table. But this also gave him a wake-up call. The fox girl is pretty good. Humans don't have the habit of eating fox meat. In the future, they cannot accept demon slaves such as pigs, cows, and sheep. Otherwise, their Taoist temple will simply be converted into a temple. But, considering the importance of rescuing people, Li Chu decided to slow down on eating seafood and go see the water monkeys first. The old village chief extended a warm invitation. But seeing Li Chu's firm attitude, he had no choice but to take them to a pond outside the village. Because water monkeys cannot stay out of water for long periods of time. They are simply placed in ponds. Arriving outside the pond, the old village chief sighed. Oh, a boatload of good sailors turned into such a monster. Take a look. The pond is not large and is surrounded by fences, which must have been temporarily erected and are very loose. There were more than a dozen young men from the village around who were watching with red tassel guns. It shows that the old village chief is still on guard for fear that these water monkeys will do something strange. But it should be so. After all, it is related to evil spirits. There were 30 or 50 water monkeys flapping in the pond, which seemed a bit crowded. But those water monkeys looked very happy, chasing each other back and forth, and occasionally went ashore to climb up and down the big trees. And occasionally, there would be an upside-down golden hook. Sometimes a monkey comes to fish for the moon. As for the appearance, it is the same as Wang Lungchi described. The body shape and posture are really similar to those of wild monkeys in the mountains. The only difference is that the water monkey has dark blue hard scales all over its body. And its tail looks sharper and more powerful. Which may make it easier to swim. Wang Longchi chuckled. They are quite tolerant. And they are still playing here. The old village chief sighed. Oh, who in the normal world can have such a big heart? When they first came back, they still had sad faces and they all remembered their identities. But now they look more and more like real beasts. I'm afraid. After a while. They will completely forget that they are humans. Li Chu had good eyesight and saw a water monkey on the shore. It was completely different from other water monkeys. It looked at the water with a sad expression. Standing with its paws behind its back. There were many wounds on its body. Some of which were bandaged and still oozing blood. What's going on? It seems different from the others. Li Chu asked. It, its name is Wu Er. He is the only person on the boat who can read. The old village chief said. Thanks to his presence, we can know what happened to them in such detail. Li Chu asked again. How did he get injured? The old village chief smiled and asked. Little Taoist Li, just by looking at them at a glance. Can you tell the difference between these water monkeys? Li Chu glanced at it, shook his head and said. No. Yes. They all look the same. So we can't tell who is who. They slept with the maids on the island. And the mother-in-law knew about it. So naturally she couldn't spare them. But I can't recognize which one is my man. So I have to endure it for now. But Wu Er is different. He knows the words. 
and he stood up to communicate with us first and finished talking about the things on the island. His mother-in-law knew that it must be him, and she was the first to explode. She picked up a rolling pin and rushed over. If we hadn't stopped him, he wouldn't have any good scales now. Wang Longqi couldn't help laughing and said leisurely, Knowledge changes destiny. Li Chu took a special look at it. There is nothing special about the chi of these water monkeys. They look just like ordinary wild beasts. If we have to talk about differences, it may be that they have less negative emotions such as hostility, fierceness, evil spirits, etc. After all, they have human souls in their bodies. This is followed by a sumptuous seafood dinner. The seafood prepared by fishermen may not be as fine as those in big restaurants, but it is definitely fresh and tender, and the portions are large and filling. While eating, Wan Lunchi said thoughtfully, Don't eat too much when you get on the boat. Li Chu and Fox Girl nodded. But when it comes to eating, I don't care about that much anymore. It's not too much to eat until you're full enough to just fill your belly. Right? Especially the Fox Girl. She looks like a soft and frail little girl. But she just has an extra tail. Unexpectedly, she could eat as much as three strong young men by herself. And the way she ate was, at best, like a wind and crippled cloud. And at worst, like a hungry dog pouncing on food, which made the surrounding villagers stunned. After eating, she smiled sheepishly, wiped her mouth gracefully, and nodded slightly, dignified, with this meal. She successfully changed the villagers' evaluation of herself from actually a monster to as expected of a monster. I can't help it. I'm used to being hungry. She took a sneak peek at Li Chu and found that Li Chu was eating harder than she was. But he just seemed so calm. So chic. So bohemian. She also thought to herself. She deserves to be my master. After eating, we boarded a large boat sent by the village. Led by eight or nine experienced sailors. And set sail to sea. The charts along the road were all drawn by water monkeys with their paws. Although they are a little crooked. They should be accurate. After all, they were all old fishermen. And they had sailed back based on their memories. Shortly after boarding the boat, Wang Longchi lay down on the back of the boat and started vomiting. He had gone to sea before and suffered losses. So he told him in advance that he would only eat 8% full. Who would have thought it would still be so bad? But what puzzled him was that Li Chu and Fox Girl, two people who were going to sea for the first time, didn't react at all. There, I leisurely enjoyed the sea scenery. And the Fox Girl shouted from time to time. Wang Long walked over with a look on his face and asked angrily, Why don't you two get seasick? The master and slave looked at each other and shrugged. The eyes seemed to say, No, 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 no one really gets seasick. Right? That's so useless. Wang Longchi felt aggrieved and left with his mouth flat. After about two hours, the sailor on the bow of the ship scratched his head and said, Weird. Li Chu walked over and asked, What's wrong? The sailor said, According to the chart, we should be there now. At least we should be within sight. But, he pointed at the bare sea level in front of him. There was nothing there. Li Chu frowned. This was a bit difficult to handle. Could it be some kind of secret realm or a movable island? They only exchanged a few words. And suddenly they heard another shout from the sailor behind them. Oh! Looking up, I saw a billowing ink clouds gathering. The clouds are moving in all directions. The sailor shouted, the weather has changed. Chapter 66 What a Big Fish Li Chu stood in the fierce wind, looking at the sky. Clouds are moving in all directions. Almost in an instant, the sea surface changed from calm to rough. Just like changing from a small koi to a spring sanyong. It can be described as a sudden change. The sky suddenly darkened, and Wan Longchi no longer cared about seasickness anymore, and began to huddle aside and tremble, lowering sail. The sailors were quite experienced, and were running around on the deck, busy lowering the sails. But judging from their expressions, this was obviously not a common situation. The black clouds are getting thicker and thicker. Like thick ink, there was a sudden rumble in the distance. Like rolling thunder or thousands of horses galloping. Looking over, there is a line of huge waves. Enter the cabin! The sailor on the lookout shouted, and everyone rushed into the cabin. Bang! The ship's hull suffered an impact and was thrown high into the air. Under this wave, even the big boat in Wangyu village seemed a little helpless, and could only let it do what it did. This is the power of heaven and earth. Or maybe not. Li Chu felt that the smell in the wind was not right. So he immediately closed his eyes, and used his mind's eye skills. Boom. 
a huge black whirlpool on the sea suddenly appeared in my mind. And their ship was in the rapids of the black whirlpool. This mass of black energy is yes. It is evil energy. Is it a siren? When the first wave passed, the heavy rain suddenly came down, making the deck crackle. The strong wind also swept up, sending scattered things on the deck flying all over the sky. Some sailors wanted to take advantage of this relatively stable time to run out. And Li Chu immediately shouted, Come back! A huge shadow was patrolling near the hull. Compared with this dark shadow, this big boat, which the villagers of Wangyu village are proud of, is like a fallen leaf swaying in the wind. I'm afraid that if it takes a breath of air, it will fly back to the sky again. After calling the sailor back, he lifted the curtain and strode onto the deck. Big raindrops hit him all over his head and face. And he was soaked immediately. But he still stood firmly on the bow of the ship. Like a flag. This huge storm seems to be just an accompanying vision of the sea monster. The closer we get, the fiercer the wind and rain. Through Chi's perception, he seemed to be able to clearly see the outline of the sea monster scales. And it seemed to feel Li Chu's gaze. I don't know what method this sea monster uses to observe the vast sea. It seems to be a method similar to the mind's eye technique. Li Chu had a vague feeling of looking at someone. Anger welled up in the siren's body. It feels like walking on the street and looking at each other. And then suddenly coming up and asking. What are you looking at? Very hot tempered. Li Chu carefully restrained part of his spirit and only watched quietly in a small area. This should be considered an act of weakness. But the Kraken's rage escalated, filling its huge size with rage. It seems to be saying, Do you still dare to watch? Boom boom boom. There was a strange noise under the hull. And the hull began to shake violently. The old sailors in the cabin were all unsteady, and could only hold on to something. Only the fox girl could still stand still. She raised a curtain, and looked at Li Chu nervously. Through the keen intuition of a monster. She also sensed that a huge creature was approaching. It was not just a huge thing. It could even be said to be a giant thing. Moving around below. Making her bite her lips tightly. Boom. On the sea in the distance. A huge wave suddenly rose up. Like a mountain peak rising suddenly. Getting higher and higher. After the loud crash. The sea water receded. Revealing a terrifying dark golden color. Is it the dorsal fin? The mountain peak rising suddenly in the sea is actually the dorsal fin of a fish. The whole body is dark golden and covered with ancient and solemn lines. From a distance, it looks like a huge bronze vessel from ancient times. Implied divine power. Clam! The sailors took a deep breath and stared blankly. Even if you have been at sea for decades, how can you have the chance to see such a scene? Wang Longji, who was already extremely frightened, his pupils suddenly went blank, and he said blankly, What a big mountain! What a big fish! Li Chu had a trace of doubt. Looking closely, this does not look like a sea monster but a sea monster. And it is some kind of monster that has inherited ancient blood. It seems like this kind of monster shouldn't appear in the sea area. Although it is far away from the shore. It is not far enough. This is no place for such a sea monster to live. But there was no time to think about it. The wind was blowing violently. And the mountains were approaching. Completely blocking the way of the big ship. In comparison now. It should be said that it was this small and humble wooden ship. As the storm pushes harder, hitting it all the way. The ship will definitely not escape the shattered ending. The curtains of the cabin were blown up in the wind. And the sailors, who were tossing and groaning in the cabin almost knelt down on the spot. The reason why they didn't kneel down was not because they were trying to preserve their dignity, but because they simply couldn't get up. The fox girl's tail was tense and her palms were sweating. After all, this is not the mountains and forests she is familiar with, but an unfamiliar sea. I have long heard that the size of the sea monster is not limited by heaven and can grow as desired. But is it too big? It was so big that it made her breast short. Just exposing one dorsal fin is so scary. If the entire dorsal fin is exposed, wouldn't it be equivalent to half of Miofeng Mountain? On the contrary, Wang Longchi, who had been shouting loudly before, became unusually quiet at this time. He nestled in the corner, holding onto a wall to fix his body. His face was expressionless and his expression was indifferent. And he was mumbling something plausibly. If you get closer and listen carefully, you should be able to hear clearly what he is saying. Li Chu bless, Li Chu bless, Li Chu bless. Li Chu's back was still straight, with unpredictable joys and sorrows. He stood on the bow of the ship with his eyes closed, his thin cyan figure facing the dark golden peaks ahead. The clothes are fluttering and the hair is flying. In his mind, it was not a mountain, 
but just the tip of the iceberg. The whole picture under the dorsal fin is a strange fish with two horns on its head, which looks a bit like a bull's head and a bit like a dragon's head. It stared with a pair of huge eyes, like the sun and moon in the deep sea, causing the small fish in the surrounding sea to flee. Li Chu felt its energy and felt that it didn't look like a bad monster, because there isn't much resentment attached to it, but it is indeed blocking the way of the ship. If you don't make a decision, the ship will be destroyed and people will die. So he drew his sword. The sword rises. The sword falls. See the sea and sky. Listen to the wind and rain. This big fish seemed to have noticed something. And the scales all over its body suddenly stretched out. Glowing with a ferocious cold light. I don't know if it's fear. Or does it want to wait until the ship hits itself and completely smash it into powder? But what touched it first was a sharp and majestic sword light. On. 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 Where the sword light passed by. The back of the big fish suddenly opened softly. Like a master with silky knife skills in a restaurant. Cutting open a fish with one knife. Removing the entire row of fish bones. Leaving no difference between the left and right sides. The sailors behind him opened their mouths. But no sound came out. From their perspective. It was clearly a tiny human being holding an iron sword. Split a mountain. However. In Li Chu's opinion. This fish seemed to be easier to kill than the lion last time. They all have the same characteristics. That is, they are large and scary looking. But when I slashed with the sword, I found that they were all empty. Li Chu pondered for a moment and came to a conclusion. Big things tend to have average hardness. Chapter 67 Yoma Island A flat crack appeared on a ferocious dark gold mountain peak. The sea ship slowly entered through it. At first it was just a small gap. As it gradually went deeper, the passage became wider and wider. The two halves of the sea monster's body are separating. This was an extremely shocking experience for everyone on board. A group of sailors crowded onto the deck in amazement and sucked in the cold air. Dear mother, isn't Taoisley a god? A sailor finally couldn't help shouting. Li Chu shook his head. It's just a bigger fish. It's nothing. Everyone was speechless, looking up at the sunlight leaking from the top. It's like walking on a tall line of sky. Do you call this bigger? If this fish moved back to Wangyu village, it would probably scare a few old sailors to death. Right? If the whole village kills one, it will be enough for half a year. When they looked at Li Chu's humble back, their eyes turned into awe. The fox girl suddenly shouted, Master! Look! She held one hand on the front of the boat, stood on tiptoes, and pointed forward. There was a vaguely colorful scene outside the gap. The fox girl had good eyesight, and Li Chu's was not bad either. He glanced at her and saw the scene over there. An island. Looking from a distance. There are mountains. Lush vegetation. And several splendid palace complexes hidden in the valley. Exactly the same as those depicted by the sailors who turned into water monkeys. But before the storm, they found nothing in that direction. After experiencing this storm, the island suddenly appeared. This is the same experience as the sailors. But this storm was clearly caused by the sea monster. If the sailors encountered the same thing, then they would also have encountered the sea monster. With a mortal body, how could he possibly escape? There is indeed no such section in their description. The sea monster probably did not appear at that time. Could it be that this sea monster has another target? If you think about it carefully, it seems to be angry because you used your mind's eye to spy on its true form. Thinking about it this way, could it be that it attacked its own ship? Because it's shy? Ha! Huh. Li Chu shook his head gently to get rid of this very nonsensical idea. In a moment, the sea monster's huge two halves of the fish body had sunk into the sea, and the sky had long since returned to clearness. The evening sun shines on the calm sea, dazzling like fireworks. The ship finally approached the island. Suddenly, the sound of a horn sounded on the island. Following the sound, I looked over and saw a man in gold and white armor raising his head and blowing a horn on the shore as if to alert the people on the island that an uninvited guest was coming. The ship finally docked at a soft beach. A hundred steps ahead of the beach was a dense forest. Before everyone got off the boat, they heard a rustling sound coming from the woods. Many people were coming. Everyone on the boat immediately became alert and stared at the woods nervously. The sound of dense footsteps is getting closer and closer. And there are so many people coming. Wow! A shiny belly was the first to push out of the woods. This belly belonged to a short fat man. Because he was short and fat, his entire body was like a ball, which made him look quite happy. This little fat man was wearing a gorgeous dress embroidered with gold, which looked very valuable. 
but no matter how expensive the clothes were, they couldn't cover his belly, and it was pushed out with a little force. Behind him, a group of beautiful maids on the left were all wearing gold tassel tube tops and long skirts that outlined the shape of their legs, revealing their slender waists and showing off their figures to the fullest. On the right is a group of tall and heroic guards, all wearing golden armor and holding spears and halberds in their hands. As soon as this team came out, the feeling it gave people could only be described in two words. Dazzling. Just like the golden palace behind them. It highlights a magnificent and magnificent style. But Li Chu thought it was pretty good. He even wants to give the Yun Temple a similar decoration when he gets rich in the future. Commonly known as local tycoon gold. The little fat man came under the boat, raised his head with difficulty, and with a bright smile on his face, said to everyone on the boat, Everyone who has come from afar, welcome to Yongla Island. It seems that the other party has no intention of directly starting a war. Li Chu led Fox Girl and Wan Longchi off the boat. The sailors looked at each other for a few times and chose to stay on the boat waiting for them. One is because there are evil spirits on this island and they are afraid. Another reason is because I heard that the maids on the island are very hospitable and their wives are also afraid. So they set the rules early. So there were actually only three people disembarking. Li Chu naturally wanted to meet the real owner and find out what was going on. So the fox girl followed him. And Wan Longchi. He had been frightened in the storm, and had been confused. But when he saw the team of maids, he suddenly came back to his senses, and suddenly remembered why he came. Only by not forgetting your original intention can you achieve success. The little fat man welcomed Li Chu and the others down and asked enthusiastically, Why don't those guests on the ship come down and sit down? I am the steward of Yongle Island. Our island owner is very hospitable, and every guest will receive the best hospitality. No, they are waiting for us on the boat. Li Chu said bluntly, We have something to do and want to come and visit your island owner. Oh, the little fat man didn't ask anything and smiled first. The island owner will be very happy. At that moment, surrounded by a group of maids and a group of soldiers, the three of them walked through the dense forest and walked towards the shining golden palace. When looking from outside the island, the palace is nearby, but in actual walking, the mountain road is still quite far away. I don't know how these people arrived in such a short time after seeing the ship. When they really got close to the palace, even a serious second-generation rich man like Wan Longchi couldn't help but exclaim. The entire palace is decorated with carved beams and painted buildings, and is full of brilliance. As far as the eye can see, almost everything has a layer of gilding. The floor under the feet is made of white marble, which is smooth and perfectly fitted, with no trace of inlay visible. After entering the main hall, they did not see the so-called island owner immediately. Instead, they were arranged to take a rest in a side hall. The other party's attitude was very polite, and the three of them waited patiently. Only when the sun set completely did someone come to inform them that the dinner was ready. The island owner is also waiting in the main hall. When they followed the others to the main hall, they met the mysterious island owner. Um, the figure of the island owner is somewhat similar to that of the little fat man. He also has a round figure. But he is much taller and has a huge head. He looks like a round ball stacked on top of another. Ball? It looks like a snowman. Which is quite funny. The island owner said warmly. Welcome to my young island. Our distinguished guests. Ha ha. The men are really handsome. The women are beautiful. And the island is full of glory. The three of them were led by the maid and sat down at the dining table. The dining table is filled with sumptuous dishes and at a glance. You can see all kinds of delicacies and game. But Li Chu suddenly blinked when he looked at the dishes on the table. He first smiled and returned the gift to the island owner. Thank you, island owner, for your warm hospitality. Immediately, he added, but I have a question. Oh, the island owner raised his hand. But it doesn't matter. Why don't you have a fish in such a sumptuous dinner? Ha uh ha. -huh. The island owner waved his hand and said, to tell you the truth, we are on the island and have long been tired of eating those seafood. Here, this is the most precious thing. But as far as I know, you seem to have bought a lot of seafood just yesterday. Li Chu said again leisurely. Upon hearing this, the island owner's eyes flashed, and the smile gradually disappeared from his face. Chapter 68 My Master's Cultivation is Astonishing Wang Longchi looked at Li Chu nervously. He didn't expect him to go straight to the topic without any foreplay. This was too blunt. The atmosphere in the hall instantly became tense. He glanced at the two beautiful maids next to him. 
they were preparing to sit down and serve him. But now they were standing aside in embarrassment. Well, he sighed inwardly. If he had known it earlier, he should have discussed it with Li Chu. At least, he would have waited until his friends had spent the night before starting the group. The island owner stared at Li Chu for a long time, then suddenly smiled and said, I don't know what I call the little Taoist priest. Li Chu said slowly, Li Chu, a disciple of the Yun Temple ten miles outside Yuhang Town. He raised his hand again and said behind him, This is the fox demon Xiaobai who practices in my temple and a friend of mine. The island owner nodded slightly and then said, Little Taoist Priestly, from what you asked just now, it seems that you know a lot about the affairs on my island? People of the Ming Dynasty don't tell secret words. Li Chu didn't hide anything and said straightforwardly, I was entrusted by the villagers of Wang Yu Village on the East China Sea to investigate the matter of dozens of fishermen in Wang Yu Village turning into monsters. They had previously the only abnormal experience I have is that I have been to your island. So I think the island owner may know the reason. Huh? The island owner chuckled. Little Taoist Priestly is an open-minded person. So I won't lie to you. He leaned back and said calmly. I was the one who used the spell to turn them into water monkeys. After hearing this, Li Chu was still fine. But Wang Lungchi's heart skipped a beat. Both of these people seem to be a bit tough. There will be a fight later. I don't know where to hide. He was a little moved after hearing the sailor's description of the overnight stay. So he followed Li Chu to join in the fun. I thought Li Chu was here. So there was no surprise. I can take advantage of it. Spend the night. And get over it. Who knew that Li Chu simply skipped the entire plot? It seems that the island owner is also a ruthless person. God knows whether Li Chu can protect himself in a fight. Wang Longchi was thinking wildly. His eyes were not idle at all. And he glanced back and forth three times while breathing. This hall has a total of four exits. A main entrance, two side entrances, and a back entrance. There are four guards guarding the front door. Two guards guarding each side door. And there is no back door. But I don't know where it leads. There are a total of 36 large windows and 72 small windows in the palace. People can pass through the large windows. There are a total of 38 tables in the hall. You can hide under the tables. But they are not too hidden. There are a total of 18 beams in the hall. You can hide behind the beams. But they can only block one side. Wait. What did I just see? Then Li Chu asked again. Why? The island owner said condescendingly. In my territory, there is no need for me to explain to you. But I am not ignorant. So there is no harm in telling you. He first raised his profile and then explained, Actually, I am not only the owner of Yongle Island, I am also the dragon king of this sea area with a radius of hundreds of miles. After saying that, he smiled high. Dragon king? This surprised Li Chu. He is also familiar with the history of the Holoid dynasty. Before the human race, the dragon race was the last primate of all things. The overlord of this human world. Perhaps originally this world was not called the human world, but that is no longer known. However, after many shocking battles in ancient times, the human race finally took over the position of the primates of all things. From then on, the monsters in the world will take the form of humans. Some of the closely related dragon clans still retain the heritage of transforming into dragons. Even among the seven realms of heaven and man in the human race, there is still a realm named Long Transformation. Even if this dragon is not the other dragon, we can still see the profound influence of the dragon clan on the human race. But as the human race became more and more powerful, the dragon race also continued to weaken. Until now, the real dragon clan has not appeared in the human world for a long time. The island owner seemed to know what he would think, and immediately said, Of course, I am not a pure blood true dragon, but I am definitely not an ordinary dragon descendant. I inherit the blood of a true dragon, so the surrounding water tribes will regard me as their master. Meaning, his father is a real dragon. Such a second-generation dragon descendant is almost pure blood and is already quite noble among the dragon clan. There is hope of being promoted to a pure blood true dragon. As he spoke, he smiled proudly, and two horns pointed upwards emerged from his forehead. His original image of a snowman turned into a horned snowman due to the appearance of these two dragon horns. Even more ridiculous. Li Chu vaguely guessed the reason and said, Is it because the fishermen are fishing nearby? So you punish them? That's right. The island owner spread his hands and said, I protect the surrounding aquatic tribes, but they are fishing wildly here, which has killed many of my aquatic tribes. I punish them as water monkeys for three years. Isn't that excessive? 
and I also gave them extra the large sum of gold and silver is enough for them to enjoy for thirty years. Li Chu pondered for a moment and said, What you said makes some sense. Huh? Wang Longqi looked at Li Chu. Is he giving up on the villagers of Wang Yu village? But Li Chu changed the topic and said, I am entrusted by others, and I must not take things lightly. This punishment has actually had an effect. If you undo the spell today, I will how about we guarantee that the fishermen from Wang Yu village will not come to the sea area again. Oh, they want me to control the Xue tribe, so I can just let it go. The island owner asked back. Then we can only offend him. Li Chu stood up. If he can negotiate, he really doesn't want to conflict with a powerful enemy whose strength is unknown. But he felt that he could not convince the island owner. Different races naturally have different positions. As the Dragon King, there is nothing wrong with him wanting to protect the water tribe under his rule. From his standpoint, acting like this seems to be the most benevolent thing. But as a human being, of course, I cannot accept it. Ha! Huh? The island owner sneered. You want to fight me? There was a flash of sarcasm in his eyes. As if he was laughing at Li Chu's overestimation of his abilities. I am entrusted by others. So naturally I have to do my best. If I fail to defeat the island master, my master will take action. Li Chu said loudly. My master's cultivation is astonishing to the heavens and the earth. The island owner frowned. Are you threatening me? Li Chu said calmly. Just telling the truth. The island owner was slightly silent. He is very clear about the complex relationship between human cultivators. It is not uncommon to pull out the gourd and bring out the ladle. Many times, the young one is beaten to the old one, turning a small conflict into a big disaster. But he has never heard of the name Yang Wen. If Li Chu came from Baiyujing, Qingyang Temple, Yunyu Temple, etc., he would definitely send him away respectfully without saying a word. But this unknown Yun Temple sounds weird and bluffing. However, there have always been many hidden powers in the human world. Isn't it often said that the monk who sweeps the floor in a certain temple is the best in the world? If his master is really powerful, then he will inevitably suffer. After thinking for a while, the island owner came up with a more comprehensive idea. If he is truly a powerful disciple, he will naturally not be a loser. He might as well give this little Taoist a try. So he smiled and said, There's no need to worry. Taoist Priestly, let's compete first. If your strength can indeed be recognized by me, then there's a lot to talk about. Li Chu frowned. You want to compete with me? He was a little embarrassed. If it was a real fight, he wouldn't have any psychological burden. But the competition involves his blind spot. Looking back on the past, it seems that no one was killed by his sword. In a sparring match with this dragon king whose strength is unknown. If he holds back, he might lose. If he goes all out, what if a sword kills him? Who else to talk to? When the island owner saw his expression of embarrassment, he thought Li Chu was afraid of him. Don't worry. I don't mean to deliberately embarrass you. I won't take action. He turned to the lower part of the hall and said, Bring the crocodile with the human face. His highness's short and fat butler suddenly changed his expression. Island master, are you going to release the human face crocodile? Chapter 69 Dragon King Han Son-in-Law This human face crocodile is a murderer from the deep sea. He killed many creatures in my sea area. I personally took action to capture him. The island owner said, If Taoist Priestly is really a powerful disciple, he must have profound cultivation. As long as we don't take it lightly, defeating this beast shouldn't be a problem. Li Chu was noncommittal. He has always been modest, cautious and polite. I don't have the habit of saying harsh things first. Not long after, the sound of clanging chains was heard outside the palace. Two guards led an unusually tall monster in by chains. No wonder it is called the human face crocodile. Its face does have distinct human features. Except that its teeth protrude and are covered with green scales. The demon's body resembles that of a human being. But it is over two feet tall. If the hall were not spacious enough, it would not be able to accommodate it. There are dark blue raised strange scales all over the body. And the scales are covered with strange lines. The front parts of its limbs are still claws. And an extremely thick tail drags behind it. He was full of ferocious aura. And his face said he was not to be trifled with. As soon as he saw it, Wang Longchi touched his chin and fell into deep thought. What is this thing made of? The human faced crocodile was nailed with 18 dragon pattern bone penetrating nails all over its body. The slightest exertion of the demon's power would cause him excruciating pain. So he could only let the two guards lead him away. As soon as it saw the island owner, a sneer appeared on its terrifying face. Human faced crocodile. 
Now I'll give you a chance. The island owner didn't care and said, I want you to compete with this little talus master. If you win, I can let you go. Ho 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 ho. A hoarse and ugly laugh came from the crocodile's throat. Can I tear him to pieces? No. The island owner shook his head. Ho ho. Boring. Hearing a clanging sound, the guard successively pulled out the bone-piercing nails from its body. Every time one was pulled out, a bloody hole the size of an adult's wrist appeared on his body. But it actually seemed to be enjoying it. And every time it pulled out a nail, it let out a groan. Huh? Wang Longji really couldn't stand the scene and turned his attention elsewhere. During the whole process, Li Chu had been examining the human-faced crocodile and opening his eyes to observe. He has not come into contact with many monsters, and it is difficult to judge its strength by the strength of its aura. We can only roughly guess that if it had not deliberately restrained its demonic energy, it would have been much weaker than the flying lion. In this case, it seems that there is no need to be afraid, but in the eyes of the mind, the resentment attached to it is overwhelming. I really don't know how many crimes were committed. It seems that he does not need to hold back. Killing such a monster is a meritorious deed. The housekeeper also came over carefully and gave a quiet reminder. Little Talus Priestley had better fight quickly later. This human-faced crocodile has committed countless crimes. He relied on a fragment of ancient supernatural powers that he obtained in his early years and learned an anger word formula. During the battle, its anger will rise. And its anger will rise. The stronger it is, the stronger its strength will be. If it really accumulates the wrath of the sky, I am afraid that my island owner will not be able to stop it. He was very afraid of the human-faced crocodile, and he had not supported the island owner in releasing it since just now, fearing that it would cause a catastrophe. This was why. Well, thank you for reminding me. Li Chu nodded lightly. The secret of anger? He hits people. He gets angry, which is kind of interesting. But he has special tricks to deal with this kind of opponent who gets stronger with each passing fight. As the 18 bone-penetrating nails were completely separated from the body, the ferocious aura of the human-faced crocodile reached its peak, although the blood all over his body gurgled and formed a pool on the ground. But it didn't care at all, and even looked happy, raising its head and laughing. Ho 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 ho. Here comes the knife. Without him calling, two guards were already walking up carrying a huge red gold scimitar with great difficulty. Get out of the way. The human-faced crocodile grabbed the handle of the knife and swung it twice with great force, frightening the surrounding guards into hiding. Ho 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 ho. Ho 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 ho. The crocodile-faced crocodile laughed wildly. After stopping, he stretched out his tongue and licked the blade, and said in a ferocious voice, This precious sword that travels across the world has not smelled of blood for a long time. How can it be done? Wang Longchi whispered, There must be no poison on this knife. After it finished speaking, Li Chu walked out to his highness and stood opposite it, looking at it calmly. Is it just you? It's not enough. The human-faced crocodile said solemnly, Everyone must die. As soon as these words came out, all the maids around them turned pale, and all the guards looked like they were facing a formidable enemy, evil and majestic. Human-faced crocodile. The island owner yelled, You have to compete obediently. If you dare to show off your cruelty again, I will kill you without mercy. Ho ho. Do you think I am still afraid of you? Do you know how much anger I have accumulated during these days in prison? Yelling at the island owner, the crocodile raised his scimitar, looked at Li Chu with his scarlet eyes, and said, Come on, the first one will start with you. It crushed the ground with one foot, and its body flew out like an arrow. There was a bloody light, and its originally huge size suddenly increased a lot. Li Chu was already a little impatient. Seeing that the enemy finally took action, he also drew his sword, lift up, drop down. She, a white light flashed, and the human-faced crocodile, which was still three feet away, suddenly froze, then split into two sections, landed with a thud. Finish. A slight smile appeared on the corner of the fox girl's mouth. My master can even break up thunder clouds. In front of him. What are you so proud of? Wang Longchi Kaba Kaba's eyes were speechless, and he said, With this kind of strength, don't talk so much nonsense. Seeing the horrified expressions of the maids and guards on the surrounding islands, he couldn't help but curl his lips. If he's not just a monster, what's the fuss about? In fact, not only the servants, but also the island owner himself had trembling eyes when he saw the scene. Shock. Others may not know the strength of this human-faced crocodile, 
but he knows it best. I had spent a lot of effort cleaning it up at the beginning. But now I heard that it had accumulated a lot of anger. And I was a little afraid of it. How come? Died so hastily? If it were him, maybe no. He would never be able to kill him with such a casual blow. How strong must this little Taoist priest be? Thinking of the way he held himself up in front of him just now. The island owner couldn't help but blush. But soon, he thought of something even more terrifying. If this little Taoist priest's strength is so terrifying, how strong must his master be? I simply didn't dare to think too much about it, thinking that he had almost offended such a big boss. Cold sweat ran down his forehead. I won! Li Chu turned around, without being arrogant or impetuous, and said to the island owner in a calm tone, Can we have a good talk now? Ha ha! The island owner laughed heartily. Of course, everything is easy to discuss and easy to discuss. He turned around and waved his robe sleeves. These dishes are cold. Let's get some warm ones. Where are the musicians? Keep playing. Keep dancing. The two body parts of the human face crocodile were dragged down. And the blood stains were quickly cleaned up. The graceful maids wandered around the table like butterflies and flowers. And quickly replaced them with new and exquisite dishes. The sound of orchestral music came from behind the gauze curtain in the main hall. The sound was not loud. But it was melodious and sweet. It was as if nothing just happened. The feast begins again. Finally, two maids sat beside him to serve him. Wang Longji got his wish, hugged him from left to right, and smiled from ear to ear for a while. After the meal, the two maids were tired and had to persuade softly. Guest, don't touch it yet. Eat something. The maid who wanted to sit next to Li Chu was politely refused by him. After simply eating something, he spoke again. Island owner, regarding the issue of undoing the curse, for the fishermen in Wang Yu village. There is no problem, as long as they no longer come to this area to fish. The island owner seemed to have changed, and was very easy to talk to. He raised his left palm, pulled out a scale in his palm, then gritted his teeth and pulled out the scale. Little Taoist Masterly, go back and soak this piece of dragon scale in water, and give it to the fishermen, who have turned into water monkeys to drink. The spell will be resolved by themselves. The butler handed over the scales. Li Chu nodded. Thank you very much. Actually, the island owner said again, I just saw Taoist Priest Li's cultivation. I have one more thing to ask Taoist Priestly, Li Chu said. But it doesn't hurt to talk. If you want to make this request, you have to start with my origin, the island owner said seriously. Before I became the Dragon King here, I actually had another identity. And that was the son-in-law of the Han family. Chapter 70 Accepting the Mission Looking for the Dragon Transformation Fruit in addition to sects linked by inheritance and gangs linked by interests. The forces in the world also include aristocratic families linked by blood ties. Among the many families, the ones with the longest history and the most powerful power belong to the seven aristocratic families in Tianan continent that have continued since ancient times and are known as the seven Tianan families in the world. Although the seven Tianan families live in a corner, their shadows are behind almost every dynasty change in history. Dynasties rise and fall and families last forever. After nearly 10,000 years, these ancient families have accumulated a terrifying foundation. The Han family is one of the seven families in Tianan. When telling his own experience, the island owner's eyes showed some vicissitudes of life and sadness. I was born without knowing who my parents were. I grew up with my master. He picked me up in the wilderness, taught me principles, taught me magical powers, and how to be a human being. So I have never regarded myself as a person dragon. I always think of myself as a human being. But my master is not a powerful person. He only had the cultivation level of the third level in his whole life. He died soon after. I left the mountain gate and started to make my own way in the world. It was then that I realized that my talent was so strong and that my dragon bloodline was so magical. In those few years, I traveled all over the world with high spirits and made a name for myself. Not long after, I met her. My former wife. She was born in the direct line of the Han family and has a high status in the family. It has always been rumored that she is the most beautiful woman of the Han family's generation. And her title is well deserved. I was young and had little experience at the time. When I met a woman who was as beautiful as a fairy and gentle, there was no way I wouldn't fall in love. What's even more beautiful is that she and I are in love. I was alone at the time and had no worries. After I got married, I happily moved into the Han family. According to the rules of your human race, I should be regarded as a bride-in-law. But I have no father or mother. 
So why should I care about this? The few years after I got married were the happiest days of my life. The Han family respects me very much. Of course, I also did a lot of things for them. We are a loving couple and there is no resentment. But about four years after we got married, that night, she stabbed a dragon suppressing all into my back. Huh. At this point, he sneered. The bone-penetrating nail that I used to deal with the human-faced crocodile was modeled after the dragon suppressing all. This thing was specially made to kill dragons. And the pain was even worse than the countless bone-penetrating nails. Times. That's when I realized that everything from her getting married to me to the Han family accepting me had been planned long ago. All this is just because I am a dragon. A nearly pure-blooded dragon. They extracted my divine dragon marrow and injected it into the body of a Chilin son of the Han family. Han family Chilin. Han Zhu. Wang Longqi exclaimed. Although he was not a practitioner, he couldn't help but think of Han Zhu because he was so famous. Han family Chilin is the name given by the world to the chosen son of this generation of the Han family. He was already powerful at the age of 15 and became famous before he was 18. He is a generation of monsters who can rival the chief disciples of the 12 immortal sects and has brilliant talents. Even in nearby Jiang Nanzhu, there is never a shortage of his fans. In comparison, a genius of Jian Shouyin's level is two levels lower. Han Zhu has always been known for his mighty and domineering behavior. When dealing with the enemy, he pays attention to using force to overcome cleverness and suppress everything. The most famous one is that he is covered in divine dragon blood, which can kill enemies across borders when exploded, which is extremely terrifying. Unexpected. Is this how his dragon blood came from? Uh-huh. That child is developing well. Isn't he? That's right. He is already extremely talented. And he has obtained my divine dragon marrow. Which is equivalent to taking away my divine dragon bloodline. He is naturally invincible. The island owner laughed again, as if he was self-deprecating. Click. My dragon marrow was forcibly taken away. My cultivation level plummeted, and I was almost useless. At this time, my wife stood up again, and begged the head of the Han family not to kill me. She had just done a great service, and the head of the Han family was unwilling to go against her wishes. So they imprisoned me on this overseas island and sent guards from all over to guard me. It was quite troublesome. Thanks to the water tribe in the nearby sea, even though I have no dragon blood, my dragon power is still there. They are willing to regard me as their master and let me be the dragon king of this area. With their help, I found many heavenly materials and earthly treasures to heal my injuries and restored some cultivation levels so that I can be in the situation I am today. It has been more than 10 years since I was imprisoned. Li Chu listened quietly. Only then did he realize that the housekeeper beside him, as well as the maids and guards here, turned out to be transformed from the Shui tribe. The island owner continued, When I talk about this, I certainly don't want to ask Mr. Li to help me get revenge. There are some things that I will definitely do with my own hands, but I can't escape from this island at this time. Without dragon blood, my cultivation level can no longer be improved. Let alone revenge. Faced with today's bottleneck, there is only one thing that can help me regenerate a drop of divine dragon marrow. I was born with a dragon body. And with this drop of divine dragon marrow, it is possible to regain the divine dragon bloodline. This thing is the dragon transformation fruit. Dragon fruit? Li Chu had obviously never heard of this name. Yes. The island owner nodded. This thing is quite precious. It is a treasure medicine that you human cultivators use to assist you when you want to break through to the dragon transformation realm. But only on the dragon clan can it exert its true magical effect. So where can I find it? Li Chu asked. Everyone knows that there are two dragon transforming trees in the world. One in the white jade capital of Kunlun in the west. And the other in the Shishao gate in the east China sea where thunder falls. Both places have been taken by the immortal sect as their own. And it is impossible to do it for them. Outsiders get it but I happen to know that there is a third dragon tree in the world. The island owner smiled and said, I made a good friend in Tianan back then. He can barely be regarded as an expert. His name is Jiren Fuyuin. He has a secret realm he created by himself. Called the Hidden Dragon Secret Realm. There happens to be a dragon transformation tree in his Hidden Dragon Secret Realm. It's just that I didn't like this thing back then. And I never thought of asking him for it. On my wedding day, he came to congratulate me and gave me something after the wedding banquet. I wonder if it's fate. But this thing is actually the key to his hidden dragon secret realm. It's a pity that it's not complete. But a quarter of it. Huh? 
Li Chu's eyes lit up, and he remembered it instantly. A quarter of the secret key. Worth five hundred tails of gold. The island owner turned over his hand, and a residual seal appeared in his palm. It was carved from white jade and had a traditional Chinese character, dragon, engraved underneath. On that day, Master Fu Yuan told me that he felt his end was approaching and wanted to go to Jiannan Continent to seek a great opportunity. Life or death was uncertain. So he divided the Qianlong Secret Realm's treasure key, which contained all his belongings, into four parts. It was handed over to four people. In this way, these four people will not be able to steal the treasures in the Secret Realm before he comes back. If he cannot come back at all, it can be regarded as entrusting the key to the Secret Realm. There will be a day in the future, so that the treasures will not be buried with him. What I want to ask Talus Masterly is to take this incomplete treasure key and help me find the hidden dragon secret realm and retrieve a dragon transformation fruit from it. It's just that there has been no news from him for many years. I don't know if he is still alive. And I don't know who he gave the other three keys to. It may be difficult to find them. Fortunately, I am not in a hurry. After all, my lifespan is not as long as the human race is so short-lived. You can wait slowly. The island owner came over and handed the remaining seal to Li Chu with his own hands. Li Chu took a closer look and found that it was indeed the same as the incomplete treasure key he got from Nightmare's body that day. I don't know what the origin of this is, he said. I have seen another piece of this incomplete treasure key, which was found outside my town of Yuhang. Oh, the island owner's eyes lit up. Does Mr. Li know the whereabouts of the other piece? Yeah, Li Chu nodded. I just need to find two more pieces. That's very good. Very good. The island owner clapped his hands and laughed and then said, As long as Talus Priestly comes here with the dragon transformation fruit, I will give you a big gift. Li Chu looked at the splendid decorations around him and nodded happily. The island owner thought that cultivators like him would not care about money. So he said, Don't worry. What I give to Talus Priestly will never be these tacky yellow and white things. Li Chu looked at him and said seriously, Actually, it's okay. Aw? The island owner was startled for a moment and then burst into laughter. 